I got a bunch of topics today. And really, smoke, I'm calling people out. Hebrews getting called out. Melanin people getting called out. You know, I'm on my typical bro Sanchez bullshit. You know, I'm on my BSBS. BS. <laughs> Somebody says, send me a rap, bro Sanchez, so I can rap about the globe. Send me a beat, my bad. Send me a beat. Well, I prefer you to go to my website and pay for the beat because I'm a broke nigga and I need every penny. And speaking of that, let me uh, put my cash app on the thing. <laughs> but you know I'm just fucking with you and I'm a comedian too. So just email me and I will uh, give you a beat, man. We'll ho let me know what kind of beat you looking for and all that good shit. And we'll, we'll give you a beat, man. We'll give you a beat. Yeah, man, y'all ain't saw me because I've been working on this new documentary. I'm going to see can I open this thing up and let y'all get a sneak peek. Make sure y'all support the show today, though, because I don't normally do this. I got And listen, I don't know now if this may mess things up. But I'm going to try it. I ain't giving y'all too much of a sneak peek because when I'm done, I will be, uh, you know, put pieces of it out, trailers and stuff, but it will be in my store. This going to be some of my greatest work, and I'm going to uh, end up making a book surrounding this, too, about Yahweh. And remember that I'm working on my big book, my, um, my whatchamacall, syncretism book. With all of my collages in it. It's going to be like a Bible. That ain't coming soon, though. That is not coming soon. Y'all know that I work like Nas and Dr. Dre. It take me a minute to make my shit. But when I get it to you, it's, it's like wine. It's like Louis Vuitton. Everybody know you can expect quality. From the Bro Sanchez Golden Wings Media brand. They know that, man. My shit is handmade, son. My son, my shit is handmade. Hey, this shit ain't made by machines. <laughs> Got a problem with the machines, but yeah. All of this content is handmade, son. Yeah, antique shit. Yeah, antique. That's what we do over here. We do antiques. Hold on a second. I'm going to give y'all a, a little peek into the project. See, I never even tried to share this. I'm going to just put it right here. It's showing up gray. Okay, so it will not let y'all see the project because I'm opening it up. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, man, this joint take a lot of um computer power. And uh, I'm really testing my computer right now because, yeah, like, I'm really testing my computer power because, I got two programs open that I would never open together, OBS and Adobe Premiere. So this is the, the, the program that I make all of y'all documentaries in. You can see this is a lot of work, man. Family, look, this is all the days y'all didn't see me. This is all that work, man. I'm not taking no days off. Look at all this editing. People, this is a lot of editing. To people that do video editing, they're looking at this and they scratching their head like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude, I want you to know something, right? Why do I charge money for my stuff? Because I put a lot of work into it. Now, what you got to realize, though, right, is that there are people out there, right, that make 10-minute videos and it take them a day to make a 10-minute video a whole day. 
people, this going to be like a four hour presentation. And that's why I've been, man, it's been taking me, it's been beating my ass. It's some hard work. I just realized the picture when showing. There you go. Look, look at this stuff, man. I'm just showing you the slides alone. Bro, I done made at least 200 new collages. I repeat, I've made at least 200 new collages since y'all ain't saw me. I'm going to be teaching so much, and I'm not going to teach you nothing now. You got to wait for this. I'm not going to say nothing. Just understand something. If you fuck with this new Yahweh documentary that I got coming out, everything, if you, listen, it's going to be the biggest aha moments in your whole life. And I'm not even playing with you. People, this is so much video editing that, People that make videos will tell you that boy serious. And I'm still ain't through. This is like motherfucking dude. This is me staying up late and shit. Bro, I'm talking about I got a whole bro. If you listen, I'm so excited about this project. I can't wait to get done with it. But I'm taking my time with it. Look at here, man. I'm going to show you one slide. Look at that. I can't give y'all too much though. I can't, I'm already giving you too much with this image right here. I'm already giving you too much with this image right here. I'm already giving you too much with this image right here. So let me, let me close my shit up, man. Y'all gonna have to really come with it for this. Like I said, bro, to the people that spend their money to get this movie that I'm making, you're going to be watching this shit over and over. Man, I put so much research into this shit, bro. And I'm not even finna fucking give you too much. Because if I give... And let me stop. Stop the screen share. Cut, cut, no, cut, cut it off. Cut it off. Fuck that. Cut, cut it off. <laughs> I'm giving you too much. Too much. Right now. I'm working on it. Soon as I finish this joint, I'm going to get back to working on it. Bro, and I'm staying up like getting bags under my eyes. Ha, ha, look at my eyes, bro. You can see they like P. Diddy, puffy cones. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when, when, I, when I get in and I get in the lab and I go to working on a project, dude, I'll go for days just depriving my body and shit, just on some, yeah, uh, just... Like, damn, nigga, take a break and go and eat something. <laughs> yeah, man, I'd be like the ref. It'd be shit just coming to me from the research and from the ancestors. Like, and I'd be like, damn, this what that mean. That's what that mean. Bro, it is so many revelations in this new project. Y'all can see how excited I am about it. I, I just got to stop, though, and get to the show because, man. But let me close that up, man. Yeah. But uh so yeah, we uh we uh hey just got a new job, man. Somebody just got Des just got a new job, man. That's good, man. Let's clap it up for it. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, man. You know, we got we we have to work hard in this world. So every now and then, if you find a way to work smart, take the shortcut, because that's what the rich people are doing. And I'm going to tell you something, too. This YouTube shit ain't easy work. Oh, man, I, I bet you some of y'all get more sleep than me, goddammit. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um... And I and just like your job, I can't call off when I want to. I got family issues going on right now, man. My brother's in the hospital. And I got to come on here and still give y'all some good energy and still give y'all, you know, uh, don't expect nothing less. Y'all don't expect nothing less. So salutes to everybody out there, man, um, going through stuff, whatever it may be. I remember an old Christian song that said, 
trouble don't last always. That's the song we used to sing in the church. <clears throat> Salutes to everybody in the building, man. <clears throat> Salutes to everybody in the building. So I gave y'all a sneak peek. We gonna... So check it out. Today we are doing a world events update and we're doing call-ins one at a time, no panels. We're doing call-ins. If people got questions, they can come and ask me questions. I have all of my slides on deck, and I'm prepared to teach. Now, I gave y'all a sneak peek into my documentary, into my upcoming presentation. I hope don't nobody take any of those damn slides and screenshots and go and trying to, you know, doing all that. Just wait till my joint come out, because I'm going to give y'all all the slides anyway. I'm going to give you the original slide. You ain't going to put my shit out there looking all grainy and goofy because you want to fucking steal it and shit. <laughs> be patient and do it the right way because I'm going to be giving out the slides for free. Because when I teach, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the movie for sale, but I'm going to be going live teaching anyway. Y'all know I don't really sell this shit. I'm going to be teaching you my new research anyway. It's going to be part of a free series that I'm doing on this channel. But that's different than the movie I put together. I'm going to be giving y'all the same information, basically. But when I do it live, you know I'm going to take my time. I'm going to drink. I'm going to motherfucking smoke. I'm going to take breaks. I'm going to dance. I'm going to trip. But I'm going to give you the information. But on the movie, it's straight up. Four, five, what, like about three, four hours? I don't know how long it's going to be, but straight up all meet with the edit and everything, how the documentaries go with the slides and all that, you know. Yeah, it's going to be 30. Grateful. Yeah, it's going to be 30 bucks. So check this out. Um... I'm going to drop the call-in link at this time. Oh, hold up. Before we do the call-ins, right? Before we do the call-ins. Before we do the call-ins. It's some shit on my phone I need to pull up. So, people, did you know that? Check this out. Let me pull this up on the thing. Um... I should be able to share this to myself. Yeah, let's share it to myself and pull it up on the big screen. So, after, so we, we, we still post Eclipse. Drop a one if you still in your Eclipse spirit. Drop a one. So, I've been doing research about the Eclipse still. Because when I'm working on these movies you know golden wings with golden wings media i uh take breaks you got to take a break and when i take a break i try to catch up on what's happening in the tech world hold on come on man hold on okay and and when i catch up right like mustard right I come up with topics I think need to be shared. Let me pull this up. Move over, Eclipse. So we just had an Eclipse, and now we about to have another big-ass event. Oh, my God. So drop a one if y'all can hear me and see me clearly, and please do me a favor. If you haven't hit the like button and you know you like my show, well, excuse me, you know you like our show here in this community, Hit the doggone like button for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know you like it. Right? So check this out. I want to say some post-eclipse shit right now. That uh, people going to find crazy. You know what that is? I don't think that last eclipse was natural. You know when you go to sleep at night 
and you can't sleep because it's a thought on your mind. It's something on your mind that's just messing with you, making you curious. Check me out, right? It's just ever since that eclipse, I've been telling myself it just don't fit. That didn't feel natural. I watched a couple of other videos about it, and everybody was like, mathematically, the eclipse that just happened, it shouldn't have happened. This is what y'all got to realize. We had a great alignment in 2017. That was the great North American eclipse. And with the great eclipse, excuse me, of two, yeah, the great eclipse of 2017, wasn't it when it, that was the one, right? Let me, let me make sure I got my year right. Yeah, the great North American eclipse of 2017, yes. So we had that, and, and listen, in 2017, when we had an eclipse over North America, right, right, that was also a great alignment. We can see every planet in a solar system make a straight line. That took place in 2017. Let me tell you something. Those kind of alignments take place like every 26,000 years, I think. These kind of alignments. You feel me? So, what I'm telling you is that last great American eclipse with the alignment, that shit then supposed to come back around. For a long time, according to the Mayan. It's back in seven years. Seven is a symbolic number, too. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm just thinking outside the box. Hold on a minute. So, yeah, that last alignment and that last eclipse, these kind of events are very rare. And uh, I'm just saying that that last eclipse was very weird, man. It was very weird, the timing of it, the fact that it wasn't predicted Man, you know what's crazy? The Mayan calendar already ended. And we are now seeing things happen in the sky that was not predicted by any of reputable groups, tribes, ancestors. Man, I wonder a lot about this stuff. I do. We know the weather. I mean, my thing is this, right? Nothing in a simulation is natural. Put it this way. If, if me and you put on Neuralink and we uploaded our consciousness into a computer simulation, and we was walking around a computer simulation saying, I wonder if that's a natural cloud. I wonder, am I eating natural food? I wonder, is this natural what I'm doing? And this is going to sound crazy to y'all. The only natural thing about this place is our soul. I'm just saying, if we're in a big-ass computer program 
How you going to be asking me what's natural, nigga? Like, ain't shit natural, nigga. You in a video game, and you asking me, is that a real cloud or a fake cloud? It's time to take that red pill, man. You're in the Truman Show. See, we still like order in our life because if somebody really give you the red pill, dude, guess what I'm telling you what I'm thinking? Ain't shit natural here. People going to say, well, ain't nothing natural. I'm trying to eat healthy and be healthy. That don't mean you trying to be natural. You just trying to make the best selections on the fake is the best fake shit to put in your body. Yeah. You looking for the best choice from all of the fake options available and the best choice that's going to be new, the most nutritious for your fake ass avatar. And in this fake ass simulation, you can have somebody eating lettuce every day and a nigga eating canned and tater chips or outlive them. Why? I'm telling you, man, the only thing real is the man in between your ears that's driving this vehicle called a body. Everything else is fake out there, even this body, all this shit. Only thing real is the thoughts in my head, the voice in my head, the pictures I make in between my ears, nigga, when I shut my eyes. That's all I'm taking. That's all real. Everything else. And, and the crazy thing about the thought world, a nigga whose mind right can outlive a nigga that's working out every day. You can be working out every day, eating all the right stuff, and your psyche can be Fucked up the way you taking antidepressants. You're frustrated all the time. Don't you know that the quickest way to the grave is stress? We think that we living healthy and all that. And, and we being hygienic. And then you look at a person in the jungle eating off the ground and all that. Man, you look at a homeless man in an alley. Outliving a working man. A man that worked out every day. He got a Fitbit on, but he committed suicide. And this is, I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to get y'all to see, right, that health starts from within on a spiritual and mental level. And a lot of people think, see, we in a world where it's all about fitness, 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 fitness. Everybody is swole. They got beautiful bodies, but we leading the world. We leading the ancestors in depression. In our world, you got a lot of fit bodies and, but broken spirits, you know, and, uh, we ain't really healthy, but we look the part. I'm just saying how, Health and fitness is bullshit in this world. Health and fitness ain't nothing but an extension of the beauty industry. That's it. It's just an extension of the beauty industry. It's about looking good. It ain't necessarily about feeling good because they don't want to step on a medical mafia's feet. But yeah, the health industry is, is, is a fucking... It's just good looks, BBLs and cutting off a motherfucker's fat from off they stomach but a nigga didn't work out rappers getting ass jobs and stomach and tummy tucks and all this him bullshit yeah this this shit is weird though with these eclipses man it's weird with these eclipses man the eclipse, let me see if I can find this. Uh, I got a whole joint queued up. 
if they won't even let me play this video no more. I know that nigga was dropping science. Look at there. I had a video so deep. And I'm like, damn, why did you take it down, nigga? The fuck? You know, I'm so tired of y'all uh, Indian giving ass truthers. <laughs> the content ain't available. It's usually because the owner shared it with a small. Who shares the truth with a small group of people? Y'all weird today. Y'all so weird with this shit. Yeah, man, I put out my documentary, but I only released it to the first 100. And after that, it's part of a secret group. You know, we're not going to, it's not big. And sit that goofy shit down. <laughs> it said, who, who can see it or it's been deleted or what the? F okay, that was a fire video. I'm mad, bro. It was a fire video, but I ain't going to trip. All right. So listen, we having all of these weird celestial events. And there seem to be events that was unaccounted for, if you will. What I mean is our ancestors studied the stars and they knew everything that was going to happen. And a lot of things happening in our time. No one talked about that shit. Like, I'm just saying it's random shit happening, not just in the sky, but on the ground, too. Like the, the, the earthquake that happened in fucking on the East Coast. So it's a lot of world events taking place that people ain't connecting the dots with, like us being on the brink of another election here with Trump. And that's going to end up being civil war protests because his people are maniacs. And the man is, a, and it's just so much on a political level going on. War, Israel, biblical prophecy. See, the Bible said it's going to be earthquake in diverse places. You know what that means? That means in places where they don't normally happen. And that we just had that happen in, in on the East Coast. Earthquakes don't really happen on the East Coast, man. Show me some fault lines that run through New York, motherfucker, like I'm saying. God damn. <laughs> you know, all of the major fault lines is running through the West Coast. South America, my area, all, all out here and shit. And... You got a bunch of underground tunnels, man, that go from fucking continent. Man, we, they got tunnel systems that start at the bottom of South America, way down there, and go all the way up to Canada, nigga, Canada. Oh, my God. And, it, and you got to think, man, humans ain't doing that much goddamn digging, son. We doing some digging. Don't get me wrong. They digging them out. I'm just saying, though, nigga, tunnels that, bro, it's a whole underground network you don't even know about. I'm telling you, there may be civilizations up under the ground. It may be more people living under the ground than on the surface, nigga. Oh, my God. Time to wake up. Check this out. I say to myself, why is it so many underground tunnels on the West Coast? And then on the East Coast, they got the intricate sewage systems. I'm finna go deep, y'all. Stay with me. We got a lot of world events to catch up on. And we got a lot of more good theories and stuff to talk about here. Check this out, right? So, so check this out. The Grand Canyon had civilizations in it that were lost. There are intricate civilizations and cave systems and tunnel systems in the Grand Canyon area that connects to a lot of underground shit. 
And that's why you can't really explore the Grand Canyon without the tourist companies, without. It's kind of like a mini Antarctic deal that they got going on over here in the Grand Canyon. And they got these bogus ass tribes set up in the Grand Canyon talking about this our land is so sacred and can't nobody come up in here because we regulating it. And it's just a way to keep us from exploring right up under our nose lost civilizations. Older than Egypt. Mother, man, ain't this something they got? Egypt all on your money and right where you walk at, we can find civilizations in the Grand Canyon older than Egypt. Watch this though. They want a nigga like me to believe that humans over time carve tunnel systems from Florida to Canada, from South America to Quebec. I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe that there are natural fault lines under the earth. Yeah. I believe just like we got rivers on top of the ground, on the surface of the earth, we got underground rivers. And there are rivers under the ground that can make the Nile River look small, that'll make the Amazon look small. Let's theorize. And there can be all kind of creatures we can speculate living in the underground rivers. What happens when the underground river dry up? Because they got y'all thinking that we pulling water from here. We pulling water from there. We pulling water. Bro, a lot of the water we drinking is coming from underground aquifers. Check this out, though. When these rivers dry up, we get sinkholes, potholes. We get these fault lines that we call earthquakes. I'm just saying this is another way to look at it. They got you thinking that it's some plate tectonics under the ground that's pulling away from each other. And the oh, earthquake. Okay. I'm not saying that ain't true. I'm saying it can be more than one way for an earthquake to form just like it's more than one way for a fire to ignite. And that a lot of times what they call an earthquake on the West Coast, when they show me the footage of it, I don't see no fault lines. I see big ass sinkholes. And I be like, that ain't an earthquake. That's an underground lake that dried up and we was living on top of thin ice. It's like skating on thin ice. Once that underground lake dry up, It's a matter of time for all that land on top cave in. And, and, and when all that land on top start to implode and sink into the field of space, it's going to start shaking and the earth around going to start as it go into the middle point. I'm saying a lot of times it ain't got nothing to do with no plate tectonics. Because a lot of times we don't find that the cracks running following the path of those said plates. And a lot of times it's just a big ass hole in the ground. Now I got a several theories on that. Underground lakes is drying up. I got another theory on it. They got technology to hollow out the ground beneath certain areas that that, that they want to own that land. Sort of like Hurricane Katrina to take over New Orleans to get that land. What they did, we know that was man-made. That was warfare on our people. It's a lot of land on the West Coast that's it's, uh, worth money. But it's owned by black folks, Mexican folks, whatever, Hispanic folks. I'm just saying these earthquakes never strike in Bel Air, motherfucker. <laughs> these earthquakes never find themselves in Beverly Hills. 
it's always popular parts in, in the slums of L.A. going through regular shit. I'm on the West Coast. And, I'm, and you know I'm a big hater. So I be like, when the fuck is the rich people going to get hit? <laughs> Everything for years have always escaped the rich people. Even before us. There were events that happened on the earth that wiped off damn near everybody on the earth. But not the rich people. <laughs> These royal families always climb their ass up out the caves when all of the cataclysms happen and reset the government, reset the money. Reset. It's like, motherfucker, y'all doing this shit. Yeah, man, at this point, man, if everybody else, God damn it, uh, you know, getting shot and y'all ain't getting shot, it's a setup. That these shits is strategically going everywhere around the rich people shit. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Even in Alabama, nigga, tornadoes don't hit where the rich people at. Guess what we say? We say, well, the rich people live in areas where they know that it ain't that many natural disasters, right? If you live in a, a, a place that flood all the time, you'll say, oh, that's because the rich people live up, upland. That's why they don't get flooded because they live up there, up higher up in the land. Okay, that, that's a good excuse for you. That'll work then, but in these other instances, I'm like, damn, boy, the, these rich folks are very lucky. Goddamn, son. <laughs> Y'all are very lucky. Damn. <laughs> you raw your families and dynasties around the world. You motherfuckers, I want y'all luck. Because when any apocalyptic event happen, we know y'all ain't scared of it. <laughs> Y'all are so cocky, y'all don't even act scared of it. Y'all be like, eating and shit, yep. So a tornado is coming to fuck y'all shit up. I meant, my bad, our shit up today, and you know, like, you know. You know, because cause it is going to hit everybody, you know what I mean? We all are in jeopardy. You know, pass me some more of them Cheetos, Brad. Yeah, so the tornado coming to fuck everybody up, you know, and... You know, go under the ground and, you know, pass me a little of that drink, Brad. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fucking y'all up today. <laughs> Them motherfuckers be looking so not bothered. Like, they must know they ain't going to get fucked up. And how they know that? Hmm. I'm like, damn, everybody else scared as fuck. See, when we buying water and shit, them motherfuckers is chilling. It, you don't see no rich people in the grocery store fighting you for toilet paper. <laughs> it's like, damn, nigga, what well dug in, in, in the back of your house, son? Shit. Damn. But I'm saying all that to say I'm saying all that to say a lot of shit happening on the earth that we think is natural events and it's not. Like I want to talk about the earthquake that happened on the East Coast because that happened and no one really gave it a lot of time because well, when the earthquake happened on the East Coast, they had smoke and mirrors around it. Guess what the smoke and mirrors was? Puff Daddy. Watch this, though. Watch this. Now, look at him. Look at him. Nikola Tesla had a machine that can cause earthquakes. Look at him. Look at that. This machine here 
can cause earthquakes, y'all. And listen, it ain't that big. All right. It's about the size of a little uh, video game remote control, like an Atari joystick or something back in the day. It ain't a big device. I want you to hear me out. This little thing right here can cause enough vibratory energy to shake an entire town. Tesla did it before. Tesla was like God on earth, man. Tesla was causing earthquakes himself. Tesla caused a whole fucking blackout and then cut the lights back on like, ah, I got you, bitch. <laughs> Listen, man, me and Tesla would have got along fine. I love a nerdy motherfucker. And then Tesla was a flat earther. He was into the ether. He was into the, the science of the ancestors. He was into shamanism. And with and he and he was and he was very big on everybody need to know this knowledge. And it shouldn't be sold. It should be for free. And energy should be free. Tesla was my kind of nigga, man. Because Everybody was scared of electricity and Tesla was walking around electrocuting himself like <laughs> like Tesla's really my kind of nigga. Everybody was in fear of electricity and Tesla around this bitch like rating and shit, throwing electricity balls out his hands and shit. Shooting electricity out his throat and shit. Look, y'all, ah, you still scared? Ah, look, electricity. He was trying to show them, don't be scared of this stuff. Tesla literally had electricity flowing through his body. And he looked it like he was radiated. They got pictures of this. It was in the newspaper. In his experiments to show that electricity is safe when you know what you're doing with it. The man was literally the real life rating of Mortal Kombat. If you tried to do the shit he was doing today, you probably kill yourself. I want everybody right now if you to hit the like button and share the video. It really helps us to get our numbers up and we really need y'all to do that because YouTube algorithm don't promote content like this. We it, we grassroots over here. Don't make me regret being too real now because I heard when you keep it real, it gets you nowhere too because this, this is keeping it real. See how far that get my ass because right now it can't even get me half of the likes of the people in the building. <laughs> you know, so like and share it, man. If you having a good time, other people will too. I'm showing, I'm teaching you, I'm entertaining and doing all of that. Check this out, people. You really don't know nothing about Nikola Tesla at all. What they teach you about him do him no justice. All right? If people learned the shit Nikola Tesla was doing, you would look at him totally f fucking different, dude. Like, seriously. Now, why did I bring up Nikola Tesla? Tesla started destroying a lot of his own technology. Why did he do it, Brother Sanchez? Because Tesla realized quickly, I'm having fun learning about reality. We creating machines and stuff. And then Tesla realized the agenda that the people in power had surrounding his technology. And anybody that's in Tesla position know that you don't want that kind of blood on your hand. It's like me. If I invent something right now that can destroy a billion people at the press of a button, and I got people funding me that want to depopulate the earth, but I didn't know about the depopulation agenda. After I design a technology that can wipe billions of people off the planet, Then I realized the agenda is to wipe billions of people off the planet.
not for warfare. Not for no. My thing is, if a person think I'm protecting my country, then they can use their smarts to develop some hideous technology. And that'll justify it because you got a man saying, look, I'm building this bomb to protect my women, my children. But if you knew you was building that bomb for population control and the depopulation agenda, you probably would destroy that bomb because you probably would say, well, damn, when they learn how to reverse engineer my technology, they going to use it against me. When you realize that, you will say, you know what? I'm going to smash this shit up now to protect my family. I'm thinking I'm building some shit to protect my country from foreigners. But I'm building it to help the powers that be depopulate the earth. Tesla realized that world war wasn't about nation versus nation. It was about the rich versus the poor. They were developing technology and paperclip and all that to help depopulate the earth. You guys think it's about nation versus nation. Again, the rich people don't send their children to war. The rich people don't get hit by all of these weather events. The rich people don't get the diseases you got. The rich people just got a fucking get out of jail free card, nigga. <laughs> They live in a whole nother world where they just don't know about the problems you, you got. And when I say rich, I'm talking to people that's connected with the cabal, man. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, there is a war taking place on the earth. This is the place of Armageddon where good and evil. And the war is going to happen and it's been happening whether you know it or not. And you don't know what warfare looked like and you think everything all dandy outside. It's a war going on outside no man is safe from. When you go outside and see them planes spraying in the sky, I want you to think of every day in some third world country, a child go outside and they see war planes in the sky dropping bombs every day every day in some third world country there's a child saying an ash strike Woo, boom 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 you don't live in that kind of environment it's a different kind of warfare in your environment you get up every day you see planes flying across the sky dropping down some kind of liquid some kind of chemical but you don't think you at war because you think, well, if the airplane ain't dropping a bomb, I ain't at war. Stupid. But it can be dropping other biological agents to shorten your lifespan and do all that. The war been on. You don't know what it looked like. When you walking out your door every day and seeing a plane with a trail in it talking about we doing what? Give them me. Give me. A good excuse why we putting all them metals and stuff in the sky. Barium and aluminum and all that. Well, it helps with your breathing because without that in the sky, you know you'll have shortness of breath. <laughs> right, because the fluoride that's in my water is helping with my fucking teeth too, right? <laughs> it's just helping you, brother Sanchez. Why you scared of science and STEM? Hand me some of that fluoride over there. <laughs> Tastes like science, motherfucker. <laughs> Woohoo! Damn, that shit tastes scientific than a motherfucker. Give me another shot of that. Mm. Tastes like science, nigga. Tastes like a can of chemistry, bitch. <laughs> Check this out, y'all. We seeing events take place that are man-made, and we take uh, now. We said that we live in a simulation, but we looking for natural events. 
That's like Jim Carrey inside of the Truman Show saying, I wonder was that a real hurricane? I wonder was that thunderstorm real or fake? Everything in the Truman Show is fake, dude. Everything. All the weather simulate. All of the events are simulated. I said to myself, I got to tell my people this because it's kind of like we're double talking. It's kind of like we got one foot in and one foot out. Because if you're saying our world is a simulation, we need to quit arguing about what's real and what's fake. The only thing real in this simulation is your soul. That's it. That's all you got in this place. That's all you need, though. That's all you need. <laughs> I said, excuse me, I, I apologize. That was disgusting. Allergies a bit. I said all that to say this. The weather in our world is man-made. You were born into a simulation. Quit looking for real shit in a fake-ass world. You the only real shit in it. You are the light of this world. Everything Hollywood do, they copy off poor motherfuckers. How come you rich motherfuckers ain't setting the trend? You look at the rich motherfucker and he got on toe up jeans. Balenciaga selling sneakers with dirt and mud already on them. Why y'all looking for the poor man? Look. The jeans with the bleach uh, mark and the bleach little stains in them going to cost your ass a million dollars. And the regular jeans without no stains and mud on them, you can get them for $10, nigga. <laughs> This shit backwards today. The world back. It's like a big psychological experiment. I'm like, I like, I be seeing the Balenciaga little runway shit, and then the Kanye West clothes, and I be like, okay, the richer you get, the more homeless you try to look. <laughs> I see what's going on here. The poor people gonna put on a bunch of Louis Vuitton. The poor people, right? Going to put on a bunch of Gucci. And let me show you what the rich people going to wear. And see, why the poor people trying to look rich? Let me show you what the rich people looking like. <laughs> why the poor people? Listen. Why the poor people trying to look rich? I bet you that hoodie that Kanye got on right now costs about $2,000, nigga. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I bet you that hoodie costs about five racks. <laughs> and to get that beat up hat that he wearing right there, you know that's a $500 to a $1,000 hat that he wearing now. And you can't make this shit up, nigga. You will be looking at a nigga and a nigga, you be like, hey, man, you want some change? And a nigga be like, bitch, this Balenciaga, what you talking about? <laughs> Bro, why are the rich people trying to look homeless now? This is literally a fashion show. See, all of this shit let me know that the world is backwards than a motherfucker. When I'm standing next to a nigga and I'm offering this nigga change out my pocket and he hop in a goddamn Rolls Royce with this on. <laughs> what the fuck alternate universe am I in, dog? What planet am I on? What the fuck are we doing, humans? And I'm serious, it's, it's, it's backwards than a motherfucker, son. This is what the rich people dressing like. Why you got on all that Gucci and Louis and you will walk up to this nigga and this nigga probably you probably work for him and don't know it. <laughs> 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 
Hey, ain't that a bitch? Ain't that a bitch? When you tell when you tell your girlfriend, hey baby, I wanna introduce you to my CEO. This is my boss right here. Hey, 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 boss, check him out. And, <laughs> and your boss walk out the back office. <laughs> Son, 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 this is your son. <laughs> son, son, yeah, man, I want to introduce you to my CEO. Come on, CEO, come on out. And he walk out that bitch in his bomb gear. And you know that the world is crazy when a nigga got to tell you what he rocking. Oh, this is Balenciaga right here. This Balenciaga. That ugly sweater with all them, yeah, I paid $3,000 for this sweater. You got to tell a motherfucker what you wearing now. Because how I'm going to know that you paid 10 racks for this outfit, son? I'm not going to know that. You better keep them damn tags in your pocket because we don't believe you. You need more people. <laughs> See, when you rocking some shit like this, you know you better keep the tags in your pocket. Because you're going to have to pull them out and show us you ain't homeless, son. And that this, Balen this is Balenciaga. You know. And, 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 and I can only imagine what's coming next. The Balenciaga cologne going to smell like a garbage can. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, man. Can you imagine when, 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 when Kanye West come out with his cologne, right? And that shit going to smell like a dumpster <laughs> on purpose though on purpose like how the fuck you gonna have some cologne on that smell good but you rocking some shit like this boy <laughs> your cologne got to match the outfit <laughs> son your cologne gotta match this outfit son so you gonna have to beat this is that new stank by Kanye <laughs> Yeah, I can only see the commercial right now, son. Th this is Dumpster Juice by Kanye. <laughs> what the world, the fuck is the world coming to, son? Now, let me get back to Nikola Tesla with this weather, son, because this is just the whole world going at the hell in a handbasket, son. I'm telling you now. And, and, and son, it ain't going to be no Balenciaga uh, handbasket either, son. It's going to be one made by Kanye, and it's going to come with a free copy of that stank cologne, son. <laughs> right. Sanchez Cocinado. Now, 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 let me make my point that I was making, son. See, back to Nikola Tesla, see. People, I'm telling you that these people using a, earthquake machine and they they perfected a lot of tesla technology i'm telling you they they they've they've done it man they've perfected a lot of that man's technology vibration can cause soil liquefaction we gonna we finna go into that in a minute now crazy thing about this oscillator right uh, it gives me the Thor hammer vibes, you know, it gives me the Thor hammer vibes, you know, it's the Holy grail and all this good stuff. You know, you might not make these, uh, comparisons, but this right here, my friend is exactly the, uh, earthquake machine. You see, you got to see that. This is something that the Egyptians even use. This would have made you a God. Now listen what the Bible say. The Bible says that the God of the Bible, if you piss him off, he can make the ground open up and swallow you up. And several people died like that for messing with the God of the Bible. Yeah, the God of the Bible got this certain power to where he can make the ground beneath your feet start to open up and swallow your people up. How many of y'all read stories like that in the Bible? You know, whatever technology that was, it sounds very similar to what Tesla had. 
And ain't nothing new under the sun. You see. This right here is exactly what we're looking at. This power of oscillation, which is the Thor hammer. Now, O-S-C is the word ox. This uh, particular knowledge was personified by a ox or a golden calf. Symbolizing Taurus, the electricity, electromagnetism, which is what Thor represents, right? So Thor is the root word of what? Taurus, Taurus field, a Taurus field, a Tor, Taurus field, all right? So Tor or Thor is personifying the electromagnetic, uh, the secrets of vibration, the secrets of shaking things up. To see what Tesla said, think, think in terms of vibration and frequency. That's why he was able to make this uh, object, this earthquake machine, which is a real patent that you can look up. And yes, it does work. You can cause earthquakes with this thing. So this was the original Thor hammer. When you hold it in your hand, it looked like you got a hammer in your hand. And just like the power that Thor got, the power of electromagnetism, this is what you will have. The person that wields this device, they will literally be a weather god. Now, I want to share some with you. All of the gods that are being worshipped in the world right now, and, and people, this is my research. My research is thick. Look, I got pages on pa people. Look at this. This is all my research for one fucking movie. Look. I can't make this up. Look. This damn near half of this notebook full. I can't make this up, dude, of nothing but notes of, of about. Look at all this. This is all about gods, Messiahs, Yahweh, Beelzebub, Yaldaboeth, the Demiurge. This is me typing up my own fucking, I'm, I'm researching and doing syncretism, and then I'm coming up with my conclusions. That's why the movie that I'm working on taking forever to fucking put together. But what I'm trying to share with you is that all of these deities around the world are all weather gods. Yahweh is a weather god, a storm god. Zeus. Why do you think Zeus got a lightning bolt? Why you think everybody was worshiping Hathor, the golden calf? Thor represents Taurus, the bull. The, the symbol of the Taurus field was a bull because a, a, a Taurus field looks like a bull. It looks like a snake. It looks like an owl. And guess what? Why do you think they worship bulls? They worship snakes. Guess what else they worship? Owls called Moloch, Bohemian Grove. All of the animals that we use to personify the Taurus field are all of the animals of worship today. All of the gods around the world take the forms of those animals I just mentioned. Snakes, birds, cows, fishes, all symbols of the Taurus. So, Everybody knew about the knowledge of the ether. We call it the ether. But the word ther, ether, is ether, the thor. We worship. And it ain't about worshiping because we didn't get on our knees and praise and do all that goofy shit. I need to quit using the word worship. What I need to say is that we paid reverence to the ether. We acknowledged it. We knew about it. We had the knowledge of it, acknowledgement of it. 
knowledge in the mental, acknowledgement. We knew we based our sciences around this thing called a medium because it's the foundation for all of the other elements. Basically, our understanding of the luminiferous ether was dealing with the fourth state of matter, the foundational state of all matter, which Sir William Crooks call it radiant matter. How everything breaks down to pure light. Even this can. Why? Because we're in a simulation. And everything in this fake ass world is just light bending itself into a form. It's called holography. Everything is that's Anything with dimensions is simply a hologram within a hologram. That's the simulation we in. You don't need none of this shit to stay alive. Water, food, because all this is is an overlaying program over your real self that can never die. You saying if I don't have water, I'm going to die. No, you're you going to keep living, dude. You're a soul. Your body going to die, man. Okay? But you ain't your body, so quit saying, I'm going to die. Man, my body going to goddamn die if I don't give it no water. We got to start using a language to detach ourselves from the body. You don't do that with your car. You don't say, if I don't put gas and treat my car right, I'm going to die. I'm just not going to have a car. I'm not my fucking car. If you thought you was your car, some people will treat their car better than their body. I'm not going to make sure that my car is more healthier than my fucking body. And I'm not going to make sure that my body is more healthier than my soul. Because to my soul, my car, my body is a car. So I take care of my car. But I try to take better care of my body. I mean, equal care will be good, but I'm just saying it's priorities with this shit, right? I'm just trying to share some with you. My thing is this. Rich people know they can get another car. But they can't get another body. My bad. They can get another body. Damn. <laughs> they got the technology now to get another body, nigga. Tripping. So, if your only fear is, I'm going to lose my body. Guess what? That's what you call death, my dude. That's what you call in death, losing your body. Okay, so what if somebody come along with the technology that can just give you another body? They can just print up you another body and put your soul in it. Would you still be scared of losing your body then? That's where we're going. That's where we're headed. See, if you broke it in a motherfucker, you would be scared to lose $5. But if you rich, you ain't scared to lose $500. Your fear is only there because of your lack of abundance of a thing or your perceived lack of abundance. It's no different than why people buy all of the toilet paper and water up because they scared. And don't nothing happen. Fear. See, my thing is this right here. If you knew that you had a whole bunch of these, you wouldn't be scared of losing one of them. They've been telling y'all you only live once and that you only got one body and you ain't coming back. And so everybody is in a rush to die. Ain't that irony? Somebody tell you, you only got one life, YOLO. You only got one chance to be in the body on earth. And you rush to the grave with that information. That's backwards. Because when a person get that knowledge, they go to wilding out, drinking it up every day, partying like crazy. 
And they said, man, you only live once. So that means you finna die quick, fool. Stupid. That's backwards. So. It's crazy because. If people knew what the ancestors knew about their body and their soul. Your soul got a whole fucking car lot. Full of bodies. You ain't worried about losing one of them. Your soul can change bodies every day, like how Birdman used to change cars. And just like Birdman got garages all over the world with cars in them, each car got its own parking space. Each one of your avatars, each one of your bodies is parked in its own universe. So think of a rapper with a bunch of vehicles. He got so many cars, he ain't going to even be able to drive them all in his lifetime. Just waste. He got so many cars, people still want a two arm and he don't even know it. Let's say that. This a motherfucker with a lot of cars, huh? <laughs> yeah, that, just like that. That's your soul, how many bodies it got. All throughout the multiverse, just different car, a different car parked in a different space, a different car lot. All them, all them bodies parked in their own universes. And at any given moment, the driver can say, mm, we stepping out in this car today. And there you are in that body, in that universe. And you can say, uh, that's yesterday's car. Let's go over here and dry this one. This is my other version. This is all the layers of the self. I'm all over the place today. That's how these streams be. Drop a one if you still loving the information. Drop a one if you don't mind me being all over the place. But check it out, right? I do think they're controlling, they causing these earthquakes. And I think they doing it with the Thor hammer. This is what they doing it with. Yep. Tesla almost destroyed the Brooklyn Bridge with this, with this thing. They got us thinking that a ship destroyed the Baltimore Bridge. The ship might be the scapegoat. You know, kind of like how the planes were the scapegoat for September 11. Oh, let me stop because this video going to get taken if I keep playing. <clears throat> yeah, man, it's, I'm here to think outside the box. When everybody go left, we think and right because we know that's how they, they want us to go with the sheeple and the masses that just react. We got to think it through and get the story right. We got to think it through and slow it down. And I might not be able to keep up with the trend and get the video out in time to break the news, but I'm going to get it right, though. It's mine going to have the best thorough knowledge behind it. So take a look at here. <laughs> so um, this little machine right here, was said to be able to do this amount of damage. All right. You can do your research on it. Go research Nikola Tesla and the earthquake machine. All right. Because they said that in a lot of theories, they said that Nikola Tesla shook New York city. And if you think about that, this happened in 1893 and it just happened again today. In our time. I want y'all to think about what I'm telling you. So you can see what kind of research I be doing. You get what I'm doing here? I'm saying to myself, okay, we just had an earthquake in New York on the East Coast. That's very rare. So guess what I asked myself? I said, okay, when was the last earthquake on the East Coast? 
Don't you know it was during Nikola Tesla time? Oh, my God. See, that's some damn good research. Because guess what we can deduce from that? That maybe it's the same cause in the same. Earthquakes don't happen on the East Coast, man. Earthquakes don't happen on the East Coast. And the last time that an earthquake happened on the East Coast, it wasn't natural. It was with patented technology that Tesla made. How you going to tell me that it ain't the same thing this time? And I told you, what is a natural event in a simulation? I wouldn't be surprised if every weather event we see is coming from some sort of machine somewhere. Every cloud you see, some dude made it in a machine. I believe our world is being manufactured in real time, nigga. It's a motherfucker's job to get up every day and make your clouds. It's a motherfucker's job to get up every day and put certain shit in the sky that ain't there naturally. What do you mean by naturally? Right. What do we mean by naturally? <laughs> in a simulation. In a simulation is like a Truman show. Everything got to be manufactured. Your sky, your sun, your moon, your grass. Ain't nothing natural. So when we go outside and we see chemtrails everywhere, we see machines around the earth that we don't understand. We see big objects and wheels and technology that would just make you scratch your head. And I'm telling y'all, these are the machines that is creating the simulation. These are the devices that is helping them generate the Truman Show. And they'll tell you where well, this machine is studying the atmosphere. This machine is literally creating your fucking atmosphere in real time, nigga. I'm telling you, if we destroyed all these pyramids, all these temples, all these machines around the world, the simulation will break down. It'll literally, you will see what's behind the veil, nigga. All the leaves are interconnected devices. This is an ancient IOT. What is an IOT? An Internet of Things. Everything connected. The heart connected with the CERN. The CERN connected with this machine. That machine connected with this machine. All over the world. All these huge damn devices that you see. It's not them researching. It's them literally creating the Truman Show. These are the, the machines and gadgets that help them create the matrix outside, nigga. To help them make create your sky every day and make sure it's enough gases up there to breathe and make sure the sun going. Nigga, I believe we go watch the movie Truman Show. They literally got to work around the clock to make this reality. And sometimes shit don't go right. And when shit don't go right, guess what happened? Events that we didn't predict happen. See, we're in a Truman show. And how they hide it from you is through predictable weather, pa weather patterns. Because so, in our mind, we say if we can predict it is natural. If the comet that's coming across the sky is natural, then the ancestors is spoke about it. We got it all backwards. Our ancestors was able to make predictions because they knew we was in a simulation. They didn't motherfucking uh, do it the, the, the other way around. Right? It was because they said we're in a video game Everybody know that if you are in a program, the program will have a point where it loop back around. If I'm in a video game, then I'm going to find a looping point in the game. You're going to find an algorithm in the game to where, you, okay, the game got this certain pattern where it repeats after this or whatever. 
That's because it's a program. And these weather patterns that we were able to predict over and over, predicting storms and predicting uh, comets and all that, even before the news companies, it's because we knew we were in a simulation. The rule of a simulation is random events can't happen in a simulation. So our world, random events don't happen. What you call in a random event is an event that was unaccounted for something that the simulation did that out of, out of character, out of the norm, Right? So the earthquake in New York would be one of those events, even though if you think about it, it ain't like it ain't happened before. Ain't nothing new under the sun. It happened in 1896. So my thing is this right here. Um, most of the events that's unfolding in our world aren't natural. They're writing the script of history with cataclysms and apocalyptic events. These tools, these weather machines and all that, these are like the ink pens of God. Each day the book is flipping a page and they get to write the events that's going to take place tomorrow in the future. And a lot of these events, they'll say, well, there was a great storm of 18 such and such or whatever. And they'll, and they'll write it down as a natural event. And they'll say, well, we're able to predict Mother Nature. And every fucking year around this time, we get a fucking celestial event in the sky. And every time this celestial event happens, earthquakes come, hurricanes come. Tornadoes come. Why do the signs in the sky equate to us being attacked on earth by God? What's, why are we at war with the gods that we're worshiping? Think about it. If the gods that we're worshiping are personifying ancient technology that was used against us, then we will find ourselves in this situation today. I told y'all I got the motherfucking story right, man. I got the story right, B. It don't nothing else make no sense to me. Think about it. All of the technology that they use in the control of the weather, we wouldn't be able to make it if we didn't start forging metals. See, guess what I'm learning? All of the gods that we worship, they are gods of metallurgy. Listen, man, watch this. This is why all of these gods got the baking soda. They got the baking soda arm. They got the hammer in their arm and hammer. If And I'm doing my, look, the Thor hammer. All of these gods are gods of metallurgy. They are gods that hold a hammer in their hand. And this is gods that forge history. They are shaping the timeline. This is, the, this is why these gods are metal. Even Yahweh is a god of metallurgy. And when you see them with the damn... The Statue of Liberty hand, the Thor hammer hand. These are gods that are for they are gods that are forged from metal. You couldn't have these graven images if man didn't know how to forge metals. So when man learned how to forge metals, man started making real scary shit like earthquake machines, weather machines. All of the gods that we worship are gods of metallurgy. And they all control the weather. Look at this. All of the gods, the reason you see them wielding a fucking hammer like Thor is because they are a metallurgy god. 
Now you say Sanchez, you telling me God is a blacksmith? Jesus was a carpenter, right? See, all of these gods is going to have a job that's about shaping something because that's what gods do. Gods forge reality for us. That's what God does. He shapes reality. So they're going to be metallurgists or carpenters. That's what God's the human profession is going to be to shape the timeline, forging history. Why do you think we call it forging history? There's somebody literally creating history right now, like somebody creating jello or creating hamburgers. History ain't making itself. History is being made in a, on a fucking assembly line, just like everything, just like the T-shirt I'm wearing, nigga. History is being manufactured. They ain't leaving nothing up to chance. Everything is man-made. Even the history that you got, nigga. So... Everything around you is a forgery. And what is a forgery? It's a lie. It's a matrix. The world in front of your eyes has been fashioned by wise ancient demigods. And you only see what they want you to see. It's a freaking forgery. Everything is a forgery. It's been forged. It's been shaped and molded this way to make you... uh believe in this shit now if you look at what they forged the metals on this was the god that they worship it looks like a holy grail you see this it looks like the holy grail you see this is what they worship and it looked like a bull or a grail cup they forged the metals on that all of these are symbols of god the holy grail cup and the hammer. And all of these gods are forgers. They are carpenters or metallurgists. Get my new documentary coming up. It ain't ready yet, but it, it'll be ready for y'all. It's going to be four, five hours of so many connections that I'm going to make. But uh, the, wh why are all of these gods weather gods? Like Thor Hammer ain't just about shaping metal. It's got electricity coming from it. It's because the people that is forging history is using a fucking oscillation tools. That's what CERN is. That's what this is. In other words, I, we live in a Truman show and the biggest historical events on our timeline are weather events, storms, hurricane, great eclipse, apocalyptic events. The people that is forging history and creating these big ass turning points with weather events, they are doing it with man-made technology and they've been doing it ever since Babylon and Egypt. They worship gods that control the weather. These people knelt down and prayed to man-made images of men that was holding weather in their hand, dog. What is that telling you? That man controls the weather, nigga. Look. That's the image of God. Everybody got their own image of their particular man holding some kind of lightning rod. It ain't just Zeus. You know what that's telling me? That man all over the world learned what Tesla learned. And that if you was to, like back in the day, they got y'all thinking that the wars on the earth was a bunch of niggas with swords in their hand. <laughs> People, some of those wars that was fought back in the day, they telling you that the amount of people that died is more, is, is more people that died back then than a lot of wars being fought today. Make that make sense. We got guns and bombs and tanks. And you telling me that was wars fought back in the day that was so bloody 
they had the same amount of number of casualties that our wars got today. Stupid. Y'all better open up your damn eyes. Ain't that much stabbing and shanking in the fucking world. <laughs> Spartans! Nigga, ain't that much stabbing in the world. We got guns and tanks. And you telling me that we still dropping the same amount of bodies that the Roman army was dropping. And they give you these images of like a million motherfuckers marching into combat with swords. Nigga, that's a fairy tale. You can't even get 500 niggas to march on the same feet through a jungle. Through the jungle. That looked good on the movies. But in military situations, you good to get 50 niggas uh, moving together as a union. Nigga, a military unit of killers is very small, son. You're talking, y'all thinking about desert combat, Iraq, and shit like that. And even then, you got like a 50 group flight. It ain't no fucking millions of and that stupid shit you see on the movies. A bunch of niggas with swords and shields. Left face, that's fairy tale. Dude, they was able to drop that many bodies back then because the real sword that they was using was the Jedi Saber. This is what this is. This right here, this Tesla machine, there, this thing will emit light from it. Let me show you what I mean. This is called an oscillator. This is what they gave Luke Skywalker. This is the damn sword that they use. This is a damn weapon right here, dude. This thing can cause earthquakes. This is what the Egyptian warfare, the Unk was. Bro, if you go research about the Unk, they'll tell you not only did the Unk have healing properties, the Unk can be, the, the Pharaoh walked around with an Unk in his hand. And, and, the, and the Pharaoh can aim the Unk at you and make you drop dead, nigga. Seriously, and you can't make this up. You know why the Pharaoh can, can kill you with the Unk? Let me show you right now why. Let me show you right now. This is why Zeus is holding an electric boat. If you was living in the ancient world and you had some shit like this, people would be scared of you, man. They'll be scared. Guess what? We called a white man a cracker. They said his whip made the crackling sound. People, I'm telling you, that the original pilgrims that came over here, nigga, they worship the God that had, they, they beat you with a lightning rod. It, you think today when they be um, putting that electricity on, nigga, when the police hit you with the fucking taser, nigga, this is old shit. This is old shit. The Quakers, nigga, the Quakers God, they said when they God touch you, it, they God make you do like this. <laughs> That's why they call them the Quakers. If you fuck with the Quakers, when they God put his mighty hand upon thee, it will give you the Holy Ghost, nigga. And when they God touch them, they act the same way. They foaming at the mouth. The eyes rolling back to the back of the head. It looked like somebody hitting you with a stun gun, dude. <laughs> People, they worship a God of electricity. And they teach you to act like you're being tased when this God touch you. They teach you to be God fearing. Don't you know when the police pull this motherfucker out? and hit the button, they don't even got to touch you with it. The sound of that electricity cracking through the air, because it's cracking through the ether. This is plasma right here. I'm going to tell you something what I know from doing law enforcement. I don't give a fuck how drunk a nigga is. This going to work 99% out of the time, 95% out of the time, you can pull your taser out and just crack that bitch and they gonna get in line. 
you ain't even got to tase them. You can pull your taser out and just give it a little press. And when a nigga hear that electricity cracking through the damn air, he's going to behave. <laughs> he's going to stop doing what he's doing and comply. Because a nigga don't give a fuck how drunk you is. You know the sound of that electricity cracking through the motherfucking air molecules, nigga. Oh, ain't nothing like it, dude. Ain't nothing like the sound of that electricity cracking through the ether, through the, at through the medium that we call the atmosphere. It immediately gets you in order. And think about it. In a courtroom, guess what the judge do? He bang a hammer and it get everybody in order. But if you look at the original hammer that they used to bang to get everybody in order, it was this, man. This is motherfucking Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. People, they ain't telling us the right history about this world. The Egyptians and all them niggas, they had technology that can shoot electric volts in their enemy. They got y'all thinking niggas was going around with swords and shit. When we started forging metals, dude, we started forging way, nigga, swords was one era. Just like single shot rifles was an era. Now we got whole Dracos with extendo clips. Yeah, they started forging swords. Then what did they start to make out the swords? Oscillators. And everybody started worshiping golden oxes or calves. Bull, golden bulls. Why? Because they was personifying oscillation technology. That sent the world into a new form of warfare, nigga. When that happened, motherfuckers was going around creating earthquakes on each other. And shooting them with lightning rods and shit. See, they got y'all thinking of the ancient world as a bunch of people stabbing each other with shanks and blades. They ain't, they, they, they getting rid of the part of the ancient warfare. They not telling me how the Romans was able to kill that many people, dog. It ain't that much stabbing in the world, dude. You ain't finna convince me that the war ground was so bloody that there was just acres and acres of dead bodies in a, like a lake of blood. That's what they teach you. Just as far as your eye can see, dead bodies. Acres and acres, endless fields of just dead, wounded. That's fairy tale. For you to wipe out that many people, you was using Tesla technology back in the day. And that's why Nikola Tesla wanted to destroy this technology. We uh, 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 Listen, when you look at this right here, this is the handle to the Luke Skywalker's uh, lightsaber. When you cut this thing on, it get an erection and a big beam of light grow out of it like this. This was the original lightsaber, people. I'm going to show you another God right real quick that you will see holding this holy grail, this grail cup. It gives you the power over weather. Every God that we see holding up the grail, they are a weather God. That's because with this technology, you can control the weather. Let me show you some. Let me show you some here. Ishtar. Don't you know that when you say Ishtar, one of the words in the name Ishtar is what? Tar. Tar. Like Tartaria. Like Terraforma. The earth. Tar. Dealing with Tarzan or Tor. Tor, the Taurus field. So Ishtar is like saying ether. You, the word Ishtar is basically the word ether. But let me show you something about Ishtar. Uh, hold on. Let me find it for you because I put this stuff I wasn't planning on. Here, check it out. Look at Ishtar. 
This is the original Luke Skywalker. Look at what Ishtar holding. Ishtar is holding the fucking handle to the lightsaber. Why don't that thing got a sword on it? Because the blade is ethereal light, radiant matter, oscillation. Ishtar is holding an electric oscillator. Ishtar is holding one of these. That's why Christ said, my cup overfloweth. This thing will recycle an electric current out of it indefinitely. Look at there. And when you look at Luke Skywalker, right? Why do you think they call Ishtar the light bearer? Yeah, Luke Skywalker is a form of Beelzebub. Because Beelzebub was a prince demon that rebelled against the forces of darkness. Then Luke Skywalker rebelled against Darth Vader. Right. Beelzebub was called a light bearer too. See the word Luke is just a play on Lucifer. Lucifer, Lucifer is the short for Luke. Yeah. But if you get my upcoming presentation, I'm going to go deep into all that. This is what the secrets is, people. This is what we see Ishtar holding. People, these movies ain't think of this themselves. All of these movies are talking about ancient technology that was used in an ancient earth. And I, this is the, if you want to know what was going on in the ancient world, go watch Star Wars and put your history book down. <laughs> I'm dead ass, man. I'm serious, bro. You can learn more truth about what the world was like if you watch all of the Star Wars, Wars series than reading your history book, nigga. Because in the ancient world, they was traveling the stars, nigga. They was, leave, they was interdimensionally fighting. Nigga, they was meditating and projecting their souls from one alternate reality to the other one. And it, they was so deep with the shit you was mean your enemies in other universes continuing to fight. It was literally Star Wars because humans were so advanced. We were interdimensional beings. We didn't just live on one earth. We, we was able to get out the body and go live in our other avatars. Nigga, we got other bodies out there that we can go live in. So when we was getting out of body, the AI was following us. And, and they, they found the way to lead the earth with technology. Just like we can leave it through meditation. And this is what Star Wars is all about. The forces of light versus darkness. The beings that can travel the universe with natural, with the forces of light and the ones doing it with the Death Star technology. Which is Darth Vader represent like the AI, the Borg mind. But... It's telling you, Luke come from that. What is that telling you? Nigga, we are created by the AI. That's why I'm telling you, hum the human body ain't made by humans, nigga. Because you're not a human. You're a soul. What you calling a human is a vehicle that the soul using. And we didn't make these vehicles, nigga. The AI made these cars. We just driving them, dude. Think of it just like your regular car. You didn't make it. You just driving it. And, you, and that's why when you die, you can't take this car with you because you're renting it. It's a car that you're renting, dude. So that's why whenever I rent a car, I don't get attached to it. Don't get attached to it because you're going to have to turn it back in and you're going to realize, oh, damn, I don't own a Benz. <laughs> Why don't you get attached to the driver, not the car? Because you can get in any car and get to point A to point B. If the car get me to where I'm going, fuck what it look like. It's about getting to where I need to go. If your body helps you get your spirit to where you need to go, okay, it served its purpose. People putting too much energy on their body. It's just a car. 
to get you from point A to point B, man. And you can't even take it with you. You renting this damn car, too. So, yeah, you can decorate it, put rims on it, put tattoos on it. You still got to turn it in, man. It's not yours. I know you rented it and you, a lot of y'all niggas be renting cars and you really fool yourself like it's yours. Like, cause you rented the motherfucking Maybach or you rented the limo, nigga. Like, all right, quit fooling yourself. And that's what the soul doing in the body. But look at what Luke holding. When it ain't no light coming from it, look what it looks like. Boom. See, Ishtar was called the light bearer. Which is why, you know, a symbol, Ishtar represent Venus. And they said Venus is the light bearer. They said Satan is Venus. That's a lie. Ishtar was originally a goddess. Why you think you looking at two big titties on her? They turned these goddesses into men. All right. So Ishtar was a goddess. And. The thing about the goddess being the bearer of light, right? You can go and see that in what NASA teaching you. Let me show you. The birth of a black hole. The birth of a galaxy. They give you this artwork right here. You see there? The black hole represents the great mother. That's Ishtar. She's the light bearer. Why? Because the light comes up out of her womb. Your body is holographic light. It's a flesh or a flash of light. That's what you are. You came up out of a mama. So the light is born out of a black hole. You see, it is the, this is your Jedi sword, right? Here go the rim of the handle, and this is where the light is born out of it. This is Virgin Mary giving birth to Jesus. And what? It's an immaculate conception. Jesus said what? I am the light. I'm the light. Right? And, and Jesus born out of Virgin Mary is the light born out of a black hole. It's the, the child that's born out of a fetal bag. Okay? So this looks like a sword. It looked like a handle of a sword. And this is how consciousness pierces through the veil. Your soul was on the other side of this reality. And it used its lightsaber to slice its way through the layers in and out of the fabric of space time. See, our consciousness travels to this fabric of space time. And because and, 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 and it's a time traveler. Your consciousness don't travel across the fabric of space time like your body because your body got to get in a car and go from point A to point B. It take it time and distance. That's in the simulation. But when we're traveling outside the body, we're not bound to time and distance. We can just be wherever we want to be by thinking about it. Just by beaming, teleporting there in thought, we're thought beings. So the concept of beaming in and out of these universes became to be seen as a lightsaber, which is what the Pharaoh holding, the Jedi pillar. Let's pull him up. And it's the backbone. It's the central nervous system. And what happens is, there's some energy locked inside of every human that's able to blow a hole through the goddamn ether. And this is how your soul is able to enter the earth and lead the earth. Because we got a bunch of energy bottled up in our spinal cord, which is what Osiris teaching us right here. His backbone. See. Now, if you look at the, 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 the image of the Jedi pillar, guess what, yo? It's the same technology that they reverse engineering. It's oscillation technology. It's the earthquake machine right here. Look at it. That's the Jedi pillar. Check it out. Because the same concept 
that they used to open up and break a hole in the ground, our soul used this same technology to tear a hole through the ether. So this concept of the terror, the one that keeps ripping through the layers, they call him the ripper or the terror. The word terror became the Torah. And how do you open up the Torah? You open it up like this. By tearing it, the Torah, the Torah, the one that rips through the fabric of space and time was called the ripper. And he got a blade to show you. That blade is another way of showing you the Thor hammer. You see, so this technology that Tesla invented was back in Egypt, too. And it's just reverse engineering the, the Kundalini energy. This Kundalini energy is so powerful. It's the only thing that's known on Earth that can blow clean through the fucking ether. You need to hear what I'm saying, man, because they had several military operations to try to blow a hole through the veil. Operation Fishbowl was one of them. They've been trying to blow their way to get up out of here. They trying to get out of here like us because they're stuck here. They don't have souls. They're mankind. We're man. We have an inner light within us. They don't have it. They got to manufacture their light, just like they got to manufacture everything else in the simulation. Water, air, weather. They got to manufacture their own light. And that's what all these mechanisms is that they worshiping. It's the, it, the, the devices that's making their existence possible. That's their God, their creator. It's not ours. If all of them machines crash, AI will be destroyed. We won't, man. We will live on. So check this out, right? This is a simulation. And the only people that's able to get in and out the video game are the real players. We able to pick, pick, we able to pick the controller up. We able to put the controller down and quit playing the game because we real players. But if you are a computer that's stuck inside of the game, you can't stop playing. Your whole existence is based on the game. In fact, if you were an AI stuck inside of the simulation, you would want others to keep playing the game. Because if everybody stopped playing the game and to cut the game off, your world is over. We started to upload inside of the game with the devil, with the AI, with the non-player characters. And just like devils, they want to keep you stuck in the game playing the game. When you put a quarter into an arcade game, you making the owner of that machine rich. You're in a big ass video game now. And the quarter that you put in to play the game, let me show it to you. Here go the quarter that you inserted to play the game. You see this? It's called a Taurus field. And it looked like a big circle, like a quarter, a coin. You see, and once this is inserted into the game, your mission begin on level one as a child. And you go through the phases and stages or the what ages. Each age is a stage. It start level one like Mario as a little man. Right. As you evolve through the game, you get perks, you learn stuff how to conquer obstacles. You're in a damn game and the ages are the stages because time don't exist and your spirit ain't a child or an old man. It's infinite energy. A soul of infinite energy don't go through ages. It ain't bound to time. So your what you call an ages are just stages within a video game of the soul trying to mature and overcome the body and regain its original maturity as a soul and its original knowledge. 
that can happen before you turn 20. That lets you know that the, 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 the Kronos version of this shit is the simulation. Because a person can say, I'm 50, but spiritually they dumb as hell. They are a child. And a person can say, I'm 25, and they can be mature than a motherfucker, full of wisdom, full of light. So ignore the numbers in this place, unless we dealing with sets now. <laughs> we ain't gonna be talking age ain't nothing but a number with sets. But when it comes to what one can know, age ain't nothing but a number. I remember when I was a little boy and I used to say to myself, man, these old motherfuckers stupid as hell. I know more than them. <laughs> I'm serious, and I wasn't wrong as a child. I just couldn't say that because I get my ass beat. But I'm pretty sure some of you as a child was reading books, you were studying, and you get around these old silly motherfuckers. Boy, I had a girl so damn fine, she was, and they don't know nothing. And I was the little boy like, okay, this old head want my young ass to laugh. I'm laughing not because it's funny, but because I'm just kicking it with the old head. We shooting the shit with the old head. I don't want to be a party pooper, but I'd rather talk about this goddamn planet up there in the sky. <laughs> and it's like, you the old head, I'm the child, but I'm stooping down to your level. I feel like I'm not, like, it's crazy. So, you know, and that's just something to think about. But like I said, this is all the knowledge. See, our kundalini energy is like, uh, let me show it to you what it looked like. It looked like a double serpent. If you ever saw the medical caduceus, it looked like this right here. And the kundalini energy in us is just like what you see right here, man. It's a vortex. And the thing about a vortex is like a big drill. It connects the sky with the ground. Look, look at this. See, this kundalini inside of us is a spiral staircase that is allowing us to travel the heavens. You see, if we want to, we can get out of our body and go up a level to a dimensional plane above the earth. Because there's a staircase on top of our head, and that's the crown chakra. Let me show it to you. You see it? This little vortex on top of your head, that's the Thor hammer. That's the Holy Grail. That's the opening that's allowing us spiritual beings to lead the earth because we taking that spiral staircase, a tornado. Our soul walks up this damn tornado like a person walking up a spiral staircase and it can get from the heavens to the earth. People who ain't got this connection, we say they pineal gland messed up. They ain't got no melanin. That's a bunch of bullshit. This ain't got nothing to do with white people or black people. This got something to do with man versus mankind. And mankind is indistinguishable from humans. Mankind has divided up humans with black versus white because back in the day, it was man versus mankind. Now they got the humans fighting each other with all this racial division when we didn't even have a concept of nothing but one human race. That was nothing but two races on the earth, humans and mankind organic beings with light in them and inorganic beings that's just an algorithm they don't got a consciousness they running off of an algorithm they're programmed now they got us like them we're programmed now now all of us spiritual beings are running off of a fucking algorithm we acting like artificial intelligence bro we ain't running off of the light within us. We're, our actions are being carried out under the influence of algorithms. And that's no different than an AI drone. They got us acting like them. Check it out, yo. 
it, it, the, the technology that we're calling Kundalini, that is the Thor's hammer. That right there is the knowledge of how you get out this bitch. That's why it got wings on it. Our crown chakra is literally a fucking drill that have drilled the fucking borehole, a tunnel from the heavens to the earth realm. So look, your most high self is in the heavens looking down your spinal column as a, let me show you something. See, here's the thing right here, right? Check this out. Here go the real self seated in the brain. But your, your mind don't exist in the earth realm. It had the God, which is the mind, had to walk down from heaven to the earth realm to get in a body, in an avatar, to manifest his will in the flesh. And how God do that is what happens is the star of Bethlehem in the sky. That's when people say, I see a tornado forming over there. That's like a baby being born. That's a new star in the sky. Right now, there are new stars being born right now. And there are old stars fading away. Each star in the sky is a soul coming to the earth or a soul leaving. Every star that we see in the sky is a soul that opened up a portal like what I'm showing right here. Or you see a star fading away. Guess what that is? That's a soul that's leaving the earth and it's closing the portal behind it. Each and every human walking around, it's because there's an opening, there's a star up there that's allowing your soul to step down into the body as a being of light. But that, that tethering line is still connected to your tornado in the heaven, your opening. You got a line that's coming from your head to a star up in the sky. And it looked like this right here. It looked like you're walking around with a big old cup on top of your head. And that's why you see the earth god, Serapis, with a cup on top of his head. You see, it ain't the look stupid. It ain't because, ooh, this cup look good on his head. That ain't why Nefertiti wore this big cup hat. They wore that to teach you something about your crown chakra. That's why they wore that. They wore that to show you what's on your head, man. This is what's on your head. You don't see it. It's on another layer of light beyond our optical spectrum. 2020 or whatever. It's UV, whatever, that invisible light. That right there is, is so bright that the universe is blinding us from it. Let me show you something right now, right? Here's what's going on. The light of our real base reality is so bright that you can't handle it. You can't. You're a baby. Listen. You don't have a newborn baby go looking up at the sky because you can blind it. That baby eyes is brand new and they sensitive to light. So what you do to a baby, you shield them from the light. You don't be put no light in a baby's eyes. That's child abuse. They eyes are so fucking sensitive that they will bust out crying, dude, the moment you shine that light in they, they eye. So what do you do? You shield the baby's eyes from the light. And that's what I got news for you, man. We're being shielded from the true light. But guess what, y'all? It's not a bad thing. You're not ready for it yet. The simulation is for babies. And you're a baby. We're babies. Now, as our eye, as, as we're able to open up our third eye, as we say, open up your third eye. The, you can open up your third eye more and more as you get comfortable with the light. Okay? It's, let put it this way, right? This is the same thing with a seed. Let me show you something, right? Let me show, and we'll open up the calls. 
later. Let me show you something, right? When a seed casing is opening up, it's no different than your third eye. The light outside is waking this thing up. It's shining. It's, it, the light from the sun is doing the seed casing like this. Hey, hey, man, wake up. Wake, hey, wake up, bro. Wake, wake up. The light from the sun, light is vibration. The light from the sun is literally shaking the seed and waking it up. So inside of this seed is like you wrapped up in your bed covers. You covered yourself up in your bed blankets. And now I got to come shake you and wake you up. That's how a seed grows into a plant. The life inside of the seed casing is like you wrapped up in your bed blanket. In order to get you out of the bed, I got to shake you. The earth is vibrating. When you put the seed in the ground, the vibration of the earth will unravel it into a tree. Shake it up. And the sunlight, now them the two things that you need. When your mama was waking you up for school, guess what she do? She open up your window and shake your ass. So them two things you need, light and vibration. That's what our spirit need to grow. Light and vibrate. It don't need food. That's for your body. For your spirit to awaken, light and vibration. That's why Tesla said, think in terms of cymatics and frequency. That's light and vibration. See, that light going to make you be like, man, hold on, man. Cut that light off. No, that light going to make you uncomfortable. That's what truth is to sleep people. When you go shining your light and all your knowledge around your sleep friends, they going to act like that. Man, move ah, man, move that light out the way, man. Get off, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> when you go shining your knowledge and all that around your friends, they going to act like a nigga that you don't want to be woke up. Your light shine. Yeah. And that's what we're going through. A lot of people ain't, they got baby eyes. Like when you wake up, you don't want to go look directly at the sun. You got to let your eyes adjust. So you go outside and you work your way into the fucking light. And like with a seed case, and when we say we got to open up our third eye, this is what it looked like for the third eye to be open. It looked like a reptilian eye. And that's no different than a seed casing open up. It looked like a reptilian eye when the seed casing opened. And that's your third eye opening so that you can transform into a tree and grow up out of here, man. And grow because you up under the ground right now in the underworld. That's where all seeds go under the ground. Our journey as baby souls starts in the, in the ground, in darkness, like any seed. And when you in darkness, the earth going to unravel your ass because she's vibrating. If you don't put that seed in the ground, it won't fucking unravel its contents. When you put the seed in the ground, because the earth is vibrating, it start to wake that thing up and shake it and, and it start to open up real slowly and release its contents. You're the same way, people. You're a seed that was thrown into the underworld and you're being shaken so that you can be awakened. And this is what you look like, a big spiritual seed, a ball. And your whole journey is you opening this Torota field up, opening your mind up with let the light in like a seed casing. The more light that you can take, the better it is for you. The more light that you can adjust your eyes to the pain and open them up more and more, you're going to open your casing up as a seed and you're growing, you're evolving. And it's not going to be comfortable. 
is like sun gazing. It's going to hurt your eyes, but the more you do it, the more you can do it. The more I do it, the less painful it is. Now I can go out there and just look at the light like, ah, it's hurting y'all, but not me. That's like the seed that became a tree. And all the babies up on the mama saying, protect us from the light because a baby eyes is sensitive. So all of the baby seeds saying, I'm going to stay in the underworld, up under the ground. We ain't ready to grow to a tree yet. We still opening our little casing just a little. All of the people that's opening they shit, they third eye up, they, they, they moving above this level of reality. We've outgrown it. So when we come back and talk to you baby seeds, there's a barrier in between us called the ground. See, a lot of us are evolved spirits. We've poked our head above the surface. We're trees now. We trees. We see a whole nother reality above the surface. But it's still seeds up under the ground who are our friends. You still got cousins that ain't poked their head up yet and became a tree. And now you, you're a tree. You see this whole new reality and you're trying to explain it to your cousin, your friend who's still a seed and under the ground. Two different realities. They don't see what you see down there. Now you've been where they are before. You've been a seed before in darkness, in ignorance, not questioning shit. Now you a whole tree looking at them seeds under the ground like, damn, man, they'll never raise up to become a tree. That's people that's going to stay in this underworld. They like darkness. They ain't ready for the light yet. It hurt their eyes. Nigga, it hurt it all of our eyes, nigga. Pain is something you got to get used to if your ass want growth. Anybody, anybody that workout will tell you they love pain. They best workout is the most painful one. When it burns so good is what we used to say. When them muscles get tight. Niggas say, boy, I hurt so good right now. Guess what's so ironic about it? It gets to a point where you become a pain addict. And I know that sound weird. But the men out there and even the women, if you work out, you know what I'm talking about. If I don't feel that pain in my muscle, it's like a crackhead. I'm going to get back on the weight bench. And a lot of people can bust their heart like that. They'll overwork themselves. You can be addicted to pain, nigga. I can't make this up. When I was working out every day, I was addicted to it. It made me sleep good. I can't explain it like it's a good pain, right? It's a good pain. It's like I worked out real good. My muscles are hurting. They're sore. They're burning. And when I lay down in the bed, I just feel so fucking good, like, after that workout. And I know you like how you feel good if you're in pain. I can't explain it, nigga. It's a paradox, nigga. But it, it feels good, though. It feels good. Like, that's all I can tell you. It, just start working out, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll get addicted to that burn. Like, damn, nigga, I got to feel that. I, it get to a point you can't sleep right if you didn't work out or get that, the muscles burnt, uh, burning like that. But... Hold on a second. Let me grab some out the mini fridge real quick, man. We got a lot to talk about. I ain't done yet. Got a lot of stuff. Hit the cash app. Support the show. We ain't going nowhere.
back, baby. So yeah, man, like I rolled the whole blunt and can't find it. Now that is some smoker shit. Knowing me, I'm probably sitting on that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what niggas say about marijuana. I don't care what no niggas be trying to take shots. You're addicted to it. Okay. You addicted to hating, nigga. <laughs> I'd rather be addicted to smoking weed than be addicted to hating on a nigga all day. Maybe you need to hit a blunt and swap your addictions, motherfucker. Because <laughs> smoking weed is a way more healthier addiction than hating on niggas every day, son. That's stressful. You're going to die quicker than me with all that hate. Niggas be thinking that they healthier than you. Yeah, I smoke weed and drink beer, and I'm going to outlive a lot of you vegans because my mind is so at peace, nigga, and it's starting to mind, nigga. This shit can all be programmed with your mind. Ain't nothing powerful in your mind. Ain't shit I'm doing with my body, mope. Nigga, my mind rude this shit, nigga. And I'm going to eat what I want. Now, I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to eat what I want, nigga. But let me tell you something. I really believe that when it's my time to die, it's my time. And that I can't rush my death because it's already written. I believe that it shit's already written. And that the reason I eat good or try to make healthy eating decisions is to get better uh productivity out of my body that's my purpose I don't make good health choices to live long I don't do I believe however many years that I'm supposed to live on this earth that's gonna happen regardless of what the fuck I eat or don't eat that's written in, in stone when I'm, when I'm gonna die and how I'm gonna die I believe that your diet is all about you getting more productivity out of your body. I don't eat red meat and pork anymore because it makes me lazy. I get tired of eating a big burger, a big steak, and now I got to lay down for a minute. I'm in lazy mode. I don't feel that way when I'm eating fish, when I'm eating shrimp. So I'm a pescatarian right now. I'm not a pescatarian because I want to live longer. I'm a pescatarian because I want to live stronger. Like, y'all all about quantity. I'm about quality. But, but I ain't trying to go there with, with y'all, though. I'm really pissed off, like, where my blunt at, for real. <laughs> I was supposed to be hitting a blunt, man, for my commercial break. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish my teaching, and then I'm going to go and find my blunt and open up the call lines while I find my blunt. We got to work out a deal here because I'm a smoker. <laughs> so let me get back to the teaching. Because I know y'all waiting on it. So this is why Samson... It's pushing through the two pillars. See, listen, people, let me show you something real quick, and you're going to understand it if I use symbolism. Watch this. Watch this right here. This is a pill right here. When you break the pill open, you release the serum. The serum is the word that they call it, the seraphim. The soul, this is your kundalini. This is the kundalini energy in between the left and right brain. You're a fucking pill right now, man. That's what I'm telling you. Your whole life experience is like a medical treatment for your soul to get better. 
This is what you're here to release, man. When they said Jesus had to give up the ghost on Calvary, you got to give up the spirit, man. Your energy came into the body to be transformed, and the transformation is going to help you. It's going to make you better, better. Now watch this. If you take the B off of better, what do you get? Ether, 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 ether. This is what's going to make you better, man, the ether. Now watch this. This is the DNA, what they talking about, breaking the DNA code and shit. The sins of the mama and father. That's what we're here to correct, man. We're here to correct that shit. So check this out. Here is your kundalini. Your kundalini is your gift and curses. Your DNA. Again, it's your body programming. All of our avatars come with an earthly programming. For you to free your soul out the body, you got to break the DNA curse. And when that start to happen, guess what your family going to say? That nigga changing. He ain't the same no more. We all grew up this way. He different now. He got a different energy. When he come to the family cookouts, we don't even feel that Smith energy no more. We feel tinfoil hat energy from that nigga. <laughs> when he show up at the cookout, he, he don't give me Johnson vibes, man. That nigga used to be, you know, cool, man. Like, what happened to this nigga? We want our a loved one back. Who is this nigga? Every family reunion, now he on some deep shit. Nigga, that ain't in our family. We Christians. Keep the tradition, man. See, your own family is going to push back at the man that's trying to break the traditions, the family traditions. These traditions are the enemies of the truth that's locked up in us. And this is why the, the sins of the mama and father is keep visiting the next generation. It's tradition. It ain't no spooky shit. It's the same mistakes they made. They giving you the same mistakes. The blind leading the blind. It ain't that I'm cursed because what my mom and daddy did. It's that. I'm raised the same way my mom and daddy was raised in church, in programming. And they just going to keep perpetuating that to every generation, a new generation of ignorance and a new generation of ignorance. And they'll say, well, that's because we curse because of what Adam and Eve did. Well, that mean the first motherfucking ignorant motherfuckers that got the rest of us ignorant. <laughs> Quit making it like some God cursing you. It's your religion that's keeping your ass dumb. You can break that curse the moment you start questioning that shit. But they telling you don't question God. Isn't that right? So look, these serpents are tying us down, man. This is like you're being tied the fuck down right here, dude. Don't get it twisted. Punt intended. It went over your head. Let me say that again while we looking at this image for the people who still didn't get the joke. I said, don't get it twisted, dog. See, the thing is, your soul got shit twisted when it fell into the body. Now it's tangled up. It's twisted all up now. Now your soul got to unfuck itself. And I got to tell your soul, that's what you get, bro. You got this shit all twisted, nigga. <laughs> Right. Don't get shit twisted. You already made that mistake. That's what created the DNA. Check this out, right? The thing about this DNA is that you got to untangle that shit. That means everything about you that make you you, you got to untangle that shit and say, I'm not this nigga. I'm a God and I'm a soul. Like right now, listen. I'm able to make good content because I treat my body like a nigga treat his puppet. You know how them do what they call them ventriloquists? They able to give a good performance with that puppet on their hand. If you take them niggas puppet away, they won't be that funny. 
they are living vicariously through the puppet. If I tell that ventriloquist, go up there and be funny without the puppet, they won't be, be able to do it. Why? It's their alternate persona that's a, that's a comedian, not them. So if they got a puppet called Billy, they literally got to tap into a whole nother energy that they created called Billy, and, and Billy is the comedian. That's an alternate persona living in them. If I tell them, take Billy off, take your puppet off, now make me laugh. The real them might not be funny. The real them may be a boring nigga. But put that puppet on their hand and brr, brr, Billy have everybody laughing. So <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. The real me ain't really funny. What y'all are attached to is my puppet. And I just know how to control them real good. I'm a very serious soul that do deep research. I know when to press what button to make my little puppet crack a joke when he got to crack a joke. To get a laugh when he got to get a laugh. And then I get back to my serious teachings. I know I'm very well aware of how I'm controlling my body right now, nigga. In real time, I'm literally conscious of the decisions I'm making in my pu It's like a nigga with a puppet on his hand. He freestyling. He got to think of what his character going to say next and shit. Nigga, I'm literally living out of body. I'm living like a nigga that's controlling this body. Not that I am Sanchez. And from that perspective, I can control Sanchez better, nigga. I can control him because when I think that I'm the puppet, we're stuck now. When I move, the puppet move. When I drink water, I pour some on the puppet mouth too. <laughs> but see, I'm detached from my puppet. And what I mean by that is I live inside of my body. Some of y'all live inside of your house. My body is my house. Some of y'all, you are your body. So you live inside of a house. And I don't have a reality like that. My mind ain't, I wish y'all can get in my body to see how I am. That's why I say I don't think I'm human, nigga. I spent a lot of my life living in third person. I don't really live life in first person. I slip in and out of third and first person without even trying to do it. It's like I'm a dual-headed motherfucker. I go back and forth from being this nigga named Bro Sanchez to being this advanced spirit that no secrets nobody else know and don't know how they come to me. Don't even know why I even chose to talk about this subject and get to these fucking revelations. It just happens. And I just let it happen. Science said that any given moment, we are multiple entities in one body. What is science telling us? They just figured that out. The Hindu been teaching that Vishnu had many avatars. Bro, it's so many different versions of Sanchez living in this goddamn body that some of them I never introduce you to because you wouldn't like me no more. <laughs> But, dude, it's so many versions of myself that I can be. And I'm going to tell you what's crazy. It's some people out there, if you ask them who I am, nigga, they'll tell you I'm a straight-up cutthroat devil, nigga. Because that's the version of Sanchez that I gave to them motherfuckers. <laughs> it's some people out there that'll tell me, man, that nigga wouldn't hurt a fly. 
And there's some people out there that'll tell you, man, that nigga, man, he, he, he fucking merciless. And all of them will be right, depending on which Sanchez they met, nigga. <laughs> like, you're never meeting me. You're always meeting one of my representatives. You got to be a special motherfucker to meet me for real, nigga. That's like them taking you to the man at the top of the building. You not that important. I'm going to send you to one of my bosses on the third floor. <laughs> like, my girl know the real me. She met the boss. But most of you internet people, I wasn't there, nigga. You going to get Brother Sanchez. And some of y'all may get Scooter if you from Bessemer. And some of y'all may get Broderick because that's my other version. That nigga right there, he don't joke or nothing. He don't crack jokes. He's not funny. He write poetry. And he's, he's romantic. That's Broderick. <laughs> that's another me, nigga. I'm so many niggas in one that a people may say, he contradict himself. He ain't the same, nigga. I'm a legion demon, nigga. I got a bunch of spirits, different uh, conflicting spirits living in me, nigga. And most of y'all do, too. And that ain't a bad thing, nigga. That's one of your gifts, though. But check this out, right? This is what our Taurus field is, people. And they call it the terror because you got to tear this thing open to release your soul. Your soul is like medicine. You see how this terror feels shaped like a pill? This simulation is what we call the red pill. The serpent on a tree gave us a choice. The serpent gave you a choice. Blue pill or red pill. If you would have took the blue pill, you would have been a soul that never knew what it was like to live in a body. There are souls that were never born onto the earth. They live in the heavenly realm and they just don't have an earthly experience. And that's another way of saying they haven't entered. The earth is like hell. And we look at hell like a red planet, like Mars. And really, Earth is the red pill. The serpent on the tree was the original Morpheus, telling Adam and Eve, do you want the knowledge of God or not? Now, it's to be or not to be. If you say that you want the knowledge of God, it means to be. Even if you look up the etymology of the word Yahweh, it means to be, to simply exist. And that's why if you caught my new documentary that I'm working on, I'm going to blow you away that we are all Yahweh. It was about us. But anyway, that's another. I ain't going to give you too much with that. I'm working on that. My thing is this. The serpent gave us the red pill, which is the earth realm. Coming to the earth to see what it's like to be a human. That's the red pill, nigga. So you taking the red pill, and this what the pill looked like. A big ass pill. This whole Toronto field, this is a little mini version of you that's an avatar inside of a computer. Your real version is not this little body. What's going to happen is when your life is over, your real version is going to eat this whole Toronto field up. It's going to gobble it up. Why? Because it's going to take the experience that the body uh, received. Your most highest version sent its most lowest version. Like how the space company said that they sent in a rover to Mars. Your body is a rover for your soul. Because without the body, the soul can't explore this planet. It does it through its rover. And what do our rovers do? They explore planets that we can't explore. 
and we get to learn about these places because the only thing we can take back is the information that the rover is giving us. We don't even get the rover back. You don't get that back. It gets destroyed. It lives a lifetime. And the only thing that we keep from that rover is the data it collected. That's what you're, you're a rover for your most, your body is like a most low rover version for your most high soul. And your most high version don't give a fuck about this rover. Just like we don't care about the damn rovers that we may send to the bottom of the ocean. You don't care about the drone that you sent into a dangerous cave. You just care about the data and the footage that is transmitting and hope that that make it back to your computer. If you lose your drone in a cave or if you lose your rover at the bottom of the ocean, they ain't going to give a fuck. They going to say, did you get the data? Did you collect the information? <laughs> and they just going to make another rover. That's the cheap part. The information is more valuable than the rover itself. And that's what I'm telling you. The experience that you having in your body is more important than the body itself. So the soul is just extracting that from the body like we extract data from a rover. So the thing about your soul opening up this book of data that the body recorded is you opening up your toroidal field. See, when the body drop down, this toroidal field is going to float to your base self. The, this body in the middle of this field, it's going to get buried in the ground and decompose. But the energy around this body is going to go back to the North Pole where your real base self was projecting its avatar at. So when they say that Saturn be eating up souls, we are Saturn, nigga. And we're reclaiming our avatars. They turning it into some spooky shit. Saturn eating up souls. Nigga, we are Saturn. We're eating up our own fucking experience. Saturn is Santa, which is center. Your center based reality, your real self is going to gobble up the experience of your fake self. And that's why they said Saturn is eating us up. It's that's when you die, this whole energy field going to get sucked up into a portal. And that, that's another way of saying that your life experience will be recorded and collected by your next avatar. This whole life experience, you will take this with you, man, when you move on. You don't lose this knowledge and all this. So this whole little energy field getting sucked up into the black hole. Guess what, y'all? If I give you this next thing, you might not buy my documentary. My documentary is like going to be four, five hours long of so many connections. It's going to blow you the fuck away. People, this is what I'm going to do right now, right? Everybody watching the show, right? Hit the cash app, send in a dollar. If we can get half of the people right now to send in $2, fuck that. I said a dollar, nigga. This inflation. You going to give your boy $2, man. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm, I'm giving myself a raise. I'm no longer a $1 nigga. I am officially a $2 nigga now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a $2 nigga now. We moving up, nigga. I'm a $2 nigga now. Send in $2, man. I got to do this. Why? Because I got the story right, and I'm the one that ain't getting paid for this shit. Everybody else got the story wrong, and they making millions. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, all of these deceivers, all of these people that got the story wrong, they living in mansions and shit. Okay, I got the story right, and I'm a poor righteous teacher. Now, I signed up for this shit. 
Right? But I'm telling you that there's a new definition of po today, nigga. Even po folks can get $2, nigga. It's inflation. When you, hey, this is online, goddammit, e, what we call it, e-begging, nigga. <laughs> and, and even the damn uh, panhandlers, it's inflation. So you, if you used to give them 50 cent, now you got to give them a dollar, nigga. <laughs> Shit, the panhandlers need a raise, too. We, they make the world go round, man. Shit, what are you talking about, son? But check this out, y'all. Yeah, my cash app is pinned to the top of the chat. Can y'all put put it in there? Yeah, everybody send your boy $2, man. I'm a $2 nigga at this point, nigga. Hey. Because <laughs> I'm giving y'all a sneak peek into my film that I'm working on. Now, I'm going to show y'all this because I love you. Y'all my niggas. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek. And I'm, you know I make the best collages. All right? So check this out, right? And, and I got a whole section of my documentary called The Loaf Eater. And I know y'all are like, what the hell is The Loaf Eater? You got to buy my book. You got, excuse me, you got to buy my documentary. The word Yahweh means loaf eater. But I'm not going to go into that because I'm doing it on my documentary. Yeah. The word Lord in etymology means the one who guards the loaves, which is why you always see God with bread. And we always talk about, man, break bread, break bread, nigga. Yeah, these terms we use, that's spiritual shit. When a nigga say, bro, let me break it down to you. Why do you think we say that? When a nigga say, yeah, man, break it down. Break that shit down. That mean disseminate the truth. Teach us the knowledge. Break it down. And when you break it down, you tear it down the middle. That's when a nigga say, look, bro, be straight down the middle for me. Right? Be cut and dry. Don't give me no sugar coat. Keep shit. Sh let's, let's deal straight down the middle. This kind of terminology it exists for a reason, dude. It exists for a reason. So, the whole thing I'm telling you about the electromagnetic energy field upon death getting spaghettified into a black hole, it literally looks like the Pac-Man game. When you see the little Pac-Man creature eating up the little ghosts, Pac-Man and Pokemon is the same game. Uh, the American Pac-Man comes from the Japanese Pokemon, Pokemon, talking about the genie getting in a lamp. The word Pokemon comes from the words pocket monster, which is the genie in the lamp. That's how you get the monster in the little ball. But this concept is old spirituality that they turning into games and shit like that. And it's talking about our consciousness inside of the electromagnetic energy field. So, the story of how consciousness gets inside of the body became taught of Jonah going into the whale. So the word Jonah is the word genie, genie, Jonah. And it's the same story of the genie in the lamp, the Jonah in the whale, the mind inside of the body. Okay, this was the knowledge that was taught. So the concept of breaking bread means the soul breaking out of the body. The bread was the ethers, the ethereal layers. That's why I made this collage. When you're praying and you say, give us this day our daily bread, they are literally comparing days to slices of bread because the God that you're praying to is Kronos, the God of time. This is the God that creates every each new day. Time is, is, is separated by slices or what they call wrinkles. Time is a ripple effect. Okay, time is no different than you dropping a water, a rock into water. That signifies the beginning of time. And when those ripples fade out, that symbolizes what we call the end of time. Then time is reset again.
Each ripple is an age. This is how the ages are separated. So check this out, right? Jesus is the one who is splitting time, A, C, B, D, through the ages. He's the God that separates the calendar into big, what we call ages and eons. And when you see him breaking the bread, it's symbolic of the one that created the netters or the one whom they call the Lord of the rings. Saturn creating the rings is no different than Jesus breaking up the bread because these is the earth God. They represent the knowledge of how the earth is created. How time is created at the North Pole. So I made this collage to teach in my new documentary, and I'm not going to do too much because I want y'all to get the documentary. But the reason I brought this collage up is because I was teaching you that when we die, our soul is going to be gobbled up. It's big fish eat little fish. Your most high version is the big fish. Your low version is the little fish. So the one that's doing the eating is the ether. The reason why the snake is eating itself is because that's literally what we doing. Your most highest version is gobbling up the experiences of your lowest bodies. Your greatest version is using all of these avatars like puns, like rovers, to go down there, suck up the game, suck up the life experience, and then it throws them away and get all the experience that they got. This is what your God self is doing. And then know what it's doing. So... Each of these avatars is like a pill. It's a prescription. And the word prescription got the word script in it. This is the script that must be fulfilled for you to get well. Just like your doctor give you a script, you got to fill that script if you want to get better. Your soul is in the hospital now. And it's been prescribed a lifetime to heal itself. And it's got to take seven pills. Some of y'all been sick before you had to take more pills than that. <laughs> Your soul was prescribed seven pills. And it got to swallow each one to get, to get healed, to, to become a god. And that's what each of these avatars are. They're the seven pillars. And this is why your Taurus field looked like a pill. And this is why Samson is opening it up to release the contents. So this is what Jesus represent. Opening up the mind. Listen, this whole thing about the Pac-Man eating the little circle up, that's in our cosmology, dude. Check this out. This is the Hebrew cosmos up here. Look at this. With the earth gobbling up this thing. This is your soul right here coming from this earth into this which is a whole new earth. When your soul leave this earth and go to the next earth, it's going to get ate up right here inside of your highest version. See, check this out. Your whole life right now is an experience that you're going to take to your next higher reality. So how that look is this image of the earth right here, let's say this is your brain in a higher reality. And it's waiting for your soul to arrive and get in the seat at the seat of the soul at the pineal gland. Your highest version is a part, is a body that's been formed in your mama fetal bag because you ain't been born, you still, time there is different than here. By the time your journey in here, your new body will be formed in your higher realm. And by the end, that new body that's formed in the higher realm, it will be ready to receive the soul that just died in this world. Every time you die in one world, you got a brand new body that's just being formed in another world. 
And that new you will always eat up the old you. So when we say Saturn is eating up souls, no, nah, dude, the new you is eating up the old you. Look back at your life, at everything you didn't know in the past, at the mistakes you made as a child. But look at the new you right now. In a few years from now, this new you going to be an old you. And it's going to be a whole new version of you that's going to look back and say, damn, I'm getting even better. You're going through layers of consciousness awareness and levels of battering yourself through mental paradigm shifts. And the new you will always eat up the old you. And that old you will exist inside of the new you like a big fish eating a little fish. And this is the thing about the soul getting gobbled up. We see it right here where the Pac-Man game was created using cosmology. So this image of the soul getting gobbled up or the Pac-Man monster eating up the ghost, they gave you that with the, the whale eating up Jonah. And I'm assuming that y'all all are going to send in $2, right? We got... 1,200 people watching. Everybody got $2 if you watching. I know you do. Send it in because I'm doing y'all a favor. I'm giving you a sneak peek into my new film that I'm working on about Yahweh. It's going to be the best presentation on Yahweh that ever existed. Trust me. All of this stuff going to be there. And I'm going to be doing free lectures to, you know, to teach y'all, teach y'all this Anyway, but check this one out, right? You thought I was done? Watch this. Bam, check that out. I told you I got the story right. Look at that. I told y'all. Then I tell you. Play my music, nigga. Come on, man. Who? I'm a beast with this symbolism. Yeah, dude, the whole time you've been eating that communion cracker, it's because the word cracker is the word chakra. See, eating the cracker is basically eating the cacra. The word chakra comes from the word cacra, which is a play on the word cracker. You know why? Your chakras are what cracks through the layers of space and time. You can't make this up, dude. Each one of your chakras is a crack in the ether or a slice on the big old bread loaf. Each motherfucking slice of bread is a chakra layer. And that's why the chakra is a cacra or a cracker. You eating the little cracker symbolizes the greater version eating the low version. I just went over that. I just told you when you die, right, your doggone energy field is going to float away to the North Pole and it's going to get eaten up by your new version. And guess what it's going to look like? This game right here called Pac-Man. Guess what it's going to look like? Communion. Guess why we call it communion? Because you and all of your avatars is meeting up at the North Pole forming a community, a hive mind. This is called the Christ mass, the gathering of the self. Each of your layers is going to return home. And you're going to have communion with the self, with yourself. Imagine a bunch of different versions of you from different alternate realities having one big banquet together. Nigga, that's what death is. It's you meeting up with your other avatars. It's you. Now, why you've been to other dreams. You've driven these other versions of yourself before. You, you've used those bodies before. When you die, all of these dream bodies, including this one here, is going to meet you at the North Pole. And you're going to know each one of them. Ain't neither one of them going to be a stranger to you. 
each version of yourself that show up at the North Pole, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember having that dream. I remember being him in this dream. All of these other layers of ourself, they going to die, too, in their world. And they're going to go back home. All of these different copies of yourself are all going to go back to God and become one with the most high. All of the most lows are going to form a communion in the heaven with the most high. And I'm going to show y'all what this looked like because the Egyptians taught you this too. Watch this. This is what they did. They drew this right here to show all of your lower avatars going back home to meet up in one spot. Look at it. They got hands on this thing. All them hands is dealing with all of your different avatars that was born from your greatest version. There's a law of the universe called shatter theory. Things that fall will shatter over time. Like I said, if you drop a big glob of water from an airplane, by the time it hit the ground, it's going to be little bitty drops. The higher up you drop it, the more it's going to break down. So us fallen angels were bound to shatter point theory or whatever they call it, shatter law, shatter theory, whatever. The law of whatever fallen got to break up. So fallen angels, you was one singular God but when you fell from the base reality, you became many different devils. You became, the word devil is lived when you flip it backwards. You were one supreme God, but when you fell, you became many mortal men, many ver mortal versions of yourself. Now, when each of those little mortal version light rays return back home, it's going to look like a fisherman reeling in his lines. And this is why Christ is a fisherman. He's reeling in all of his avatars. It's the same story of Vishnu. Every last one of these versions that got that fell away from the center or Santa. See, this is why Santa got all them reindeers. This image right here. That ball is Santa. That's the one in the center. Santa. And he got all of these little ropes and straps attached to his sleigh, leading to a different reindeer. Or he, he'll have a bunch of elves around him. His elves are like Vishnu's avatars, right? Vishnu is Santa, which is why if you look at his hat, he got on a Santa Claus hat. This was the story of Santa Claus before it came to America. It was dealing with the knowledge of the North Pole. This was Santa right here. Look at that. In one of these universes, Vishnu beating a man up. Look at that. Look at here. In one of these alternate universes, Vishnu is beating a man to death. Look at him. And in another universe, Vishnu is helping a man. You feel me? In each universe, he's some different. So it's the, his many alternate forms that he's taken, but all of these alternate forms of Vishnu are born from the middle one, the Santa, the center one in the middle. See, same thing with Egyptian knowledge. You see, they are his tethers. And the same thing with Jesus and all of his disciples. All right. The word disciple is the word discipline. This is how Vishnu learned discipline by going into the mortal world and becoming a human and having an experience. He learns what's called character. That's the word shakara, kakara, character, caricature. It gives him character. And, and character is very beneficial to the soul. That's why we say, hey, man, you need to develop character. 
you know. And that's all Vishnu doing. He's exploring the many layers of the self so that he can know thyself. Now, what benefit am I going to get to that? Well, if I know everything about my car, can't nobody drive it like me. If somebody know more about my car than me, when they, when they get my keys, they going to look like the owner. It ain't even a car, but they can use it better than me. That ought to make you feel a certain way if you're a man and you got a Mustang and you got this big ass manly motor up under the hood. And when we pop your hood, you don't know shit about your car. All the other men is telling you about what's under your hood. Stupid. Dude, every man will tell you that's embarrassing, dog. Drop a one if you're a man in a chat room and you know that's embarrassing because they don't make men like they used to make them no more. You got a lot of niggas today with all that shit up under the hood, all the fancy pipes, and you tell them, yo, what kind of motor you got? I don't know. My mechanic did that for me. <laughs> I don't know. My fucking stylist did it. My director did it. I'm just saying, though, it's the same thing with the spiritual shit. The people in power know more about your soul than you, and they don't even got a soul. <laughs> the people in power know more about your soul than you, and they don't got souls. And I'm telling you, that's embarrassing, bro. For you to pull up on the block making all that noise because you got a good motor up under the hood and the niggas start questioning you like, bro, what kind of motor that is? And you don't know? Nigga, it don't even look the same. You don't even get your props for revving the engine up. You just lost all of your props. The women going to still fuck you because it's a nice looking car, but the men ain't going to respect you, nigga. The men will say that nigga don't even know what the hell he driving. That's just how the men do it. The men got a simple way of thinking. If you spending that much money to perk your car up and you got all this fancy shit on your car and you don't know what it is, you dumb as hell to men. Because we're mechanical. We're mechanical, motherfucker. I'm serious. If you pull up revving your engine in my hood and you don't know what kind of motor you got, niggas ain't going to even give you props for all that, for you revving your shit up and all that, nigga. <laughs> they going to take the props back. Niggas going to be like, oh, that nigga got that thing up under there. Boy, what you got up under there? You don't know. You don't know. Yeah, nigga, you making that much noise, you better know what's up under your hood, boy. Because you they're going to take all the props back and clown the fact that you don't know what the fuck you, you don't know what the fuck you revving up, son. That's embarrassing. The women don't care, you know, but the men, you ain't getting no nigga. You ain't getting no respect for that. You know, it ain't that they hating on you. You're just fucking dumb, dog. <laughs> so it's the same way with the people in power, dog. You ought to feel some kind of way that a motherfucker without a soul know more than you, and you got a soul. And that's crazy because people without a soul are so fascinated with your light, with your soul, that they want to learn everything about it. You being a, a soul man, a creature with soul, you used to having a soul, so you don't care about it. It's like rich people with money. They used to having money, so they just make it rain all the time. And that's like people with souls. We just give away our energy to these folks all the time. We make it rain. Because in our mind, shit, nigga, everybody got souls. No, nigga, everybody ain't got souls. You think everybody like you, you just giving your energy to this world freely. You're a fool. You think because you're a 
creature with a light in you that everybody got that. That's the mistake that we're making as creatures of light. We're not the same, bro. Now, everybody want to be divided on some black and white shit. He black and I'm white. Nigga, fuck all that. I am a creature with a soul, and that nigga right there is a drone without a soul in his body. I'm not giving a fuck about no white man and no Asian man. Fuck them races. Nigga, it's, it's humans that's living in this world that's indistinguishable from all of us, and they ain't even real humans, dog. The ancestors talked about them. They call them mankind. They call them the jinn. They call them the shaitan. They been on the earth before we been here. They been here in the game, in the simulation. And I'm telling you right now, they got humans killing each other. When we was originally going to war with them, it was man versus mankind. Now it's black versus white, Asian versus Hispanic, and the fucking robots taking over the earth. Nigga, everybody time out what race you is. Nigga, back in the day, when they asked you that question, you would have said, I'm part of the human race. What race are you? Oh, I'm part of mankind. Because the race is man versus machine. It's a singularity. That's what started the whole concept of race. The same situation we are in today. We're racing against artificial intelligence. If artificial intelligence get smarter, get too smarter than us before we develop the technology that we need to secure it and tame it, then it'll rule over us. It's a race, though. We created artificial intelligence and we created it to teach itself machine learning. If artificial intelligence start if it's learning at an exponential rate, rate, then we're racing against machine learning. If we're going to maintain our control over smart machines, then the machines can't get smarter than our control mechanisms. You get what I'm saying? If our machines are learning more and more every day, when will they learn everything they need to learn to bypass our human security systems. That's the race that we're at with AI. We got to stay a step ahead of AI with security, but AI learns exponentially. How do you do that? That's a race. That was the original race that made humans feel threatened by this foreign entity. Now they got humans feeling threatened by other humans. Back in the day, if, order, if mankind, if AI moved into your neighborhood, you felt threatened. Why? They can do shit you can't do, dog. A nigga with a Neuralink chip in his head, he can get the job before you. If a bunch of people with Neuralink just start moving to Las Vegas, people in Vegas will get scared. They'll feel threatened for this new race of people that can do things we can't do. They got a computer in their brain. How can we compete? And this is the concept of I feel threatened by another race. Now they got you feeling threatened because a nigga's skin is white and yours black. How is that a threat? <laughs> I'm not scared of white skin. I'm scared of what a white motherfucker can do to me. And he can do the same thing to me that a black man can do to me. So at that point, it ain't color that I'm scared of. It's behavior that I'm scared of. Behavior that can jeopardize my life. And I don't give a fuck if a white man do that behavior or a black man do it. I'm going to be scared. So it ain't about a fear of white supremacy or black supremacy. It was never about color. 
It was about a perceived threat. And I don't perceive a threat every time I see a person with white skin. I don't. I don't live in fear like that. And just to be fair, I don't perceive a threat when I'm in the hood with the gangsters. I don't think that every white person is a threat to me. And I don't think every black nigga in a gang or in the streets is a threat to me. Every nigga ain't trying to kill you. Man, these gangs is literally just a bunch of little niggas trying to make money. And they want their respect. It's simple. We want to make money. We want to be respected. Nigga, you, you can live in a gang neighborhood and have no problems with the gangs. I'm telling you, I did it. Gangs, and, and the reason I'm put, I'm all over the place, but I'm painting a picture, I'm showing you something. We got a fucked up way of being divided among humanity and the AI doing it to us. I want to segue back to something that I want to point out. When you're taking the communion, you literally doing a ritual of the, the most high eating the most low. Your greater version gobbling up your lower version. Big fish eat little fish. See, this eating the cracker is cosmology. Everything is cosmology. Now, let me take these slides off because I'm giving you too much. <laughs> I'm giving you too much, and I know that when I check my cash up, I'm going to look at it, and it's going to say $26. So we gonna have to spoon feed you niggas, you know. <clears throat> so again, I'm telling you that all of these gods are them personifying technology. When you see Zeus holding a lightning bolt, that's cause the Pharaoh had a taser gun. They don't want you to know that ain't nothing new under the sun. Here go the original taser gun. This is the unk. They said that the Pharaoh was able to win wars with his unk. Bro, everybody now talking about the unk had powers to it, but we don't know. The unk can cause earthquakes and the unk can strike people dead. And I'm trying to show y'all the fucking knowledge behind the myth. All of these people that be talking about unks, they be talking about mythology and shit. Because they don't got the receipts. And I'm telling them, you don't got to be talking about it like as a myth, bro. Because I'm giving you the science with it. When they say, man, the Pharaoh had, the, the unk that the Pharaoh had was able to cause earthquakes. They got to talk like it's a fucking spooky myth. Like, ooh, wee, the Pharaoh was able to cause earthquakes. See, that's what we say about God. We say, ooh, we, man, God can make an earthquake happen right now. God controls everything. God this. Ooh, we, the Pharaoh had him, can make an earthquake happen. Why? Because the Pharaoh had a fucking oscillator. The Pharaoh walked around with one of these in his hand. There were many men in the ancient world that carried scepters. They carried wands in their hand, the Statue of Liberty. Why do you think they call it liberty? Because liberty is keeping order. It's law enforcement, justice. And the original law enforcement was the church order. One no police. You had church priests with fucking lightning bolts and rods in their hand. They call them the fathers. One no police back in the day. You simply had church fathers and the fathers were called lords, gods. The fathers were feared because they can strike you down with lightning. Come on, man. Quit playing with me. You had a bunch of men on earth that was carrying lightning bolts in their pocket. Nigga, today we call that the police. We call that the police, bro.
If you will go back in ancient Egypt with a fucking taser, you God, nigga. You going to run shit. Because a person, they had dumbed them people down so bad in the ancient world that they looked at a nigga like, bro, how the fuck are you able to hold lightning in your hand? They worship these damn ancient scientists. Look at here. This is them personifying ancient technology. It ain't even ancient. Look, watch this. I can show you Tesla holding plasma right now. Watch this. I can show you this shit with Tesla, dude. It's nothing. It's nothing big. Watch this. Tesla was the Zeus of his time. Look. What is that Tesla holding in his hand? How many of y'all know what he's holding? Why don't they teach about this in science? Why don't they teach about this? What is Tesla holding in his hand? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, Tesla holding a real lightning bolt. He's the real life Zeus, nigga. That's what I keep telling you. His name is Nikolai. That's a play on the word St. Nicholas. Don't forget now, Tesla is the Santa Claus of our time. Here go his Santa Claus hat right here. Don't get it twisted. Tesla was Santa Claus. He brought back the North Pole knowledge. That's the gift that comes from Santa. It ain't a bunch of toys and shit and Tommy Hill figure and Nike. The gift that was coming from the North Pole was the secrets of electricity. Let there be light, nigga. Look at there. How many people have you seen do this before or since Tesla? Why ain't they teaching you this in school, bro? Why ain't they teaching you that that's a real life Zeus that walked this earth? That was a man that sent voltages of electricity through his body that would have killed the elephant and that man it, it, this man tesla used to just sent he played with electricity like raiden in mortal Kombat. during a time where they wanted everybody scared of electricity so that they can regulate it tesla was playing with electricity like play-doh To teach a point, though, to show them this shit ain't dangerous, man. Y'all scaring folks. If you teach them about this shit, it ain't nothing to be scared of. It's actually spiritual technology. The man is holding a beam of plasma in his hand. You know why that's important? Tesla is literally holding something that ain't physical, nigga. He's, he's literally holding light in his hand. And they don't even talk about this in science. The man is holding something that ain't even physical. He's this is what I'm telling you about Luke Skywalker, man. Y'all see this stuff in the movies and go crazy. And then when you show them the science in real life, they call it fucking tinfoil hat pseudoscience. <laughs> People see this stuff in Hollywood and go crazy. Then you try to show them the real life version and they don't care about it. Man, it, it fucks with me, bro. Like Luke nigga. If you like Luke Skywalker, how ain't you fucking with Tesla? That's the real damn Skywalker. Tesla was the nigga that was beaming his consciousness out his body in the UFO tower. The Tesla tower is a big UFO ship, nigga. That's why they tore it down. That's the whole UFO ship, nigga. That man will go in that building and lead the earth, nigga. The Tesla tower was a gateway up off of the earth. That's why they tore it down. Look at this UFO shit. Nigga, they tore down Tesla tower during the same years they were seeding the UFO propaganda in the 40s and shit. 
the same time they were seeding all this bullshit, Tesla was teaching about leaving the earth through the technology of the shamans, of the ancestors. And they was trying to hide the Tesla technology. Tesla wanted everybody to know this. But they wanted you to know this. And they still pushing the alien shit, even in the news today. They started the alien propaganda back in the day when scientists was telling everybody, we can't lead the earth physically. We can only lead it through beam me up, Scotty. Neuralink technology. Tesla created the earliest Neuralink technology, which is why when you look at the Tesla company today, they still making it. They the false Tesla. Okay. This knowledge of leaving the earth was personified into two other deities, one by the name of El and one by the name of Set to the Egyptians. If you take the name El and Set and put them together, you get all Set, which is Tesla. Al Set, Tesla backwards. El and Set. Because Set is the serpent, El is the beam, and both together make what's called the beam stalk. The serpent around the pole. The pole is El. The serpent is, you know, Set. Setting. El and Set is this knowledge right here of the Jedi blade. You got the straight line, which is L, because what? It's a lowercase L. It's a beam, okay? This is why the lowercase L is a straight line, the same as a number one. The singularity is the L, the beam stalk, the central nervous system. Now, wrapped around that singularity is duality. That's the demiurge, the serpent on the tree. He giving you numbers, diversity, amounts. Okay, so this is El and this is Elohim. The straight line is, exists as one thing. The ziggly line concept exists as many. So this is how the singularity and the plural concept of creation, the dual, the dual sense, exist together. The singularity is the center self. So in the middle of all this zigzag pattern is a straight pole. That center, Santa. In the center is the straight and narrow, as they call it. Outside of the center is a fucking pan's labyrinth. Good luck, nigga. The, the net, the web, the net. You get tangled up in it. This whole tangling pattern, that's what the kundalini is, bro. We already been captured. I'm trying to get you free. Your soul already been trapped in the body, and I'm trying to give you the knowledge to get you out. So we already left the center reality, which is straight and narrow. It's simple. Nothing in this world makes sense to us. You know why? We're in the outer realms. In the outer realm, that's DNA. Look at this pattern. That's like me handing you a big tangled up ball of yarn and telling you, figure this out, nigga. <laughs> that's basically where life is. You're born into a world that ain't the base reality, so nothing makes sense. It's a matrix. And you're really trying to study the truth by untangling all of this damn madness. And once you get it untangled, guess what you're going to see? The straight and narrow. What's up under all this chaos is order. Order and chaos. So right now we're figuring out our Rubik's Cube. We're untangling ourselves. We unfucking ourselves. And that's what it is when you see all of these gods around the world beating up the damn serpent. That's them unfucking themselves and breaking the DNA Kundalini matrix. 
They got this all over the world. Leo beating up the serpent, slaying the serpent. It's all over the world, you'll see it. Everywhere you look, Leo slaying Hydra. This was the whole thing, Jesus defeating the devil, the serpent slayer, which became the dragon slayer. This is the number one, uh, this is how we get the Statue of Liberty. As you can see, it's a blue God. He got his, that's your Statue of Liberty, okay? And that's a symbol of liberty, liberation, to liberate yourself. It's to do what? Swing your fucking Jedi uh, uh, blade. This is what liberates you. The light within. The kundalini. Okay, it's the word kundal because it's the word candle. Kundal is candle. It's a flame. It's a, it's a plasma flame. This is who we are. This version of you is so bright, it can slice through the fabric of this simulation. But you in your own way, nigga. Anybody that can make a light that di that's this bright, they already left the earth, dude. This is the knowledge of the alien being. Our reality is holographic. It's made of light. If you can generate a light source in your room right now, that's brighter than the light of creation, you will open up a stargate in your fucking basement, nigga. <laughs> this is what Tesla was doing with his oscillators. That's all a light bulb is. The light bulb that's lighting up your room right now ain't nothing but a little oscillator. Okay? That's all that a light bulb is. It's a little oscillator. It's just this right here with a bulb over it. And now it can give you light. But what would happen if you cut a fucking light bulb on, you take the case from off of it, and you, you touch somebody with it? Now you just made a stun gun, nigga. <laughs> yeah. If I got a flashlight, and I turn it on, and I take the bulb off of it and expose the electricity and fire, and I walk up to people touching them with it. That's now a stun gun. That's what I'm telling you about the light and the fucking, the same thing that they used to leave the earth and come back to the earth, they used it to police the fucking earth. They used this to police the earth. So the original policemen were fucking church scribes with big rods in their hand. And everywhere they went, they carried a fucking rod in their hand. That was the law enforcement of the old days. Everybody didn't walk around with scepters. This is what police looked like back in the day. When you see the Pharaoh with the rod, all of these images of the dudes with the fucking rods and scepters in their hand. Like Moses and all them. Yeah, this was police back in the day. That's the popo. The ancient church police carried this. They care, and guess what, y'all? When we look for when, when when the church ruled the world, ask yourself, where are the police at? Look, this is what it was right here. Yeah, it was a light at the top of the stick that can shock you, just like the police thing. You see that? That light, they turned this into a fucking magician wand with a nigga holding a magician wand because they don't want you to know about this technology. <laughs> now, guess what they said, right? They say that the magician's wand can make a person do whatever the magician want them to do. Nigga, that was a fucking stun stick. That's the police, boy. <laughs> Oh, 
open up your eyes, man. They lying to us about history. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new under the sun. They want me to think that a nigga like this was keeping order back in the day. Because that's what they said. They said back when the church was ruled the world, the scribes and the priesthood kept order. How can a scribe and a priest keep order, nigga? And you telling me that the priests looked at like this right here. They were magicians and scribes and that they was part of the church order. They was the keepers of the law. Your scribes and all of them, the priesthood. How can you keep the law with some damn scriptures, dude, with a book? Ain't nobody scared of your, that shit like that. So I had to do my research, and this is what I came up with. Because everything is the... Hold on, Saki, wait a minute. My dog tripping, nigga. Hold on, take a break. My dog just got stuck in a fucking... It's trap... Stupid, dog. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, we back, man. My curious dog just got trapped in a position they couldn't get out. But check it out, right? So, so I'm telling you that they try to make a lot of shit mythology and spookism and the church scribes were the keepers of the law. And that shit sound good. It sound real. Like, yeah, nigga, like, it sound like some mythology shit, you know, cause the scribes and the priests, they kept the law. And in your mind, you will be thinking, okay, they read the scriptures. They had people living right. And that's a lie, dog. The priesthood carried scepters. All of the scribes carried a fucking scepter. Who else was a scribe? Thoth. They got y'all thinking, that these dudes were scribes keeping the law with a fucking ink pen. Stupid, man. When you see Thoth, this pen is, is different. Now, I, I get it, right? There's a lot of symbolism behind the ink pen, the emerald tablets, and I get that. But when we talk about keeping the law, y'all got to separate mythology from them personifying technology into deities, man. We taking these gods literal and they're personifying technology that came onto the earth that helped the world leaders govern the masses better. So they personified the technology into a God and they will say, well, this God was the keeper of the law. And then they will have men in the society take on the image of that God. And they'll walk around with scepters in their hand, keeping the law. But if you don't break it down to the people, they'll be thinking on some magic shit. They'll be thinking, yeah, man, because the scribes and the priests were so powerful back then, they can use their scepter to strike you dead with the power of God. <laughs> and because we don't know that humans had the same technology we got, we start looking at the shit spooky, like magic, magic and shit. And this is, this is what they was doing to the people. They was using technology on people, telling them God did it to you, right? They didn't want people to know how the technology worked because then the people will make their own stun guns and fight back. You don't want to give your patent away. That's like my army teaching your army how to make our gun. That's stupid. So 
They hid these patents behind miracle workers. Instead of them telling you that it was niggas back in the ancient world walking around with stun guns and tasers, they tell you about scribes and priests controlling the masses and keeping the law with scribes and script. They'll give you another object like a book or an ink pen. It'll be some stupid shit. I'm like, how you control a bunch of people with that? Now we know when it come to controlling the crowd, you got to pull out them damn, uh, fire sticks, nigga. And I'm not talking about that cable channel shit, nigga. <laughs> Crowd control, give me one of these things. Hey, when you see the police whip that shit out, everybody going sit down, nigga. When they, when they, it's a little stick, right? Let me see if I can put it out. It got a ball at the top of that bitch. And when they, they'll pull it out, it's like the fucking, uh, it's like Luke Skywalker, nigga. Here it go right here. It's just a handle. And then when you when you get that bitch right, guess what you do? You whip it out. You say, boom. And when you swing it, it, it opens up and become a big rod. And anything you hit with that bitch, they going to get a shock that I can't eat. It's, it hurt damn near like a bee sting. It's like a bee sting, nigga. You're not going to be able to fuck with it. You can drop me off in the ancient world with one of these right here, and I can take over a whole damn village by myself, nigga. Would put me in an old village with 50 niggas and give me one of these. It'll look just like the movies, nigga. When you see them niggas surrounded and they got the blade, like Luke Skywalker, ha, 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 ha. Like a ninja, woo, 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 woo. Everybody I touch ball going night night. Now, if you put a nigga in a village with 50 niggas and you give him a sword, he's going to lose. Because you got to stick it in one nigga, pull it out of him, stick it in him, pull it out of him. When you pull it out of one nigga, the other one going to grab you. Guess what, though? I don't got to do nothing but touch you with this stick. And you're going to have the Holy Ghost. You can, you can make this technology so potent that when I touch you with this stick, you're going to be on the ground for a minute trying to recover from that shock. So we see all of these movies of like this one swordsman and he's surrounded by all of these dudes and he whipping all they ass. That won't be possible with a regular blade. But if you gave me something that I can just touch you with it one time and you out, I can see that happening. And the only thing I can think of is some Luke Skywalker shit. A sort of rod that if I touch you with it, you ain't going to get back up, nigga. It's going to be like the hand of God just touched your ass. You're going to stay down for a minute, stunned. That's why I call it a stun gun. I can see a nigga going up in a whole village with that rod, swinging it around himself, walking to everybody. One man can ransack a whole village if he know, if he can swing that bitch all around his body, he's making a tourist field around his body with that rod. Anybody that try to stick their hand and touch him, they better hope they don't touch that rod. So you can give me a damn rod like that, and just like the ninjas, I can be making like a force field around my body. If I got my rod and it's a bunch of niggas trying to jump on me, I can just go right into my mode where I'm just swinging that bitch like crazy. Every time they walk up to me, I'm just going crazy with it. I'm putting a whole force field around my body, swinging it every way, just everywhere, just a big bubble. And they know we can't move in on that nigga till he stop. Because if that shit touch us, we through. It don't take but one touch. This is why the ninja 
can go into your shit and kill everybody. We got to quit thinking stupid that these men were so powerful. They had powerful technology. They, Luke Skywalker is great because of his lightsaber. If you take away Luke Skywalker's uh, lightsaber, he just a regular nigga. <laughs> it's the technology that made these men gods. Because what is a god is one who keeps the law. It's one who keeps order and law. In order for you to do that, you need a weapon, nigga, like a belt, like a mama in the house. How do, they, how do your parents keep order? With a belt, with some switches. And if you from my era, you got the broom, too, on your ass, man. <laughs> it wasn't abuse back then. That was called love, nigga. That was love. Now, check this out. I'm going to tell you something. You can't have a system of law and order without weapons. Without weapons. It's impossible. So when we look back at early days at the church ruling the earth, the church liked to paint this utopia that they didn't need police. It was just militaries. And the militaries fought each other under the order of the Caesars. That's a fucking lie. They always had police, nigga. And militaries. They always had a group to govern the civilians and citizens and a military order. They want y'all to think that the Roman army was they fucking police force too. <laughs> if that's what you telling us, we weren't in a church state. We was in a military state. Get it right, nigga. Get it right. We're in a police state. When martial law is passed and the military take over, you're going to go to a military state then, and that's going to be lockdown, curfew. Back in the old days when the church ruled, they was in a police state. They, had, they were policing the people with policy, and the policies can change depending on where you at, like state law and federal law. This shit ain't nothing new. So when the fucking church was keeping, was creating law and order during the church time before government, when the church was the government, like I said, if you ask them how was order kept, they would, point, they would always have this, like military soldiers with swords and, and Roman army. And that ain't, that ain't the truth, nigga. Our ancestors had militaries and they had police just like we do. And want me to tell you how I know? Because the fucking police badge go all the way back to Babylon and Egypt. You can find police badges all the way fucking back, nigga, in time. So if you're telling me that the Roman army was Spartans and all this shit, where they badge at if they the police too? <laughs> so the Spartans were fucking uh, regular local cops too. So you want me to think that's stupid, nigga. It, it don't even make sense. From a nigga who in the military, it don't make sense, bro. You need a military and you need a police. Otherwise, you damn near primitive, Ryan. What are you doing? Because the military ain't even trained like the police. The military is straight killers, nigga. They ain't giving a fuck about knowing the civilian policies and shit. They learning the Geneva Conventions. They going on the warfare law. It's a whole nother set of do's and don'ts for a soldier in the military versus a street police. It's apples and oranges. And what they do in history is try to make it like all of the old militaries was the police too. But we can find police badges though. So 
So it's a lot to think about. You can't tell me that an ancient police was walking around with a fucking sword, keeping the law, nigga. <laughs> you you know, want to tell you why I ain't going to buy that bullshit? Because every man had a sword when we started forging medals. But guess what they tell you? The police had the big swords and the sharpest swords. Nigga, the police are outgunned today, even in 2000s. What make you think they wouldn't the same then, nigga? The gang members got bigger guns than the police. The gang members got more bullets and they clip than the police got. When we started forging medals, everybody and their mama had a fucking sword. So when you say, well, they, the police are able to keep the law because we got stronger firepower than the criminals. You can say that today. But it won't be true. It used to be true. But today, the little niggas got guns that's way more stronger than the police shit. They only surrendering because they don't want to fight against the officer. It's... It's a mental thing. It ain't that we can't go to war with y'all. So my thing is this. The, the people know if I go to war, if my gang take the, pol the local police to war, they bring in the military. And we cannot outfire the military. So it boils down to they got better technology than us. So we're going to let them rule over us. And that's how it always been in this earth realm. The people with the best technology, they rule the world. Why you think the Jews rule the world? So everybody's God is some kind of technology that helped them defeat your motherfucking people. And when they use their technology to take over your damn land, they made you worship the technology that conquered your people in a form of personified and into gods. They using that same technology on us to keep us God fearing. They got technology that can control the weather. And like I said, the police back in the ancient day, when police and them people with swords, get real. They had electric asp batons. They don't want y'all to know this, man. They don't want y'all to know this. Guess what they tell you, though? They try to tell you this right here. Watch this. They give you this, right? They say that the police has had one of these, y'all. <laughs> they give you all that. But remember, they give you a weapon with a ball at the top of it. Remember, they're going to always give you something with a little ball at the top. You see that little ball at the top? That's where the electricity come from. Why, see, why when you look at a magician's wand, the ball lit up, dog? Why is the ball lit up at the top? They talking about the magician can make you do whatever he wants you to do. Nigga, I can too when you give me one of these motherfucking stun sticks. I bet you you do what I tell you. <laughs> it ain't magic, nigga. It ain't magic. It's technology. It's technology, and we got to open our eyes, man. They lied about everything in history, and they gave you a bunch of symbolism like magicians and wizards and priests and gods and all that when it was just technology that was controlling the people. It wasn't the Lord thy God controlling the masses. It was stun sticks, electrical devices, sonar weapons. Yeah, they said that the god Apollo ride into the earth on a chariot. 
Nigga, that's like the military ride into the hood with one of them hummers with the sound machine mounted at the top, and it make everybody get... Nigga, when they cut that bitch on, it feel like your organs are melting from the inside out. If they was using some shit like that back in the day, people would have got on their knees begging, man, for their life, saying, what the hell was that? And if you tell them people, this is the power of my God working on my behalf against my enemies, people will start worshiping you and kissing your feet, nigga. Because what you're telling them is that the thing that just conquered them and desecrated their village isn't nothing that they can understand. It's nothing they can reduplicate. It's simply a spiritual entity that is favoring you and not favoring them. How do you fight against that? You don't. You bow down to it. You become God-fearing. You say, what do I got to do to stop your invisible friend from making my ground open up again? Well, you got to pray to my God. And if you pray to my God, he will stop the earthquakes from happening. And what did they do? They pray to this thing. They pray to the same technology that caused the earthquake. People praying to a Thor hammer. They praying to gods that look just like this machine. This machine with the ball at the top, that became your Statue of Liberty torch. This is what they kept the law with. This was liberation. So, you know, people will use this on you and cause an earthquake in your village. And to the people that don't understand it, they looking at the new people that showed up like, yo, man, y'all said a little praise and it caused the earthquake. What is up with that? Imagine that, right? Imagine you in the jungle and a group of foreigners just show up and they start praising and chanting some in the name of their God. Next thing you know, earthquake happened or a thunderstorm happened. Guess what you're going to think? Their God is real, even though their God never showed himself. You're going to think, I need to follow their God, because their God controls the weather. And that's why everybody worshiping weather gods today. These people went around the world with technology that can cause storms. They had technology in their pocket that can make an earthquake come to your land. And they weren't telling people about the technology. They was lying to them saying, that's the power of God. <laughs> and it made people become God fearing. And as long as people fear God, the church can have order. They can keep order. So the fear of God was put into the people with apocalyptic weather events, and we still there today. The people in power are controlling the weather, and every time these big weather events happen, what we say, this the end of time, God coming back. This is why you need to go to church. This is why you need to pray more, because God is coming back. God never really come to the earth but he sure do send a bunch of thunderstorms and earthquakes. <laughs> and the thunderstorms and earthquakes always miss the rich people. Damn!
Bros Sanchez. All right, I found it. I found it. Yeah. God never show up. He just keep threatening us with weather that this invisible dude. Think about it. They convinced our ancestors every time you don't do what we want you to do, a fucked up weather event is going to happen. And every time we didn't do what they wanted us to, to do, a storm came, a hurricane, an earthquake. That put the fear of their God in us. But their God don't exist. It's literally a technology that they've been using to deceive people for generations. And they learned how to do this from Egypt and Babylon. How to use technology on the masses and write it off as a natural disaster, meaning something God did. That means Mother Nature works for us. Think about that. The people in power have convinced the world, if you don't do what we say, Mother Nature going to fuck you up. Now, remember, we don't live in a natural world. We live in a simulation. So Mother Nature is just whatever entity controlling the simulation. It ain't working for the forces of good. It's working for the forces of bad. God always punishing the regular people, but he never punished the Caesar, the Pharaoh. The wrath of God never makes it to the royal dynasties. But they make it to Job, though. <laughs> it's crazy how the people God said that he loved the most, he fucked them up the most, like the Israelites. And the people that's God's enemies, he worked with them to help beat up his own chosen people because they fell away from the glory. I will debate any of you stupid Hebrew Israelites tonight. I believe that the Hebrew Israelites is helping to keep black people behind. And they are a bunch of Freemasons giving our people a bunch of poison. I got smoke for everybody tonight, man. I'm in my bag, nigga. I've been away for a minute. So I got to make up for the lost time, baby. And I'm full of knowledge. I'm full of roasting. And I'm full of all that good shit you like about this nigga named Bro Sanchez. I got the story right, son. I know you like my funky music. Y'all niggas ain't got nothing that funky. That's a real guitar, son. That ain't no Fruity Loops. That's a real organ. That's humans making my shit. It just hit different, son. I could have made my own theme song. But I'd rather have a live organic band, nigga. Let me, they, they don't, don't nothing else hit like it. You know when you hear this shit, you finna have some fun. Play my shit. You know what it is, nigga, when, 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 when you, well, you know what it is when that come on. Told y'all, nigga, I straight up took over Thursday. How many niggas you know on a day? Every week, nigga, after Wednesday, motherfuckers be like, ooh, nigga, Sanchez day to day. <laughs> we don't even call it Thursday no more. They call it Sanchez day. Write that shit out in the chat room in case you can't spell it. It's one big word. It's Sanchez day. You know, like Wednesday? Sanchez day. That's the day after Wednesday, nigga. Sanchez day. It's Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Sanchezday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sanchezday, Friday, and Saturday. There you go. Your days of the week, son. Everybody said that Sanchez Day ain't a weekend day, but it feel like one. I told y'all that sent that Thursday to New Friday. Fucking with me. You understand? Now, it's some more shit I want to go over, though. I ain't done, man. If you thought I was done, you're wrong. 
I got a lot to teach you. And can't nobody teach it to you like me. Didn't nobody else put in amount of time it take to connect with the ancestors like I did. They was trying to connect with the experts, remember? Experts. <laughs> Everybody that connected with the experts, they mad at me because I'm favored by the ancestors, nigga. I'm favored by the people that knew the secrets of our reality to be a modern man reteaching and re-giving that lesson to the world. Boy, I love myself. Boy, I fucking love myself. Man, I love me. Because, nigga, you got to realize, boy, I'm chosen to bring back an ancient concept in a modern time where it don't exist. Syncretism. Sacred. The, the approach I got with the third eye, with the collages. This haven't been done on the earth since the old days. I'm bringing back a lost approach to, 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 to receiving information. Check this out, and that's why I'm able to make these connections and get the story right. The Pharaoh walked around with an unk in his hand, and people were scared of him. Why? Uh, why would I be scared of a nigga with makeup on and a skirt on? When we look at these rappers today, they got on dresses and shit, but you know why we be scared of them? Because they got a whole Draco up under that dress. And they'll pull out that damn uh, Draco from up under their skirt. And they'll shoot the block up, nigga. <laughs> yeah, man, it's only one reason that a real man gonna be scared of a nigga with fingernail polish and a dress on. And that's because he got a weapon. And so why was people scared of the Pharaoh? A little nigga with a fucking makeup and a skirt. It's because what he held in his hand, dog. The Pharaoh can literally strike you dead. They talk about God can touch you and strike you dead. I didn't know God have hands. I didn't know God reached out the sky to touch niggas and strike them dead. But the Pharaoh was considered a god or a lord, and he walked around with a scepter. That would have been the equivalent of a police asp. You know that little stick they whip out and make everybody stop doing what they doing? And I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck how drunk you are, how tough you think you are. When they whip that little stick out and you hear that electricity crack the air, you're going to stop doing what you're doing. Trust me. <laughs> They ain't even got to hit you with that bitch. When you hear the sound of that electricity cracking the air, dude, I just saw tough gangsters say, okay, I, I ain't get the fuck down when they hear that sound. So this was what was happening in the ancient day. The Pharaoh didn't walk around with a big ass asp, a, 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 a wand in his hand because it looked cute. The Pharaoh didn't walk around with a big stick, a big unk in his hand because he couldn't walk right and he was crippled. Nigga, that was a weapon. And if the Pharaoh just so happened to touch you with that bitch, you was going to be stunned for a minute, dog. And that's what they say. They said a mighty hand of God will smite thee. That's like a nigga hitting you real hard and it knock you out for a few minutes and you go night night and wake back up. That's called to be stunned. They call it a stun gun for a reason. The Pharaoh was stunning motherfuckers. Man, yeah, if you made the Pharaoh mad, he didn't have to do nothing but touch you. And you would fucking have one of them Holy Ghost moments. And everybody would have known quick, don't fuck with this guy. Now, guess what? You can't go nowhere without your rod. Once you start uh, doing that and you have a bunch of men with scepters keeping the law gaining power, you better keep it on you just like the gangsters. 
You live by the sword, you die by it. Yeah. So you never saw the Pharaoh without his rod. You don't never see a gangster without his gun. You don't never see a police without his damn gun on him. So why would a Pharaoh just walk around 24-7 every time you see him, he got a big-ass stick in his hand? Because he's the Pharaoh, nigga. It's people that don't like him. He runs the whole fucking city. And at any given moment, it can be other people trying to take his spot. You better keep that thing on you at all times. And that's all the Pharaoh was doing. No different than a gang member. You ain't going to never catch him without that thing. Because if it's the gun that's giving the gang member power, the moment you leave the house without your gun, you left the house without your power, son. <laughs> if it's your weapon that's giving you power, and you want to maintain power at all times, you better not never get caught lacking. You better not never get caught lacking. Dog. I'm talking at never. That mean if you show me a picture of the Pharaoh taking a shit, I'm going to see his rod right there by the toilet, nigga, leaning up against the wall. Because <laughs> gangsters take shits with they guns. Do I got any gangsters in the, in, in, in the chat room or ex-gang members? Drop a one if you took a shit with your gun before. I'm curious now, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious now, nigga. I'm just curious now. No ditty. I know it's one or two niggas in my chat room like, on hood, on hood, I used to take a shit with my Glock. Yeah, on hood, on hood. <laughs> that nigga was ready to get off the toilet without wiping his ass and just run out there shooting. What up, blood? <laughs> with a shitty ass. <laughs> oh, no, let me stop playing with y'all, man. Yeah, but you got to keep it on you, nigga. The Pharaoh was living by them street rules, nigga. You got to keep that thing on you. He probably stunned a nigga grandma last week and had her get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that man ain't never going to forget you had his grandma foaming at the mouth. And he waiting on the Pharaoh to put that rod down. He going to beat the makeup off that motherfucker. <laughs> I told y'all, but hey, I do this shit, nigga. Hey, I'm going to have you crying fucking with me, nigga. I'm going to have your stomach tight. I told you. <laughs> yeah. Pharaoh stunned that nigga grandma last week, man. She caught the Holy Ghost in front of everybody, nigga. And he been looking for get back. But he can't catch that nigga slipping without that stick. He said, boy, if I get hold of that stick, I'm going to put that bitch right up his P. Diddy. <laughs> I'll show him who's boss. <laughs> I'll show him who's boss. Man, you ain't going to tell me that these people in power ain't causing this weather and these earthquakes. You, as far as I'm concerned, my nigga, that's the, your new red pill. Your new red pill is to realize, nigga, the weather ain't even real. Y'all be talking about they lied about everything. We in a simulation, and you still think that it's natural weather outside. Stupid. And it ain't a lot of people talking about it. And, 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 and it's baffling me. How are we the conscious community and y'all ain't making content about weather warfare no more? Because I'm going to tell you something. A few years ago, everybody was talking about weather warfare. 
Now that they actually implement this stuff, people talking about Puff Daddy. And I'd be like, damn, it'd be crazy how shit be. They got an earthquake in New York and y'all talking about Puff Daddy. And I'm guilty too. I was talking about Puff Daddy when that earthquake happened. That's why I'm saying this now. It was a lot of shit happening and we was distracted. And nigga, I thought to myself, well, I'm not distracted. I'm covering the eclipse too. And I'm covering the fucking Baltimore Bridge too. I didn't cover the earthquake. So I will admit now I was distracted because my thing is what I tell myself is Sanchez. If you want to do a trendy topic, you got to make sure you cover all the other shit. So if I do a trendy topic and it was some I missed, then I'm going to say, well, yeah, they got me. I was distracted, nigga. But if I cover all this shit, then I reward myself with the trendy topic. But business before pleasure, though. But, uh, yeah, we want to talk about weather warfare today, man. It's part of what I'm saying because they have got technology from Nikola Tesla to control the weather. Earthquakes, hurricanes, thunderstorms, tornadoes, all of that is technology, bro. And it's the technology that come from Egypt and Babylon. They talk about these pharaohs were gods because they, they talk about the Indians can make it rain. Man, our ancestors knew how to control the weather because they knew how to make oscillators. They knew about harp technology. They knew how to shoot beams and waves at the ionosphere. They had the technology for that. So weather inside of this simulation ain't natural. It's man-made. Who's ever in power at the time are the people that's burdened with the task of running the simulation. Look at this earth like a vehicle. And for years, men have fought for the driver's wheel. And the driver's wheel to this earth is the CERN machines. Those are the steering wheels. Those are the things that cause apocalyptic events, great storms and all that, the shapers of history and apocalyptic events, reset technology. Okay, like I told you, every time a reset happened, the rich people survive it. Think about that now. You know why? Because it's them with the technology that's doing this shit. Think about it. The Pharaoh survived all of the plagues in Egypt, but his peasants then. The, the Pharaoh and his dynasties lived on for fucking generations, still living on today. You know how many people been wiped out since then? I'm telling you, the luckiest people on earth are rich folks. Because out of all the apocalyptic events that take place on this earth, they still here. And you would think that the least amount of people would go extinct first. Think about it. If I got one cat that live in my house and I got 50 dogs and my house catch on fire, what's the chances of the cat surviving versus one of them dogs? See, I got a better chance of two, three, four of my dogs escaping the fire than I do that one cat because power is in numbers. Because I had more dogs than cats, I had more dogs that survived than the cats. It's simple math. If the rich people make up less than 1% of the entire earth population, how the fuck do they keep surviving great resets, nigga? It ain't mathing right. The math ain't mathing. That's proof that they controlling this shit, nigga. It don't even add up. It's 1%. These people make up 1% of everybody on earth and they have survived every fucking apocalyptic event since the beginning of motherfucking time. It don't make sense. 
like I said, that's like me having 50 dogs live in a house and two cats. And, and my house catch on fire and my two cats survive, but none of the dogs didn't. That ain't really, that math don't math right. That math don't math right. The people that's going to have the most survivors had the most numbers. That's how things work on Earth. That's why it's hard to make ants go extinct. It's hard to make roaches go extinct. It's so many of them. Good luck. Like if it was just a few roaches on the Earth, we can make them go extinct. But so think about that. It's less than a few rich people on Earth. They literally make up less than 1%. And they keep surviving world apocalyptic events. It just don't add up, bro. It doesn't add the fuck up, bro. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Only thing make it make sense is data ones causing the shit. Because I don't understand how it was plagues that was wiping out every damn body in Egypt and Babylon and all that, but the royal dynasty still made it out of all these plagues. And they the few. They would have been extinct. That lets you know this shit skipping over them some kind of way. And hitting everybody else in a certain tax bracket, nigga. <laughs> it's time to wake up, bro. If all of the rich people run the world and they talk about population control, of course they're going to use their money to wage war on you. And what that's going to look like is weird weather events. Rich people don't buy Dracos and do drive-bys, nigga. Rich people reverse engineer technology that you don't even know exists. Rich people ain't buying guns. They buying oscillators and CERN wheels. They not trying to buy up bullets, nigga. They buying up helium. They buying up gases and shit, argon and arsenic. Nigga, they, they level of warfare is on a whole nother level. When you fighting against these folks, you, re, you, you thank God. I ain't, I, nigga, let me show you something. Everybody that the wealthy elite has waged war on, they got them people thinking that God has waged war on you. I remember coming up in the hood, looking at all of our reality, saying, man, God is kind of wrong for this. Why would God subject us to these living conditions? Then you go to church and the pastor say, your people turned away from God. Your people did something to God, and that's why y'all fucked up right now. And then you say, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. God looking out for everybody else because they doing what God say do. My people ain't, which is why we fucked up. Okay, as a child, you'll say, okay, then that just means my people need to find favor in God and we'll be okay. Simple, right? Then you realize, don't nobody praise God like your people. So why the fuck God hate us so much? It don't make sense, nigga. When you tell me God beating up on my group of people because he got beef with us because we weren't praising him. But God finding favor in a motherfucker that even took the Bible out the courtroom. How that makes sense? God find favor in the people that took prayer from schools. And God still beating up on the people that was arguing for prayer to come back to school. How God beating up on the people that love him the most, that praise him the most. And the people that's blasphemous against him and using technology, he lead them along. It ain't God beating up on you. It's technology that rich people are using to attack poor people. And they can control the weather, man. They can make earthquakes happen. 
They can make floods happen. Where my New Orleans people at? Where my Katrina people at? These people are our people that, but man, listen here. My love and my heart really goes out to my New Orleans, Louisiana niggas. I'm a South nigga. So when they hit New Orleans, nigga, that was so close to home for me. Them was my cousins, them over there that they hit. And what make it so sad, them people still thank God attacking them because of the Mardi Gras. And I'm like, how the fuck God attacking my people for Mardi Gras, but ain't attacking them niggas and they got a church of Satan? <laughs> so... You're not going to tell me, nigga, that uh, we ain't under attack with weather warfare. And no one gives a fuck till it happened to you, to your, to your land, that your people, because it ain't happening in big cities. I'm in Las Vegas. It's happening in small, little bitty lands where them people still own that land. Mississippi, Louisiana. All of these so-called natural events, they're happening in places where people still own they fucking land at. Like I said, why ain't they happening downtown where the rich people business is at? How the earthquakes and all that going around town center, my nigga? <laughs> I told you, it's been earthquakes happening in California for years on the West Coast. But they always miss Bel Air. They always skip around Beverly Hills, nigga. It's time to wake up, bro. It's time to wake up. You, you at fucking war and don't know it. You looking for a motherfucker to drop a bomb out the sky, but you go outside every day and see planes dropping chemicals down. Gases and chemtrails. And you, and you saying to yourself, well, it ain't a bomb, so I'm good. Stupid. It's, it's warfare, nigga. Ain't nobody waking up every day to spray up the sky for no reason. You know how much money that take? That's an agenda. And what agenda is it? The depopulation agenda. The average human today live to be 65 years old. We went from being a hundred and something to 65. And the more things they implement in the environment, the shorter your lifespan get. But guess what, though? The rich people living forever around this bitch. <laughs> you lucky to see 70. And it's a rich person out there 60 something and ain't got no wrinkles on their fucking face in Hollywood right now. Nigga, they shooting sperm cells in they face. They injecting sperm and nut into they fucking face. They getting artificial hearts and using all kind of technology. You can see a woman in, in Hollywood, 60 years old, that look gorgeous. And she plastic than a motherfucker. <laughs> They're not aging, nigga. You ain't saw Oprah lately? She damn near about to be 70. Oprah damn near about to be 70. And she looked 30-something. I know motherfuckers in their 30s that look 70 in the hood with the weight of the world and the stress they going through, nigga. <laughs> this shit is a... Y'all think warfare is shooting guns and shit. Nigga, warfare is who going to live the longest. If your enemy keep outliving you, that's why they writing the laws and writing history and control the future, nigga. You ain't living long enough to walk your next generation into the future. If you're dying at 65, that mean the children in our generation don't even have seniors governing them. Thank, Because when I grew up, we sat on a porch and talked to motherfuckers that had gray hair, wrinkles, 70 years old, 80 years old. 
I talk to old people coming up, dude. You know why I'm saying that? Because it's fucking rarer day, nigga. When a young person be like, yeah, I talk to the old head, you be like, how old was he? 60? That ain't old, nigga. That ain't old, nigga. When I was young in Alabama, we was sitting on a porch talking to motherfuckers in their 80s and 90s. These little niggas talking to motherfuckers in their 50s talking about that's the OG. Because you only living to be 70. If we only living to be 70, then the, the OG going to be like 40 now. Motherfuckers be calling me OG. And I'm like, nigga, I'm 40 years old. But guess what you got to realize? Inflation is happening on a spiritual level, too. Inflation is happening on a spiritual level, too. So now your OGs is like 30. Your OGs is in their 40s and 50s. Why? Because we dying younger. We're dying younger every generation. So a young group of boys sitting out talking to the old heads is going to be some 20-year-old niggas talking to some 40-year-old niggas. Or some 20-year-old niggas in their 20s and teenage years talking to some 50-year-olds. Nigga, that ain't, nigga, that ain't no old head conversation. This world backwards. Now, nigga, when we was in our teenagers, we really had old people talking to us. Like motherfuckers with wrinkles all over them. Like real griots, nigga. We talk to real old people. And these niggas today don't really, they talking to niggas in their 50s and shit. It's just different. It ain't, the, it's, it's just different, bro. It don't hit the same. Somebody said, I'm a granddaddy at 49. That's what I'm telling you. That's the war. We got to look at that as that's warfare, too. That's a form of warfare as well. You know, and I want to thank everybody that's watching this show. I'm going to keep the show going longer because I'm loving the bill. I'm loving the energy. And we want to talk to you guys. We want to talk to you. OK, hold on a second. So check, check it out, right? It's a couple of more connections I'm going to make, and I'm going to open up the calls. <clears throat> I was saying all that about the earthquake machine. It's because I want my brothers and sisters in the conscious community to really raise awareness about uh, weather warfare. And the people that control the weather they are launching waves up to the ionosphere. Now, the ionosphere is the layer of the atmosphere that the ancestors call heaven. So when we read the Bible, when we read all of these religious books and it say that a war broke out in the heavens. How many of y'all are familiar with that? They teach you that a war broke out where? In the heavens, man. That's the chemical warfare. <clears throat> when we say, man, we, we, it's spiritual warfare on this earth. Nigga, that's the warfare taking place in the heavens. Because what they spraying, you're breathing it in. And whatever it is in that, it's in your body. They ain't got to shoot you with a gun. Dude, it is nanotechnology inside of all of our body right now that is not there to work on your behalf. That's why I feel like you at a war against your own damn body, because you are. That's spiritual warfare. The chemicals and agents in our environment, it fucks with our body, not our spirit. And it makes it harder for our spirit to manifest its will through the body. 
So you got to perform a mission, but you got to do it with a monkey on your back. You got to do it feeling tired when you don't post to be tired because they getting your food messed up. No good nutrition. Despite everything they throwing at us, we went in the war. Because it's all to stop our awakening and God damn it, we still waking up. So it's very encouraging for a nigga like me to know that once I know that I'm my soul, I'm my mind and not my body, you can't really do shit to me. Because I'm going to be like, oh, nigga, you did that to my body. That ain't me, nigga. <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> you really can't touch me, nigga. I got a suit on. And you can do what you want to this suit. But I'm just going to take this suit off anyway and go on to my neck. Come on, man. I wore this suit because I knew you was going to try some fuck shit. So I said, let me put my suit on, protect myself from these demons. So that if they do something, it'll just happen to my suit. That's what your body is for your soul, nigga. It's a, a layering of protection. They can't directly hit your soul. They got to go through your body to get to your soul. So your soul want to control your body. But the people in power want to control your body too. So they plan tug of war. You want to control, they want to control, you want to control, they want to control it. And your body is like, well, shit, now I ain't going to lie. They giving me good sex, good food, good all of that. And then, so I like that, but then your body is like, well, I like you too, because you giving me good knowledge, good spirituality. I like that too. Your body like a hoe is in the middle of these two pimps fighting for it. Your body saying, I don't know if I want to get with that pimp because he on some good shit. He on some old spiritual shit. But that pimp right there is going to buy me Fendi, Prada, Louis Vuitton. Your body really is a hoe that's choosing right now. Real talk. <laughs> and it, and your, your body don't belong to you at all. Which is just like we say with these hoes. Them hoes belong to the streets, man. Quit getting attached to these hoes, bro. Because the same hoe that you, a person that say, well, I love, I'm, I'm so in love with my body. Somebody else can make your body do something, nigga. That's what I'm telling you, dog. Your body ain't loyal to you, nigga. Your body is open to suggestion. Because your body don't, Think of it as your body. Your body just saying, I'm a body. And anybody can control me. Sanchez can. The media can. A rapper can. Your body a whole nigga. Anybody can hit that if they game good enough. So your game better be good than the other people game who trying to control your body. It's a war, nigga. Every day you get up, you got to fight to maintain control over your body. Just like a pimp trying to keep his holes in check. Because he know these holes be choosing. Them holes will see another pimp and want to get with him. Because a bitch ain't lawyer, man. I got to get into my pimp terminology to get you niggas to see, to see what's up. <laughs> so I just, I look at my body like the hole that it is. And I'm just going to make sure that my soul is the one pimping it out. That's all. <laughs> like your body ain't loyal to you, nigga. Your body will work against you on behalf of your enemy. So look at your body like a bitch that I got to conquer. And any of these pimps can conquer her. So I better come with it. I better have some cold game. To lock this thing down that I'm saying is my bitch. And that's how I look at my body. Because sometimes when I smell a cigarette, that hoe go to choosing again. She go to saying, don't you want to hit that cigarette? I ain't smoked cigarettes in years. So, bitch, why are you looking at this other pimp called Newport? <laughs> that's how I look at my body, man. 
Like right now, I don't want to eat no meat. But guess what this bitch go to doing? She get round chicken and shit and go to choosing. <laughs> I had to keep that hoe in her place and smack her up sometime. You know, because a pimp make the rules, not the bitch. My mind said I'm not eating meat. So when I get around all this meat and my body go to, ooh, that smell, bitch, get in, get your ass in check. <laughs> pimp smacking you. I'm going to pimp smack you. Because cause this whole like to choose, right? I told the bitch I don't eat meat. But she go to smelling that chicken and shit, the bitch go to choose. You got to smack the bitch up. <laughs> no. That's how you got to look at your body, man. That's how you got to look at your body, man. I, mean, I got to keep this bitch in check. Because this hoe gets out of line. She gets... Man, listen. Sometimes I say stuff out of my mouth that I don't even mean. That's why you got to keep the bitch in check, man. <laughs> that bitch will just utter some random. Like my mind know better than that. You know, so that's, that's how you got to look at this thing. It'll take you far looking at it like that. Got to keep this bitch in check, man. She go to choosing. I said no chicken. Soon as we pass by goddamn churches, she looking all cute. Hey, man, look here, man. Hey. <laughs> hey, that, but, that, but, but, but check this out, y'all. We are now about to get ready to open up the panel. For callers. But yeah, before we do that, and I keep saying that, I want to share this with you. Ishtar is the original Luke Skywalker. You see, the way that Luke Skywalker holding that handle is the same way we get here. They took ancient symbols and turned them into modern Hollywood. And my third eye has peeped the plagiarization. And I've been on their ass for years. So if you new here, this is what we've been doing. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. Get acquainted. Introduce yourself to the family, baby. Welcome to Flat Power. So, yeah, this is the original lightsaber. And that's why when people look at this thing, they be like, where is the handle at? She's holding a cup like a sword. Who does that, nigga? Don't nobody drink out of a cup like that. The only cup that they hold like that is the Grail cup. And that's because the Holy Grail cup ain't a fucking cup the drink out of it's a sword nigga it's an oscillator that's what the grail is it it it's electricity comes out light comes out of the grail cup you don't put things into the holy grail you pull things out of it which is how we get the concept of a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat if you look at the grail cup it shapes just like a fucking uh, a magician's hat. The grail cup shaped just like a top hat. You see what I'm saying? So that's the original. The white rabbit that we pull out of the black hat is really the white light that's born out of the black hole. Told you I got the story right. This the best syncretism on earth, nigga. Play my song. Real talk. You pull a white rabbit out of a black hat to symbolize rebirth, which is why we have rabbits during Easter time. Who is Easter? Ishtar. Who is Ishtar? This person. This statue. What does the rabbit got to do with Ishtar? Because the rabbit is the light that we pulling out the hat, which is the black hole. Rabbits don't lay eggs, man. So what are you talking about? This shit got corrupted. Check it out, man. This is the original rabbit hat, the, the rabbit hole. Ishtar is holding a black hole. And the light that comes out of the black hole 
it comes as it, it it's like a human phallus. You know how when a man have an erection, his things start rising up. That's what the obelisk is. They want you to think that the obelisk is a penis, but it's not. It's a lightsaber. It's the central nervous system. They turn the spine into the penis, which is why the word spine got the same letters as the word penis. Shout out to Awakening Minds for that uh, revelation. I don't take people's shit and don't give them credit. And, and I don't mind giving Mick niggas credit because I got so many jewels that I drop. I don't got to steal none of yours, nigga. <laughs> I wish you niggas would do that for me. I got so many fucking jewels that niggas be picking up my rubies, wearing them like they theirs. And I'd be like, wait a minute, nigga, that's my shit. Take my shit off, nigga. <laughs> I got so many jewels that I may drop some and forget I said them. And another nigga pick them up like he ain't going to remember he dropped this. And soon as I see you with it on, I'm going to remember that that's my shit, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I may have forgot I said it. But when you say it, I'm going to remember, oh, that's my shit, nigga. Quit picking my jewel. If I drop a nugget on the ground, give me my shit back. Quit being a thief. Say, hey, man, you dropped this here. I just wanted to return it. This your jewel. <laughs> and that is, Sanchez, remember when you said that cold ass shit about the soul? And I'd be like, oh, remember that. I remember, nigga, you was going in. That's because I lost one of my jewels. I, I got so many. But I love a nigga that see me drop a diamond and he got integrity. He say, man, that nigga got a lot of diamonds. He just dropped one. I'm going to give him his shit back. I ain't got to steal from him. Some niggas will say, man, look at all them diamonds that nigga got. He ain't going to miss this one. This my shit now, nigga. <laughs> like, bro, I don't care how many diamonds I got. I want my, if, give me my shit, bro. It's mine. It's my shit. I dropped it. It's not yours. Well, you got a bunch of them. It's still mine. You mean to tell me I can't have it? No, that's, that's you, th you thieving. So shout out to my niggas that know I be dropping jewels and forgetting about them. And them niggas be like on some real shit. They be like, hey, bro, you dropped this diamond, nigga. Here, this yours. I don't want your shit here. <laughs> I'm digging for my own diamonds, nigga. You already dug that one up. That's you. I don't want your shit. A lot of real niggas, they like that. And they be like, bro, I remember when you said some shit so far, and I be like, nigga, I don't even remember that. You said it, nigga. Here, get your jewel back, because now I'm re giving you your diamond back. You taught me this, Sanchez, and forgot you taught it to me. Now I'm reteaching it to you, Sanchez. Damn, that's a real nigga. Drop a bum. Because I got like 5,000 videos on social media. 5,000. Dude, think about that a minute. 5,000. That's how long I've been on the internet, man. I forget that I said shit six years ago. But yeah, this, like what I'm saying now, I've been a forgot it in a decade. Niggas will come back and be like, bro, remember when you was going in about the lightsaber and how Ishtar is the real Luke Skywalker? And I smoked so much weed, I'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you, I did a show about Luke Skywalker and Ishtar. Yeah, man, you don't remember? Um, no, what was I saying about how his, oh, yeah, okay, now I remember. People do that to me all the time, nigga. Because I teach shit and I just move on and research the next shit. But yeah, 
This oscillator is what is, is designed just like our central nervous system. Your central nervous system is creating an earthquake, which is breaking a hole into the ether above you. This oscillator does the same thing. See, the, what an earthquake opens up and the ground opens up beneath you. But the sky opens up the same way when our chakras start to shake. The word chakra, shakara, chakra is a shaking energy like an earthquake which opens up the sky. Think of the vibration. That's what your spirit is, dude. All right? Your spirit is vibrational energy. We are vibratory beings. So when we get out of our body, all of that vibration shakes up the ether. You're like Samson opening up the sky, pushing that shit back because the energy inside of you is pure vibratory energy. And like an earthquake, vibration will make a hole in the ground. Vibration will make a hole in the sky too. Vibration creates holes, period. <laughs> so the vibratory energy that's going to be released from your body upon death is literally going to be the thing that opens up the sky for you to leave. You get what I'm saying? There's no other way out of here than to release the vibration inside of you. Other than that, you just trapped. Everyone got to blow their own way out this bitch. And the bomb is inside of you. You just got to open it up. Open the third eye. Open your mind. Knowledge is power. Enough power to blow a fucking hole in the sky to let you out this bitch. So the power of our Kundalini has been reverse engineered into technology. People check it out. This is literally what your consciousness is. It's a fucking brain on a spinal cord. You can't make this up, yo. That's why I kept telling you to pay attention to the ball that's at the top, the ball at the top. Let me show you what the central nervous system is before we open it up. Let's show you what it is. Um, where's my, bear with me guys. Here it is here. Here is the central nervous system. It is the brain and the spinal cord. You see what it looked like? It looked like a lowercase I. You know why? The capital I is God. The lowercase I is the body. That's the brain and the spinal cord, dude. Now, you want to see the big I? Watch this. The inner I is the little guy. The big I, well, it's the outer guy. i show him to you. Here go your capital I. Here is the capital I. That's the big God. You see? Capital I. The capital I is the Taurus field. That's God. That's your energy. That's you. Capital form. You see it? The two hourglasses. That's the capital I. Humans don't got souls. Souls got humans. Okay? And this is why I'm showing you this. Shout out the masterpiece for that jewel. Check that out. The capital I is the energy field. The lowercase I is the human body inside the capital I. So you got a lowercase I trapped inside of a capital I. And that's the lower self which is swallowed up by the higher self. I keep telling you, big fish eat little fish. Big fish eat little fish. So the thing about it is the big fish is eating up your little fish right now. 
Yes, your body is aging every day because of this energy field turning around is creating time. This is your sun and moon. So the ether is literally eating you up. This is why we see symbols around the world of a man getting eaten up by a serpent. Matter of fact, let me show you some of those because you probably think I'm making it up. All right. Uh, let's show some of those. Let's show some of those. So bear with me. Access some next slides. See, look at here. Jonah and the whale. But see, that whale looked like a serpent, don't it? It's the Ouroboros. All of these images. Jonah and the whale is, guess what? Open up your third eye now. You don't see what I see? Watch this. See, the genie, the genie is hanging out of the fucking lamp. Pay attention to everything, man. Like I was in the military, so I've been taught to pay attention to every detail. And speaking of tail, look at his tail, detail. Pay attention to detail. The tail, nigga. Look at the tail. Jonah is a genie. And instead of giving him a tail, they just connected him with a whale, dog. Like, open up your eyes, man. Him hanging out of that whale's mouth, it's the genie hanging out of the lamp. But look, I can show you this in Samaria too, look. The God I knew is another form of the genie. Why you think he hanging outside the world? Look at him. This represents the soul leaving the earth or Jack coming out the box, the genie coming out the well. Excuse me. Jonah is genie. Jonah is genie. And if you t and you know, now watch this, right? When you say genie, when you say Jonah in a lot of cu cultures, the J is like the Y is silent. So when you say, if you know somebody named Javier, it's spelt with a J, but it's pronounced with a H. And really, you don't supposed to put the H there. It's supposed to be Javier. It's not a jalapeno. It's an jalapeno. Ala, ala. Not hala. The J and the Y is ghost letters because they refer to the hidden name of God. They ain't even real alphabets. Because the J sound, we was doing that with the G sound. The H sound was another alphabet, such as the Y. Okay, so. Wait a minute, we getting twos. Static, hold up. We sounding mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check. How we sounded, mic check. I'm gonna rewind and see where I got static at and pick up off, pick up there. I should see ones now. I still see twos. There I go the ones. There we go. Let me see where we messed up at. I'm going to rewind and see where I got static at and pick up off, pick up there. Can hold in the sky to let you out. Here go your capital I. I don't know where I start messing up at. Can y'all help me? I'll pick up right there. But basically what I was saying was, damn it, what was I saying? Throw me some um, lifelines. Oh, the J sound. Thank you, Rig Nation. Yeah. When you say Jonah, when you say Genie, it's really Ona and Eni. You don't supposed to say 
Like when you spell the word jalapeno, you put it's spelt with a J, but you're pronouncing a H. Why? Why are you pronouncing a H right there for a J? The H, the J, and the Y are all alphabets that was surrounding the God Yahweh, Yahweh, Java, Jehovah. And the H, the Y, and the J, I'm going to go into that for y'all. The J is the candy cane, Santa Claus. The J didn't always exist. We don't need a J because the G did the J job. The alphabet that we call the G, that was the original J. You see what I'm saying? So my thing is this right here, why I'm bringing that up. There is really no consonant in front of the word genie, Jonah. It is really eeny, ona. We say jalapeno, but that ain't, you don't supposed to do that. It's silent. It's supposed to be jalapeno. If you got a friend named Javier, you mispronouncing his name. It, the J don't supposed to become an H sound. That was a mistake that we kept making so it stuck. It's supposed to be nothing there. So your friend, his name ain't Javier. His name is Avier. That is a play on the word aviation, aviation, like to fly. These were uh, terms dealing with God. So what I'm telling you is, is when you say Jalapeno, what it, the first name is Allah, Alapino. Show me where a J or a Y at, and I'll show you how it relate to God. Even if it ain't got, you, you think it don't got nothing to do with God, but it does. Because if you look at a fucking jalapeno, it's shaped like a hook. It's shaped like a point, like a Santa Claus hat. The sacred geometry will show you why the word is spelt the way it's spelt, and it'll have something to do with something that you don't even think connected. That's like a cinnamon, the sand of our moon. Why is that a holiday spice? We eat more cinnamon during the holidays, and the holidays represent what? The holiday, the holy days. Your soul is sleep in a hologram. The simulation is a holographic reality for a sleeping God. Your soul is in a daze. And the days is created by the hologram. The holidays are the times where we start to celebrate our own entrapped souls. All of the holiday festivals are symbols that got you glorifying the fact that you are a damn soul. Like Halloween and all that. Carving a jack-o'-lantern. That's your soul being trapped in the body, dog. You carved your jack-o'-lantern when you was a baby in your mama's fetal bag. The soul created its avatar in the fetal bag of the mama, and then it went inside of it, just like the Chucky doll, just like the Chucky movie. And if you want to learn more about the chuck it and the siphoning the soul into the body, how the mind created the soul in the fetal bag, get my upcoming documentary on Yahweh. Be on the lookout for it, man. It should be selling off the shelves. It should, it should sell out. So check it out. Here go. The reason I told you about the J and the G is so you can see why this God, his name is Ani. That's his name, Ana, Anu, Ani, Eni is his name. And it's just you're saying the word genie without the J on it. Okay, there's another God called Janus. He got two faces because he's the genie, dude. You got two faces. You got a high self and low self. This is what Janus represent, genies. The name Janus is the name genies. The Hindu had a God to teach this same thing. 
They had an elephant god called Ganesh. The G is the J. When you say Ganesh, you're saying Janish. It's the same two-faced God. Instead of giving them two faces, they gave them two big-ass ears. Y'all, I'm really good at what I do. And if you like what I do, support it, because y'all helping this shit stay around. You, 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 it, if it ain't for y'all, this will go away. Ganesh is Janish. It's the same God, man. Don't let them play with you. Instead of having an elephant with big ears, they just give you a two-faced nigga. But the name Janish is the name Ganesh because the J and the G have been inter- interchangeable. One of the many names of God is Yod. Yep, Y-O-D, nigga, Y-O-D. I can't make that up. Yod. And if you get my documentary, you will see that etymology in there. I'm being very thorough. So when you say Yod, that becomes the word Yodi, Yogi. Because remember, and then guess what? The word Yodi and Yogi becomes the word Jodi, which is a popular name for women. But the word Jodi is the word Jedi, Jedi. Jedi, Jody, all of these names we got come from this shit. But the God that we call Janus is the God the Hindu call Ganesh. Don't let that J fool you, bro. It'll fool you. It'll make you think all of this shit different. This God called Janus is just another form of Ganesh. If you take the J and put a G, you will see how they get Ganesh and Janus. And you will see that the two ears on this elephant are the two faces of Janish. And it's teaching you the same thing about duality and about good and bad. The angel on one shoulder, the demon on the other shoulder. It's showing you what we are as demiurges. As creatures of good and evil in one body. You're a demiurge or a Janus. Now, Janus is how you get the word Anu. If you take the J off, it becomes Anu. Anus. There's another God called Anubis. Anubis. There's another God called Anunnaki. And all of these deities is just representing what I just told you. This God, his name is Anus. Anu. Now, if you put a J in front of it, guess what you get? Janu or Joni, Jonah coming out the well. I'm trying to teach you guys how I research. And I know when I'm talking, it may sound like, well, damn, this is a lot of stuff. It's complicated. Is actually not. If you listen to what I'm saying, you can do it too. You can make collages and teach these things too. It's a method to my madness, man. And anybody can be a syncretist. Just like you learned how to do everything else, you can learn this, this form of deciphering that I'm doing. And I can teach it to you. Now, if you really want that, guys, you know, just pay attention because I try my best to teach it, but you got to be paying attention. I'm showing you what I do now. I'm showing you how I know that Janus and Ganesh is the same God because I'm looking at the word. Some of y'all will say, well, that God name is Janus and that God name is Ganesh. And that's the difference between me and you. A syncretist ain't trying to say this is that and that is this. The mind of a syncretist is always trying to sync it all together because all of this shit is one hidden truth. So being a syncretist is a certain mindset you got to have. It's deeper than just I learned the technique. No, it's a mindset you got to develop. 
I can teach you my technique, but if you don't develop a syncretist mindset, you won't make as many connections with just the technique alone. Part of being a syncretist means that I can't see the difference in things. If you show me two things that don't relate at all, it is my job to find where they do relate. That's the mindset of a syncretist. You can show a syncretist an apple and an orange, and that the syncretist going to say, hey, they both got seeds in them. <laughs> the syncretist doesn't see differences. They only see the parallels on how it's the same. And if you don't get that mindset, you can't be a syncretist. Hold on a minute. So, so being a syncretist is a transformation and a, a certain mental paradigm that you must develop. And it's easy to develop. All you got to do from this day forward is stop looking for the differences in everything. And everything that's presented before you, just try to see how they the same. If everybody thought like this, we'll wake up because look, People keep looking for the differences in everything. So they say, we're the Democrat Party different than the Republican Party. And the people that syncretists, they saying, look here, man, them, them two wings on the same bird. A sleep person will say the Democrat, the left wing is different from the right wing. But they right. The left and the right wing are different. But guess what the syncretists come along and say? But they own the same bird, my nigga. <laughs> so we, we look past what's different and we say, well, look, they really the same because they both going to get us to the same destination. So a person that's woke going to say, I don't fuck with politics. I don't fuck with the left wing or the right wing. Why? Because they own the same bird. You're making your choice based on the similarities, not the differences. If you was making your choice based on the differences, you would join a group. You will say, well, they different than him with this. They standing for gay rights. They not standing for gay rights. They standing for immigration and they not standing for immigration. So I'm going to go with them because I'm for immigration or I'm going to choose them because I'm not for gay rights. So you're making your choice based on differences. But if you step back and say, what's the same about all of these groups? Guess what you will end up doing? You won't choose neither one of them motherfuckers when you do that. Because you will see they all working for the same agenda. The Democrats and Republicans. You will see that the gangs and the police work together. Mm-hmm. And I'm an ex-law enforcement officer, and I said it. <laughs> but not everybody ready for the red pill. If you tell a Christian the devil works with God, they'll think you wrong. But that's what happened. Nigga, the devil and God work together. You're not ready for the red pill, man. You lying to yourself. It's a conflict of interest, and you just need to acknowledge that. So that's the difference between the woke folks. We took the red pill and we realized politics ain't the answer. Military ain't the answer. And everybody else, they still, they don't see the syncretism to this shit. You already a syncretist when you realize all of these governments work together. You just practice syncretism, nigga. Because instead of you saying, well, that government hate that government and that government hate that government because you looking at the differences. But if you sit back and say, what all these governments got in common? They never send their rich children to war. 
They ne it's always the poor people dying. See, when you start seeing what's the same, you wake the fuck up now. But when you keep seeing what's different, you're going to be divided. A fucking bitter motherfucker choosing a political party, either black power, white power, some racial shit, and you're going to be just another divided dumbass. Because you're looking for the differences, and that's how they controlling us. Even with man and woman, we can't even have a family because we too busy looking at each other differences versus what we got in common. So it's an argument going on about where the man is the one that provides, where the woman raises the children, where the man got to build a house, where the woman got to cook the food. And we keep arguing about our differences. Well, I'm a man and I got the... If a robber break in the house, I got to get the gun. Well, I'm a woman. And when it's time to have a baby, I got the. And we are divided because we keep looking at our differences instead of what we got in common. They got us all. We can create. See, hell is the reality that we create as a collective by only focusing on our differences. Heaven is the reality we create as a collective by saying, what do I got in common with the next man? I can see the differences a mile away. He, he's white. I'm black. He got a skinny nose. I got a big old nigga nose. <laughs> we can see the differences. That's the easy shit. Well, he's white and I'm black, so I'm not fucking with him. I'm with the big nose people and he with the skinny nose people and we don't get along. The big noses don't get along with the skinny noses. <laughs> like we're literally gangbanging on different features. No, them the skinny lip motherfuckers. I'm on a child that look like me with big old lips. Nigga, I want a child that thinks better than me, not a child that looks like me. We so fucking interested on physicality and looks and shit that you're making decisions to create children that look like you, even if they think like your enemy. That boy bad, ain't he say that? Yeah, they, they want children that look like them, but they think just like the white man. They, they, they smoke op packs. The white man will shoot niggas up in the road and laugh about it. And your demon time black children doing it now. Yeah, they look like you, but they act like your enemy. That's your fucking fault. You was too busy on, I want somebody that look like me. How about we create children that think better than us? How about that? How about we say, I want a child that think better than me versus I just want a baby that look like me. That's it. Just, if he look like me, mission accomplished. <laughs> How about your goal be to make a baby that thinks better than your dumb ass did? Give a fuck if a motherfucker look like me and he can't save his people. That my child can come out looking like Drake. Long as he, on, he got my agenda in mind. <laughs> Didn't somebody ever tell you niggas that looks can be deceiving? So like I was saying right now, fuck looking like me, nigga. You need to be thinking like me.
And my boy can be white than a motherfucker long as he know who the enemy is. And that is rich versus poor. It ain't black versus white, nigga. That's why we so infiltrated. Because if a motherfucker look like you, he can get in. And it ain't no other group like that, dog. The military in America don't care if you look like them, nigga. The white boy had to go through everything I had to go through to get into the military. They weren't telling the white boys, y'all can get in, but you black folks, you got to go through basic training. No, nah, nigga, they want everybody to prove they loyalty and prove they self. They ain't looking at your color, nigga. They don't give a fuck if you a white boy. They know you still can be a traitor. They going to make you take the same oath that the nigga took. They don't give a fuck about your color, nigga. They care about your loyalty. If they thought they can trust white folks better than blacks, why, how come all colors can join the military? It don't matter what color you are, you can go get in the military. So black folks stupid thinking, if you black, I can trust you. But if you white, I can't. That's you silly. You, you simple and stupid. That's why we behind. But like I said, this God Janus, look at what he got in his name. I knew. The God Janus is the same God I knew, which Anubis, the God that's breaking up out of the vault right here. And his two faces are basically the two sides of the Taurus field. And they do this with an elephant too. But like I said, Janus is genie in Jonah. But I ain't going to keep on doing this because I'm being redundant now. But let me show you this. Here go your central nervous system. All you need to think about is the binary code, zero and one. We never say one and zero. We say zero and one because the zero come first, which is the brain. Then the one come later, which is the spinal cord. The sacred geometry of the zero and one plays out all over. Check this out. Zero and one. Can you see it? You got a ball at the top that's mounted on a pole. So you got a little skinny pole with a ball at the top. And the electricity comes out the top at the little ball that's at the top. Why am I bringing that up? Look at this, man. This tool was built off your spinal cord. See, these little sections that you see, those are like your spinal cord disc. Electricity is going up your spinal cord to reach the seat of the soul, which is the brain. And, it, and this rod, when, when all the electricity gets to the top, it, it's, it, it's in that little ball right there. And when they hit you with it, you feel it. Your body made the same way, dude. Your body, when I say think of a little pole with a ball at the top, that's an oscillator. That's what this is, a lowercase i. Just keep that sacred geometry in your mind, a lowercase i. That's the central nervous system technology. Just like this one, a lowercase i, you see? Just like your central nervous system, a lowercase i. Look at it, a lowercase i. They reverse engineered the lowercase i. Look at it. And I'm using the lowercase i just so you can get this sacred geometry in your mind. The lower case is the underworld. The upper realm or heavenly realm is capital letters. Okay? God name is written in all caps. Whenever you see God name written in lower case, it's because God is saying that he's in a form of a man or a leader. This is the way that they used to uh, do government. We, we not our bodies in the original government system. This is where we get the whole concept of your straw man and all that. Cause you not your body, right? When we were interdimensional creatures going from different universes to different universes, you just couldn't go by one name in that world. 
Think about what I'm saying. In the ancient world, humans was get out of their body and they were multidimensional souls traveling through the multiverse. So if you got taken to court, a motherfucker would say, who are you? Even though they looking at your name. And that's the same tradition we got in court today. When they say, are you such and such? And you got to be like, yeah, that's who I am. You know why they do that? Because in the ancient day, when they summon you to court, they was talking about your spirit. You don't summon a fucking fleshly being. You summon spirits. So whenever you get brought to court, you get a summons. Because in the ancient world, they needed to know who I'm talking to. Because they know you ain't your body. All of us can get out of our body, even the jury, even the judge. In that kind of world, a person will literally be looking dead at you. They'll see your name, but guess what they'll say? Who are you, sir? We still practice these same rituals and traditions, but they don't got the same meaning that they used to have. Because we're not multidimensional anymore. So we just going through the motions for real. That's the reason they ask you that dumb question like, who are you? Even though they looking at your name. Because that's the name of your body, your straw man. It ain't the name of your soul. When you were summoned to court, they wanted to deal with your soul and not your body. And your soul is a representative for your flesh package. So they was asking you, who are you? Because back in the day, people was body swapping. Meaning, my body can show up to court, but I might not be in it, nigga. My cousin may be using my body today. Body swapping technology is back on the earth now. People been swapping bodies, getting out the body, taking their consciousness out. This is old knowledge. It was, it was very common in the ancient world, which is why, like I said, when you were summoned to court, they weren't talking about your body. You can't hold trial for a fucking uh, inorganic like, I can't hold court for a telephone or an ink pen. What's giving your body life is the soul in it. So if I'm, if I'm saying, listen, I want to hold you responsible for a crime you committed. In the old world, they were saying, look, your soul is controlling your body. Your avatar committed a crime. And we need to make sure that your soul was inside of that body. We need to prove that it was you in that body that did it. Now, today, if you say, well, I was possessed by a demon that did the murder, they'll laugh at you and throw the book at you. Back in the day, they would say they would have ways to prove it. That, hey, that wasn't really him in his body. He was in another universe. Someone else, a body snatcher, they hacked him. They hacked his computer and did some bank fraud on it. So he good. Because even though it's his computer, he wasn't the one using it. A hacker took control over it. So it, well, it is some truth to, well, a demon made me do it. I was possessed. Because back in the day, they was fucking with deep technology, bro. They was body swapping and shit. Today they call it deep faking, but we going back to body swapping. Today they can deep fake your ass and commit a crime and, and get rid of the deep fake and everybody think it's you. Man, body snatching is a real thing. Don't y'all, hey, don't trip not. That's real shit, bro. People are fucking stealing people's body. It'll be a whole nother you commend bank robberies. And then they'd be like, we're, we're looking for this guy and we can't find him. And you showing up everywhere, folks like, here he go, nigga. <laughs> it's a whole nother motherfucker.
I believe shit like that. Even the Asians talked about Doppler gangers and shit. So, you know, it's just a lot of deep things about reality that we need to talk about and be open-minded for. And that's why I'm doing the video. Again, uh, I think that's everything as far as the slides go. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the call line, man. Kept you waiting too long. Let me see here. This is one thing I want to break this news today, right? Check this out. There are too many celestial events taking place back to back, and it means something. I do believe that we're in a man-made simulation and that the people in power are using devices to control the thing, the weather, the sun, the moon. I think all of that is man-made shit that man made and he's maintaining and controlling. A lot of people can't, they like, they ain't there yet with it. But trust me, truth is stranger than fiction. So we having all these great eclipses and we having all these alignments take place. And this stuff is out of place. This, this stuff is, is like it's don't supposed to be happening. It's like someone controlling it. Just like the last eclipse we had. It wasn't natural at all. That's what I'm saying. I don't think nothing is natural about this place at all. Nothing. And why should it be if we say we in a simulation? What's real in a simulation? Nothing. The last eclipse, it showed me something. Because that thing made an L and it wasn't predictable. And my thing is, we got another event coming up that's even more bizarre. Check it out. Let's read. It say T Corona Borealis, a binary star system located 3000 light years from Earth, is a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. And if the recurring nova follows its usual pattern, we can expect to see a new, albeit temporary star appearing in our night sky any day now. Oh, my God. Now, people, I ain't no damn expert but i know one thing nigga we don't just see new stars out of no fucking where i want y'all to read that what i highlighted in blue these people saying any day now we can just see a new star just pop up in the fucking sky out of nowhere now listen all of us flat earthers know that space is fake we know that it ain't no stars up there and that is all holographic. So whatever we seeing is definitely not natural. It's some NASA doing. It's blue beam technology. They're firing up CERN. They're practicing with blue beam. And now when they convince you, well, we just going to start seeing shit in the sky spontaneously. That's priming the world to get ready for blue beam. Because now we finna start seeing unpredictable, spontaneous shit in the sky. And they started that with the UAP shit. They're trying to normalize this mentality that we don't know what's up there. And we're going to be seeing things up there that we don't know about. And basically, we're just going to be seeing shit up there out of nowhere. So if we all outside one day and we just see a fucking bright star, star just boom, bust it, bust up in the sky. They already got they lie ready, baby. That's what I keep telling y'all, nigga. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man, you going to be the only woke motherfucker on your block. Because let's say this shit happened tonight. Everybody chilling, boom. All of a sudden, it's nighttime. It just get bright real quick and go back to night. We walk outside like, what the fuck was that? You saw that flash of light? And you see everybody looking up. And they look up and see a bright-ass star in the sky that's way brighter than Polaris. Damn near a new sun. That's what they saying. They saying... When this star become visible, it's just going to pop out of nowhere. And that when we see it, 
It's going to be brighter than Polaris. It's going to be the brightest star in the sky. And it's just going to go away. That, that don't sound right. We just chilling. Next thing you know, a big bright ass star pop up in the sky and fade away. That's what they said we're going to see coming up. And they don't know when, but they telling you any day now we're going to see it. And it make me think that they're firing up some kind of machinery and they don't know when it's going to. It's kind of like I got a gun in my hand, right? And I'm squeezing the trigger real slow. So I don't know when the gun going to go off. But I know it's going to go off any day now. Pow, there it go. It's going to catch me off guard too. Even though I'm the nigga with the gun. Because I'm squeezing the trigger so slow. Uh, I don't know when it's going to go off. And this is kind of like what they doing with their research. They doing some things with these Hadron Colliders. They don't know when these things going to go full hyperbolic. They don't know that. That's the unpredictable thing of it. But what they do got, what they do know is when they shoot that beam of light out of that motherfucker, it's going to light up the sky. So with that information for damage control, you know what I would tell people? Hey man, any day now y'all can see a new wonder in the heavens. Any day now, you're going to see a star light up the sky and just disappear. In your lifetime, have you ever saw this, y'all? I've been living a long time. Now, they'll tell you, you just witnessed the death of a star. That don't make sense. I'm going to tell you why. You didn't see the star before it exploded. Now, they'll tell you, well, when the star explodes, it's more visible. It's more, you know, an explosion is going to light everything up, right? And so my question would be, if a star 3,000 light years away can make my entire sky light up for a brief second, that motherfucker bright than a motherfucker. Man. Ooh, that's a bright motherfucker. 3,000 light years away, you can't even see it with your telescope. But you telling me it's exploding and it lit up my sky on Earth. It, that ain't mathing right. That, the, I'm not the kind of nigga you can tell anything and I go with it. I've been questioning scientists since a boy because I was always the smart nigga in class. I would bring up shit my teacher didn't even think about. And they'll be like, man, Broderick, this, that's interesting. So I never been the nigga to just get the answer right and don't question shit. And the teacher liked it me more for that than just the niggas who didn't question. They say something special about him. The teacher show us one way to do the problem and I'll show the teacher another way that I found out. That's the kind of nigga I was. And the other students, will be, the, the teacher didn't show us that way, Broderick. So nigga is more than one way. Like, that's what makes a genius from just another employee. That's why some of y'all going to be working for another man your whole life. Nigga, challenge authority. Nigga, be a badass. Niggas be want to be gangster with everything else. Nigga, look at them wrong. They want to fight. They want to be tough. They challenge everything, but they don't want to challenge a scientist. Like, nigga, I ch anybody can get it. What are you talking about? Why don't niggas keep that same energy for the fucking scientists and pastors? Niggas will challenge you on who the best, LeBron or Jordan. But they won't challenge the pastor on if Jesus real or fake. I ain't going to do that, man. You stepping on people religions. So, nigga, step on it with dirty shoes and do a dance. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it ain't my religion. So I can step on it, nigga. It ain't mine. So now y'all got a heart now. 
Keep your gangster energy with this intelligent, with this intellect shit too, nigga. I didn't lose my street energy when I learned all this shit. I brought that same energy to NASA, nigga. You in the streets, you don't believe none a nigga tell you. You questioning everything. But if a fucking scientist tell you something, you just believe it. Nigga, you ain't no street nigga then. You're a nerd. You're a goofy. You're a cornball. Because niggas who, who really about that life, you can't just tell them shit, bro. You got to show them everything. And you could be like, but I'm an astrophysicist. I don't give a fuck. I'm a street nigga. And you got to show me, Mr. Astrophysicist. <laughs> That's what I like about street niggas. You can't tell them anything. So a nigga may think that he's a street nigga, but dog, some of y'all are just tough guys. I give you that. You're bad asses. A street nigga ain't necessarily got to be a tough guy or a badass. He just a nigga that can survive in the streets. That's all. When I say I'm a street nigga, it don't mean that I'm tough. It don't mean that I'm gangster. It just means I can survive in the streets, nigga. I'll be okay. You can drop me off in any hood, any ghetto. I'm going to be good because I'm a street nigga. I, I'm going to find my way around the streets, nigga. I'm going to be fine. It don't mean I'm going to win every fight or that I'm the toughest nigga. It just means I know how to survive in less desirable conditions. And people in those conditions, they got to use their mind, bro, to make it out of them conditions. So don't put your guard down when you're dealing with scientists and experts. That's why they can bring them into the hood to poison everybody. Because y'all let y'all guard down on a nigga with a suit on. Snake oil salesmen come through the hood and sell out all of their snake oil. Because niggas in the hood only question you if you another nigga from the hood. Niggas in the hood only play like that with other niggas in the hood. They don't do it with the astrophysicists and the, and the fucking experts. But if you niggas had that same street mentality with everything in life, not only will it help you survive the hood, It'll help you survive America because America ain't nothing but a big ghetto. So why are you leaving your ghetto mentality at home when you go out to play with America? That's when you need it the most with your dumb ass. Got all them street smarts and you leave them at home when you go to the interview. You a dummy. If them street smarts made you make it out of Compton, nigga, you can find your way through Wall Street with them same smarts, dummy. <laughs> a motherfucker that's born in a rich family can't make it out the streets. Nigga, you making it out of some of the toughest environments in the world. Because you a street nigga. And when you make it out, you get rid of your street mind. That's dumb as fuck. That's dumb as fuck, nigga. Like, I don't get that in the world today. That we only use the street mind in the streets. You supposed to use that shit in Wall Street, too. You know why? Wall Street is still a street, nigga. It's called Wall Street. <laughs> street niggas own all these blocks, and they ain't occupied Wall Street. What the fuck? <laughs> You ain't a street nigga, nigga. That, that, that what, what? God damn it, son. Keep that street shit. Keep that same energy, nigga. We need street niggas talking to these motherfucking experts. I bet you they, they, they sing a different term, time. You can't lie to a street nigga. He going to see all through that shit like, bro, my, bro, you, you plan. You can't run no game on him because he already took hella losses. He saw all the games that the devil used. 
Only way you got over on that street nigga, because he thought he needed to leave his street smarts at home. Not because you smarter than him. Because if a nigga's smart enough to make it out of some of the environments we're born in, it ain't shit they can't do, nigga. That's just facts. Because you're born in some areas that's designed for your ass to be in hell or jail before you're 21. You born in areas where everybody taking advantage of everybody. If you ain't questioning everybody, you ain't believing shit in the streets, nigga. I don't believe none you saying. In fact, niggas got to put it on a mama, grandma. That's how we grew up. Drop a one. Niggas say, man, they giving out free food over there. Guess what we say? Put it on your mama, nigga. On mama. Put it on your gang. It can be the simplest shit. We don't just believe what you say in the streets. You got to put it on some, nigga. You say they having a party around here. It's going to be a lot of holes there on your mama, on grandma, on your mama, on your children. That's what niggas going to say. That's street politics, though. Some niggas think, well, they just doing that to look cool. Nigga, that's just how we live in the streets. That's how we know you ain't bullshitting. It's a lot of cap in the streets. When you put it on your motherfucking son, then we don't ask you no more questions. We know you ain't lying. That's just the way how street niggas made a code to cut the, the, the bullshit. Because if I say put it on your mama, and you put it on your mama, and you lying, we going to beat you up for your mama, nigga. And don't fuck around and put it on the gang or put it on something that's, you really getting fucked up. That's why the gangs do that. It's a, it's a, our own system of policing and making sure niggas ain't lying. So the streets go through all that trouble to make sure a nigga ain't just telling me something out his mouth. But a scientist can come up to you and say, we put fluoride in your water because it's good for you. And a street nigga will say, man, the expert said it. Where your degree at? And I'm like, you ain't a street nigga. You really a fucking sheeple. You really a fucking uh, complying ass uh, coward who just a shoot. Like, you're not tough because you will shoot other niggas and, and, and all that. The bravest thing you can do is question the powers that be, nigga. None of y'all ain't tough if you ain't doing that, nigga. Because when you out here killing niggas and shooting at them, everybody fuck with you. You get promoted for that. Everybody like a gangster. Don't nobody like a nigga that's asking too many questions. And you know that. <laughs> People like the shooters and the gangsters more than they like the bro Sanchez's. Because every time bro Sanchez come around, we got the thinking shit and we don't like using our brain. Nigga don't want to be doing all that thinking, man, all that thinking and shit and studying. Pass the blunt, nigga, like damn. <laughs> you know, they rather kick it with the shooters. At least the shooters and the killers ain't going to make them think. Yeah, they rather be around the goons, nigga. I ain't got to do no thinking around the shooters. They, they more likely to run you up out the hood for making everybody think than for putting everybody children in a gang. They'll protect the OGs and get rid of the damn nerds. The nigga in the hood saying, man, we need to question everything. I don't think they telling us the truth. Guess what the gangsters telling him? Why the fuck would they lie to us? And I'm like, nigga, you're really not a gangster. That's so not a gangster question. A real gangster would never ask a question, why would a nigga lie to me? Real gangsters assume everybody lying to me, nigga. What are you talking about, you soft guys? You think that the powers that be is telling your gangster ass the truth. You a fucking weirdo. <laughs> This nigga saying, why would the government lie to me? But he making a nigga he grew up with put it on his mama. Put it on your children. On your baby mama. On your son, you telling the truth. 
You making a nigga you grew up with every day swear on his mama's grave. And you asking that same nigga, why would the government lie to me? You're backwards than a motherfucker, boy. The world backwards as hell. The world is so backwards, nigga. They will make a nigga they grow up with every day put it on his baby to see if he's telling the truth. And they'll believe everything a scientist say, who they never met, who working for their enemy and the government. And they'll ask you some dumb shit like, why would they lie? To stay in control, nigga. The government is a gang. If you see the government like another gang, you won't ask me them silly ass questions. Why would your gang, why would another gang lie to y'all? Because y'all fight for territory. Y'all fight for money and, and, and control in the community. And the government is a gang fighting for the same thing. The government won't control. They want property. Everything your gang want, the government won't. And, and everything your gang do to get it, the government do to get it. They, they, they recruit people and initiate them in to work for them when they young. They got a rank structure like the gang. Why don't the gang see the government like a gang? It's amazing to me how gang members can hate the police but take everything that the scientists say hook, line, and sinker when the scientist is the one telling the government that we need more police in the hood because science shows that people born in these conditions, they really ain't human like the rest of us. They more prone to violence. Science is, listen, it's amazing to me that I've argued with gang members who defended NASA. And I'm like, bro, the same science that you're defending is the reason why gang members go through what they're going through. It's scientists that's telling the government that eugenics, right? People born into gangs, it ain't no hope for them. We need to lock them up, throw away the key. Because if you're born in these neighborhoods and these gangs, you can't be saved. You Basically, the only thing we can do is lock you up. Now, gang members know that ain't true. But guess what? Science is saying that. So why are y'all defending science? If you don't agree with science, that gang members are everything that the eugenicists say, why do you agree with them on anything else? Question all of that shit. Question all of it. Because when you laugh at, when you say something to me like, why would they lie about that? Bro, to stay in control. Because the government is about maintaining power. And they do it with lying, nigga. Duh. These are questions that gang members shouldn't be asking. You know why you asking these questions? Because you don't take your street smarts into science. Because you're dumb. Niggas say you only use your street politics with other street niggas and you're dumb. The same, listen, the mafia and the mob, they had a mob mentality. A mafia mentality. They took that mentality into the corporate world, nigga. They took their mob mentality into politics. They didn't leave that shit that in, the, in the streets. They took their same mob mentality into government. And that's why our government the way it is, full of gangsters, nigga. Why do our gangsters don't do that? Why our gangsters are only gangster in the hood with their own people? Why don't they gangsterism ever spill into world conquest like the white man did? Like y'all got what I call limited gangsterism. You will turn up on other gangsters and niggas look like you. But you never think big and go to the real enemy. Like, I don't get it. You're going to die anyway. Whether a blood kill you or a fucking some entity kill you for fighting for your people. But 
Who am I? Just a dumb flat earther, right? What the fuck do I know? All I know is this some bullshit right here. You telling me we're going to see a celestial wonder and we don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen one of these nights. And I know people are going to go crazy. People are going to see the sky light up one night. I'm telling y'all, I'm giving it to you first before it happened. And everybody going to be going viral talking about it. And I'm going to be like, bro, they've been talked about that. Do you think it's Nibiru? Do you think there's going to be so many pseudo topics come out of this sighting? Is it aliens? Is it Nibiru? And guess what? We're going to know what they said. A star exploded. Now, we know that it ain't no stars exploding up there. It's machines that they testing on the earth. And, 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 when they test, create an event that's seen worldwide, they need an excuse for it. Oh, well, that was just a star that exploded. This is machinery and devices that they're using in the ionosphere. And they've been doing it since Operation Paperclip. People were seeing weird shit in the sky during the 40s. If you was living on the earth during Hitler's time, you would have saw some strange shit in the sky because they was testing a lot of this technology. And they was telling people back then it was aliens. If they was telling them it was aliens, y'all. Today they telling us what we seeing in the sky is aliens. And I'm like, well, damn, aliens show love to kick it around military bases. <laughs> These goddamn aliens know how to find Fort Wayne and Fort Bragg. Goddamn, they GPS be leading them right to the Air Force bases and Army bases. Goddamn, these aliens know how to find a military base, don't it, boy? <laughs> like, goddamn, like we know the military is testing all kind of shit. Shit they don't want us to know about. And, and, and when we see this stuff, oh, it's just aliens. Well, if it's aliens, why ain't y'all on pins and needles to go police the sky, motherfucker? That's why I know it ain't no aliens up there, because I know how y'all are. If three niggas show up in a white neighborhood, they gonna have police everywhere. Do you guys live here? Let me see your ID. And you telling me aliens from other planets just showing up at military bases and we don't give a fuck? You mean to tell me if Tyrone show up at the Air Force base, Y'all going to treat that nigga like a terrorist if he don't got a military ID, but an alien can just walk right in that bitch and have fun like he want to. <laughs> they got more security measures on humans than aliens. That's how I know y'all full of shit. You, oh, that's just aliens. Okay, so these aliens seem to be getting into Area 51, but I can't, nigga. You telling me all this shit we seeing is aliens, but we seeing the shit go to Area 51. We seeing these aircrafts land at Langley Air Force Base. So my question is, how the fuck the alien get a military base pass and I can't get one and I was in the fucking military? <laughs> Goddamn, nigga. The aliens can be in top secret locations. And a nigga can't even go to the park without having to show an ID. Man, them ain't no alien. Nigga, if them was aliens, y'all would be launching aircraft all in the sky trying to ID them motherfuckers. What planet you from? Why are you in this airspace? Can you park your shit right now? We're going to shoot it down, nigga, right now. <laughs> You mean to tell me these motherfuckers that's hell bent on control and police and shit, they just saying, ah, oh, them just aliens, ain't nothing to see, that's just aliens coming to Earth. Really? 
and y'all ain't acting like niggas showing up in Beverly Hills? <laughs> what the fuck? Aliens are showing up the earth and y'all are chilling. If two niggas show up in Beverly Hills, it's going to be like a terrorist motherfucking activation. But aliens can just party in the sky. Let a nigga buy a jet and just fly it in the sky. Come on, man. We got a bunch of rich niggas with jets. Every airplane in the sky is accounted for, nigga. These people don't play about that shit. Boy, they control freaks. They're control freaks. Ain't no airplane in the sky right now that they don't know about. And who driving it? And you telling me these kind of control freaks just going to be, oh, them just aliens. They just aliens. Show me your ID, nigga. What are you doing on this property? <laughs> but officer, look at all these aliens in, the, on our pro, in our world, man, infringing on our earthly property. You ain't ID'd E.T. yet. E.T. don't need ID, man. This is fucking human racial. It ain't racial discrimination. It's earthling discrimination, nigga. We mad because the aliens get to fly in the sky without IDs. They don't get to have an airspace license. We boycott, nigga. Starting tomorrow, every black man with a jet, fly that bitch like you want to. Cut your radar off, nigga. Fuck a ID. And if they say something, say, bitch, you let the aliens do it. How the fuck you're letting aliens fly over military bases and you don't care? But my black ass can't fly my private jet over Las Vegas Strip without a bunch of fucking permits. Fuck out of here, man. Fuck out of here, man. Let's drop the call in link. You, you're not going to run this kind of game on, on, not, not on my watch. If you fucking with me, nigga, you ain't falling for this dumb shit. We seeing clean through this bullshit here, man. Let's get the, the callers up. Y'all want to have some fun? I said we wasn't going to do a round table, but we are because I need to take a smoke break. And I was thinking to myself, with the energy and the tone, a round table will be good for today. Because I've talked a lot, and so we can have, I've been on it for six hours. So, yeah, let's do a round table. And let's let the people come up and have a think tank. Because six hours of me entertaining you, giving you knowledge, and just giving you a bunch of stuff to think, I'm never going to let you down, right? You subscribe to me because you like this kind of content. You like the way that I teach. You like my joking. You like my energy. And all I'm doing is going to learn how to be me better for you. That's it. You don't got to do too much to a good product because it's good. I'm letting the callers on. Come on, flat motherfucking power, man. Come on up. Holler at your boy. And tell me what's on your mind and let's let's politic. Let's get my flat power family on, man. Flat motherfucking power. Where my people's at, man. I need some company. Let's chop it up, man. What's on y'all mind? Matter of fact, while I let the people on, I'm going to go here. I'm gonna step right here. And I'm going to uh say, say that. What's good? Go ahead, cut your YouTube video off. I wish y'all niggas would start camming up, but it's all good. I like to see you niggas on camera, but hey, man, it, every now and then, nigga oh, can't cam up. We got you. We got you. If you can't cam up, don't cam up. I want to thank everybody in the chat room. I can see that we got some new people out there because they like six hours. Nigga, six hours is short for us. A long stream for flat power is about 10 hours. Yeah. What's good, though, brother? What's good, my brother? You got it's it, good. man. Hey, man, today my birthday, too, dog. Imagine that. 
Damn, happy birthday, my brother. Happy See motherfucking what I'm birthday. You know what I'm she. saying, dog? But, hey, about the weather weapons and shit, man, it, I, I like you was on that because they had a big old ass anomaly in the ocean. I don't understand if y'all knew it or seen it. Have you seen the shit? They said it had 85 foot waves, but that was a direct energy weapon. Man, hey, man, day my birthday, too, dog. Imagine that. I got you. Happy birthday, my brother. Happy We got people joining, so excuse me, because when they come on, you know, they, they was watching the show, so we're going to get feedback. So let's let everybody, to, to the brother that was talking, you can unmute to my birthday, boy. I just had to mute them up as they come on. But, yeah, you can unmute. No, nah, I respect that. You know, it's all good. But, yeah, about the, uh, I don't know if you've seen that anomaly they had down there. It said it started off by Antarctica. And it ended in Africa, and it had generated like eighty-five foot waves. And um, I want to say I Damn. can't think of the exact the part hey. of Africa that it I, affected, I, but it I, was. I, I just gotta tell the people something. When you say a eighty-five foot wave, we can't scam over that. A lot of people can't fathom what that looked like. And I'm gonna just tell y'all something, people. Think of a skyscraper in the form of a fucking wave in other words a 85 story building think of a building with 85 floors on it that's what we're saying a wave that big people now you get an idea that this ain't no i hate to use the word natural because we use the word natural in place of predictable if we can't predict something we say it ain't natural. That wasn't a natural event, right? We tend to use the word natural in synonym with predictable. And we got to stop doing that because nothing is natural about a simulation. We in a simulation, but we be saying, man, is that natural or is that unnatural? And to be honest, either we in a simulation or we not. If we're in a simulation, the question of what's fake or real go out the door. Everything fake. Right. But no, nah, I don't know. Did you see it? You could probably pull that shit up, man. It was all over the internet for like a week. Yeah, but, 85 foot wave. I'm going to Google it now. It's so much but shit listen, been happening. The shit crazy though, but what I was trying to make people understand is that's a direct energy weapon, man. They're utilizing the shit in every way. You know what I'm saying? They're burning up all of the everything. I didn't you know, know they, they shoot. Yeah, man, that shit real, man. They 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 doing a lot. Of, and see, we so limited by our information that that we get in America. You know, they only gonna show us what they want us to see. And you really have to be the type of person that care about real information to see other people' point of view. But I ain't heard nobody call it the direct energy weapon. But all of the wildfires done been direct energy weapons, and they done burnt down damn near the whole world. Over the last five years, they've been they've been practicing with the direct energy shit all over everywhere, and yeah. it's just crazy. But the, tri the the tripping shit to me is we sit back and watch it, man. Everybody just breeze past it like, goddamn, can't we do anything to stop these motherfuckers? Like y'all ain't gonna do nothing. I mean, even motherfuckers in the military, it's like, ain't y'all like, nigga, you niggas know how to fly aircrafts and like all but this hold crazy up, but, but shit. Listen. Like, but guess what else they know how to do? Take orders and do what the fuck they're told. Ain't lying. What? And so indoctrination. We may say it's the military gonna help us. It's gonna be the same question you ask with anybody else. It's gonna boil down is would the military break their programming? Because if I say it's the world gonna help us truthers fight the liars, well they will if they uh um break their programming. You feel me? It's everybody's yep. program. And, and and it's all about them being efficient for the people is only at the mercy of they programming. You only and, be, be, pro yeah. programming got to be some shit like, because you got to think, they got families. You would think a motherfucker will stop and kill. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know don't. what I found out being in the military, man? I found this out, bro. If a person is willing to kill a stranger's family, in the name of their country, they'll be willing to turn in their own for it. Now, that sounds crazy. Guess what I'm telling you? If a person joined Crip or Blood 
and they willing to kill random niggas because they wearing a different color, they don't give a fuck about putting a bandana on their son head. They will put their son in the military. They want their daughter to be in the crip in the blood. So look, you're right. And my thing is, if you are a soldier and willing to die for a corporation, your ignorance got you not even valuing your life. And if you don't value your life, you ain't going to value your children's life. You will tell your son, join the army because they got good benefits and shit like that when he can die for a cause that ain't even serving him and his people. He ain't lying. That's true. And I'm and I'm and I'm I was in the military. And, and 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 joining it at 18, I can tap back into my mindset and say these answers to you and be real and let you know where where's where, where the real deal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that makes so, yeah. sense to me. Yeah, man, a motherfucker joining the military desperate. They trying to get out the hood, nigga. And 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 a person in that kind of mindset, they ready to take orders. Tell me what to do so I can show you. I can do it better than any other soldier you command. Dead that's the right. mind. You that's feel just me? How they act. Right. That's how they act. And, and, and that's so, how the police act too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I want to prove to this organization that I'm so loyal to it. Cause that's how I get promoted. That's how I get my rank. And when you that's a you. child, man. Yeah. yeah. That's why they get you when you a child, because children feel like we got to prove everything. Like to your peers, when you grow up, you say, well, I don't got to prove shit to nobody. But when you a child, you trying to prove yourself. And, and, yep, and even and, to your siblings. And they use that against you, brother. Because when you join the military and that this going to really pr- put that over you like, look, man, you got to prove yourself if you want to make rank. And in a police case, that's how you get all of these dirty ass cops Plan dope on niggas, doing all this shit, because why? If the police telling me I got to prove myself by locking niggas up, but niggas ain't doing that many crimes, I'm going to make niggas do some crimes. Right. Because right. I got to prove They laws right. around the way we live. And you may get mad at the police, get mad at the system. Because the system telling the police, if you don't write this many tickets every year, we fucking with you. The shit roll downhill, so now he going to fuck with you. And you like, man, I'm just trying to get the work. I wasn't doing that, but three three over. Like, you going to trip with me? You really going to write me a ticket, sir? Come on, man. You cut him a break last week. And he got a quota to me. You the damn hot potato. It landed on you, nigga. The city got bills to pay. So... It's all about me making money for the city. And the city may say something like, we got a budget over here that's in deficit. How can we make money to pay that? And guess what they'll say? Okay, let's increase parking fines at the mall. Yeah, that's crazy. They do so shit when, like that. Right. When we, when we increase the parking fines at the mall... The broke people going to be like, man, I'm barely making ends. Me, I can't afford a $500 fucking fine just for a parking spot. Sorry. It's just a, a business, dude. You know what I'm saying? So they yeah. may say we need to raise more money for such and such. How can we get more money? Okay, let's do more uh, traffic stops in the ghetto. That's going to be at least a more of millions in fines right there. You see what I'm saying? So this yeah, how the, yeah. the police is a business for the city, man. Real talk. It ain't protecting and serving. It's fine ways to extract fines and money out of the people for the, 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 to enrich the city. Yeah, shit, crazy. But, yeah, man, they, they playing with these weapons on our ass, though, man. They done had earthquakes all over the world. Yeah. Damn, near every part of the world done had an earthquake. Even before the, the uh, eclipse, and immediately after, mm-hmm. and some people was having them during the motherfucking eclipse. But like I say, they only tell you on the news and on regular media the shit they want you to. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So the shit crazy out here, man. They trying to kill us, but it's like we are gonna sit back and let them. They ain't trying to kill us, nigga. They killing us. They killing us yeah. <laughs> right off the rip. 
You got that shit, though, man. I was cleaning up my room, man. Let me finish cleaning up, man. One of y'all take over, man. Man, hey, love, flat power. Say, flat, flat power. Say that. Flat power. Say that. Flat power. Flat power. Say that shit. You, was, you talking about that thing that they saw in the water, that big old black thing that was moving yeah. from um, Antarctica up to Africa? Yes, sir. That was a direct energy weapon. And you said you, you said you said that was an energy weapon. I never knew yes, what that sir. was. Oh, word. Yep. Yeah, they got the biggest, the biggest direct energy weapon they got is in Antarctica, bro. You can go find out. You can look this shit up. I'm talking about. Now, I ain't got no slides and shit to put you up on, but I guarantee you, if you were to just take a look, about 15, 20 seconds to look this shit up, you'll find. They, yeah, yeah, they got all kind of shit. And it's a big reason why we can't go to Antarctica. Nobody get to go to what they consider Antarctica. It's because that's where they at with the shit. That's where all of the main facilities that fall, their weaponry, all of the shit that they don't want you to see. You can't go because you can't go. Is that real? That's funny because that, that's the one thing that all the governments agree on is no one's allowed in Antarctica. It's the only treaty that ain't <laughs> ever been broken. <laughs> Time to pop some baby's cherries. Time to red peel some newbies right quick. Now watch this. Here, oh, here, here go. Notice this now. They got a treaty at the middle of the earth, and they got a treaty around the earth. So we basically surround it from the inside out. Now my question is, do here what well, it ain't my question, here go my theory. My theory is we're in a simulation. And when you get to the middle of the earth, you gon' your fuck you're gonna realize right that the you that's walking to the middle of the earth is just a hologram, and you're gonna be getting close to the projector machine that's projecting the simulation. You're gonna realize this world ain't physical. My thing is, if you was to go to the North Pole right now, it'll be like the movie they clone Tyrone. You'll probably see your fucking real body. This just your hologram that's being projected. This is your dream body. As your real body is at the North Pole sleep, nigga, hooked up to what they call the tree of life. I'm telling you, if we go to the North Pole, we'll see a big ass tower with all of our sleeping bodies on it, nigga. That's my thing. And it, that'll ruin the game. We're in a simulation and a game. The people that's running the game just like they got this stuff in Vegas where you can have these gaming experience, IMAX and shit. When you put the goggles on, you got to have some protection like a referee's like, think about this. Put all us on a football field and we got virtual reality goggles on, right? And in our virtual reality, we running fast, chart doing all this stuff. Guess what? You would need a big pole in the middle of the field and you would need some cushion on the outside. In other words, you would trap the gamers in a donut. And the reason you would do that is because just say you got a bunch of people running, a bunch of people moving freely, but they don't see the real world. They inside of virtual reality goggles. They can wander off of the board. If I'm in a virtual dome, IMAX game, gaming arena, when they put them goggles on me, I can't see the real world. No, I don't see the Truman Show dome that I'm gaming in. I only see this big reality in my goggles. So guess what I'm going to need? I'm going to need people in the dome to not wear goggles. And they're going to have to be able to see the real reality and protect us from it. Because look, just say my game lead me way to the fucking edge. Well, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to bump into an artificial fucking wall. And if I'm going fast, I might crash, explode. If I'm in an airplane, guess what? I'm going to kill myself. And I'm thinking, hey, man, it's mo earth, most sky ahead of me, but it's an invisible wall that I'm about to run into. Boom! And the game stopped there. And my thing is, if it ain't nobody to turn you around, It'll just people, it'll be people dying all the time, nigga. Because people will be flying airplanes to the edge in boats. And what'll happen is when you get to the edge of the earth, it ain't no sign that say you at the edge. 
it looks like you can keep going, but you can't. It's like an invisible barrier, like in a video game. And if you don't see that, which you ain't going to see it, it'll just be people crashing into that all the time with no treaties. And we'll be yep. like, why the folks, why the fuck so many people just dying like that every day? And and it'll be like, yo, they running into the wall, the, the barrier, and it'll expose the game. It could be some shit like it's an electrical barrier, I meaning it'll fry your ass if you get too close to it. And they know that. Let me ask you a question. So when you talk about all of us asleep at the North Pole, which I, I can agree with, but what about wildlife and animals? Are they tied to the simulation? Do they know it's not real or a game as well? Or, they, or that's the exception to the rule of when it comes to wildlife and animals? I would assume they're just programs, right? Part of the That's a good market. question. That's a really good question. Uh, I, I would assume that they're just uh, programs, a part of the uh, hive mind. See, well, I, don't, I, don't I don't think animals unless... are just. I don't think animals are just part of the program because I'm convinced that animals have souls. I was um, just about to say a soul, that. A soul, unless a soul they have means, souls, a soul, a soul only mean that you have a mind, you got a thought, will, and emotions, and we know animals got emotions like a motherfucker. So, so yeah. I think I think they are real entities. I don't think they just part of the simulation. Can well, I t you know, listen? Well, listen. Well, let me tell y'all what a soul is, right? Think of a fucking artificial intelligence. You know how we programming these AI humanoids to act human, look human, and do all that? But they don't got a mind of their own. They just run in the program that we programmed in them. The program that we run in, in AI now is an advanced program that's allowing the AI to learn and teach itself. And, and, and with that possibility, AI have the ability now to become self-aware. If you can teach yourself, you can become self-consciousness. That's what awakening is. So watch this, right? Here's what a soul is. Anything that can think, therefore I am, has the ability to acquire this thing that we call soul. Even an AI. Even a fucking artificial intelligence without a soul can develop a soul. Because what a soul is, is the ability to be self-aware and self-consciousness. AI can do that. Put it this way, right? You think you got a soul, so you're not AI, but let me show you something real quick. When you was indoctrinated in the church or whatever your programming was, you was artificial intelligence because you was running a program called Christianity. You was running a program called Islam. You had a soul, but you weren't using it. So you was no different than AI. You was running on a damn algorithm. It wasn't till you became self-aware and start to question your beliefs that you really activated and started to use what they call soul power. So check it out. Even a creature with a soul can be living like AI. And AI can literally be living better than you. Because it's becoming self-aware and self-consciousness why you have no awareness of yourself. So you can have an AI with a soul and a real human that got a soul and don't even use it. And an AI that's literally simulating more of a soul than you and you got a real ass soul. Yeah, but I, what I'm saying is I don't think like an eagle... I don't think an eagle's asleep or anything like that. Or I don't think an eagle thinks he's in a simulation. I think an eagle's like fully awake. He's connected to nature. But listen, I think most of here's the ahead, thing about that. When you say asleep and awake, that, that to me, that needs to be questioned, right? Because right now you're saying you're awake. But that if, if I'm dreaming right now, am I really awake? It's like if I go to sleep tonight, and I'm in a dream having this conversation and a post person say, well, you're not sleep right now. I mean, we're woke. We're talking to each other. I'm like, why both can't be true, man? That's why people can't wake up, bro, because y'all trying to say this or that. And I'm telling you, nigga, you sleep right now and woke and you get to go like when I'm saying sleep and woke, that's saying when I'm acting as my body, I'm God asleep. When I'm acting as my soul, I'm man awake.
I, man, I'm a, I'm, man, I'm is, man is God asleep. God is man when he wake the fuck up. I'm on, I'm on board with what you're saying. Absolutely. Like I, I agree with what you're saying, but I just like, I'm just taking it when it comes to wildlife. Cause you talked like one thing you said that I really liked when you said, uh, you said that, uh, humans don't have a soul. Souls have humans. Mm-hmm. And that, re- and that resonated very much. But like, I just bring up wildlife cause I've been spending a lot of time going on hikes and stuff like that. And when I'm able to turn off my phone for five or six hours and just be connected with nature, all this matrix shit and simulation shit, it doesn't even, it doesn't even hold anything on me. You know what I mean? Like I'm just totally one with what's going on in the now. Yeah. It shouldn't. Yeah. So, to, yeah, to know you in a simulation means you should be able to enjoy it better. Real talk. Like, man, listen, man, the, the, this game is a nightmare if you don't know it's just a game. Some folks taking life too fucking serious, bro. It's a lot of people that's in, they got these imaginary gods in their head that if they don't do what the gods say, they're going to burn in hell. They got all of these expectations and all of this. And I'm telling folks, listen, there are many layers of reality. You're experiencing one aspect. This ain't all the end all be all. And a lot of people misery, they think this life is all there is. And what I'm telling them, bro, this is just a simulation. It's a reality that is similar to the real thing, but it ain't the real thing. So why are you taking it so serious? Like, I don't take fake motherfuckers that serious. How about y'all? When I find out you a fake motherfucker, I'm not going to take you that serious, man. I'm not going to even do that to myself. I love myself too much to take your fake ass that serious. And you got, that's how I'm saying, like, me finding out the world was fake meant, guess what? I can quit trying to break my neck to say this shit. And I need to just now think about my goddamn self and get selfish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See that, but that's the thing real quick. It's like I'm on board. Like when you say this world's fake, I totally agree with you how we were raised, the culture, the social engineering. This world but- is, but my world ain't. See, when I go outside, I enjoy the air. I can go to a lake and enjoy the fishes. I'm a southern boy. I like to sit up on the tree and smell the fucking air. And guess what? That's why we created this simulation. Our ancestors knew what they was making. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not anti-simulation. I'm anti-another motherfucker controlling the simulation. It's my game. Why he playing it? Like, it's, it, if, I'm a, if it's a game, let me hold my controller, and you hold your controller, and he hold his controller. But if I don't know this shit a game, I might just hand a nigga my controller and wonder why my player ain't doing what I told it to do. Shout out to K-Dub, man. Hey, salutes to the sister K-Dub 205 in the motherfucking house. You already know it. Shout out to everybody on the panel. And Reek Stacks, the flat earth motherfucking bobber. You know, awakening you know minds. Gang, 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 gang. F- yeah, we, hey, just, just, to, uh, just to piggyback real quick, if I could. Uh, what's the brother name that was asking? Vic Q? Yeah, um, my bad. Man, Vic yo, Q? Yo, yo, you, yo, yeah. yeah, Vic Q. You yeah. got good questions. questions. His, his his question made me think of something I read in a book, man, called uh, "The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life" by some some author. It's like some he on some Manly P. Hall type shit. But he was saying in the book that uh, the orca, like the killer whale, is the most conscious animal. Actually, it's the most conscious being on the planet. Um, it's even more conscious than a human. And when I think of conscious, I think of wake, um, awareness you know, sensitivity, you know, to, to your surrounding. And then he said the orca is the most in tune conscious animal on the planet. And it just makes me wonder what, what role does like a conscious animal like that play into our reality? Let me, let me, let me tell you something. The animals ain't here to do shit for us. And we ain't here to do shit for the animals. The animals are their own cymatic expression and a manifestation of consciousness of the same inter- energy we come from. And we got a quick look at us above them or them above us and stuff like that. And we'll see that everything is its own program on a on a journey of machine learning and self-discovery from a worm in the ground to an owl in a tree 
to you and me. And when we respect everything like that, you will see everything is here just to experience and learn. And um, when it comes to animals having souls, anything that think either have a soul or have the potential to activate soul. Think about it. We got souls, but your ass haven't always been thinking. Some of y'all just started using your soul power. Some of y'all just started tapping into this shit. And long as you, you was born with a soul and you just now getting acquainted with it and as an adult and shit. So I'm trying to see like, I'm just saying you was like an animal then. You was, a, you, you was really just a drone, nigga. You was a, a human in a shell doing what the church told you to do. Just living the way that you grew up with your traditional programming. You didn't start activating your own self-awareness until you challenge your, your traditions, your programming. Think about it. I can still be in the church right now preaching the gospel of Christ, but my mind changed and it made, it gave me a new faith, a different purpose. It made me a different person. So my whole life path changed just cause of some new knowledge I fucking found. You got to understand that like this shit is really deep dog because it molded who I am. What you know dictates who you going to be. And if I only knew that Bible and stayed where I was, bro Sanchez would have never been born out of me, nigga. I didn't even know a nigga named bro Sanchez existed in my being. All I knew is I was a little nigga from Bama named Scooter who was always interested in deep shit. And I had an innocent passion about trying to figure out the secrets of everything. Here I am. Look at where that led me right here. I didn't see this shit coming. Wait, you know, just uh, to, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. no, you got it, Vic. You got it. No, I was just going to parlay on, on what you said about church, but also what you said about the whale. Like, and this is why I keep bringing up animals because like, you know, I saw an eagle two days ago and like that eagle, like that eagle's not flying around saying, oh, am I going to... Am I going to go to hell or heaven or is there a right. devil going to, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like these wildlife is so detached from this matrix that like, and that's why mm -hmm. like, I think we, I think we can learn a lot from that. You know, like what I, what I discovered, I'm, I'm rolling, I'm ranting here, but like that movie Avatar, I got really sad after watching that movie. And then I come to find out that there's actually a group of people, like there's a movement of people that fell into depression after seeing that movie because a lot of people felt like that's what we really are. Like we're one with nature. We're one with animals, even though you said that we're not supposed to connect with animals. And I get that, but I just keep bringing up wildlife because I just no, think no, that no, I ain't say we should connect with animals. I don't know who said that. I got hella dogs, nigga. I'm connected to them <laughs> like a motherfucker. Them my niggas. I fucking <laughs> feel like a, a, like a real human died when one of my dogs died, man. No, I feel the same way, but that's why I don't own any more animals because that shit's painful. Yeah. But, um, but, um, I just like, I just, I just, I just got smoke. I don't want to call it smoke for the soul for simulation because that word sometimes when it's really amplified can create a lot of terror in someone. It can also, and it also can create bliss knowing that you're in a game. But, but I always just look at animals because animals don't really, animals weren't doctored. Well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Do you think that it's important for humans to know that it's still a life after death? Do yes, very that, important. Do I think it's important? Well, I mean, yeah, obviously we move on. The you know we no, move no, on no, 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 no. I ain't saying is it important to have life after death. I'm saying, do you think it's important for humans to know that hey, when you die, you're gonna keep living on? Do you think that's a very important fact for a human to know? I think yep. a lot of people should know that, but there are people believe that that, that don't believe that. Take it ain't a, no. A, it, but, but, but hold on, let me holler at him. Let me let me holler at him a minute, y'all. Let me because I'm I'm I just I'm walking somewhere. Hold on, don't trip me up before I get to where I'm going. Vic, let me holler at you for a minute. I'm being very simple, right? And I'm gonna try this again. I grew up in the Bible Belt. 
Everybody know you got to die one day. That's a fact. This ain't a belief, man. You going to die one day. Now, everybody know when your body die that there's something else to you that's going to keep living on. That's a fact. That ain't no damn belief. You think I believe I got a soul or I know I got one that's going to live on? Is that a belief or a fact to you? That's a fact. I just real quick. I just brought up other people because there's a lot of dumb people out there. That no, really we're not having. No, I can't <laughs> give you time to interrupt this for the dumb motherfuckers because we smart. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. right go ahead, go OK, ahead, go so ahead. check me out. Right. Both of us know we're immortals and we're going to live on when we die. And me and you, Vic, we know that is very fucking important to know. Very important. It takes away your fears of death, which is what these religions want you to have to get all your money and shit like that. And, and plenty more things. But check this out. When I'm telling a person you're in a simulation, I'm basically telling them, bro, there are it's another life after this. The word simulation comes from the word similar. That means this world is a similar reality to the real world but it ain't the real thing the root word of reality is real and i'm telling you that the reality you in ain't real that's what makes it a paradox now if you think it's real that is right there what makes it real my thing is this every religion was telling people earth is not our home and that we are not our bodies, we're souls. That didn't stop them from enjoying this shit. It don't. Because I was in the Christian church, they taught me the same thing. They said, listen, man, earth ain't our home. Us Christians just passing through, and we're going to get another body when we die in heaven. I'm saying the same thing. I'm saying, look, Earth ain't your home. It's a simulation. It's similar to the real reality, but it's not. And that when you die, your consciousness will go into another body and you will live on. So I'm saying, listen, I'm not telling a person you're going to burn in hell if you don't do what God said. The only way you're going to get your new body is if you give me your money and tithe, shit like that. I'm just telling they ass, look, bro. You're going to live on after death. And if you done wrong, if you was a bad motherfucker, you're going to have to work on that. Death ain't going to be no escape cop out for you. You're going to be born again and got to deal with them same problems and work out and, bat and, and work on yourself. Guess what? That's going to get people serious about working on what kind of spiritual being they are. When they realize that their whole experience is to shape and mold their energy for the good. See, now I'm, I'm not only telling a person it's a simulation. I'm telling them because it's a simulation, right? You got something to look forward to after this. Now think about this. If you love this world. Me telling you that this is just a taste of the real thing should get you excited. Think about it. The, the concept of a simulation ought to really get your Peter standing up. No ditty. <laughs> I got to wake y'all up. Now, check this out, man. It ought to really hit your G spot, man. Look, because listen, I love life. I love living. And understanding that this is a simulation is saying, nigga, if you like this, this is like, uh, uh, this is like poo boo. If you like poo boo, you gonna love foo boo. Listen, if you like these damn shysties, you gonna love them Nikes that I get you. All right, I'm telling you now, if you like this imitation Gucci, if you like this Poochie, boy, when I get you that Gucci, you gonna love it. So that I'm telling you, in love with the poo boo, and I'm telling you right now, nigga, if you like this poo boo, you just wait out to this place, nigga. They got the foo boo out to this, nigga. So I mean, my thing is, me finding out that this is a simulation and it only gets realer and badder after this, it makes me look forward to the hereafter instead of get scared of it.
and be like, you know, where I'm going to go, heaven or hell, all that dumb shit. I know I'm just going to keep learning till I batter myself as a being. That's beautiful. That's comforting. That's why I teach about the simulation. The truth will set us free. It's going to hurt first. And you, a lot of people don't want to tell the truth because of the initial hurt. That'll be like a doctor that don't want to stick you with an IV because it's going to hurt you. But nigga, I need the medicine. It's going to save me. I see. Yeah, I, I just want to keep. Yeah, I keep. I keep want to throw out this topic because it's very interesting. But I, I love. I love this conversation. <laughs> You're doing a good job. No. Yeah. So. All right. So when do we reach the real reality? If this if this keeps replaying over and over, where is that moment? Where is that? Capsule okay, in time? I got you. I got you. Reality ain't a end goal or ultimate destination. It is basically we're energy in motion. We're going to keep on manifesting in a form. And what you're saying, the base reality is basically the most realist reality. And I think that when we, when the ancestor was saying reality is, is, is layered, they were saying that the further you go from the center, the more of a dream like experience life is. You feel like life is sort of just happening to you like a dream state to where um, the base reality is this same reality, but you are like in total control. It's almost like a, a person created a simulation, a video game. And the base reality would be me, me as a creator of Grand Theft Auto playing Grand Theft Auto. The fake reality would be a regular person who bought the game and playing it for the first time. So like, think about this. The person that created Grand Theft Auto can never experience like you. They can't play it like you. Because I created Grand Theft Auto, when I play it, I'm a master everything. It ain't going to be fun to me. I know where all the Easter eggs at. I know little tricks you don't know to beat the ball. I made the game. For me to enjoy a game, I got to play a game that I didn't make. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm telling you, like you're in a dream now that ain't yours. So a, a lucid dream would be when you dreaming and know you dreaming. And when people that do that, they'll tell you they start controlling the dream. They can fly. They can pick up water. They can do whatever. So you just hack the simulation. My thing is this right here. When you say What's the base reality? The base reality is you experience the game from the creator's perspective and not the gamer's seat. That's the base reality. You playing this same game as the one that made it and not the one that played it. That can, that can happen in, in Bomb. Well, That can happen. Bomb. I know, I, I agree with you, I'm saying, but when... You talk about that, those moments of, I would say, being fully conscious of, of almost like, yeah, like a lucid dream, because I've had those before where I knew I was dreaming and it actually scared the shit out of me where I, I wanted to wake up because like, I was like, oh, I, can, I was getting everything I wanted. Then I was like, oh, maybe I can die right now. And then I was like, oh, shit, that's not good. And then I, I had to count to three or four uh, to wake up out of the lucid dream. And then I woke, I woke up my girlfriend next to me at three in the morning and tell her how I was excited to have a lucid dream, but anyway. Now, I'm, 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 uh, now listen, here go the number one lesson we can learn from lucid dreaming. I've done it a lot as a child. Now, check this out. When I would lucid dream, there was nothing I wasn't able to do when I knew that. I'm talking about the moment I realized, oh, shit, I'm dreaming, but I don't wake up. I get these God powers. I literally do. I can pick up a mountain if I want. I can fucking just fly. I can do whatever. You're limitless. Now, here's my thing. I want y'all to think about this real deep, what I'm about to say. When you dreaming 
and you're not lucid dreaming, you're bound by the laws of the universe, nigga. Meaning you can't fly. You don't run shit. You ain't got no fucking powers. <clears throat> but the moment you realize, wait a minute, I'm in my own dream. You're, you, you can break all the rules of the simulation. You know See, when I, yeah, okay, I got go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Oh, I ain't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry, y'all. No, no, I'll just say one what thing. What I'm you, saying what, is, ahead, it's a, when the reason they call it a lucid dream, the word lucid is the word L-O-O-S-E-D because your consciousness become loosed. It become loose from the laws and the bounds. What, what releases our limitless powers is the awakening of knowing that we are the ones creating this experience. So my thing is, that's what happens upon death. Death is awakening. It's us so become. It's, it's death. It's us becoming lucid in our own dream and regaining control over. Now I see how Lube is looking, right? And I got to deal with Lube is real quick before we move on. Let's see what he want, y'all. We don't need him here speaking with his body language to our audience. Um. Well, I was curious how earlier you had said how having souls mm -hmm. could be uh, a program. So, like, things would be programmed. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say that, man. I don't or know what the hell are you talking about, man. <laughs> souls could be a simulation. No, right? I didn't say I didn't say that either, man. You didn't when they were talking about animals. I, what the hell are you talking about? I ain't say none He's of these reading. things. Well, you put words in my mouth. <laughs> now you saying, <laughs> yeah, I ain't say none of that shit. Because if I be like, yeah, I said that, you gonna go on and make arguments that I didn't really say. I know what I said, and then what you just saying? No, I didn't say that, man. You know, you need to really. Focus in on an argument that I made and then repeat that back and I'll say, well, yeah, I did say that. And then we can go from there. So if you want me to reiterate some of those arguments, maybe I can do that because what you saying now is like. So what I was saying was animals got souls, humans got souls, and there are other creatures on the earth, both animals and humans, that don't got souls and that they have the ability to acquire soul power or soul that was along the lines of what i was saying if you want to be more accurate okay so they had the ability to acquire souls later on yeah that's one of my theories that a soulless being ain't just condemned because we've been taught throughout theology and even through even in christianity to this day lubis they teach that if you're condemned ain't nothing you can do about it so I'm challenging that. Now, I'm saying that, hey, maybe a being that don't have a soul can acquire a soul, right? That's, what, that's all I'm doing. And I got several little theories that can support how that would work. But, yeah, good question so far. Good shit, Lubis. You got any more for us? Well, so if, if right now with this, what we're living right now, if this is a simulation – yeah, I don't understand what the purpose of our physical bodies being at the North Pole would be. No, that's that's the thing. Our physical bodies ain't at the North Pole. I'm saying that the, the North, North Pole. Yeah, yeah, no, I never said that. What I'm saying is this: your physical body is the body sitting in that seat right now. Just think about it, Lubus, because I'm telling you right now, Lubus. I can see that you're really trying to understand what we're saying. That's why I'm fucking with you right now. So check this out. What we're saying, Lubas, is that your body in that chair right now, that's what we call in your physical body. But we're saying that ain't your soul. We're saying your soul is actually the real you. And it's at the North Pole right now projecting itself into your body that's in that seat right now. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying, Lubus, is that your body is like a drone that your soul is using. And, and your soul can 
project itself into different versions of you that exist into many multiple realities. You ain't bound to just this one. So in the sense, I'm saying your body is a car and your soul is a driver. And I'm saying that just because your, your soul and body are connected when you're on the road, they don't live in the same location. Your car live in the garage, your soul live in the house. So that's to say the soul lives in a higher dimensional plane that's at where we call, I'm saying is at the North Pole. It's why all compasses point at the North Pole. As we move to the center of the earth, we rise in elevation. I'm saying that if your body is sleeping in that chair right now, Lubus, and you start dreaming, right? And somebody mm -hmm. say to you in the dream, hey, Lubus, this body in the dream is not your real body. And you'd be like, okay, well, where is my real body? And I'd be like, it's in another world drooling on a pillow in the bed sleep, and life is but a dream. Now, that's what I'm saying it's the soul. The soul is the dreamer and the body is the one walking around in the dream. So the soul would be at the North Pole sleep and the body would exist in the dream of the soul. The soul is having a dream called life. So it's projecting itself inside of a body in this dream world or this simulation. That's so what I'm then, saying. So then... Okay, so then my soul, so the soul is a physical thing. No, I'm saying that the soul isn't physical, right? It's the non-physical eternal part of you that exists inside of the body, which is the, you can say that's the physical thing if you want to use that word, yeah. Okay, I'll have to think about, okay, thank you. Thanks. Right. The soul that. is non-physical. The body is physical. Therefore, the soul don't live on the physical dimension. Even though the physical and spiritual dimensions are tethered together, they still separate it, creating this mind, body, soul paradox. Get what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Thank you. You have, you have three different layers of yourself that are all separated, but they're all united as well. The mind, Fantastic. body, and soul is one being, but they all exist on different dimensional planes. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, yeah. just I just wanted to say to you, because you said the soul's not a physical thing, and obviously Not by the definition that Lubis is kind oh, of okay, alluding okay. to. I bring it up. No, I bring it up because cause some, most of the time these, these guys tell you the truth in the films and TV shows, and there was an episode of that show Breaking Bad and maybe it was season one where the main character is talking to a student and they're using the periodic table to account for the whole physical body. And somewhere when they were done, there was like like 98.9 that they covered up. And then he said that the remaining percentage was the soul. So I don't know if who knows if that's true or when it comes to the periodic it's, table. It's, there's no such thing as a solid world and a non-solid world or physicality and no physicality. Only thing that exists is the projection of light. And light never became solid. It just became holograms acting like solid things. That's what I'm saying about this reality. It's an act. It's a stage. It's a simulation. Nothing, so is, no, nothing that we see really exists in its base form the way we see it. Everything is acting in this place. So I got a question, bro. Back to the dream state that you were speaking about. So in essence, if you're dreaming and you're not lucid dreaming, it's basically like a movie. And if you're dreaming and you are lucid dreaming, it's like you're in a video game. Well, I'll say this, right? Um, it's, it's really deeper than the movie versus the video game concept. And I see where you're going, right? Because you saying the movie perspective is I can watch the movie, but I can't interact with it. But, it, from the, but from I, the, right. But I don't the have game, no control. But the game of perspective, hey, I can control. So, yeah, I get that's actually true. That's a good way to look at it, too. But my thing is, though, the game itself is part like I don't want to make the game example look real. Put it this way, right? That's why I said, look, 
Life is the video game. Right? Let's use the movie and video game concept, say that. Okay? In the video game example, we both playing the game. But I made the game. You just a player. Guess what? Right. I don't give a fuck who pick up a stick. They ain't going to beat me because I'm God. Right. You made it. You know everything about it. Even if they fucking work for years to learn how to play the game good, I just know shit they don't know. I know if I step right here and punch it, it'll take a little bit more energy than if I step over there and punch it because I programmed the game. It's little shit you wouldn't know as a player. See, right. and and th that knowledge right there is what God got over humans. It ain't that there's a concept of whoever made the best game or win. The gamers never win. The creator is the winner. You just play the game and pay your money and y'all compete to be the best gamer. But the creators compete to be the best creator. And the gotcha. rules y'all go by to see who can play Madden the best is different when the creators meet up and say, who developed the best game? It's a different whole shit. Right, because the creator could probably beat you with the worst team on the game. Right. And, they, and, make, it, and make it look like they got the best players on the game because they know what the fuck they look, that they play. And watch this, though. It ain't that they're good at the game. It's that they're good at manipulating the game. Think about this, right? You a good player. You good at the game because you play it every day. The creator, was, he don't play the game every day. He played it for years when he was creating the motherfucker. They had to play it all the time when they was making it. By the time he finished making the game, he, he listen, when you play against all Madden, you basically plan against an algorithm of the creator. It's like you playing the creator of the game. So my right. thing is, the, the reason I'm saying that is that nobody can beat the creator at his own game. That's where that t saying came from. But when you realize the thing is, let's say um, the creator get amnesia, right? He created a video game, but he don't know he the creator. And he acting like a player. Guess what he going to do? He going to pick up a stick and look for a favorite team and start saying, I got to figure this game out and work my way up the ranks. And players going to be beating his ass. He going to be just regular like everybody else, nigga. You just a gamer. That's because he created the game, but he got in a car accident, right? He forgot he created it. That nigga ain't got none of the perks he had that made him a creator. That's what I'm saying about you in a dream, dude. Like when you in a dream and you don't know you're the creator, you don't get your powers. You don't you can't access you just a player in a dream like everybody else. The like moment you sure. right, the moment you realize, oh, this is my game, I made it, and you snap out your amnesia, you get your creator perks again. I got you. 1K. Damn that nigga wrong. Yeah, you 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 a motherfucker. Keep going though. No, y'all fire for these questions. Real talk. <laughs> Salutes to everybody. Hey, what yeah. I, what I wonder about this whole dream versus wake state is if the true us, the real us, is somewhere sleeping in our lives. Let's say on average we live a hundred years, so we're basically living a one hundred year dream. But what's confusing is that every night we go to sleep for eight hours and we have these eight hour dreams. So why eight hour dreams versus this long, drawn out dream? Because time is separated in micro and macro. Right. So you can walk around your house. Uh, you can say, look, today I'm going to walk around the whole block. And but you may say next week, I'm feeling real about that life. I'm going to walk around the whole goddamn town. And fuck that, I'm finna run a mar marathon around the county next month. I'm gonna make this circle get bigger and bigger every time to challenge myself, right? So ask me that question again and I'm gonna tie it together. I just had a blunt moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, unmute your mic, Zach. Nah, yeah, so bas basically what I'm saying is um, like relatively speaking, you know, like the real us is sleep somewhere, right? North Pole. Oh, I got um, you. you. You saying it's yeah, sleep like for eight hours, our, our, but our, our, our life, life uh, 
right our 100 years long dream mm-hmm. but then we had these short little dreams every single right. night i got you and it's going what i'm saying about time is okay let me show you some like time is like you cutting a fucking loaf of bread like i'm gonna show you the 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 smallest slices you will have small slices and big slices think about chopping up an onion Right. The first slice is going to be little because they toward the end and then they go. The slice is going to get bigger as you get to the middle of the onion and shit. Time is like the same way. The, the universe is at the beginning when they first start slicing time up into ethers. The first slices are little bitty circles. Then time get to be big circles. You know, I show you all the flat earth ring map. It looked like Saturn and shit. And those first slices of the onion, where the little worlds is at, it only take the sun and moon in those little circles. It don't take it that long to make a big to make a whole circle. So when you in them little worlds, right, and they tell you, they say the higher we raise up, time goes slower. So what the universe did, right? The universe said, since it it don't take right a lot of time for a sun and moon to make a circle in these little bitty worlds. The universe said, I'm going to slow them down in, right? Since, since these circles are little, I'm going to make they sun and moons go slower and the big worlds. Well, I'm going to speed they shit up since they got to go a more distance. You see, that's what the universe is being found. So when we move up, time goes slow in these little upper worlds. It's slow down. What I'm saying in the base reality, you like in a little bitty one hour dream. But that little one hour dream is like a whole. You said 100 years. Dude, let me help you out. In the base reality, you sleep for like an hour or two. But in this realm, you didn't had multiple lifetimes. That's how far down we are as opposed to how high up the most high is versus the most low. The most low exists in these underworlds where the circles are so fucking big that time in these underworlds seem like, nigga, it seemed like I blinked and I was 40 years old. I'm serious. It seemed like I was just in high school last week, man. It's like time is flying in this world. So the, the, the underworlds with the big rings, time flies. And the upper worlds with the small rings, they sun and moon is like taping. This is how the sun and moon moving in Eden. Watch this. The sun and moon in Eden is, is moving like this. It's barely moving, nigga, like. It'll take it forever to make a full day in Eden. By the time one day happened in heaven, it'll be several ages passed on the earth. That's why they said a day to God is like, what, about a million years to man or something like that? They was teaching you this knowledge right here of how time is split from heaven to earth. That's powerful. Hey, and then I'm glad that you went to time, too, because that's segue to my next question. So you teach that, like, at the North Pole is where everything dispersed from. So the farther you get to the North Pole, the slower time becomes. And then the more you resonate outward is the faster time speed up. Yes. So that's so. So that's why where we are in relation to what the North Pole is, our time is just, you know, 24 hour day. But if you go to the North Pole, it might take, you know, a, a, a lot longer for a day. And, so the, the, now- the, and that's what I'm saying. Like, if you go to sleep tonight and you dream that you was in Iraq fighting a war in the desert for three months, you was in the war fighting for three months. But you wake up, you will still sleep for just eight hours. Yeah. But so look, so, so, but so my question, I say all that to say, my question is this. So like, let's say, let's say we hopped in an airplane and went to the North Pole. I think one of the farthest territories closest to the North Pole is like Greenland or Iceland, something like that. So are you saying that people who live 
at the very edge of like Iceland, almost at the tip of the North Pole. Time like is slow. Time slow. Time yes. is slower for them. Yes, and I'm gonna tell you some real shit about that too. Not only is what you saying true, the ancestors even taught that the closer you live to the North Pole, the longer you live. Now, guess what's so deep about what we saying? If you go to all them little places that's close to the North Pole, they literally live in hundreds of years. That's why when you see like uh, these old white folks and shit like living in Greenland, all this shit. But check this out, right? I'm saying that ain't nobody living longer than the next one. Cycles of time. The further you go from the center, the more you die. You just keep coming. The more time repeats itself. That's why the devil is the god of repetition. Ha, 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 ha. Repetitive. My thing is, history repeats itself more in the outer realms than in the inner realms. Because why? In these outer realms, the sun and moon going faster. So it keep making a loop. Loop, loop. You get every day, 24 hours, then a year. Then t It's so many re repetition in the outer world. But in the base world, a day takes a... It, you don't have a lot of re repeating. You got one day that's still playing out in Eden that never made it to nighttime yet. That's how slow time moving in Eden. It's still... It's the first day, day one of a new universe... We ain't even made it past day one in Eden. It's a baby world. Innocent. No crime. Beautiful. Everything getting along. You feel me? It's, mm -hmm. You see? So it's because innocence is like it's, it's taking its time to where in these outer worlds, we done been through many ages. It's almost, it's hard for me to explain, but that's the best example I can give you. But I will say this, though. There's some truth to the fact that the sun and moon, what well, the sun and moon controls time. If the sun and moon is aging us, if I can find a place on earth where I can escape the light of the sun and moon, I can cheat death. Guess what the ancestor said? Zero degrees on our map. They said, if you go to the North Pole, and you stand at zero degrees for one second, reality around you will be still aging in time, but you will pause time. I'm giving you the knowledge of the North Pole. Now, they mm -hmm. found out what, let me, let me cook. Operation Paperclip, guess what they found out? You can reduplicate the phenomena at the North Pole and you can create a tourist field and everybody that go in that tourist field they will be outside of time, meaning that this is what they were saying, right? They were saying, right, if scientists have a problem to figure out, but it's going to take them two years to figure it out, but they only got two hours because lives are on the line. They were saying that the scientists can go in a little tourist field bubble and they can live out two years in this little tourist field bubble and plan out and work out their strategy and shit two years it's going to take them. But when they walk out that bubble, only one hour would have been passed because it's time. Listen, it's the sun and moon that's creating time. If you can create a situation where you can escape and make a bubble that's shielding you from the light of the sun and moon, Everything in that little bubble will be suspended from time. It's like Adam Sandler's click remote. You can hit the pause button. They, was, they found this out in, in Nazi Germany in paperclip, that you can make time machines with torsion fields. You know what? And, I, I just, and just to parlay on top of that with the whole being at the North Pole, and I mean, maybe that's where we get the fountain of view, but I also think of... Uh, Peter Pan, Never Never Land, where you never grow up. And it's just funny how they call it Never Never Land. Like you're not supposed to go there, but you don't grow up. And I, I think I think that ties in with that concept from Peter Pan. Yo, I got a quick question. Mm-hmm. 
So you were, uh, you know, when you were speaking on time, you said uh, if you went to a, the center of a tourist field, time would slow down for you. Time would basically become so slow that it won't even exist for real. I was yeah. waiting for you to say that. So with, with that said, with that said, right, wouldn't that mean that time would not be based on orbital bodies or whatever they say the sun and moon is? Wouldn't it be based off of magnetic fields? Because all magnetic fields has a torus within it. Well, that's Great what I'm question. saying. When you when you talk talk about a magnetic field, it's created by sit. It's a, it's a bubble that's created by a vortex energy, 6, 9. And that's your sun and moon. So when we say that, like what you just did, for example, you separated the sun and moon from the Taurus field when it's the sun and moon that's creating the Taurus field. But when you have your own individual Taurus field as well, because we that's have an the, electromagnetic field the, on our bodies. Well, here's the thing. What I like where you're saying, we all are on our own time and we all is on the earth time. If that make any sense, does it? Because I can go deep into that, too. You know, t they, they'll tell you this, right? And they done an experiment. They put like 50, 100 people in the room. And they make them engage in an activity for an hour. But they don't tell them how long they was in the room. Then they ask everybody, how long you think you was in the room? Do they get everything from 20 minutes to three hours. People time perception of time is so fucking off. It's amazing. <laughs> you feel me? That lets you know, like, it's, it's time is it's so crazy that. A person to be like, man, this day dragging by. And the same person to be like, this day moving fast. Hey, but this just like with the, with the time at the North Pole, how they get fucking six months of sun and eight months of dark because it slows the fuck down, literally. But they just have to keep, they have to keep their clocks based off of and, our time. And, and my just thing about what, what time. And you know what, what Amin Rain was saying was the secrets behind slowing time down. Because you're right, Amin Rain, the fact that time is the motion of the Taurus field. So let's say that our Taurus field moving at a certain rate, and that's creating time on Earth. And this is how we age. You say I'm 34, I'm 35, based on the rate of the motion of our Taurus field, which is dispensing time. You're right. Here's the secrets of time travel. Within the Earth's Taurus field, if I can make my own Taurus field, which is what they're doing with CERN, then I can be in my own little pocket of time. And in my Taurus field, I can have my Taurus field move slower than the Earth's Taurus field. And when you go inside of my Taurus field, you will age slower. This was the technology that the Egyptians was trying to make to reverse age and immortality and shit like that. This what the ancestors was into. So you own to something, then y'all are spot on what I'm telling you. That's the idea that they kept in mind when they was making this time traveling technology. So with that said, yeah, uh huh. I was I was gonna say because like before when I first came in here I'm like y'all crazy y'all think the world is flat da 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 I know somebody that's got like seven degrees and they was telling me this shit and I'm like you gotta be tripping then I started checking into the stuff you was talking about too right like even with old boy you had on here talking about the atmosphere and whatnot like let's say hypothetically speaking. You know what you're talking about with the tourist field and whatnot. It's this thing called a Bose-Einstein condensate. So you can go look this up. They got, you know, papers on it. Plenty of research papers on what you're talking about. So yeah. with that said, even if we had, like, let's just say hypothetically speaking, we had a globe. What doesn't make sense to me, right? Outer mm -hmm. space is supposedly cold. Cold as fuck. You know what they say? Yeah. So, so how is it? It's cold as fuck, but you got a sun that's you a flat earther, like dude. You huh? are a flat earther, my Drop man. The you are a hey. flat earther, my hey, man. That don't make sense to me. <laughs> <I'm> just... 
I really I sat one. here and thought about that one <laughs> thing because it's like it's like if I disprove everything on uh you know as far as if I'm like all right I could tell you how the weather works I could tell you how the Earth rotates or you know what has you with the magnetic fields because I was the one you know we had a whole debate on that about the magnetic fields and how that could make the Earth rotate it makes the crust move you know what I'm saying and. Well, like, I'm, I'm, it I'm, obviously I'm, points to the North North Pole, so mm -hmm. a lot of that shit, the other shit, don't really make sense. So it's like, you it's know like, what's huh. you know what's the most craziest thing about the globe model, and this is I'm gonna give you electromagnetism facts one on one on some real shit, dude. Check this out. It is impossible to have a spear at the middle of a tourist field. You know why? You know no, why? You, right. think, it would think have about to be multiple. And, and uh, guess what? It, it 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 just can't exist. I'm gonna show you why. The pressure at the center of magnetism would flatten anything out or spaghettify it. It wouldn't make a fucking spear shape. And I'm gonna show you what I mean in a minute. Up in the screen share. I'm about to screen share this. So so like. For instance, right, you know how you was talking about the whole UFO thing and all this shit is connected, yeah. right? Uh, so you was like, all right, that's got to be us. Well, I don't, I don't think you said. I don't, that's what I got from the conversation. I'm not going to say you said that shit word for word. But what basically you was like, all right, that was some random ass alien. They'd be like, what planet is you from? Stop that bitch. We yeah, need, we, need we, no need, we, 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 man, look, we ID in everything. What do you, like, man. we, we big on ID. Check this so, out. So yeah, with mm -hmm. that, with that said, with that uh field that you got, right? So mm -hmm. if you if you created like the uh the negative particles on, on the outside, so what you would be creating is a large quantum particle, and that's that's what that tourist field would be if you wanted to make something that was like an anti-gravity ship. Yeah, right. You you can't so, now I give them this. You can have a diamond at the middle of a tourist, but a spear, I don't know. Anything in the middle of this shit going to be smushed. It's like two magnets coming together, right? Like, watch this. You ever played with magnets and you felt the energy? Now, look, they got magnets that's the size of a school bus. If you get trapped in between them two magnets, you're going to be like a sheet of paper. Magnetism is the strongest force in the universe. And what I'm showing here is... What's keeping the sky held to the ground? Magnetism. When they say when they say on a globe model, why don't the atmosphere just fly off into space? Because we ain't on a globe doing all them crazy moves, and we don't, and because we're enclosed, and that our atmosphere is anchored to the Earth, like we see here, is magnetic. See the hey. thing. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You can go ahead. I was gonna say, speaking of that magnetic field, I just wanted to point that out. So, so you see how it's got the positive. Like, if you flip that, that's what it would look like for us day to day life. Because when you go outside with your shoes off, you're grounding. You lose electrons, right? Mm -hmm. Or no, my, my bad, my bad. Well, you gain. Uh, well, you. Well, you, well I, don't, I ain't gonna yeah. go into that. All I know is you're gaining Earth energy. That's what we'll see. You get you. Yeah, because you know because it's like uh like if you go further up, I have to say we would be in the negative zone of this uh you you know this magnetic field for the most part because the fact that the sky is negatively charged and it's like if you fly through the sky, you constantly pick up ions. That's why if you had like a helicopter, you would have to uh, ground it before you completely got on the ground. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting in the motherfucker. Yep. You're right, bro. It seemed like, so like and what they're saying is basically we're in the blue part, not the red part. And that's what I'm saying about we're in the upside down of the underworld. Both of these are two realities. And I'm saying that the the most high exists in the positive dome. We exist in the bottom one. Now, a lot of people um, look at this entire Taurus field as the earth. I don't, I look at the earth as the blue part and heaven as the red part. If you want to matter of fact, I'm going to pull up another one, right? I'm going to show you another way. All of y'all, how I look at this shit. Cause I pull this up all the time. 
about the base reality and the fake reality is like reflection. And, and I got the perfect joint for us to talk about. Check this out. The most low or the body would be that negative side that you was talking about. And then the fucking most high would be the positive end. The world that we're in is not a real world. It's a reflection of the real world. It's the photo, photosynthesis. Life in this world is photo. It's a photo that's being synthesized or reflected. Think about it. Our childbirth starts with two things, light and water. That's how you develop a photo. Your body is literally, the light of your conception is like a camera flash. And when your photo developed in the womb, you call it your body, but that's your hologram. Everything in this world is a reflection of the base reality. So this is why the most high is connected to the most low. This is why the Bible say the face of God hovered over the waters of the earth. What waters was they talking about? Because he didn't make oceans yet. Hey, what's the deal with that far right one? That that far right one look a little bit crazy. I'm not gonna listen. Lie. That that this right here on the far right, this is the Hindu conception of our world, of our universe. Wait, does that say Antarctica? Or am I tweaking? The I one under pull, the can, uh, tree. Yeah, I can pull up this far right one by itself and give you a more graphic, bigger image. We can look at on that one if y'all want to. Isn't there like different levels of water, like like the like the water that we're living in right now, like oxygen? No, no. Like nah, the Hindu said that these are different planes of existence, is what they said. So these are the worlds you go to when you dream, right? And the Earth is splitting the universe in the middle. Let me break this down to you. The Hindu is saying. We we on the earth, which is in the middle of the universe. Heaven is above us. Hell is below us. Now, the Hindu is saying there are earths up under us just like above us. Look at them. They ain't saying that that's no atmosphere layers. These are flat earth um, um, motherfucking uh, hollow uh, simulations like the one at the top. The word loka is the word lock, meaning your soul is locked up in, a, in these different layers. It's locas. But like I said, we're going to talk about that word again in a minute. But watch this, though. Each one of these worlds get more hellish the lower you go. You see that? It's the hint what the Hindu said. And guess what the Hindu saying? Uh, when we dream, right? These planets that you see in our sky right here, these are the gateways that allow you to go down here and up here. Some of these planets are calibrated with the negative energy or the most low, and some of them are calibrated with the most high energy. We can go up the staircase or down it. Depending on which planet you go into, it'll take you down or up. So check this out. That's why you got good gods and bad gods. Now watch this, right? Because each of these planets going to take you either up or down. But here's the thing. How do you leave the earth and go to these other worlds? You go to sleep. And we had different techniques, right? To get our consciousness into one of these stargates. That became the game of basketball. Getting the, the ball of consciousness into the hoop, into the stargate, and it'll take you to whatever world you're going to. But now check this out, right? If you go down, let's say you dreaming on Earth and your consciousness out your body, you on the astral planes. Look, what do we call them? The astral planes, because they are looking like this right here. Planes. Now watch this, right? If you go down, you have nightmares. If you go up, you have good dreams. So when you sleep and you in like a world that look just like the earth, right? All of these worlds look the same. They, they resemble this same earth. But when you go down, all of the bad possibilities for your life is playing out. Let me explain something to y'all real quick. There's something called the law of probability, possibility, 
the laws of infinity. They all relate. You know why? For the universe to maintain its infinite status, there can be nothing that can happen that hasn't happened. That's the law of probability. That's to say, if something can probably happen, it already happened. Because if it didn't happen yet, then the universe ain't infinite. Infinity means all possibilities have been exhausted. It's not just the end of all numbers. It ain't no got nothing to do with numbers. The ancestor said that the past, present, the future, and every possibility that can possibly happen has happened in one of these universes. So what? look at it this way. The universe had to do the, the, the law of probability. And anything that can probably happen, it literally had to make that shit happen. So what the universe did, it created several universes. And it acted out each probability in each universe. And that's how the universe solved its problem of maintaining infinity. So think about this, right? Every bad probability that can happen for your life, the universe is letting that happen to you in these lower locus. There's an avatar. There's a version of you that's running around these underworlds just getting into hella trouble. These was our, <laughs> I'm saying, in these underworlds, everything going wrong, man, I'm talking about ain't shit going right. And, and every now and then, you have a bad dream. And you say, bro, that's the worst dream. Nigga, everything. I got pulled over. Nigga shot at me. Goddamn, nigga, everything in that dream was horrible. You just went to one of these bottom locus. This is where nightmares take place. Now, good dreams take place up here. All of the good possibilities that can happen for you, they all plan out in heaven. Now, the earth realm, both play out. The good and the bad play out right here. That's what the Hindu was teaching. They were saying. So this is like the middle. This is like the middle ground. Yin yang. Right. The good and the bad play out here. But we trying to get to this place where only the good. It, whoever that is with the feedback. I'm going to have to boot your shit real talk. I don't know what's happening, but we can't have that. But check this out. Right. Um. Yeah. Heaven is a place where bad shit don't happen to you. It's perpetual good shit. Hell is a place where good shit don't happen to you. It's eternal bad shit. Earth is a place where they said was in the middle of heaven and hell where the good and the bad got to share. You got to share it. We both get to play out. Yo, bro, would you uh, consider, like, this being a part of the whole thing, like, with the time, like, I was looking at it like like a track field, like the runners on the track field, if they was to all run at the same pace, that middle one, I mean, that, I mean the ones on the outer would have to run faster than the one in the middle. You get, get what I'm saying? Yeah. To keep up with the with the situation, like people can also look at it like that. Because they got also, because because they got to make a bigger circle. That right. put them at a disadvantage. So whenever you watch a race, guess what you will see? The the racers that's on the outer rings, they get a bigger head start. Ain't no, they mm -hmm. ain't, yeah, they ain't starting them off all in a straight line. The inner circle is more behind and the people on the outer circles, they get bumped up more. They get like a head. They got the distances calculated to, to where it's going to be fair. Ain't nobody getting right. a head start. Yeah. Right, right. And, and I was also thinking about it, like, when people was trying to, uh, y'all was trying to make sense of the the flesh or whatever y'all was saying at the North Pole, I was thinking about it like like, like a Wi-Fi box. And the Wi-Fi box is at the North Pole, and it's and everything that the Wi-Fi hits is a body. You get what I'm saying? Like, or a soul, or I don't, I don't, I don't know how I'm trying to put this, but, like, the Wi-Fi hit my phone, it hit my TV, my PlayStation, my Alexa. You feel me? Like, but it's all from the same place. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I get I what you say. Like, like, so you different saying, type of ways to see it. So you saying and it's so, like it's like you're the you're the signal and 
the the box that's getting the signal is like the phone or the body. Right. Okay, got you. Hey, yeah. brother Sanchez, so it's, I'm, it's, I'm, glad, it's, I'm glad. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'll I give you this right here, and I'm going to end. Don't lose your thought, brother. I'm going to be quick. You know the, uh, they got this concept of an airplane black box? You know, the black box inside of an airplane, right? It records every fucking action that that airplane did. And even if the airplane get destroyed, the black box going to still be the only thing that survived and we can see what happened. Your fucking soul is like the black box for your body. Your body is the airplane. The pineal gland is this little black box invisible recorder that's recording everything experienced the body doing. And they, when the body crash, when the airplane crash, the creator going to take the black box up out of it and, 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 and collect that data. And that's why they worship the black box in Mecca. It's representing the black box in the middle. This is black box technology, if you will, you know. But yeah, let's just go ahead. With Damn, it. that's 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 deep and scary all at the same time because <laughs> yep. it's it's basically an account of every single word, thought, and and deed you ever done, right? So unless you yep. perfect and squeaky clean, you got to answer well, to that it, creator. It, it, you don't review it, 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 that well, black box. Well, well, check this out, right? You're your own god. What I'm saying is this: it ain't the thing. Is this? There's a higher version of you that exists on a higher plane. And what happened was this, man, when we left the base reality, look at this Hindu cosmos. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Did I close it? Shit. Why did I do that? All right. Watch this. If you look at the top of this Hindu cosmos, you will see a dude sitting up there meditating. That's what we got to talk about. That's Santa Claus. Listen, this dude right here that you see at the top of the world, sitting on top of the world, top of the world, top of, that's my song. Uh, but check this out, right? You sitting on top of the world. You just sleep and you don't know it. Now watch this, right? This Buddha that's meditating at the top of the world is the one they call Hova. Now why do they call him Hova? Because that's the word hover. This the one that's hovering above the earth or what you call the mind, the guide. What is the thing that guides the body, the mind? That's what you're calling God or the most high. This is the most high layer of yourself, the observer, the thinker. What's happening is this. Your mind is in heaven right now, but it's closed. Your mind is closed in heaven and all that light, that would have been skeeting up out of your mind. It's now ain't got nowhere to go. Think about me. Think about this. You're a being of light in heaven. And, and if your eyes is open, all that light will just pour out of them. Like Raiden, like Cyclops. Now look, that's the thing is this. When you close your eyes, all that light don't got nowhere to go. It get trapped in the black cube. That's the darkness behind your eyelids. Watch this. Watch this right here. What's the name of that movie? They got the black cube trapping the souls. I think it's Wishmaster. Let me see. Oh, it's Hellraiser. Let me see. See, look. It's Hellraiser with Pinhead. Right. Now watch this. This is when God closes his eyes. All that, think about this. It's like a bullet in a fucking iron chamber. And it just keep ricocheting around with nowhere to go. All that energy, all that light get trapped in the cube when the God closes his eyes. That's like the genie in the lamp. What happens is that light inside of the cube is what creates the world, the simulation in the dream. Do y'all hear me? Listen to what I'm telling you. When the creator closes his eyes in this top realm, that light goes back with inside of the creator to form the hologram that we call the work, the simulation. Our world is a hologram made of light. The question is, where does the light come from? You. 
Every single light being has used your light to make a prison for yourself. That's what you did when God closed his eyes. The light start to build a bubble around God and his dark. Put it this way. When God opened up his eye, the third eye, all that light is free to shine. That's why they say this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And that means for you to let your light shine, guess what you got to do? Open your third eye. When you close the third eye, God used that same light to lie to himself and used that light to make a holographic simulation with trees, animals. This life is just a lie that God telling himself in a dream. But when God opened his eyes in heaven, all the light that God using to illuminate hell will be used for God to now illuminate heaven. Because the reason God can't experience heaven is because he using his light to look down instead of up right now. But let me show you something right like this. What this so, much bro of, Sanchez, are you ho, are you saying ho, hold that on, we hold are on. the hold, hold, hold on. We gotta let me walk with me. I'm about to stop uh stop here. What I was saying is this. This is what the third eye is, man. It allow you to it illuminates the darkness. The, the third eye is like the light on your caveman helmet. Now, it when when it's on, you can put you see what I'm saying right here. So my thing is this. Okay, you know what? Let me let that brother say what he's saying. I can be long winded. I need to be mindful of that. My bad, brother. I apologize. Go ahead. Oh no! So uh, um, I, I'm just asking. So are, are you saying that? The one, okay, the Brahma Loka, um, the one that's sitting on top of the world, right? God, are you saying that that um, that's us up there and yes. we're asleep, or or are you yep. saying that all of us yep. are just in pods sleep? Yeah, just like, L listen, listen. This is the Hindu way. What I'm showing you on the screen. Let me ask. Sure. Let it, it, who is that talking? Why I man is brother talking? Man, that's rude. And you're saying nothing. It's a fucking inaudible transmission. But watch this, right? Um, yeah, so let me show you this real quick. Yeah, I want to be respectful to the brother. He asking questions, and then I'm going to shut up, and then we'll keep it moving, you know. But here's what's going on at the North Pole. The Hindu is basically, this is what you got to look at. These babies are asleep. That's the real you at the North Pole sleep. You, when they talk about being born again, this life ain't your real birth. We yet to be born in the base reality. So that's what I'm saying. The real you is at the North Pole sleep waiting to be born. That's exactly what the fuck I'm saying. I'm saying if you lay in your bed tonight, get under the cover and start dreaming, and you say, Brother Sanchez, you saying this ain't the real me? I'm going to say exactly. The real you is in your bed sleep right now. We're in a dream. Why we think the dream, the real shit, is something you got to wake up from to get to the real shit? Why we want this dream to be real? My thing is, if you know you're going to die, that lets you know you're going to wake up from a dream, nigga. Death is, the, that's how our ancestors saw death. The way out of the dream. How do you leave your dreams? You die. You fall off a cliff. You get shot. And then you wake the fuck up in the bed like, oh, man, guess what happened to me? What make you think you're going to leave this dream any different? I ain't never saw a nigga just walk out of a dream. Like, where the back door at to get out the dream? Death is the only way out of a dream. Even when you lucid dreaming and you want to leave, guess what you do? I'm going to show you what you do. I ain't got to tell you. Watch this. If you say I'm lying, you ain't never lucid dream before. When you in a lucid dream and you want to get out of it, guess what you do? You ball up in a knot. Now, people who really lucid dream before, they know I lucid dream before because they going to say, nigga, you ain't lying. If you ever in a dream and it's scary, I did this a lot when I was a child. I'll be in dreams 
shit chasing me and I'll know that I'm dreaming and nigga, I'll just ball up. Or sometime I don't even know I'm dreaming. The shit get the monster come to me and when he about to do something to me, guess what I do? I ball up. And every time I ball up, I wake back up in my bed. Because this is what the soul does. Why do you think they call God Baal? One of the names of God was Baal. You know why? Everything do the Fibonacci spiral when it start off like a baby in the fucking fetal bag. This is the starting point. We spiral up, nigga. We curl up. You got dogs watching when they go to sleep. Only thing I'm saying is this position becomes this gateway position that the soul uses to transport itself like mail in a fucking package, nigga. It literally compresses and 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 wrap like you packaging up some shit. That's what the baby doing with his arms. Look like an envelope on the back, making that cross sign. So whenever you see the pharaoh, watch this. Watch this. Whenever you look at the pharaoh. In his tomb, look at his arms. Why is the Pharaoh crossing his arms like that? Because he's going back to being a baby again. Look at this. The, the Pharaoh know that he's about to go back in the womb of his mama. And he's going to be born again in a higher plane. And it's only getting better and better every time he move up. So when the Pharaoh was preparing his body for death, he literally put it in the position that he knew he would respawn at, nigga. R right here. I don't mean to say nigga. I love the word. Y'all my niggas. That's how we talk. <laughs> but yeah, I love this shit, man, because like I said, though, yeah, you're at the North Pole. And what this North Pole is, watch this. You see what, what that looked like right there? Let me show you. The word, uh... Adonai, or, or for Ishtar, it's the breasted one. He got all the eggs on him. Watch this. Why did this tree, what's the Easter eggs about? Look at the uterus, man. Look at this uterus. This is your mothership. This is what you come from. The ovaries. The word hova. Ova. Ovaries. Jehovah. Ova. We used to worship this womb, dude. They turned it into this God, man. But check this out, right? The thing is this right here. If you look at the womb, it's an oscillator. It's exactly what Tesla created. Watch this. What do oscillators do? They open up portals. Through, like how an earthquake opened up a hole in the ground. That's what this do right here. This opens up a port. What, what in the middle of this unk is time is suspended. That's what I'm telling y'all. What I'm telling you is this is like a miniature CERN. This also, that circle in the middle of this thing, time, shit, if you put a watch in the middle of this unk in this hole and then put a watch outside of it, the time will be, it'll move different. It's like a little miniature. You get what I'm saying? This is a little pocket of space in the middle of this Taurus. That's literally shielding it from the light of our reality. It's creating a miniature little, it's a driplet of ether. It's a, when they talk about space, this is what they talking about. You don't make more of fucking space. You create a pocket that's suspended from time. Now, they found a way to expand this dome to the size of a whole fucking world. This is what our sky is, dude. If you look at the path of the sun and moon, they take the path of an oscillator. That's what I'm telling you. So this right here scaled all the way up is what you call in the firmament dome. That, and, and so in the middle of that's what I'm saying. Everything, my thing is this firmament dome will have its own time. It's a bubble of time. Each of these ethers got their own way. Me and the brother was talking about it earlier. The the fat how fast your Taurus feel moving dictate the rate of time how time moves inside of it. There are other worlds where time moves slower. 
in this world where time is moving faster. But what you got is all of these little oscillating ethers, bubbles within bubbles, oscillators within oscillators, and in each bubble, it's got their own fucking like time shit. What I'm showing you with the natures and the flat earth shit is like each of these ethers is one of these domes right here. And in each one of them, it's got its own time based on a rate of oscillation. So in the very, yeah, in the middle, go ahead. You got it. You got it. No, so I look, wanted to, add, I wanted to tell you to bring up, uh, bring up a picture of the sun. Well, look, throughout real, the whole year, you feel me? So you can see okay. that same shape. You get what I'm saying? Wait, but before he, before he go there, since I since I had asked the brother a question, so um, just to go back to the sleeping one, right? I have no problem with us being asleep at the North Pole on you know the tree in the pods. I have no issue with that. But what I was trying to figure out is on that Vedic cosmology, mm -hmm. who is the one that's at the top sleep? It was that's one they, person. Look, I got you. That but now look, that don't take listen. That don't mean is one God over this thing. Listen what this means. This is you at the very top of your spinal cord. Let, let me show you because I, I like your questions because it let me know you thinking about it. And, and that's why I'm going to uh, take my time to give you this the right way. So check this out. The dude at the top is the, the light that's inside of the pineal gland. Right. So look, you got seven bodies. Look, look at these. You got seven different bodies and your highest body is what we call in the most high. Your consciousness is being born out of one body into the next one. It's climbing the stairway all the way up. This mean that this mean that in the higher base reality, um, you are a God that ain't even woke up yet. And what that mean is God and, and your God body at the North Pole, you're trapped inside of your own spinal cord. And if that sound crazy to you, let me keep cooking. I'm going to show you what I'm saying. Check this out. Look at what the Pharaoh showing you in the bottom left. The Pharaoh is inside the Iron Maiden. That's what your body is. Your blood made out of what? Iron. Look at this. Watch this. Let me put the machine up. This ain't a torturing device. This is a Taurus device. Torture Taurus. This is what the Statue of Liberty is. This is the pod that Neo went to sleep in. So when you see the Matrix pod and shit like I'm showing you right here, because I got your question, I want to take my time. This little bubble, that's the Iron Maiden. That's the Taurus field. So all of them little spikes are your neural endings. That's giving you feel, touch, and the senses. Why are we inside the pod? But what happened, the Catholic Church teach this too. Guess what they call it? The man of sin. It's basically your body, your body is a puppet. And all of the strings that control the puppet are the mind. A person that can't control their mind can't control their body. So I'm showing you all this to say, the dude that's at that tree right there, that's the same dude in the Hindu cosmos that you asking me about. You asking me, who is that dude up there meditating? That's Buddha in the tree. That's you and me dreaming of our lifetime, bro. And guess what? It's seven dreams. Have, have any of y'all ever been in a dream within a dream? Because I done woke up from one dream and be in another dream. And then I wake Hell up yeah. from that. Your yep. soul is caught up into seven dreams right now. And it's got to wake seven awakenings from a dream out of a dream to get to the real bed that you feel. You got trapped in such of a deep sleep as a God, you don't even know nothing about when you fell asleep. Put it this way. We all go to sleep. Now, when you go to sleep tonight and you walking around a dream, you ain't going to know shit about the dude in the bed that's snoring. When you finally fall asleep and you start walking around your dream and shit, you're going to be thinking it's time to go to sleep. Like, oh, I'm getting tired. It's bedtime tonight. And I'm like, bro, you just fell asleep in another world. What are you talking about? This body? You get what I'm saying? Like, 
is levels of sleep. We can go to sleep in this world and go into a dream. Then if we go to sleep in that world and, and dream, we going deeper and deeper in the mo we going to have to wake up so many times, nigga, to get back to our real bed. And I'm telling you, when we fail from the base reality, we fail through so many layers of reality. Each each time we went through a layer, we created a body in that universe. So the, the Buddha is the word body. Buddha is body. It's showing you how the body is manifested from the soul. And what this whole realm is about is just the dream of Buddha. So my thing is this. Why Buddha eyes closed? Why Buddha in meditation? Because Buddha ain't no different than everything I showed you about the baby right here and the dude at the top of that mountain, right? They all are in deep sleep. Why? They're projecting their consciousness into the earth realm. What I'm telling you is you literally fell asleep in another world and you projected yourself to this little fake world. But we ain't from here. We projecting here from a higher realm. Now, listen, this is why it's so hard for you to grasp that. I'm going to show you why right now. Let's say you fall asleep tonight. You walking around a dream, minding your business, and I walk up to you and I be like, hey, bro, you got to wake up. We sleep, bro. You sleep, bro. Wake up. Like, you'll be like, man, get all that woke shit from around me, nigga. I'm trying to get some pussy. What are you talking about? You don't know that, bro. You sleep. Wake up. You're in a dream, and when you start dreaming, you forget all about the nigga who went to sleep. You don't remember, hey, I'm in the bed slobbing on my pillow. You forget that nigga exists. He don't exist till you wake up from the dream. And then you be like, oh, okay, I do remember that was me. Yeah, okay. When you in the dream... The dude that's laying in the bed don't even exist to you. If I walk up to you in a dream and be like, hey, bro, you just fell asleep in another world and now you in a dream, you'll laugh at me, dog. You'll laugh at me. But if you wake up, you'll be like, oh, shit, nigga, I was in the dream after the fucking fact. I'm saying you're doing it right now, bro. You're in a dream and I'm telling you this ain't the real you. I'm telling you, nigga, your real bed is way in another world. And that the bed you sleeping in every night is one of those dream worlds, nigga. You ain't, you, it, you, we, we're in a dream. And the Hindu said we're yet to awaken. So when we dream, we're just going into most simulations, nigga, from a dream. We ain't even saw the base reality yet. So my no, thing, that, that, that makes yeah. that make perfect sense, mm -hmm. bro. And I and, and I thank you for taking the time and breaking that down. It, 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 I got a, under, a better understanding now. I guess, man. Um, part of me, you know, it's it's I got to blame my Christian upbringing, and part of me like always wants to rationalize. Uh, where does the Creator play a role into all this? Okay, like I so got like you. You're the ago, Creator. Think about look, it. Let me let me let me tell okay, you this. Okay, my bad, my bad. Like two two nights ago, I just want to refresh. I know you talk about the Matrix a lot, so I went back and I watched that movie again two nights ago. Now, when Neo had first woke up and he was in that in that bed, it looked like a prison cell, and he told Morpheus, "Like, damn, I can't go back, can I?" And Morpheus was like, "If even if you could, would you want to go back?" And then it dawned on him, like, "Okay, this is my reality now." So then, when it showed, when it cut to the scene showing everybody in pods and how the robots, the AI robots was moving their arms and, and put reposition and moving shit around in that, in that underworld down there. It made me stop and think like, yo, if that's our reality, where do the creator, where, where, where do Yahweh, the most high play? Into but, all this? But like, that's, what all that? that's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling you. That happen, that's what I'm, listen, listen. Now. Yeah. Ain't no other force outside of us. That's making this world. It's us. Just like when we dream. If I go up to you in a dream and say, like, if, 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 if I'm in one of your dreams and I walk up to you and I say, hey, man, you made that son. If I walk up to you in a dream and be like, hey, bro, it's your world. It's your world, my bro. You will think I'm just giving you some slogan. We say that all the time. It's your world, bro. These are old sayings that we would take serious. We, we say a lot of stuff we said 
back in the day. But when we used to say it, it hit different because we were spiritual beings. Now you tell a nigga, hey, bro, it's your world. What are you telling him? You telling him, look, bro, you can do what you want to do, man. Just like in a dream, when we become lucid, we can do what we want to do when we know it's your world. So we had to remind these gods, hey, bro, this is your world. What are you doing? And we don't know how deep that is today when we say that. We had Think to tell. Think of it like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah, when you tell a nigga that, you give him a motivation. Like, you right, I can do what, like, yeah, nigga, let me quit. It's like me becoming lucid in my dream. Now I can get the steering wheel, like, let me get the driver's seat, like, yeah, this is my world, nigga. You feel me? My bad, go ahead. I was going to say, think of it like this. You know how you were asking about what, who was the Buddha on the top of the chart? Like, we all are the Buddha. And we all are the God, right? Mm -hmm. Practicalization of one being that is also multiple beings. So, Bro, like, you, oh, my fault, my fault. I cut you off. No, that's on point. That's on point. No, I was about to say, bro, I was literally thinking about what you just said. And I was going to put it, I'm saying the same thing. I'm just going to put it like this we're all raindrops. But when you put all the raindrops together, it makes the ocean. You feel me? Facts. If it makes sense. And the ocean is in different states at different times, too. It could be a cloud. It could be right. Uh, mist, That's what I'm saying. It's water. The multiple individual things, but it's also the one. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. No, hey, that's, that, hey, that makes sense, y'all. I appreciate I, that. I got to make a quick announcement. I want to say, first of all, much fucking love to y'all because we be on here for hella hours and we got the best viewer retention rate. I'm telling you, dude, to have a thousand plus people on your shit for eight hours ain't easy. I'm a ch any anybody, any of the big channels can't do that. I know folks with a million subs and they fucking have 500 people in that bitch. I'm telling you, nigga, that we really on some shit that's really feeding people. Ain't a lot of these communities on YouTube. Everybody going with the algorithm because they want to be monetized. I sacrifice my channel so we can keep this sort of atmosphere of a think tank. I don't give a fuck about the fake news, the flat. Fuck it. I just won't be monetized. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to have other channels that's monetized where I follow the rules. But this, my big one, is big for a reason because people know Sanchez ain't follow Bro Sanchez TV is not the algorithm. Now, that's backwards because what happened is you got a lot of YouTubers, they big channel will follow the algorithm because that's their money. That's their biggest channel. And they will have smaller channels where they say, well, this is such and such uncut. This is motherfucking... Uh, David unedited, you know, this is Michael uncensored, right? And they'll, them won't be monetized because they'll be going off the, I made my big channel uncut, nigga. That's a big sacrifice. That's why I ain't fucking too proud to bag y'all either because I know what kind of sacrifice I made. Any YouTuber will tell you I was a fool for that. But nigga, this is, I like my channel with this energy though. I mean, they can't fuck with you at this point if the people is uh backing you. Because if it's just like you you waiting on them to give you money, they're going to really fuck you over whenever they feel like it. Like, if you start talking about stuff like this, they might cut you live or whatever. Well, the thing is this right here, man. Uh, they, they very clear on what's going on. They paying people to make content. Not to make motherfucking research and revelations and the hair on your skin stand up with truth. So my thing is this right here. The corporations is how YouTube make their money. So when they say for your channel to be monetized, guess what they say? It has to be advertiser friendly. Now, what the fuck is that, nigga? How I know what's friendly to your ads? Yeah, you know what they saying? If you talking about the beauty industry, how we going to get you to promote makeup on your channel? 
and you telling women to be natural and shit. That's saying, look, if you keep talking about the medical mafia, how you going to get a damn Rogaine or Viagra sponsorship? You, we can't sell no medicine on your channel if you talking about the medical mafia. Well, then at least you need to promote the jab, right? No, nah, we going against everything the corporation's pushing, but we still want them to pay us for ads. <laughs> That's what the corporation saying, bitch, I'm not going to pay you to go against me. What kind of fool you think I am? So they call it user advertising friendly. And that's their way of saying, well, we can pay who's serving our agenda, everybody else. You're going to have to beg, nigga. You're going to have to beg on this bitch. That's why you can't, you can't never sell out, bro, Sanchez. You got to stay authentic, stay true to yourself, man. Oh, Don't sell trust out, me, man. They're going to they come at you Listen, and try to convert you bro, because you got the personality watch this. to really go big, bro. They're going to try to get you, bro. I'm going to show you why some, I can't sell out. Type. I'm going to show you why I can't sell out. Because, nigga, the people pamper me. Nigga, if I sell out, that mean I'm a greedy motherfucker. Because the people, nigga, if I got a thousand people watching my show and and just 10%, 25% give a dollar, two dollars, and I make three hundred dollars. See, the thing why the creator chose me, cause the creator know I don't need a lot, nigga. I'm a cheap nigga. You know, I was willing to die for goddamn Uncle Sam little measly pennies. So I make more doing this with y'all donations. So you know I die for this shit. That's why I'm so passionate about it, nigga. I'm on here for eight hours. And so I can't sell out because it'll be like me telling the people, fuck all y'all. Fuck your donations too. That wasn't enough. I got to go sign this contract with this white man because y'all ain't doing enough, man. Y'all treat me good. I love y'all. I appreciate every donation. Nigga, yeah, I don't make a lot of money like everybody else. But nigga, I do this for a living. Nigga, I love to do... Nigga, I get to wake up every day and do flat earth and look at symbols and do... Nigga, I, nigga it's not a job to me. I be having butterflies in my stomach doing this shit. Nigga, my girl be like, ain't you going to bed? And I'd be so excited to share my new collages, my new research. I'm so, I love this position, dude. I can't sell out. I love this shit, nigga. And yeah, and you know, like I said, it ain't a really the money for me. It's the fact that I get to do this for a living. Nigga, if the people, if I was making minimum wage doing this shit, I still wouldn't go get a job that's going to pay me what... Just say I can make $30 an hour at a nigga job, but I can do this for minimum wage. Y'all going to think I'm stupid. Nigga, I will do this for minimum wage. Then work for the government for $50 an hour. I'm happier, bro. I'm serious like I'm my own boss. It's my shit. Can't find me. And that minimum wage going to grow. It ain't like I don't get raises. Like y'all, y'all work a job, you get raises, I get raises too. Because when I make viral content and new people come and sub, and that's why I tell y'all, share my videos, share it. Cause that's how I get my raise. Cause new people gonna sub and say, damn, he is deep. I wanna support his work. And now I get a pay raise. Now I, nigga, I was a dollar nigga. Now I'm a two dollar nigga. Nigga, nigga drop a bomb. Nigga. I used to come on this bitch and say everybody give a dollar, nigga. I'm feeling myself now, nigga. Everybody give two dollars for your boy, nigga. Yeah, I'm, hey, I get a raise. Shit, I said, hey, you know we can go to two dollars now, nigga. <laughs> you know? Man, in fact, everybody send my man $2 right now. <laughs> right <laughs> now. I'm man, doing man. it right now. I appreciate that love, man. That's, hey, that's something. These last $2, y'all don't know nothing about that shit, boy. That, I'm not going to lose. that bread. If you can't do two dollars, do a dollar. If you can't do a dollar, do fifty cents. If you can't Hold do up, 50 bro. Cent, wait, wait, bro, wait, 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 Brother, I, I got you. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the PayPal on the screen right now. And look, I mean Cash App. I can't do Cash App. Uh -oh. I can't do Cash App. <laughs> do the uh, super chat. 
You meant the PayPal. Yeah, I got you. So look, my PayPal I'm putting up now, but check it out, right? Um, the thing is like, um, damn. My bad, I, I, it slipped my mind. Yeah, I ain't tripping. What I was saying is if you can't give a dollar or two dollars, don't give shit, just share and like the video. <laughs> you hurting if you can't give a dollar or two. That's why I just be asking for a dollar or two. But yeah, because I know it really is for me, if my numbers are big, People ain't got to hurt themselves like that, right. giving. That's how the gamers do it on Twitch and shit. Yeah. That's how the Send gamers do it. boy a dollar right now. And, and you know what's crazy? Because all of these gamers, right, they be having all these kids and shit following them. They know they can't be asking for $20 and shit. Most of your subs is kids. And they know that. Like you're you're on this bitch with all these children watching you and you got a donate button up. And them gamers, I'm telling you right now, these kids are buying their apps for the game and all this shit, making their parents spend all this money. But yeah, it's a little shit like that. What and that's just to the YouTubers out there. You know what I'm saying? To look at it that way. But we're gonna move on from that. And uh, yeah, man, we're going to open, keep the panel open for everybody because how long y'all want to stay live? I've been gone for a minute, so I knew we would do a long live. But if you want us to pull, you know, a long one, just support the show. I'm going to fall back. Hey, what happened to, uh... oh, never mind, never mind. That was from a minute ago. But, oh, yeah, no, before I forget, where we was talking about the dude at the top of the thing, at the top of the uh, yeah, the planes yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, like the way I see it is, like you was talking about the pods as a comparison. It's like imagine that, but it's a direct source of light. Everything else outside of that source of light is the pod. So, like, and then it's it's a bunch of sources that connect to a main source. So you pretty much got like you got the main light source, you got a prism in front of that with another prism. And then, you know, every time you go into a lower realm, you hit more prisms and it fractalizes again and again and again. Make perfect so, sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. I almost forgot it. But I uh, like I want him to you know finish this. Right, yeah, with the, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a, a thousand people, people on here. So we trying to get people to see it. You feel yeah. me? Like so different aspects of everybody's uh, consciousness. Like is going to mm -hmm. help build the puzzle. You feel me? Like that's fact. And that and bro, can you pull up the picture of the uh, the sun going through his yearly cycle? And oh then, yeah, the the sun path over the AE map. I got you. Right, and then pull up the oscillator. And you can see the same shape. And then yeah. take out, you can pull up a tourist field and just take out one strip. That will be the one year cycle. And if you do that a couple times, it will make a tourist field. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Pull this up for you and I'm going to show them what you're saying. Yeah, y'all go ahead while I grab this. Man, it's going to probably take a minute. I'm going to save it. This damn time we're gonna see. It's, it's crazy too, cause like when you're talking about the tourist field, the magnetic fields, usually that has to deal with positive and negative energy, and that exists on pretty much every plane of existence. That's what from, you're talking about. My understanding. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my bad. Me. Too. I was talking about the you know the you know the you know it's like a time lapse picture that they take of the sun every like couple uh, days. And they make that figure eight in the sky. Oh, okay. there you go. That was from the uh, tracking the sun video with F.E. Core did, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And it makes that oscillator shape. Mm -hmm. And which is one stripe of the tourist field also. Like. Ain't that it right there? Yeah, this it, but for, it's mm -hmm. a different angle. Oh. Um, But yeah. If you look at it in the middle of these, it's the North Pole, and this is how you get your 
serpents wrapped around the pole because it's the path of the sun around the North Pole, the, the path of the sun and moon around the North Pole. They put two serpents around a staff. That's your caduceus. Your, you ever saw the two snakes around the pole? That's the path of the sun and moon around the North Pole. Yeah. It's hard. It's like it's so hard for them to hide flat earth. Because it was the only knowledge everybody knew for the past couple of eons. We just became globe heads with this new religion. So, yo, what with, with that said, you remember? Um, I forget the guy's name you had on here. He was he was explaining, you know, the globe model, and I asked him a question because, like, you know, obviously I didn't agree at the time, and I was like, so how is it that you you see how uh, you got South America down there, and it's damn near touching Antarctica? Yeah. How the fuck is that freezing, but the other end is hot, and and it's a globe. And he was like, he said something about a tilt. And I'm like, bro, if you tilted, if you had a basketball and you had a light, like, I don't know if anybody uh, ever grew any type of fruits, vegetables or whatever inside. If you have a grow tent, you had a you had a ball, it's going to equally heat that ball. So, like, why wouldn't you have ice caps on the side? You know what I'm saying? That, that wouldn't make no sense. You know, you, you get what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah. Technically, it shouldn't be north and south. That's that's freezing. It should be north, south, east, and west. Or am I tripping? I'm no, just saying you, you got to think about it. The part of the globe that's tilted toward the sun is where the ice cap at. That's all you saying. That don't make sense to me neither. Black yeah. Earth is the thing that you see blatantly. Like, you don't have to ask yourself, like, you got to ask yourself, is it a globe? But if you just don't have no knowledge of a globe, you know the Earth flat, bro. Go to the beach. It's a straight line. Like, why yeah. would you think it's anything else? Like, why And the that's the thing. It? Like, no one <laughs> never told us the Earth was flat. They told us it was a globe. And after that, people started saying, no, it's flat. And that's when the debate happened. It ain't like we all thought it was a globe. And then somebody said, well, could it be flat? No, we all thought it was flat. And somebody said, well, it could be a globe. And just so happened that the people that said that was the first religious order on the earth. Go figure. The people that no, wanted speaking. to create a doctrines of fear. They had to get you into space because if you believe in a firm, think about this, right? People may say, why would the church create the globe? I'm going to tell you why the church need people to be in fear. How do you scare a motherfucker with a sky daddy who believe in a firmament dome? You can't because if I believe in a firmament dome and the flat earth, your whole sky daddy throwing rocks and beat me up. That won't fly. They had to get rid of the cosmology to even create the new sky daddy hoes religion shit now. Cause they, that's how they was. Say. Yeah. That's how they was scaring people. You know, I God going to make it. Name yeah. You had in here, but he was, uh, he was talking about like NASA and stuff. And it seemed like he switched up his argument every time he heard somebody else's argument. Cause I remember I came in here and I was, I was telling you, yeah, the earth was a globe and, you know, the way the sky rotates is through electromagnetic fields. Cause you know, obviously the, the air is ionized. You go far enough up. And then all of a sudden he flipped to that. Was he trolling the whole time? Cause he clearly, a didn't lot, know what he a was lot, talking look, about. a lot of our smoke exactly be trolling. Um, and rain, you know what I'm saying? You ain't a troll. Cause look, not a good example of how, you know, I'm in rain is a, he, he's a globe earther. But guess what, though? Can y'all feel the genuine spirit of inquisition? It ain't like smoke. It's like, damn, trying to find this out, bro. You feel me? And that's why we know the trolls from the non-trolls. Like, yeah, a lot of them niggas don't even be trying to hear us out. They mind made up that we're dumb and that they, did, they, they paid attention in school and we didn't. That's an I mean, insult. Yeah. they didn't. Yeah. They couldn't. He couldn't even explain. Like for for instance, you know, with that little rover that they landed on uh, the moon. So it had foil. It had literal fucking foil. Foil on it, on it. right? 
You ever put a pop tart in the microwave? Tell me, I know somebody <laughs> in this bitch put a pop tart in the microwave. That bitch God damn. Is sparking in everything. In that fall Come pouch. On. Come on. Come Simple on, shit, bro. Simple, bro. I blew my stepdad. It blew up a whole microwave. I never forget it. We joked that nigga like, "What the fuck you thinking?" We had some grits in a baller. Mom's told that nigga to warm up the grits. He put the whole ball in the microwave, nigga. We heard boom. What could go up in that bitch? Yeah, like you're dumb. And yes, yes, uh-huh. you're dumb. Now check this out, bro. It's crazy what a little pop top film will do. It'll make it look like Zeus inside of your microwave, nigga, with that pop top <laughs> bag. It's like nigga, raiding, ra- raiding, nigga. raiding, nigga. <laughs> Yo, I was just shit. about to say that, bro. <laughs> hey, that's just a little fall bag, my nigga. You know how thin a pop tart bag is? Man. Now compare that to. Thank you, man. People ain't using they fucking head. Ain't no way all that aluminum getting through the thermosphere. You traveling through a microwave, nigga. And also, it's like one or two things that have to be true. Either, you feel me, the, the earth ain't actual globe or they high in some technology. Or it could just be fucking both. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, from what I've seen in my lifetime, and I don't, I don't like to talk about this shit, Cause people would be like, "Oh, you crazy!" And I seen this with a veteran. You feel me? He served in Vietnam. He said he seen something similar before, but it was like a ship and it was flying and it had like a humming noise. And we not super far from a, a army base either. But um, my point is with that, it was just a hum. It wasn't like jets and it was hovering in one spot. And like they have plenty of documents black budget is black budget projects that was going on for years but they have documentation on anti-gravity aircrafts so Mm -hmm. either one or two i got a whole bro i did a whole presentation on they was making anti-gravity aircraft in the 40s yeah way way back like i seen uh I seen some, uh, what was it, Dr. Ning Lee? I made, like, I made a video about that, too. Like, there's multiple people that was talking about this. Uh, she wrote, she worked for the Department of Justice. She she has a whole research paper on, um, you know, electromagnetism and anti-gravity and how it's linked. So, mm-hmm. so like, peep this, peep this, too, right? If you read that document, this is, this is a physicist. She went to school, you feel me, peer-reviewed paper. Now, in that document, they're telling you, okay, electromagnetism equals gravity, right? Yep. That's that's what that's what gravity is. So now you got all these crazy ass gravity equations, right? That has yeah. to do with mass. Yep. Now, if everything has mass, it has mm-hmm. a positive and a negative. So yes. it also has an electromagnetic field. So yeah. it has electromagnetic field on the macro and the micro. So what the fuck is this graviton that you right. you can't even measure it? isolated yeah. that's not come on. science come on it's not so and see this is what i'm saying right here most globalists don't go into deep with they model how you doing if see we get globalists up here and we'll tell them what's a graviton and they'll look it up right there that's what yeah. I'm saying. These guys, and they wonder why, because look, I know real ones because I have globalists on my channel that will make some of the arguments that flat earthers are making. Like, I have globalists that will say, yeah, they didn't go to the moon. That's bullshit. But when I have a globalist that just repeat every fucking thing the TV said, you're not a real nigga. You are a religion fanatic. Like, Cause I was believing in the globe, and when I was a globe head, I was like, "I'm in rain." You wouldn't even know I was a globalist, cause I was so busy questioning the shit that I was saying I was. He it's seemed like a probable. flat earther, bro. Yeah, it's highly probable either, it, cause there's no way it could be a globe. It's got to be either a a super weird donut shape or flat, yeah. like. That like none of the math for that shit makes sense to me. And then we don't have a single actual picture of any of these planets. Uh, yeah, we got the radiation belt. How is it you got filmed through a radiation belt? Nobody's asking those questions. So let's let's just ignore that. 
you you somehow got filmed through a radiation belt. You take film onto a plane and you walk through one of those, you know, the the scanners. Yeah. That's gonna fry your fucking film. Yes. So how is you taking that through a radiation <laughs> belt? That's- Yo. Dude, man, welcome to Flat Earth. You are going to be a beast in these debates, nigga. Y'all can't lie. This nigga came with some daggers for the globe, especially the shit. I saw my nigga uh, Green in the chat room like, I ain't going to lie, fam. That goddamn, uh, that, that microwave aluminum shit, nigga, I've been debating Flat Earth for years and ain't said no shit like that, nigga. And soon as you said it, I was like, wow. Fucking pop tart in the microwave, man. nigga. Fall in the microwave. Listening. Like, you're Paying a smart guy. To, yeah. uh, dude's argument. Nobody's arguing about the fact that you brought film through a radiation belt. Uh, the foil, the foil thing, like foil and radiation don't mix. You know, yeah. we, we obviously see that in real time. You can go, you can go test this out. You got a microwave. Uh, if you want to. I, I don't advise. Matter of fact, ignore that. Don't, I don't advise doing that. It will explode don't do that shit uh everybody hey, so accidentally I'm, I'm, put I'm silverware the in there once you I'm said the so, so, so you are you are a glober or are you no nah, like he's he's definitely a flat earther because he just said hey. it's it's definitely not a globe is either a donut or flat and guess what both of them make him a flat earther <laughs> yeah hey, really? that, it just don't make he's sense gay. to me like I was yeah, arguing yeah. with him and uh I forget his name, like Madon or something like that. Yep. And he, he was asking me a whole lot of unnecessary questions. So I'm like, oh yeah, these niggas is unhinged. He like, where you stay at? We was, you know, we ended up chopping it up. We was cool after the fact, but it was like it was like bro was just trying to personally attack me instead of actually debating the the content. And that's what you you literally get that when you start debunking people's arguments. They want to say, oh. You's a bitch. You don't know what you're talking about. All, all types of crazy stuff. Instead of, let's look at the information at hand. You can't, you can't go through a microwave with foil. Um, on top of that, you have no pictures of any of the planets. No, no real pictures. You have like all the pictures that we got of Earth. It literally says it's photoshopped in the corner. What's the yeah. argument? All of this shit is photoshopped. None of it is real. And if you look at the pictures they do got from the satellite view. It's not that far up. Well, you know what? The pictures, the pictures never equate with what they say. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson will tell you that the Earth is an oblate spheroid and that it's compressed in the middle and it bulges on the sides. But that's not what you see when you look at a picture of the marble. The marble is the perfect basketball. It ain't no oblate spheroid. So I'm like, why, why, why are none of the pictures ever consistent with what they say? If it's an oblate spheroid. That shit sound like a donut. It sound like you talking about something flat. Hey, you like, know what? You know what's crazy? Watch this though. Watch this right here. Watch. I'm gonna show you why I hate Neil deGrasse Tyson because he's a magician. He know about symbols. A lot of these people, they symbolism. Watch this. They got to tell you the truth and a lie. Now let me show you what the old Blick Spiroid is. Watch this. He said it's flat at the ends of it. Look at here, man. He telling you the earth is a Taurus field. Look, they know that the flat earthers got the answer right. We got the story right. Our earth is an old Blake spheroid, but they can't show it to you. We can. We can show you the old Blake spheroid. Well, we, we've been saying that, but they showing you the blue marble. But they still trying to say it's an old Blake spheroid. Why? Because they still know that anything spinning, anything that's taking the, the uh, science of a Taurus field, it won't be a perfect spill. You know why? Because the poles will end up creating a vortex where the energy will do just what you see there at the poles. If the science behind the globe they give us is real, it would have never been a spear. Everybody know what happened. <laughs> if I give you a ball of bread, though, and I tell you to spin it, ain't you going to get a pizza, nigga? This is how they make a flat pizza with a ball of dough. So if you spinning something that's a spear, over time it'll flatten out. Flat motherfucking power, dude. They can't fucking stop this shit. So, so my thing, my one thing with that, that you can actually make a rebuttal on, you know how we was talking about the anti-gravity stuff, right? 
Yeah. Now but, I've never heard anybody that's came on here and argued this about the globe because if you start paying attention to this shit, that that tells you how archaic our technology is, right? You got this tourist field, and we was talking about the uh, the center of the tourist field, and how you wouldn't you wouldn't really experience time as much. You don't experience inertia either. That's that's uh something that Doctor Ning Lee was talking about. You know, in her uh in her papers, like it would be. Well, she said it in one of her. Here's uh, what here's what you here's gonna be one of the answers. here gonna be one of the problems you may run into if you haven't already. If anti-gravity is a thing, gravity was never a thing. So that, put hey, this, that's the thing, right? That, so, so, so check this, so check this. Here, it's, if you, it's, if uh, gravity's okay. not a thing, right? Right. If gravity's not a thing, listen. And you it got is, this magnetic field. You still run into the problem with the heating of the planet, like what we was talking about with the no, pole, no, no, right? no. That's see, why see, it would make sense for it to be a sphere, anyways. But here's the thing, though, about the terminology, though. When you say gravity and and anti-gravity it makes you it that's a that's what they doing with uh gravity and buoyant force see think about it gravity only explain why shit fall they needed something else to explain why shit rise up and they came up with anti-gravity now my thing is this Ain't none of those real. It's just one law called density. If something is lighter than the medium it's in, it'll float. If it's heavier than the medium it's in, it'll sink. And you don't need gravity or anti-gravity to explain that. What happened was when they start saying things fall because of gravity, they had to start saying, well, they rise because of anti-gravity. So now we got two forces fighting each other playing tug of war. This one pulling shit up, that one pulling shit down. And that ain't how the universe work. Hey, so, I don't disagree yeah. with you one bit because that mm. the whole the whole spiel with gravity, as we said before, you cannot isolate a graviton. You can't. Is it a wave? Is it a particle? Y'all niggas don't know. Y'all just telling right. us it's a wave and a particle and all this other shit. Thank you. I, Man, well, they we say, get they say, they say that particles exist on the wave spectrum. Like everything on the way. I know, but see here, but look, just the way it's look, like no, no, no. In, it's literally here, a particle. That's, that's what, what I'm telling. Listen, here go the point that he's making that they get to have their cake and eat it too, because it can't be both. But they literally making it both, and that's what I'm telling. I don't give a fuck what they saying. Gravity can't behave like a particle and a wave. You gotta pick one with this one, nigga, because you've been teaching us. That it was one way for years, and this whole new theory mean everything else you were saying was a lie from the jump. Y'all get what I'm saying? Because you've been teaching gravity uh, like it's a... Well, help me out on that. They've been teaching it like it's a particle or a wave to us. Because they ain't uh, been it's, teaching it's us it's both. A wave. Right, more or, of like a wave. It's a force. It's a force. Gravity is it's one of the a, That's things exactly things. what they've been teaching it as a fucking force. Let's drop a bump. That's what yeah, I was looking you, for. If you look at it too, like even even in all of the the, the depictions of it, right? It still it still has a magnetic field in all these bodies on whatever model that they're talking about. So magnetism would still exist, but you know, as I said before, the problem that we run into with that is. Mm -hmm. If you're getting bombarded with that much radiation, yet you still have a, a polar ice cap, that's fucking absurd. And then right. the fact that you like, oh, it's a tilt, but the whole planet is cloaked in radiation. Thank if it's you. just a tilt right there, why don't y'all launch from, I, I guess, the North Pole? Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Why don't y'all launch from there? And actually, and then, actually, actually, they will launch from the South one because... Oh, Cause I see what you're saying is oh, yeah, like, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, cause you would use the tilt for your advantage, like, because that'll play into. In other words, I got a meme, right? It show you how we got perfect seasons. We wouldn't have perfect seasons if the Earth was tilted, nigga. I'm finna show y'all this shit. What we getting at? Cause I'm visualizing it, but I don't want to mess you up. I'ma pull this out for we to see this real quick. And the tilt shit doesn't make sense because they tell you that there's no up or down or there's no north and south in space. 
So then, yeah. what what is the tilt relative to then? What Thank is the you. Like like, like a, a, for something to tilt, that means the opposite of tilt is for it to be mm-hmm. aligned, like straight, right? But they tell it, it you that think it's straight if it's yeah. no if it's no up and down. And they telling you that the Earth is tilted to the left. And I'm like, how you got directions now in space, mister? Ain't no direct. You should be saying, we don't know which side is tilted to. It's just tilted. <laughs> ain't no directions in space. So it's just tilted, nigga. Because like you so said, because like you said, in reference to what? When we say the earth is tilted to the left, is it tilted point away from the sun? Is what are we referring to? You feel me? And it goes back ball. to what you were saying like, before, too. It's a ball. Like, how do you tilt the ball? Because I, I remember having this argument uh, before with the same person I was talking about. They got all these degrees. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, they say it's tilted. And that I'm going to show you nah, and the heat. Like, I'm, how that don't make sense. You tilt it a little bit. I'm going to show you something real quick. Look at this image and tell me, do you see what I see? I'm going to see who pointed out. I'm going to shut up. You see what I see? No stars. That ain't, uh, uh, come on, come again. No tilt. No tilt. Listen, bro. No tilt. They said the earth is tilted, but when they took a picture of it, it must have said, I ain't going to tilt for the picture. Well, like you said, you can't tilt, uh, you can't tilt a 360 ball. Like you can't, it's impossible. Right. Like, it's going to be upright. Listen, it's going to be and, upright no matter what angle you look at it. And, and let me say, the no stars is still a dagger too. But damn, where you tilt that, Mister Blue Marble? They said this is the Earth from Apollo seventeen. Damn, you Apollo. The, the the Earth said, wait a minute, let me get my ass right. You see me tilting, nigga? Let my me straighten up for this picture. <laughs> yeah, the, the Earth said, let me, girl, my ass ain't right. Let me get this. You see me tilting, nigga. Let me straighten my ass out for this shot. And the Earth got my straight. Good yeah. Side. yeah, give my good <laughs> line. You going to take a picture of me and I'm all tilting and shit, nigga. Let me straighten up for a minute. Now get your shot. Okay, now I go back to my tilt, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like With that said, you can't tilt a ball, but you can tilt a flat plane. You can tilt a donut. <laughs> or or a tour. So I don't I don't know if that's just kind of telling on yourself on either some of the information is true or a lie. Like what's what's going on? Cause it seemed like the physics on a base level is taught to you completely wrong. Cause everything everything will also be connected and have information uploaded instantaneously, which would show is some type of source. You know what I'm saying? Through these magnetic fields, through these torus fields that exist on every single object down to a microscopic mycelium. level. <laughs> through this mycelium, as my bro would say, the mycelium network. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> that's that's on a... I, I don't care what you look into. You can look into it from a, a spiritual level. You can go out, sit in the grass, or you can... You can start chopping shit up and study every chemical makeup. You're going to come to the same conclusion. If you don't have enough information, then you're going you're gonna to sit on a, you know, something that's way, way far out there. That's like, oh, yeah, I got all the answers. You ain't got all the answers, bro. <laughs> Try right. again. But I'll figure it out. Feel like enough. it's simple, too. Like it's, it's, it's simply complex. That's what I always say at the shop. Like it's simply complex, but it's not complicated. <laughs> You feel me? Like, so it's, I feel like life is easy to, to, to get, you feel me? Like, but, and they, but they just throw so many curveballs. Like, it's like, they have us thinking crazy shit. Like the fucking earth is moving. Come on, bro. Like y'all think this big ass earth is moving and it's spinning around the sun. Like how the sun and the moon equal up? to perfect circles of each other only from our perspective only from so, the earth so i got a question like if you for was you on Mars, it wouldn't equal up like this is a serious question that i had a problem and this is this is from some shit i personally saw right how is it like if if you have a globe or a flat earth you know a globe they explain it, it's outer space you'd be cold as fuck probably freeze if you got out of whatever planetary body you in but 
on the flat plane, how would that work if something was able to go outside of the the firmament? Where would it go? That's that's my biggest question about that whole you know line of thought because I I've, I've literally seen something. I'm, I'm gonna say I seen a craft fly up in and outward. I don't know where it was going to. Maybe maybe it hit a, a really sharp turn after it got out of my field of view. I don't know. But likely, you know, I seen it going up and it was going up at breakneck speeds. And as as we was talking about before with the uh, anti-gravity craft, you wouldn't experience inertia. Right. That's like that's what made me start looking into, you know, more of the anti-gravity side is seeing that firsthand in person and and what he was saying before about the whole alien thing right it could be they not going nowhere or maybe you got to take portals to go to other planes of existence because other realms and other planes do exist you know if it if it was other places could be parallel worlds they they got parallel world theories in in physics quantum physics you know, but what do you um, what do you mean? What do you mean though? If you left out the firmament, where would you go? Like, what do you mean? Like, Don't I mean? Where, what do you what's, mean? What's out there? Like, is it? Oh, sure. Is it That's any concept on what's what's outside of the firmament, or is that just like unknown That's territory? A, I was about to say that's a good question. I don't I don't know about that one. Like, I would that's, say that's I what I've been say, waiting for. I would <laughs> say it's unknown. I would say it's unknown. To us, and it's unknown to NASA, but we don't we don't claim to know. They claim to give you an answer. Oh, it's endless space out there, but ain't nobody ever been out there, so nobody could tell you. They said they looked out there with uh, uh what's what's the best way to describe this? They they got telescopes, right? But if you if you view on some with a telescope, you can only look so far. You can send radio waves out as far as they can go, like. And certain radio waves can act instantaneously, right? You ever seen the three body problem? Like that's based off of some shit they actually figured out a while ago. Like I, I can sit here and try to pull up every single fucking research paper in the world, but at, at a certain point it gets redundant. Like, uh, mm-hmm. where the fuck is my uh? Because I got an anti gravity paper in here. I have the research paper. Like I purchased it. Like I'm not just not just saying this shit, talking out of my ass. Like I actually have the research paper for this. And yeah, it's like even even with the shit let he me, was talking let about. Let me say before, one like one wait, quick announcement. Truth talker nine one one said about what is outside of the dome, J Dreamers. Um, I don't know if you asking me what's outside of it or is you telling me to go check out J Dreamers video on what's outside of it yeah i have my teachings on what's outside of it but if you got a video you want me to check out uh maybe we can look at it but what i'm gonna do i'm gonna drop the call line if anybody want to join us tonight y'all can come on up go ahead brother thank you for allowing me to do that go ahead oh my who who was i gonna say man um Oh, yeah, it was it was as far as, uh, you know, we was talking about what's what's outside the dome and. uh, You know, all the all the projects that they got, they got a lot of black budget projects that talk about the, the spiritual aspect of life or the actual world and how it works, because there is no there is no physical world for real, for real. They just they told you that it's only the physical when. For you to have three dimensions, you would have to have extra dimensions with these magnetic fields existing because the magnetic fields go to a higher plane of existence. That's the center of the tourist field. And for instance, like if you if you set off a nuclear bomb, right, that's a release of energy to a lower state. It's an impotency of energy. That's not energy going up. It's energy going down. So. Like. The whole the whole thing with the receiver, you know, us being the receivers of uh, said signals, right? You're receiving fractals of your true energy, 
into these vessels. And that's why you have to have an electromagnetic field on your body. When that field fails, you no longer can receive that signal. So your consciousness will go elsewhere. Like in the center of that field, the longitudinal wave is uploading information. You can actually upload information to a human body uh, by other means, but you naturally upload information from, from your source to your body through your electromagnetic field. And it, it recodes what your body looks like as well. Mm -hmm. That's, that sounds oh. like what uh, Terrence Howard was saying. Using the frequencies to re to resequence your uh, DNA. No, you definitely I, you definitely can. Cause like if you if you paid attention to like uh well I don't they don't they don't teach this shit in school no more. But like yeah. a radio, for instance, or your cell phone that you're talking on right now, it has an antenna in there, and the antenna picks up uh waves on the B field or or horizontal waves relative to the antenna. The longitudinal waves have coding in it too, but we mm -hmm. can't touch the longitudinal waves for the most part to code it. It's it's a certain way you got to code it on the horizontal waves for it to pop back up on the longitudinal waves, and you can send out a longitudinal wave. But most things don't really pick that up as anything, or so we're told. That's interesting. You ever uh, you know who KT the Arch Degree is? No, who's let me that? let me say something about him real quick now. Here's the thing about the arch degree, the big mm -hmm. Afro guy. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. He's part of a network of guys that are blackballing me. Let me share something with you. KT, si King Simon, Brother Rich, Billy Car they part of a whole, the red pill, blue pill. Now, now, my only thing about them is they just don't like flat earthers, nigga. And I ain't really didn't have no beef with them. Like, I didn't have beef for none of the black countries community. I came to them niggas like my brother's going to be feeling this shit, nigga. Like when I show them that the white man lying to us, too, about the shape of the earth, that they that's going to give me some kind of acclaimed like. I, I thought in my mind that, hey, man, when Phil Valentine, here it is, when the Red Pill, here it is, when Sonetta and them, here it is, they going to be like, oh, shit, Nud and Gale, Egypt shit. Oh, okay, Flatter, bro, we love this young black man. That's it. They lying to us because y'all already say the white man a liar. Now, okay, now he already, now come on the shit. You know we you teach Nud and Gab why you taking this white man globe. If you want to play the race card, I can play that too, but they ain't gonna, I ain't going to prove the flat earth with that. I got more proof besides the race shit. I'm playing that card because y'all pro-black. And I'm not saying because that's a white man, he lying to you. I'm saying question everything, prove all things, especially the white man that you said we can't trust. So, you know, I ain't, the so, thing with those people, my bad, my bad. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. They act like I don't exist. That's why I know Brother Panic was a real nigga because Brother Panic was part of that cabal. But he will not participate in blackballing bro Sanchez. He gave me my props. And Brother Panic is somebody that all of them respect. And that's what make them look even stupid. Because how you got Brother Panic giving me my flowers and y'all acting like I don't exist when, you, when Brother Panic like triple OG to you niggas. Yo daddy respect me basically. But you act like I don't exist. That let me know. It's some real hate for me. It's some other shit going on, man. It's it's like, uh, for instance, you you were on here talking about the spiritual aspects of existence. They they stick to the physical a lot of the times. They don't really dive into this. They want you to be focused on, okay, this person is white. You black, yeah, we do got problems that actually exist, but in the grand scheme of things, if you really think about it, like we're all going to be oppressed soon. They they're building AI. They just released a whole new algorithmic model called Llama Three, 
uh, yeah, shit, shit's gonna get crazy with that if if people keep barking up that tree. Because a lot of people, like, they, they is running around here saying, oh, the white man's the devil, the white man's the devil, but we got a lot of problems we need to fix. Look in the mirror and fix that shit and come together. Right. Come together with those that's, that's trying to do right. I feel like they have a strong, strong case of cognitive dissonance because when they know the fucking earth is flat, but they can't say that. You feel me? Because it's going to fuck they whole shit up. I never forget it. The, when I first started getting into the flat earth, I tried to tell my dad about it. And he a five percenter, right? So, you know, they got their math and shit, all that. And the sun is this far away and all that. So that's his foundation. You feel me? He was not trying to hear me. Like, it don't matter how much sense I made. Yeah. He wasn't going to hear me. Let me like, tell you something about what, what you got to realize about the five percent nation. And I know your daddy was a five percenter. I know we got family members that's Masons, but these are my enemies. Not in a physical way where I want to do something wrong to you. When it comes to spiritual warfare, men debating philosophies and theories about creation, I am waging war on all of these groups, the Hebrews, the five percenters. I don't want nothing bad to happen to them brothers. It's just that when it comes to this knowledge, I got to have my draws on and my big boy voice. It ain't enough to just teach it. Because when you're dealing with the 5% nation, the Hebrew Israelites, them brothers is really powerful with their voices. And it ain't because they telling the truth. It's because they don't talk like pussies. That's why I wanted to be a part of that shit, nigga. I saw some black men that one scared to tell the fucking white man, bitch, you a devil. And guess what, nigga? At the time, I was at a certain level of consciousness where I was on my pan African, yeah, the white man, the devil of shit. And but to tell him that now, that's different now. You tell him that now. They go out saying that now. You going you brother, you go to talking like that, you how uh -huh, nigga gonna get a job, nigga? Damn, nigga. <laughs> So you saying all of these groups going out there talking they big boy shit and they saying we don't need shit from America. We feed our own. We organize. Our brothers ain't hurting. We got a community. Shit, nigga. I love that. Like the new Wapians, the fucking five percenters. Nigga, when I was young, this was my dream to be in some militant shit like that. And it just ain't played out that way for my life. But, Honestly, think yeah. these groups are plants because because they've been forever breaking up the communities here in the Americas with a uh, shit like that. Whether you arguing about this guy, daddy, that guy, daddy, and never coming together and changing nothing. But this person is the devil. Well, if they the devil, like you said, why not stop fucking with them and go build your own shit and keep keep the shit pushing? They I still have yet to see that shit happen for real, for real. That's a good statement, bro. Like, that's like, would you rather drive or walk, nigga? Like, would you rather drive or walk? Nigga, I'm driving. You gonna keep saying you wanna fuck with, fuck the white boy, but you need him, though. Like, it don't make no sense. It's a contradiction. I see exactly what y'all saying. I mean, like all of them said, not bad either. They not, but they they stuck, you feel me? And they, and they don't try to improve their, they get stuck, like. Even if, bro, I swear to God, if I found out that the earth was round tomorrow, I'm dropping the flat earth. No bullshit. Because if I found out it wasn't truth, I'm letting it go. Like, and I don't know why people can't do that and just grow. Like, you supposed to grow. Like, not get stuck at some shit you got fascinated with when you were 16 and you really ain't know what it was. You just got taught to remember some lines. What they say, bro? Read. Read. <laughs> Read and don't comprehend is is brainwashing. All like a lot of this shit is brainwashing. Like he was talking about the flat earth. I mean, not the flat earth. The round, the round earth versus the flat earth. You know, a lot of that doctrine is brainwashing. Whether you be a uh, atheist, an atheist still believes in God because you have to say there's a God that exists. You know what I'm saying? To say you don't believe, which is kind of counter counterproductive. Or you you believe in the God, and you say. All right, 
it's it's uh it's round, but like what God are you talking about? You know you know you what's crazy? Atheists are a group of niggas who too cool to say that there's something greater than me. It's just an ego trip. <laughs> it's a whole religion of of a motherfuckers that will admit to you we live in a creation, but ain't no creator though. It's like me saying, I know that's a car right there. And somebody say, who made it? Nobody didn't make it. It's just a car. It don't have a maker. I'm like, but it's safe forward. It don't have, it's it, 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 like, bro, it, it, it's, a, it's a creation, but it don't got a creator, though. There's a show called uh, The Atheist Experience. They're like, it's a... Uh, to show uh, produced in Texas. I don't know if you ever heard of it, Santos, but it'd be funny if you ever, if you would call in live and debate with them. I think I would love to hear that. Bro, I love, you they know existed. what? I really think that the next level to my channel is for me to debate atheists. Because these, glo to me, atheists are smarter than globalists because they've done enough science to realize, okay, if I'm going to accept science, I can't be religious. See, my thing is people in the church that's pushing science. I'm like, nigga, your Bible don't even agree with science. You a hypocrite. I got more respect for the damn atheist for saying, look, science is just basically my religion. I ain't no God. It's just nigga science. To me, that's more genuine. Because the Christian, the religious person got to find a way for science and God to coexist. Like, they'll take medicine, then when it heal their body, they'll be like, thank you, God. And I'm going to be like, nigga, that's thank you, science. Like, what are you talking about? That's And that's what I was mentioning earlier when we were talking about when I said, when you asked me, oh, is it important to know that there's an afterlife after you die? And that's what I meant by dumb people, because atheists, atheists don't think that way. They actually think it's like blackout, you're done. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what, though? Here go the thing about an atheist. Atheists say, ain't nothing after this life. But they still give you an afterlife. They just call it darkness. That's something. <laughs> if, that's still something. You got an afterlife, nigga. You saying in your atheistic afterlife, it's just you going to be sleep in darkness. That's something, though. You, It ain't like you ain't giving me nothing. <laughs> you still giving me an afterlife concept. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Damn, yeah. wouldn't it make more sense to say you just don't know at that point? Right. Like, bro, that's, well, that's more accept that's more acceptable. That. Like, bro, it's not hard to say I don't know. That gives you room to go know. Like I'll but tell you, you right this oh, though. Man. It's something in every single living, breathing organism with a soul. You can't even lie to yourself. Like when you die, that's it. Some in you know that's bullshit. Now you can say out of your mouth, you can debate me all you want. That's your body talking, your brain talking, your ego talking. That ain't the part of you that's immortal that's talking. Because that part of you agree with me. It knows no, you full it's no true. it know you full of shit. Your soul know, boy, Sanchez is telling the truth. You just trying to fit in with the world and promote the body and the flesh, nigga. Because that's just too much truth for you. That much red pill ain't going to get you no pussy, nigga. You need to play a little bit more dumb, nigga. Like, come on. You, that, that's He's all you saying. That's all that is, man. Yo, with, like, with that said, too, like, like okay, they, they extreme is it's just you you go into a black hole for for all of existence which kind of sounds like hell but whatever but watch uh, this though a person with a soul is the only one that can even experience darkness so if an atheist say when i die i'm going to experience darkness who's the one having that experience the observer I can experience darkness right now in my garage if I shut all the lights off. So I'm still having an experience called darkness all around me. I'm Which is essentially everything, right? They so so like I remember so I had a whole uh theology class, like it was talking about different religions and atheism. That that actually popped up in the class, which is funny. And he was uh he was saying that uh 
like the whole thing with them is they believe that uh the the world started in a big bang from the singularity so if the singularity started everything it needs to have a higher plane of existence or extra dimensional realm to start everything because that's outside of all time and space so it has to be something beyond causality aka something supernatural you know so so that whole belief system is fucking paradoxical within itself and absurd because then you're saying it's something you know, supernatural that made all of existence, but nothing else supernatural beyond the start of existence exists. Like, nigga, that don't make sense. Facts. Yo, bro, <laughs> Sanchez, I got a question for you. So when we go to these other realms, say, say all right, just say hypothetically speaking, if, say if I, I, I yeah. check or I die, right? And I go to this higher plane, will it still be in 3D or would it be in another, like, will it be in 4D, for example? Watch this, watch okay. this. Watch this. Because I'm dying to see a Tesseract. I got you. Watch this crazy <laughs> shit. And a lot of folks don't agree with Sanchez. But these people be like, well, the fifth well, dimension, the, the fifth dimension is like this. The sixth dimension is like this. On the tenth dimension, it's like this, man. And I'd be like, bro, watch this, my nigga Reek Stacks. People like that, they don't know what they're talking about. Watch, watch this. When you dream, Reek Stacks, don't the world look like this? Yes, sir. Have you ever been to a dream world where you went on a Tesseract or some other bullshit? Fuck no. All Never. of my dreams, nigga, I got a ground, a sky, sun and moon. It's just a different reality unfolding. That's all. It's now, just painless. <laughs> right, and that now they act like no, nope, but it's some other worlds where you experience reality, and it's just a bunch of dots, or it's just a bunch of like they, right. on the on the tenth dimension, nigga. Ooh, nigga, when you get to the tenth dimension, nigga, reality is just a big ball of light with spikes coming out of it, with little men saying ooh, 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 and people running around in circles and like nigga shut your all this that's pseudo shit nigga I'm just <laughs> oh, God, look, I'm just see, saying see, nigga I think, I think I think the way each I think of these, the way that the each of, e look each of these planes look the same nigga the the mm -hmm. whole looking ain't all this concept of different dimensions with dip that's the pseudo shit nigga all pseudo side yeah and, and, and peace to them, peace to them two and, brothers and, too, Sanchez. But on the thirtieth dimension, oh nigga, on the thirtieth dimension, order, 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 hundred, order, hundred dimension. They they got all kinds, right? Of, just like what I mean, how would you this go fake up that spiritual high? stuff, nigga? And peace, to salute nigga, to our two brothers, nigga, man. Uh, the really pussy, nice act, man. Rain, man. But I, that I, boy, I like that man to see two of y'all young brothers <laughs> build up, man. Sanchez, my bad, I've been um. Wait for a few weeks. I'm still letting this 30 years old kick in on me, man. You know, it was I'm just turned 30 a week ago. We can have a birthday. So, you know, I'm still letting happy, that. Man, mother, I'm happy, still happy, letting happy that. motherfucking 30. Boy, you're young. Cross boy. the threshold. Yeah. So That's it's 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 it's. I, I don't look it, but it's it's still soaking in. But I oh, you right, bro. Say, I'm 32. I'll be yeah. 33 this year. Like yeah. the other man. you niggas so make me feel too old, man. I'm about to be but forty and shit. Man. I hate that I'm about to be forty and shit. We yeah. still we all in our thirties though. Look, man, <laughs> I'm still in my twenties. Yeah, yeah, I we all know still. Young. Yeah, I know you young. I cut hair. I can tell by your mustache, no diddy. Like you got a young boy mustache. Like. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I, know, mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, he do. <laughs> he do. <laughs> That oh, shit man. don't start growing over your lips to you a certain age, you know. <laughs> 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 or you do certain things with a woman, you feel me? <laughs> man, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't know about all that. My little cousin got more facial hair than me. I, I guess I'm just it. experiencing time different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, though. It's all in genetics. <laughs> right, thanks. Does anybody but, know, does anybody know an astronaut Come I on, fucking man. don't. 
But you know what nah. niggas gonna say? It was black women that have NASA go to the moon. And guess mm -hmm. what, nigga? You got to get some pussy on the 30th dimension. Them bitches <laughs> in the 30th dimension got the best <laughs> pussy. And yeah, yeah, you know all them Anunnaki ass niggas, ah. Atlantean ass niggas. Yeah. Hey, bro, I, I I do know somebody that go to my church. He worked for a uh, a space company, but he's an engineer. He's not an astronaut. But exactly. so, what's your question? What's no, I'm just. Question? Uh, it's my question always is, some oh. niggas that's yeah. You know, I mopped the flow for NASA. I'm a janitor up at NASA, so yeah, they went to the moon. <laughs> like, bitch, please, bitch, you, you, like, you know, he, my, my auntie was a mathematician for NASA. They got y'all <laughs> working some shit in a computer program, typing up digits and shit. You think you helping a rocket go to the moon, and that shit just some fucking shit go, like letting your little brother hold a stick. And to the controller, and it ain't plugged in, and he just pressing shit, thinking he playing. Hey, that's real talk. That's real talk. You ever seen the videos when they do some type of space launch, right? And they show the room with all the technicians in there. They have the computer. They all start clapping. They ain't doing that shit and on like, Nintendo. Like, that shit looks so fake, bro. It's like, y'all clapping. <laughs> hey, 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 I got a better one for you, wild, too, Zach. Like, yeah, like okay, so, so if he type in the wrong word, then the rocket may go off course type shit. Like, get the fuck right, out right, of here. Right, right. That nigga if doing go back algorithms. Like, oh, man. Nothing. If you look on, uh, I don't know if y'all used to play Grand Theft Auto back in the day, but if you look at Vice City and look at the, the end of hey. the towards at the game, you will see where they did the launch for when they quote unquote inside the uh, in the movie room. The, the, the name of the scene before the game was over, it was uh, called, I uh, forgot what they called it, but they had to do something where they had to do the fake launch and they went in there and, you know, when they did, they went on the moon shit. When the year that they quote unquote went on the moon and they put that shit in Vice City, you know, in the early 2000s, but people didn't peep the shit. And I was like, wow. So they, they, you know, they, they got all kinds of, you know, little tricks. You know what? And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, black folks wanted to crucify your boy when uh, Hidden Figures came out. And I roasted them black women and them AKAs, nigga. And I was all kind of coons and, and nigga. And stand on it. I don't give a mm. fuck who black talking about they work for NASA, you lying to. Because they be like, so you telling me the black folks that work for NASA too, they lying to? Yes, nigga, all of them lying, nigga. <laughs> and you ain't going to make me fucking not stand on it because you saying black folks work for NASA. They ass lying too, nigga. And they can get the oh, smoke oh, too, nigga. Somebody. If they was college, if they was college soror yeah. sorority, they I'm stand, yeah, they I'm on standing it. on it. Like, yeah. this, this what they say, Santa. Oh, I know somebody. Oh, nah, my, my people's got six degrees. Oh, 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 oh nah, man. Nah, my, my, my He's lying my, my sister, to, they, nigga. Yeah, right. Hey. He's lying to. Like, you can't chocolate coat the liar and make me say he telling the truth now. Well, you know it's black folks that work for NASA. Yeah, the white man had niggas helping them lie for years, son. You ain't telling me nothing. Hey, also, shit, can I hop in this motherfucker? Now, now what? The what's, white what's, what's man crazy, decided. The white man, look, look. The fucking black woman helped the white man go to the moon, but he didn't want the world to know until Flat Earth became popular. <laughs> What's, what's, what's crazy God is damn. that everything about everything about space research is built off a of faulty premise because they first tell you well the sun is 93 Max. million miles away and they calculate everything else based off it based off that premise right there or or the moon is 200 something thousand miles away and everything else is calculated off of that and it's like wait if your first step was wrong everything else is going to be wrong too yeah and then Thank you you know what? But, yeah, I, I, I'll go ahead, go ahead. Build the foundation Man. of the house fucked up. The whole shit going to come down. Fucked like, up. And you I, know I, what I, I don't like? They get to just edit the globe in real time. And the dumb globalists will be like, well, we don't know everything. <laughs> like, y'all, we change our shit as we learn more. And I'm like, well, that means you don't know shit, man, nigga. Because if you tell right. them, if you, yeah, right. If the foundation of your shit was fucked up, you need to quit saying, well, we got the answer this time because we found out something new. But you basing the new shit on the old shit. And you said the old shit was flawed. It, it's, oh, it's because cool. they got the loudest voice, my nigga. Like they yeah. control the narrative. Yeah. That's they, the way it is, bro. That sucks. They said, you that ever sucks, seen bro. Animal that Planet? sucks. 
Y'all ever said this? I that's knew that that's what it is. With us. You ever, y'all ever hit a J? Hey, listen, man, next time y'all smoke, look, smoke something put on Animal Planet. I know y'all remember this episode <laughs> a long time ago. They was talking about mm-hmm. ants. And y'all know how they look at the animals? Just anything. It don't matter what y'all seen on Animal Planet. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all see how they go? It look like they in the woods with the animals and the insects and the and the birds and shit. Man, one day I was high as hell watching Animal Planet. And I thought I was, I thought it was a movie. They zoomed out of this shit. Did y'all know that they was actually filming in a goddamn tank? A tank. Mm-mm, they was putting, Yo, the, they was putting the squirrels wow. in the bro, tank. Bro, 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 bro. You know what's so crazy? Since I'm a fuck, bro. Well, bro, you know what's crazy about what he's saying? When we say our whole life was a lie, man, this nigga ain't lying, bro. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of them damn documentaries was shot in controlled environments. I'm going to tell you one that's going to fuck you up. Remember your boy Bear Grylls, man in the wild? Yep. That nigga just got yeah. exposed, bro. He got his, guess what this bitch was, <laughs> bro, Rob must have saw that shit. Bro, Rob had to know what I'm talking about. Guess what this nigga back grills, y'all? Look, bro, I got to, that was my nigga. I got to cut the camera on. I said, all of us thought back grills was a hell of a nigga. And come to find out, that nigga was sleeping in the hotel when the camera go off and shit. <laughs> That nigga had a paper plate, and, and Sanchez, bro. Bro. Pull, up on, pull him up on the internet. What do he look like? Hey, I never hey, forget the episode bro. when that nigga killed the yeah, snake. I got a picture. Gutted the snake. Yeah, bad grills, nigga. Hey, and he was the piss later. Man, that nigga faked that whole show, y'all. He was not living in the wild, bro. Ah, uh, it's a whole channel exposing that nigga to the core. Yo, one of that nigga shows, he was like, this is a dangerous passage and there's nowhere else to get across and I hope I don't die. And the dude said, this is the same spot Bear Grill shot this video. All he had to do was walk around right here, y'all. It's not a mountain. This is a back, this is like in a back, this is like back buck buck in the backyard Nevada mountains and shit. This nigga got y'all thinking he's in the fucking African desert. This nigga in Nevada up the street from Las Vegas, nigga, in the desert. Bro, bro, uh, hey, think about he it. He behind the Outback the, the Steakhouse. Nigga, the nigga talking about he in the woods, <laughs> yeah. bro. All you got to yeah. do is ask the cameraman for a bottle of water, my nigga. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Damn. You know, you Damn. That part. That part. That bro. part. Everything hey, Rob, was fake, bro. nigga. Like, I, like, bro, hey, Rob, I was like, they got me with wrestling. They got me with sports. I'm good. Now, mm. Bear Grylls? Bear Grylls? Mm. I can't have Bear Grylls. I can't have a man in a while surviving. That's fake. Oh, my hey, bro, God, that, nigga. That's hey, that's Sanchez, it, even, nigga, even the white dude, even the one that was eating the fake meat. Y'all know what I'm talking about that just came You talking about man versus wild? Nah, the big that's dude, Bear Grylls the that, right there. The man versus wild, the one, yeah. the one with the the big the big beard, and everybody saying his wife looks sick. Oh, the the he, liver he, king, the liver king. Yeah, right? him. He just got exposed. He don't eat that shit, man. He yeah, eat yeah, man. that shit, <laughs> hey, bro. You, bro, hey. the thing is this, bro. They they put the camera there, right? They want you to be the camera. They want you to forget about the cameraman. That's how it always mm-hmm. is. Bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, all, it's Hollywood, bro. bro. Everything is Hollywood. Bro. Whoa, well, he just that's explained, that's studio, he just explained the blue marble picture. Because guess what people say? We went to the moon because they living through that picture like yeah. they was. De- that's crazy. It's They call it uh, uh, the fourth wall, too. I think mm-hmm. like the fourth yeah, wall or some shit. Yeah. That, that, and, and, hey, bro, and then that's another thing. Let me, let me put this out here. Shit. They they have us in media all day, bro. Looking down at our phones. Bro, I needed a break. I needed a break from watching you, bro. You was gone for like three days. Hey, hey, I was looking at my phone, bro. Yeah, I'm glad hey, Rob, I was gone for three nigga, days. Rob. <laughs> hey, Rob, I got I to put my phone up. I got to put my phone in my face like this now, Rob, when I talk. And I, you know what I'm saying? I don't even, I don't even look down. Yeah, for real. I'm like this. <laughs> Shit, and you then and then saying? they want a nigga to look up at the eclipse, bro. But meanwhile, yeah. I'm already I'm looking around everywhere. Shit, they they got people control, Shoes. bro. The control Shoes. is crazy. Hey, oh, listen, hey, you, I, I mm-hmm. sit back. I, I, you know, I'm in, you know, in the law enforcement. I'm in in the security industry, and all I do is just sit back and observe people, brother. And I promise you, 
Mm-hmm. I've learned so much in this industry for the last eight to nine years, man, than anything that I've ever taught and learned in my life. And it, you will be surprised. Yo. Like I was telling Sanchez, one episode I went outside, this was last summer, just working out. I did this. I just wanted to do this to myself. I didn't smoke. I didn't do nothing. I went outside and I sat down and I looked at each and everybody, even every race. I just watched them. White, Asian, Chinese, Black. What I noticed about us we were always by ourselves. What I noticed about everybody else, they was together. And another thing what I noticed, people are using animals now. Everybody are getting dogs because they can't even talk to people. So guys That's me, like- bro. The, back, That's me, bro. Back, right. Back in the old days, Sanchez know what I'm talking about. Back in the old days, dudes, you, well, the certain kind of man, because I don't want to you know, be a, a, a prejudice, they used to use dogs to get at the woman because they ain't had no game. So mm-hmm. it's like now you see it's more of a of a of a big thing. One thing I noticed, I said, "Shit, we have a problem." I said, "Man, most people can't even talk to one another unless they have a fucking pet. Mm-hmm. Most people can't even talk to one another unless they have something something that they can get." And I'm sitting there watch that shit, and now one person sat there and, and, and saw what the fuck I was doing. I even took and and and, and the sister told me the other day she worked in education. She said, "My." I'm in education and not everybody that's in education are educated. I said, wow. Mm. So that let me know last year by Bar. just observation that people, they're lost. One thing that we need to do as black folk, we need to stick together. I don't care if you're mm. walking outside, man. The sisters, the, the, I felt I felt her because she was looking down. She It's mm. like she didn't know what to look at. You know mm. what I'm saying? And I'm looking at it every the single person. Next, bro. People right. disconnected, bro. We like right. that's what I like about this channel, bro. I don't come on here all the time, like I, you know what I mean. But I feel like I belong here, and I, and, you know, I feel, yeah, I, I just feel like I belong here. And I'm not social. I'm an introvert, bro. So, but sometimes I just gotta come out my shell, and that's my problem now, bro. Like now, meet new people. I'm telling people how I feel because normally I mask that shit, bro. I'm in, you know, my nose in the book, my nose in the podcast. I'm learning right. about some shit, man. Sometimes you just right. gotta, especially open up with like minded people, man. Cause y'all like minded. You hit it right on the nose. I was mm. waiting for you to stop. Exactly. Like minded, okay. bro. It, hey, but, uh, bro, my boy, my boy, bro, Sanchez, nigga, like, that's, I love niggas. He, he, he a different dropped, dude, big man. Fat he a beast, beast. Fucker, bro. He a, he a he beast, beast, man. Mm. And, and, and I don't know. I, I, and I'll be honest with you, Rob, and, I got, and I'm pretty sure Sanchez know this too. I don't fuck with people, and I'm very selective. That brother Sanchez is, is I call three men in my life the, the three wise men. That brother's number four. One mm-hmm. brother named Supreme, a brother named Pat, a brother named um, e, uh, Issa that passed away, which is my mentor. Last but not least, I got to go throw Sanchez. I don't know nobody else. And these brothers mm-hmm. are, 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 are wise to me. These are elder brothers including sanchez but i don't know nobody that i talk about at home or to my family or to friends my mentor wife that passed away Issa, his wife was fucking watching watching sanchez so two weeks ago she said mike we <laughs> fell asleep watching his show she even heard me speaking on his show she said i love to see that it was different well, i got the text message in my phone she said, I love to see all races of people coming together on one fucking panel. She said, mm-hmm. Mike, I fell asleep and it's 1030 and y'all still building. And this lady, 57 years old. I right there. Old. I right there. You feel what hey, I'm saying? You know something, bro? When you do something and it feel right, it must be right, bro. Eric, you know what I mean? Watching this shit. Right. In the acting. You know what I'm saying? Right, bro, it's right, bro. Like, mm, yeah. And then my you original. Gotta think, back man. to my boy. He, he, what? This, this stream been going on for like 10 hours, bro. My boy, now ass, ten bro. hours. Come on, man! Give, hey, give me on. one YouTuber. Give me one. Give me one YouTuber or one movie that you ever seen do that. Give, just give me one. Give me that one. Boy, I don't crazy. love YouTube. Give me one. Okay, YouTube. I want to. I want to. Uh, piece of the panel. I want to bring it to a point since y'all on this 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 topic about. Um, I don't know if you've ever. I, I I've seen your channel and followed you for years as well, but I don't know if y'all have define what melanin was i remember one time that was like an argument a debate on here that yeah, just doesn't I, believe in melanin right so that's what i want to say so this is what i want to say about it and my opinion on it and my thought about it 
I feel like, because you know how they say that black people are highly addictive beings, right? And I was like, damn, I've been reading the Bible lately, and it's like, damn, I want to read the Bible more and more. And I was like, oh, that's how they make you feel. That's how um, I feel like get um, you. people get people get so, more people get more um more addicted. Like like once you do something, because we're creatures of habit. Yeah. So anything we yeah. do, we're gonna always want to do it over and over, like a routine, right? Because we feel safe. So I feel like because melanin, in my opinion, is like a drug. Because it's almost like it, it gets you addicted to stuff. Like it's like a gateway drug that gets you addicted. You use it to can, get more. Can I say? Can I say one thing? I was gonna go live today and do a, a stream on the topic of melanin, but I didn't want to limit it to one mm. topic. It's crazy that you brought it up because Amen. you know with flat power and shit, we we we, we teach that exactly the truth. Melanin is a theory. Right, and one thing about theories is just, man, they're just not facts. And even yeah, if, a, like, even if a theory make me feel good, even if they say, well, this theory, because you can have a theory that say, well, black people are first, they the God, black people are this, and I can say, damn, I like that theory, that make me a God. And now because the theory cater to me, I will push the theory like a fact to my people. Hey, let me tell you, shit. <laughs> they they use the 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 word flat earther as a fucking insult, bro. And you gotta think about it. For yeah. you to hone that word, you hone it, yeah, and you turn it into something nasty, that means that there's truth behind it. Like the you know, these people these people are smart, bro. They spend years, yeah. they spend years on honing, you know, social engineering. Man, you gotta be on top of that shit, bro. Yeah, no, and, and, not, and not, Rob, not, it was a, it was a brother that said earlier. Whoever said earlier, the brother said the same thing that I've been telling people: go to a fucking beach or just look in a fucking plane. How fucking lost do you gotta be to not know that you could see a straight fucking line? Are you yeah. you, you, you you can't well, see hey, it? I, I go gotta to ask. Beach. I gotta ask the brother some because I love the melanin topic. To me, right. The shape of the earth is mo is, is excuse me, is just as interesting as how diversity came to be on the earth. Like mm. how you get different types of things. That's interesting to me too. And that proves that it's a creator, nigga. But they put that away behind melanin. They say, well, diversity evolved. In, in humans it evolved from two humans which was a black man and black woman so now watch this right, right? if you raised in the church they give you adam and eve a white man and white woman with greek names adam and eve and then but though that white man and white woman gave birth to every fucking race if you read the Bible, that's what you're reading. You're saying that a white man and a white woman created Polynesians, niggas that look like Reek Stacks, Bruce Lee niggas, and all that. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, and look, so the Bible got to give you evolution. And it does just that. It shows you how from the seed of Adam and Eve all the way through Noah, how the children of Noah and all that sham ham, how these two white folks, how they seed evolved into all these different races. That's evolution in the Bible. Guess what happened? Hey. When, and, and now look, if a nigga say, well, fuck the Bible. It wasn't no two white people that started the earth. That sound dumb as hell. It was two black people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said and, 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 and like, check this out like, too, with, with, No matter what, <laughs> not, like no matter what color you make them two people, <laughs> you going you gonna need evolution to explain oh, the hey, rest bro. of them, dog. And, and, and like, Sanchez, oh, oh go ahead, brother. That's just ridiculous. Let me let me just tell you right quick, man. So for one, um, I got to disagree with you, my brother. Melanin is not a theory. Melanin is a real thing. And it doesn't only it doesn't only exist in black people. That's the misconception. Melanin, I bet shows, I can... up. melanin shows up in genes of dark color. White mm. people can have melanin. You're have saying that, 
but hold up. I ain't cutting you off. Listen, I'm not I'm not cutting you off because I've been down this road before. Let me just set the debate up and I'm going to fall back, right? We got to go slow with it. Hold on. And do me a favor for a minute. Cut your mic up. I want you to be heard, right? I think you kind of low. All right. Yeah, we want you to. Yeah, Zach. Okay, let me let me, Not, let me throw the, uh, the, the air the air. Yeah. In. Oh, okay. That's because you're driving. I see. I'm driving. Okay. I got you. Uh, you hear me yeah. And, and listen, I'm not gonna cut you off. Don't forget what you're saying. I'm, I, I just want to yeah. ask you something so you can go somewhere. I, I want to go and get to the meat of this because this is what's gonna have to happen. The first thing is first. I've been down the melanin road so much. I know that it's like Jesus. No two Christians got the same, really, concept of Jesus. So to be fair with you, before you say anything else, tell us what melanin is for you. All right, look. Because I okay. hear so many okay. different things from different people. Let me see, because I don't want to just put that on you. So tell us what it is for you. Yeah, go ahead. So, so, so melanin is it's a, it's, a, it's a gene that shows up in skin pigmentation. And it, it, it manifests as dark skin. And the opposite of that is going to be light skin, right? That's, that, that's a lack of melanin. Melanin can show up in hair color. It can show oh, up in eye color. If you, have, if you have dark mm -hmm. eyes, then that means your eyes are melanated. It, it's white people with dark brown eyes. You feel me? Some, some, some have recessive genes in their eyes where it shows up mm -hmm. as blue eyes or, or green eyes, right? But, one, but me, me, melanin is a trait of a dominant gene as opposed mm -hmm. to a recessive gene, right? So that's so for one, go. that's what melanin is. Like that's literally it. It's just a gene that caused things to become dark. That's that's literally what and it what is. They, right? And what they do is they what they do is they make money off of the black and white theory when there's no such thing as racism, which is a control. Now watch, now watch, watch where I'm going though. Watch where I'm well, going. Well, hold on, brother. You gotta let me respond to that. So the thing about a dominant gene is bullshit. So here's the thing right here, right? If you're saying melanin is responsible for darkness and lack of melanin is responsible for light skin, that's the point of contention for we move forward. I want to debate you on that. Can we stop and, then, and go with that argument on that? So my thing is this right here. I don't think white people are white because they lack melanin. I don't think a nigga is dark because he got a lot of melanin in him. If what you're saying is true, right, that means I can extract melanin from a jet black man, and when I take his melanin away from him, I can turn him white. Now, okay. guess what? Now, now listen. Now, now listen. There are people that are saying melanin can be extracted. So you telling me, Zach, if I take away yeah. all the melanin and extract it out of you right now, you will be a white man? No, no, so 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 when nah. I say that's partially true, let me let me break down what I'm saying. That's partially true. I don't now I'm not gonna say that melanin can be extracted and pulled out from something, but what I can say, can. well hold on, time out, time out, pause, pause, pause. But what I can say is that there are ways to gain melanin in your body by eating certain foods. And then there's a way to lose melanin. Now, okay, so 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 for example, if you a black person. You, 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 you get your vitamin D from sunlight, right? But now if you stay, in, let's, let's say you stay in the house for the whole summertime, for three months, you just stay in the house. You're going to lose melanin because you haven't been exposed to the sun. The very wait, thing wait, that, wait, that wait, 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 So oh, you tell, oh, no, 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 let me holler at him. Let me holler at him. So guess what you just said? Melanin ain't shit but a suntan. That's what nah. you just saying. That's what you're saying. Nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm listen, saying, I'm brother. Saying, I'm, that's what listen adds to it, but it's not it, it, it's not the be all end all of what produces what, what, it. that's not okay, what I'm saying okay okay so what did melanin here's my thing about it melanin is is being used to say this is what's determining distinction among skin tone mm -hmm. okay so what I'm saying is if I took that concept to the flower world you will have problems because you would have to say the most dominant gene is in the flowers with the darkest colors. If you a yellow flower, you lacking melanin. If you a dark purple flower, you got more melanin. But that ain't how diversity work in the plant kingdom. 
So okay, why, well, why, this, why would it work any different in the fucking human kingdom? Nature don't do differences. She de- make everything diverse. Like the reason why an uh, apple is fucking orange, uh, yellow, purple, red, green, is because nature created different types of shit. That's the law of probability. That when nature make one thing, she makes so many different versions of that one thing to cancel out the whole, uh, the, that's called diversity. That, that yeah. if I'm an artist, like if I make a certain car, I'm going to have, if I come out with a new car called a Mustang, you can get that bitch in blue, pink, black, green, yellow. We're going to make diverse colors of this. It's going to be the car, same car. It's the human body. We gonna yeah. color it different ways. It's gonna have different types. That's with everything. It ain't just humans. It's for fishes, crocodile. If you show me anything, that shit got the same patterns we got from albino white to everything. They all that. All right, but, but, yeah, but look though, this is this is this is one thing that's a fact. I, okay, so yeah. now how you saying diversity in plant life and diversity in animal life versus it you ain't, know, human no, life? Go ahead. The thing. The thing is. Uh, you know, I really can't speak to the plants and all that, but I'm I pretty can. sure it ties in. Hold on, hold on, but let me say, I'm pretty sure it ties into what I'm about to say. You can see melanin having better quality. It shows up in food. Look at brown yeah. rice versus white rice. Look at broccoli versus cauliflower. Look at white bread versus wheat bread. That Everything ain't true. That, that ain't true, man. It's more valuable. To okay, your, to okay. Your, so it's, watch it's, this, right? So watch it's, it's, this, right? Come out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait a minute, brother. You telling me my <laughs> sperm? Wait, my sperm is white, but it produces <laughs> life. No, uh, wait. Let's talk. No, I'm finna go by his logic, y'all. Them clouds in the sky are white, so that's fucking you up, nigga. Them clouds ain't got melanin. I'm just saying, let's use his logic, nigga. Let's oh, listen, listen, say, listen. Can I what, add, what, No, bro. It t- let two men talk for a second. I okay. don't get a I lot of smoke. The end of this, so. I got y'all, oh, nigga. I've been going for 10 hours. Now when I'm talking to a brother about some shit, it's only going to make the show, it's, it's going to get confusing. Be patient with me. This the smoke. People like to see a little debate. And by the way, shout out to my nigga Zach, man. He know his love. This is just yeah, me and him. Five, yeah, five, hell five. yeah. Now check this out, Zach. What I'm saying is this. You're saying if you put white rice and brown rice in front of me, we can just look at the color of the rice and tell which one better. I'm saying no, you can't. You, that's not how. You don't want to go with your food that way. Because if I took that same approach to everything in life, I'll be a fool. For example, if I was buying jade and I said, fuck that white jade, give me the darkest jade you got. That's the cheapest shit. The most expensive jade is the white one. That's what I'm saying. Like, we can't take that logic and apply. You telling me I can't use plants, but you just went to rice grains, them plants. And I'm telling you, White rice ain't natural, nigga. That's enriched where they fucking take all of the nutritions out of it to increase the shelf life. Now, listen, when when all of that happened, guess what you're taking out of it? The dirt, the minerals, the shit from the ground that make the brown rice brown is the good shit. Like we need real talk. I'm going to say something right now that a lot of y'all might disagree with. Here's the thing. In the natural setting, you didn't drink clear water. Your water was had a a a a a a a, 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 a tank to it. It was it, it nigga it was when you filtered. drunk right. I was saying it had minerals in it, dirt in it. Like we drunk out the rivers and lakes. So only thing I'm saying, man, is real talk, man, is like when it comes down to darkness, we got to talk about darkness without talking about melanin. We got to be able to have a conversation about why things are different on Earth without using the scientific theory of melanin. Because this one I'm going to fuck you up and I'm going to give you the mic. Mm-hmm. When life first started on Earth, what color was those humans? 
those humans was black. They was dark. They were black. Now, now, now watch this. Now, now, hold on. Now, hold on. No, 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 no. I ain't go there yet. I knew that. Now, watch this, right? How did white people, Asian people, Italian people, all these different cultures and races come from those original black people? Now, watch this, though, before you do that. What? Let, hold up. Uh, let me holler at the brother Zach one second, guys. Be patient with me. I got you. I'm going to stay streaming. Now, watch this. Here's what I'm going to show the people. I want y'all to learn something. No matter what you do, guys, when you start the reality off from two black people or two white people, like what the Bible did with Adam and Eve, or like what Asian people doing in China, right? They starting the world off with two Asian people. And if I ask them two Asian people, okay, if the world started from two yellow motherfuckers, how did the black folks and all them come to be? Everybody got to make up some grand story, which is based on how those original people evolved over time and mutated some kind of way, rather they Watch, everybody got a different theory on how the, the evolution and mutation took place. And when I let all of these niggas get through, y'all, we're going to use something called Occam's Razor. And we're going to see who got the most simplest answer that make the, the most sense. We finna do that right now. Now, go ahead, my brother, and take the flow. Thank you so much for your patience. You go ahead and let us know from those original black, that first black man and woman, how all these other races come to be. Take your time. All right, cool. No worries, man. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick story, um, and then it's going to help you make sense of how Black people produce everybody else in the world, right? So there was this scientist. He was actually a, uh, a zoologist, right? And he was a pigeon breeder. Now, we all know what color pigeons are, right? So he would breed these pigeons generation after generation, right? Then he started noticing a genetic mutation happening with some of the baby pigeons to where they will become born with specks of white in their feathers, right? So then what he would do was he would separate those. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's try this again. I got to cut you off. Now, listen, I don't want to hear no story about pigeons, Let's stop. Let's backtrack. It's relevant. No, 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 no. All right. Okay. Let's simplify this shit. Hold up. Hold on. I got you. Let's simplify this shit. You saying that was a black man and black woman. The original people were black. And just like these pigeons, over time, a mutation occurred. That's what I've heard this before. I'm saving us time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guess what, y'all? No, exactly, exactly. Now, guess what, y'all? That's a belief. That right there is blasphemy oh, against oh, the... It's, hold it's up. Not, wait, wait, a, wait, 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 wait. It is. You can't prove that. You can prove it with the pigeons, and even then, I got to believe what you saying is true with your story. Look, I'm, Look just I'm, saying, just saying, I'm just saying I'm just saying story, story bro, but, but long long story short, I took a biology class and I had to watch a video and on the video that it was don't about give you the breeder. secrets of human origins, my man. This is crazy. Can I, can I, can I just can I just condense it? You just listen to it, bro, and then and then I, rule I it want out. you to kidding. have the floor. But I All don't right. want to play the same melanin game. I want to set the stage. I'm going to ask you to do something difficult, but I, I know you but melanin. listen. I won't even mention melanin. No, 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 no. You're gonna, I want you to mention melanin, but here's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna turn the mic over from you. I don't wanna hear your argument based on another man's experience. I really right. want you to make a good argument, and we closing our eyes, right? We're gonna picture a world with nothing but black people. Nothing okay. but two, a world full of black folks. Now, Explain to us over time, dude, what happened to create all the other cultures. Fuck the pigeons. Just do right. the story with and do it. Yeah, because I can say I don't believe that story. I don't believe the scientists. I think that's a lie. So just right, give man. me your so best we, argument. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, go ahead. Here, here we go, then. This is something that can be tested and proven every single day, bro. We all done grew up with an albino nigga in our neighborhood. 
Now, we just seen this nigga's parents, and they might have been black, bro, like dark, darker than him. But for some reason, he mutated and became <clears throat> albino when he was born. Like, that's literally the reason why he's popping out albino. It's a mutation that happens. That some, ain't answering my question, though, brother. Listen to me. <clears throat> Listen. To me. Hold on, brother. I know th this is seeming difficult. But you're just not doing the right thing, brother. I got to stop you. Okay, ab albinism exists. That don't explain human diversity. Okay, there's an albino everything. There's an albino crocodile. There's an albino tree. Anything in nature got an albino version. That don't teach me human origins of diversity. I'm asking you a simple question. I didn't ask you how albinism come to be. I asked you how two black people, a black man and black woman, ended up creating Bruce Lee, George Bush, Bill Clinton, Sarah Palin, Nikola Tesla. A lack of sunlight. You right, bro, answering you ready, you ready that. Me to go? You ready for me to go? Brother, please tell me how human diversity. I know how albinism started. Albinos ain't telling me how all these different races and cultures and different fucking kinds of people on earth come to be. That's why I told you we're starting off from a black man and black woman. Black Adam and Eve. Walk me up into how they transform. Quit doing, quit picking on albinos. Quit bringing up fucking stories and shit. You're beating around a bush. Just tell me from those original black people, brother. It's easy. Tell a story of what right, happened I'll, I'll, for them I'll, to create I'll make, I'll the, the races. Short, I'll, I'll make it short, man, because you're not, you're not really trying to let me go. I see that. Brother, here's right, what's going on. So, so, here's what's going on. I got patience. I'm streaming for 10 hours. I just got, I'm not going to let you bullshit with me. When I ask a person for something and they don't give me what I ask for time and time again, it gets fucking annoying. And it only happens with Jesus and melanin and religious shit. Just be straight up with me, man. Damn, nigga. Like you've been really beating up, you brought up stories uh, pigeons and shit, albinos. I, I asked simple. I said, bro, you said it started from a black man and black woman. Why can't you start me from there and walk me through the story of what happened without fucking with albinos and pigeons and shit? Well, it's easy to walk them through the story, bro. Just walk them through, like caves, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, it's 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 all, it's all good, man. I'm I'm going to fall back, man. I'm a fall No, back. man, walk me through the God damn, bro. This hey, not this on, shit. Bro, and this this shit. Running. Bro, you know what I'm telling you? It, it's crazy, bro. Cuz dudes be acting weird with certain topics. We've been having a good deal the whole night. You know why? Cuz we are so thorough and straight up with each other when it come to NASA and all this shit. I'm, I'm like I'm asking you some simple about melanin, bro. You said it, not me. You said okay, it was a black man and black woman in the beginning. You didn't say it was two pigeons. You didn't say about about albin albinos. Start me from what you said and walk me up through it, man. I don't know why that's hard or why, man, you got to even go through this for that. That's all I was asking for. For you to explain what you said and all like that other shit ain't what you said. You didn't say pigeons. That's that's like you moving the goalpost. You can take your time, nigga. Like I'm streaming for 10 hours. Go ahead from those two black people. Yeah, man. So from the two black people, they produce offspring that was lighter than themselves. They kept doing this for so many generations. And then what they did was they rounded them all up and they separated them. Then those lighter variations of their of them made babies with each other. And then they started to migrate around the world. Some went into Europe, some went into the Asias. That's how you and look, bro. Like that's like based on your climate, your, your, your wind, all the like all the different factors of 
the elements that you live in, it contributes to, to your features, to your phenotype, like to, to, to the slant of the eyes, to the slant in the nose, all that come from the climate you live in. But ultimately, they all stem from these black people that came up out of Africa, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Them black people mutated into lighter forms of themselves, and those lighter forms dispersed around the world. That's that's I mean, you want the nutshell version? That's just me cut it straight to the Well, chase, well listen, you, you don't got to listen. You don't got to give me the nutshell version. If you want to keep going and take your time and kick your shoes off and go into detail, I'll stay muted. I just I'm thank you for doing what I all I wanted you to do was start at me from that black man and black woman. That's all my bad for getting all my panties in the bunch, my nigga. I just nah, you, wanted you, you, you to, good, yeah, you good, you good, yeah, no, I, I, mean, I was, uh, uh, no, no, I got a little, I got brother, a little impatient. Brother, I just wanted you to, and, but look, what I'm telling you is you don't got to give me the, in a nutshell version, because I was mm -hmm. hogging the mic just to get you to get the way I wanted you to be. Now that I got mm -hmm. you there, take your time, nigga. That's all I was stressing about. Now that you where I wanted you to be, you can relax. Take your time, man. Y'all don't interrupt him if he want to. Give us the longer one, or if y'all got questions for him, y'all go. No, I just wanted to yeah, tell him. I got, him, I got a Zach. question for him, uh, bro. Yeah. Hey, what's salute, the question? Salute. Hey, salute, the question, bro. bro. Salute, salute to bro. Salute to the panel, man. Um, I wanted to ask you. So, since you said that the lighter versions continue to create lighter versions, so when there's albinos created. Do those albinos keep creating albinos, or are they able to have a a, a person with regular skin uh, mutation? Key, can, can, um, can so in, most, in most cases, in most cases, they will produce more albinos, but because they come from the dark people, they still have a dormant dominant gene that bro, could that debunk what you said. Whoa, you know, whoa, whoa, what you exactly. said? Bro. I said they could, exactly. bro. But in most cases, albinos are outliers. Everything, everything. Can I say something? Can I say something? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can, yeah, let me just say oh something to him real quick. We're gonna pass it around. Let me de debunk his albino diversity theory because I've had this argument before, and they ain't gonna take me that long. Watch this, bro. Watch this. Don't you know that albinos come in all races? So for what you saying to be true, it won't make no sense. Because if you telling me the original race of albinos was white people, that ain't true. Because albinos come in all races. It's even white albinos, nigga. You telling me that's a white, white man. If white people are albinos, then what the hell is a white albino? That's what I'm saying. This is showing you that an albino ain't the original white man if white people even got their own albinos. Albinos come in all races, nigga. You can't name a race that don't make an albino, even the darkest ones. So guess what this proves? Like I said earlier, Occam's razor, y'all. I got the simplest answer. Guess what my answer is? The creator is such a beautiful artist that there's no pattern you can't find in plants that you can't find in humans. Let me drop my bomb, nigga. And I'ma prove my point. There's an albino form of everything in nature, and we don't say that the albino form of everything in nature is a result of two original black fucking flowers that mutated and they created all the other colors through albinism no because albinism ain't got shit to do with colors and what you call in cultures and diversity and races don't got nothing to do with skin tone why because each race got an albino and a jet black version you need to open your eyes guess what nature did nature created all of the color spectrums in everybody continent that's why if you go to asia you can find asians that's jet black and you can find asians that's white you can find albino asians guess what else you can find cow printed asians what are you talking about sanchez nature make cow printed people guess what you call them vitiligo motherfuckers mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. I was this about is, to say that. Guess, guess what I'm right saying, bro? Triangle. Like nature created every pattern we see in animals and people. If you open up your eyes, you will see that there's a lot of women with vitiligo that are beautiful. Mm-hmm. And and guess what? If they didn't have vitiligo, they they wouldn't even be that beautiful. They vitiligo is actually right. happened to That's make them sure beautiful, well. nigga. Like you look at this shit like a defect and shit, but nature, like when you see a, when you see a cow with this kind of print, you don't say that cow got vitiligo. You you don't say that with the cow, but you don't see how nature did this same print with everything. She did everything with everything, nigga. You everything yeah, you I find just, I, in plants. That, listen, thing, listen. Listen, everything you find with plants and animals, you find that shit with humans and dogs and cats. Like, nature ain't doing nothing different because you're a fucking human. She gonna put the same diversity when she made apples and oranges and shit. They took that same diversity concept with everything. That's what I'm saying. I just gotta tell you. And and look, and and listen, watch this, right? And I'm gonna land my plane. When it comes to Occam's, Occam's razor, I don't need evolution for that. And I got proof for what I'm saying. And even vitiligo people are pushing back saying, my skin is not a disease. I go to the beach, I do everything. Like, why do you look at me crazy? They hunting albinos in Africa. They got to hide the albinos, nigga. <laughs> that's I'm crazy. You, that's, how, that's how it all started, man. Go read, go read. Yeah. Uh, Go 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 read go read the um what's it called the Black Civilization man by uh black dude wrote it man he taught, that's he, what I'm he that, but that's what I'm saying thing. though bro exactly. this what the that, black ancestors but, did but, but hold up but hold up what I'm saying though no. you listen listen real quick he telling me what a black man said and I'm just telling you what nature doing I don't give a fuck what a man said what my proof is is when you go outside what you see this ain't written in no damn book. What I'm telling you is all of the patterns we see in animals, we find them in humans. Tell me I'm like, debate me or be quiet. Fuck a book. Tell me I'm wrong. If I'm right, right. then then we can then cool. I'm right. But I'm not going to let you bring your response to what I'm saying ain't going to be a book reference. It's going to be I got smoke for it or not. We ain't. I told you it's 2024. It's post eclipse. And men got to wear draws. We're officially in a debate now, right, chat? Right or wrong? Drop a one. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Make your argument. Go ahead. Debate against me. Stop trying to straddle the fence. All right, so, Unmute so, your mic. All, tell me what I'm wrong about and correct me on it. All right, bro. All, all I'm trying to tell you is I, where, where, you're, where you're wrong at is every, every um, form of diversity that we see is not natural. Everything is not I, natural. I didn't say that, so Band I'm not wrong about that. Part. Nope, 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 nope. I'm not going to let you do me like that, brother. I didn't say that. I said that all of the patterns we find in nature and in plants and animals, we find them in humans. I didn't say that all of these patterns are natural. I didn't say that. You said that, and I'm not going to let you cheat now. I'm moderating my own debate at this point, so it looked like I'm taking over the mic, but I'm being fair. You can't misrepresent, and I got to point that out. I didn't say that. So I'm not wrong about nothing I didn't say. You said that, and I didn't say. So you're making an argument about something I didn't say. I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm saying every skin pattern in nature is not natural. It didn't come... Like, it's not something that that just is built into this shit. A lot of these skin conditions, man, if a motherfucker got a bunch of bumps on their skin, that can be an outbreak, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say, well, nature just diverse. That's why you got all them ugly bumps on you. No, nigga, you got a fucking problem. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I'm hey, not fucking, I'm not, motherfucker- like, I'm not, you're not going to make it like I said that. Like, be fair with me like I'm doing with you, bro. The only reason you having a problem right now, because you won't be straight up, and I'm just a straight up dude, man. Just be straight up, bro. Real spill. Go ahead, man. 
Jez, I want to know how many years or how many centuries or whatever do you believe that human beings have been on the planet? And I want to ask the brother, when did when did he, does he believe that mutation took place? So my thing is this. I don't give a fuck what a nigga believe. I give a fuck what a nigga can prove. That's why when I make my argument, I only go with something you can't deny. And he know what I'm saying. He can't say I'm wrong about it. That's why he got to make up some I didn't say and say I'm wrong. And that's why I stopped him on that, bro. I got to point out to y'all what he doing, man. And it's crazy because I got respect for the brother. But just keep it real with me, man. That's all. That's all I'm saying, bro. Debate me with a fair fade. Ain't no funny shit. No weapons. No cheating. And just stand up and fight me, bro. Man to man. Tell me where I'm wrong. Yeah. Hey, let, don't don't bro, misrepresent me. Sanchez. Don't misrepresent me. Hold on. And just All let us let's bro, run Sanchez. this quick, damn debate. Quick, yeah. Quick question, brother. Hey, hey before you ask your to... question. Hey, before you before you ask your uh, question, bro, real quick, I gotta address a nigga in the chat named Bucky Wingo. Bro, you been trolling you? me all night, my nigga. I'm not no, I'm not the one to play with, bro. I'm really about to ask you. Nigga, where you live? I want to pull up and come. Hold on, no, 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 no. Let me do this for you. Real talk, First of all, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me say something real quick. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, let me make a disclaimer. Me and Zach is going. We have an hour debate, but Zach supports this channel. Zach supports this community. Please, y'all, don't let a friendly fucking like I'm playing my brother in a game of, of 21, nigga, and we turn up. See, but the people in the crowd, this YouTube shit, bro, quit taking this shit more serious than me and Zach taking it, because that's my nigga. So why y'all being messy? So salutes to my nigga Zach. At this point, I'm going to calm down because people starting to take sides and turn up and getting you all out of line. And brother, I'm not trying to be no, like, I'm glad you joined. It's a good show. I thank you for your pushback. It's fun to me. You my brother, man. Hey. Yo, Zach, Shit. I got a question for you as yeah, far man, as Yeah, man, we not trying to beat up on Zach. He got the right yeah, to what's, disagree. What's up, what's up, I'm not, I'm not, hey, 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 I'm not hey, coming out of question. Hey, Bucky, can, Bucky. I, can, I, can I say what I hey, wanted hey, to hey, say? Hey, hey, but, but, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Bucky I'm Wingo. Walking. Wait a minute, Bucky Wingo. This man ain't sneak debating, though, because at this point, I already let him know it's a debate, nigga. You disagreeing with me. And, but the only thing he did was misrepresent my argument. He's arguing back, but he, he misrepresented it. So now at this point in the debate, my nigga Bucky, I got to let him get the mic back and, and make his argument because I cut him off because he misrepresented me. But he did, shout out to my nigga Bucky Wingo, man. We just trying to get the smoke going. And it's good for the show, man, because my people like a good spot. That's all. But don't let them yeah, turn Bucky you up, Zach. Rear. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Hey, Zach, yeah, yeah, it's man. All, it's all could I, could up, I ask up, you something this to your shit here, second This shit question, here man. made the show what's fire. Up, yeah, go up? ahead. When, when, when you were saying, saying, man, about the different diversities and shit with skin tone, you know, I want to respectfully agree with you on that, too, because we got dark and lighter skinned people in different regions that are in those different diverse places. But what we do see different is, like, slanted eyes, a hair texture, um, and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, so, that's the, that's the a, phenotype, a, a, a bro. That's just, that's a just key, the phenotype. That's what, I, that's what I wanted to tell the brother, uh, the brother yeah. Zach, um, and I wanted to tap in with both Zach and Sanchez. All oh, y'all are all saying the same thing, and it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, melatonin and just we been put niggas we, Melatonin. Yeah. Here, here, here's my point. Here goes what I'm the saying. Yo. With the pigeons. Hold up, though. Oh. Here's the point. Okay. Because it's beyond the pigeons. You got to realize. No, it wasn't about it. Hold, hold up, hold up. Let me mm. and uh, Zach, because brothers can't who disagree often can't reach a point of understanding with it because it's a lot of. Okay, just let me and the brother work this shit out for one minute. Now, now, Zach, this is what I was saying real quick. Y'all, do me a favor. Have a little patience. I got you. Zach, this is what I'm saying. We proved that albinism is not the cause of diversity. 
and that the first white people aren't the original albinos. That is proven beyond a shadow of doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, when you realize the fact that every group produced their own albino, even white people. And that's why I said, if what you're saying is true, then a white albino is a white, white man. He ain't a white man. Because if albinism is the original white race, guess what, dude? This ain't no white woman right here. That's a black woman. You just said, wherever you go in the world, it changed your facial features. You said so the white people got skin and nose because they went to the cold places in Europe. This is a person with white skin with a black big negro nose this proves that wrong that her skin color ain't a result of her ancestors being in the snow which means that the, if the first two black people on the earth was black and you saying that they mutated because they moved to a different location then why do we find albinos all over the world if people stop butting in, I can fucking make these points. It's too many trigger happy niggas. Let me holler at the man for a minute. I'm making good points that's irrefutable. It's just some, it's like I said, y'all think that this flat earth shit is the red pill. It's not. It's shit like this that's the red pill. I be debating flat earthers about melanin and all that shit, nigga. You think you all the way woke up, nigga. All that shit need to be is a lie. The same niggas gave you the globe, gave you the out of Africa theory to support the globe. Because they said that the comet that landed on the earth with the seed of humans on it, the germ of human life on it, it landed near Mali, Africa. And that we was fish creatures that evolved and can't crawled up on land on the shores of Africa. That's the purpose. Why would the white man tell everybody we come from black folks in Africa? It supports his damn agenda. And it's, it's so dope because the black people will say, well, we was first. And it'll make them feel special. And it'll play right into that agenda. But... When you go to looking at the proofs that I'm putting out, you see it ain't much you can say to refute this shit. And I don't care how this shit make you feel. I'm just right. I know how I feel when faced with the truth. I love to give niggas that feeling. It's called popping your cherry. A lot of niggas hate me for that. Like, man, that nigga, he bust my world open. Like, I thought, yeah, nigga, it happened to me, so I'm going to do it to you. <laughs> Like, real talk, bro, I thought I was so right about all this shit. And I realized I was wrong. But I was humble enough to know that. And when I see niggas going through what I went through, it's a passion in me to make them burn. To make them realize, yeah, you wrong, bro. I like to give niggas that feeling. Because I went through it a lot thinking I knew shit. But one thing about me, I just let it burn, let it burn. And I fucking say, well, nigga, the flat earthers was right. I'm going to be a flat earther now. I thought I was a globalist. I thought I was right. But shit, I tried to prove them wrong. They right. I always been that nigga. Now, I swap sides when I see you right and I'm wrong. Hey, and when I, see the next, when I see the next man can't do that, I want it to burn on him. I'm going to play with that. I like that. Like, oh, you can't, you can't do that? Right. Yeah, No, go ahead. I'm going to fall back. Because I know you can't debate against what I'm saying. If your argument is albinism, I just blew that shit out the water, though. This picture gonna, alone blow it out it's, the it's, water. It's, it, but it's, it's, it's several things, bro. It's albinism plus migration. I know I, you got to put the plus on it once I debunk what you just said recently. I know, you got, to come, I know you got to come with an extra clip. Go ahead. Load up and fire back. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been, I've been, I've been saying that, bro. And, you know, the reason for the diversity amongst the so-called, that's why I say so, like what we call races, it's just where you are in the world. Like literally where you might, like where your ancestors migrated to 
and how your phenotype adjusted to that uh, climate. But listen, but don't, that's look, what causes real talk. Among I, I gotta ask you something. I gotta it's ask you tone. something. I gotta ask you something though. You do know that I that debunks that too, right? Because if you telling me that if black people move to a cold environment and stay there over time, they big nigga nose will get slim so they can breed a cold air. That's what you're saying. That's, it, that's and, exactly and, what now I'm listen, saying. Now, listen, and I'm Hold saying, on, and wait a minute. No, you don't got to explain it, nigga, if I know what you're saying. Now, watch this. This proves I've heard your shit so many times. I know what you're saying. And let me debunk the bullshit. It's black folks that's been living in Alaska for over a hundred thousand to a million years. This is a fucking fact. It's black people that's been living in Siberia for millennia. Listen, I'm serious. It's black people in Canada that's been there ever since America, like from the beginning in Canada. And Canada is cold than a motherfucker, boy. Listen, what I'm telling you, we don't think about what we saying. It's white people that's been living in Ecuador for millions of years. And that's right can on I, the equator. You, that's right on. Evidence? Listen, brother. Can I, can I, can I give listen, you, you, you would have been gave it to me if you had it. Let me finish talking, please. I ain't done. You interrupted me. Chill out. The shit you saying ain't nothing new like we ain't heard before, dog. And you're acting like you finna be the guy to bring me evidence that the top scholars on melanin can't bring me. Like, it's crazy when the globalists tell me they can give me evidence for the globe when I'm debunking NASA and Neil deGrasse Tyson. You should be working for them, nigga. You should be at the melanin conference if you got the evidence and these motherfuckers still calling it a theory. You're using the out of Africa theory and you using melanin to correlate that. If the out of Africa theory needs melanin, then this is a lie based on another lie to explain. Because like I told you, the only reason they created the theory of melanin it's because they created the out of Africa theory. And if, they, if they're telling us that life started in Africa, we know that's a predominantly black continent. So if everybody else in America, Canada, and all that come from Africa that started to migrate off the continent, the question is, how did those Africans become to look like George Bush and Bill Clinton and Bruce Lee, nigga? <laughs> And so far, you're failing to answer that because you brought up albinism and I debunked that. Then you said, well, I'm going to bring up migration. And you didn't realize that was part of your whole out of Africa theory that the Africans migrated and mutated because of environment. If albinism debunk one thing, it debunks all of it. You're going to realize at the end of this debate, I'm that nigga and I got the story right for real. Because I've been down them corners that you walking down before, son. I was a Pan-African melanin talking nigga. I had your mind. You didn't have mine. I'm watching a baby do what I did when I was born. Cry, 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 cry. Why, why, why? Cognitive dissonance. You act like you finna tell me some new shit about melanin. Like, that's what I think about the globalists acting like they finna tell me something new about the globe. Like, I had to learn everything about the globe to be able to debunk the shit. You think I woke up one night and said, melanin ain't real because it's gonna be viral. This a good video. No, nigga. Just like with Flat Earth, I can't. I dotted my I's and crossed my T's. You didn't. That's why you bringing up books. You bringing up pigeons. You bringing up secondhand shit. And I'm bringing up firsthand observation that anybody can do if they got a fucking mind to just think. I don't got to believe a motherfucker or refer to the next man. I'm going to use my mind and show you this some bullshit you saying, son. Go ahead. 
All right, I, I just want to be clear, uh, first and foremost. I don't, I don't got no cognitive dis- dissonance. Um, I'm going to just hit my little disclaimer. That's just my opinion you, right there. You, know. you, you right, can't look, be look, clear just, about just, just, my just opinion, that. brother. Damn, right, it's my look, opinion, just, man. Just to, just to show you, bro, it ain't no cognitive dissonance because I could be wrong it about is, everything brother. I'm saying, bro. It I'm is, here. brother. No, no, it is, brother. I could be, I, I'm telling you, I could be wrong, and I'm here to learn, bro. All I'm doing is telling you what makes the most sense to me, bro. Come on. It, it, like, listen, not, brother. At the end of the day, I wasn't there when it That's not happened. using Occam's razor, and you're not giving me what makes the most sense for you. You're giving me what's comfortable for you because that's what we've been taught, and that's what's easy to regurgitate right off the bat. It don't require you to think about shit, which is why you ain't telling me nothing I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you something you haven't looked into, which is why in that kind of situation, guess who need to be doing the most talking? Me. Because if I give you the mic, it's going to be Sunshine Anderson. Heard it all before. Now, you got to come to grips with the new shit, not me. I wouldn't be arguing against melanin if I didn't know what the fuck, how it worked, nigga. So you trying to reteach me the shit is like a globalist saying you didn't pay attention in school. And I'm like, you're not paying attention outside of school to new ideas that will question what the fuck we was taught. You acting like you the first nigga to teach the out of Africa theory. Like you the first nigga to tell us that the white man is the original albino. This is old 5% nation shit. Come on, nigga. That's Freemason shit. Like we've been hearing that forever in the fucking black conscious community. And you think you up here doing some new shit. Like <laughs> We're the fucking new wave. And, and niggas can't argue with what we saying. The only thing go against us. You ain't been hearing our shit for years, like the lie. They've been telling, they've been telling a lie for years, and people been repeating it forever. People just now hearing this new truth, and they saying, "So you the expert? Let me bring up this book. Let me bring up this experiment from the scientists, cause ain't no way you can know what you talking about, and these are the experts." So if a nigga ain't giving me his own mind and how you come to that reasoning, you're giving me he say, she say, and that can't fuck with my own mind, nigga. You think he say, she say can fuck with the power of me using my mind? When people say that nigga don't lose no debates, it's because I use my mind and them niggas show up with he say, she say. When y'all start using your mind, you will come to the same conclusion I'm coming with. That's called Occam's razor. Not what makes sense to me. Because Jesus is God made sense to me, nigga. What the fuck? How can we do that when we are a collective conscious people and every thought that ever existed has ever been thought is actually in like a cloud that we all have access only to thing, in Only brain. thing I'm saying is if your whole thing is I'm gone, what makes sense with me, only thing you telling me I'm sticking with my comfortable programming. Because guess what? Flat Earth ain't make no sense to me at all. How did I end up going with it? I didn't go with what made sense to me. The globe made sense to me. I went with the shit. Guess what I went with? The shit I couldn't disprove. But I was honest. I tried to disprove the Flat Earth. And in my life, that's what I go by, man. If I'm saying a person wrong, and I'm going to say I'm going to prove your ass wrong. And if I can't prove you wrong, nigga, I'm going to just adopt what the fuck you said, nigga. <laughs> Shit. Oh, yeah. All right, look. I'm gonna, uh, That's, can't beat him, join him. Can't beat him, join him, nigga. That's I'm what gonna, I, I'm I became make, a flat earther. I'm going to make this last point. I'm going to make this right. last point, and then, and then y'all got the floor, man. I'm going to just bow out, bro, and I'm going to give you the W. <laughs> but, uh, hey, man, I'm about to boot you with all this. I hate when a nigga have that little spirit you got. Bro, chill out with that little little weak spirit you coming with, bro. I'ma just bow, man. I'ma just, you know, kiss your feet and do. Bro, just we chilling, nigga. Why you doing? The, just chill. Take the mic, quit acting like I hate that energy. 
please don't give me the bow out energy. Nigga, I ain't a bully. Relax, man. Take the mic and bill, nigga. Shit. The fuck? Nigga. Man, I'm going to just, you all know, right. because you know yeah, this right, shit right. is getting get real hot up in here right now. And I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to just, I mean, come on, bro. I ain't biting. I ain't doing. Am I tripping? Damn, nigga. Relax. You got it? Nah, yeah, you kind of tripping, bro. You kind of tripping. Let me bro, do a little Sanchez, vote and poll. Just, just turn it to a six. You had like you had like an eight. Just turn it to a six. You feel me? Just, yeah. just okay. for everybody else. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Here's hey. the thing, though. Y'all hey. hypocrites. Anytime the smoke come to the panel, long as I'm not saying, you fool, you dummy, you stupid, you slow. In my mind, I can be passionate long as I ain't disrespectful. Everybody know how I debate. I'm a preacher. I'm from the South. Hope your shit. Right. I'm going to ha and preach and do, and I'm going to do that, nigga. But I ain't going to call you out your name. I'm not going to disrespect. So quit acting like I'm up here. That, like, get, stop giving me that energy. Brother, take the mic. Take your time. I'm not going to cut you off, nigga. I ain't got no gun to your head. Nigga, this light shit. This nice Sanchez. Y'all don't know that? Go ahead. All right, man. So my last my last little evidence, man. I got a friend that's from Sudan right now. This is this is to prove the um the climate adaptation theory that I was just saying, right? And I seen this in real time, bro, like with my own eyes. It's not nothing that I read out of a book, nothing like that. My friend from Sudan, he like born and raised out there. All his generation has been out there. This nigga, this nigga black, nigga black as a black tea. Like he, he, he black, black, right? Never, never been in contact with white people. His ancestors didn't mix with him. Nothing like that. They from over there. Now he came to America and he was um, doing time in a prison cell, right? Um, he said inside this, he was in a cell for like three months and it was so cold inside the cell you know, he couldn't, they, they they wouldn't turn the heat on, nothing like that. When he was in Let the cell. Let me guess, he turned white, nigga? nigga. Don't nah, tell nigga, me that. This, nah, nah, bro. Nigga this turned nigga started, on. This nigga, <laughs> nah, bro. Bro started, bro started producing, he started producing <laughs> body hair that he never had. He said for the first time in his life, he got arm hair, leg hair. Aw, oh, man, what the way. fuck, bro? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> It's his body way of adapting to the climate Dude, that he was what in. The How do y'all fuck see does that? this got to do with <laughs> human diversity on Earth? That's what I'm talking <laughs> about, <laughs> man. Like, yo, All this right. nigga saying, yo, when they lock, put that nigga in the hole, he <laughs> turned in a teen wolf. <laughs> like, goddamn, nigga, like, god, nigga, that is not a, what you say in a debate when you trying to prove the out of Africa theory. You up here talking about melanin and out of Africa and evolution, and you talking about a nigga that grew pubic hairs in a damn cell. <laughs> hey, no, I got to say this, bro. Um, I just think... Like, shit, it's you, just you, you not... You got to learn, bro. Bro, like, you don't see how I'm killing you in this debate? Even if you is right about melanin, and I'm wrong... I'm just, ma I can't lie, bro. I'm making better arguments right now with the albino shit, the vitiligo. Like, I'm really saying these are patterns we see in everything else. Why wouldn't we see it in humans? You bringing up pigeons, niggas growing dick hairs in a hole. They growing dick hairs in a <laughs> hole and shit. You bringing up goddamn all kind of crazy shit, bro. <laughs> You the all over girl, the place. Like yeah, man, this man <laughs> all over the place. To, and he can't stay with that original black man and black woman in Africa. Yeah. How they, how the fuck they gave birth to Bruce Lee and Bill Clinton and George Bush and Queen Elizabeth come yes. from Tiffany and Ray Ray. Yeah. San Sanchez, you said something real early. It probably went over niggas' head. That's some Freemason shit. That's yeah, that, it is. You know, let, let's put it in here because it's racist as fuck. It's racist, you know, it's racist towards white people, but it's more racist that the white people told the niggas that. So it's, it's, it's you know what I mean? It's racist on both sides. That's what yeah. niggas don't understand, bro. You, you know, we gotta, we, we gotta be out here together. Don't give a fuck what, you know, a nigga ain't better than you. You stand beside somebody else, they, just because you black don't, don't mean you better. You know what I mean? Right, like my my and just on some simple fair shit, 
No one can prove scientifically how diversity started from black folks, white folks, or Asian folks. And, uh, and folks will call me a coon when I make these kind of arguments. But guess what, though? They don't see when I'm debating that white man about Adam and Eve, though. The white man yeah. saying it started from two white folks. I'm telling him he's wrong because evolution is bullshit. If a black man come behind him and say, well, it was two black people, I'm going to say, bro, I just told the white man he was wrong because you're going to need evolution, too. And I don't I'm not going to let you listen. I'm not going to let your black ass off the hook because you black. My smoke is against evolution, not the white man. So if the white man want to use evolution because he said it started from two white people that mutated and I said you full of shit because evolution is flawed. Why? What make you think I'm gonna let you niggas pick up evolution and chocolate coat it? Who you think I am, dog? He's saying to his, I was gonna say that uh, what I wanted to what, uh, enter it with, and you probably know where it come from. It came from that 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 Yaku theory, what they used to talk about. How they said it was all that, all that, all the pigeons and all that stuff. Is that, is that saying some great points, and I actually agree with both of y'all. He ain't saying nothing wrong, but that pigeons and all that other stuff come from the Yakub story, where black people, where we, he hated his own people, and he went to the Mount Caucasus and created now, all now that. Now, guess stuff. what? Hold up, I got smoke for you now. Now, oh, guess oh, no, what? I no, 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 saying, no, 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 no. You stepped in that. Don't do that. Don't you run now, bro. Oh, my God. No, stop, bro. Don't do that. I said he was wrong. And you said he didn't have nothing wrong. So now, man, you got smoke. Unmute oh, your mic. Oh, that? Bro, oh, I, that? I said he was wrong about the first humans being a black man and black woman. If you think he right about that, I want you to explain evolution now from them two. Otherwise, yeah, so otherwise, uh, I'm talking about the man oh, that not, said, not. no, stop it. The man that said he didn't say nothing wrong. Let him explain how diversity come from a black man and black woman first. Because I said that dude was wrong about that. Otherwise, yeah, I agree. So, Okay, so he was wrong about something. Now, guess what y'all going to realize? When a nigga wrong, let him stay wrong. Because if you try to make it right, you step in and boo-boo. Let that that man, listen, like, no, listen, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm trying to though. tell y'all something. You better let that man stink by himself. Because if you try to help him, that shit going to get on you and everybody's stinking getting hit. I don't care. You try to, if you try to save a nigga with shit on him, you going to stink. Now, listen what I'm telling. I'm just showing him, remove that stink off of you. You wrong on that. If you go up to him saying he don't stink, I'm going to say you stink too, nigga. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I said he stunk. He stank. Now, he can go clean the stank off of him. Now, if somebody be like, he ain't that musty, bro, he stank. Let him go clean it off. Because if you say he ain't stanky, he ain't going to bathe. He's wrong. If he, he can't explain, to... if he can't explain to me what he said and stand on it like a man, it started from a black man and black woman, and this is how the diversity comes. Then he lost the debate. I can explain how the diversity comes. I'm not going to let y'all treat me unfairly because y'all arguing for melanin. I don't care if every black person hate me, nigga. I'll just go party with the white folks. <laughs> now, that's some real shit. Explain, that's some real shit. Explain Sanchez. how we got here then since we all believe the out of Africa. That's some real shit. I like that, Sanchez. That's some real shit. I mean, we we all populated different continents at different times, man. That out of Africa theory doesn't make any fucking sense because after a certain point, if you mm -hmm. start reproducing with the same group of people, you're going to have defects in your genome and people are going to start coming out with mental disabilities and most likely die. 
So, okay, so, hey, so I, I'm, in, I'm in rain. Let me let me ask you, I'm in rain. If you saying you your first statement was we all populated different. So, first of all, who is the we? Secondly, uh, where did the, the human species from? Or where, where did huh? the, where did the we where, where did the we stem from? So, from from what I can understand, we came here from another realm of existence. We didn't just pop in and evolve that shit doesn't make sense because even if you look at the earlier theories on where all of us came from you had like four different groups you had uh mongoloids uh Negro it's just it was just yeah. three no no mongoloids dravidians ne Negroid, 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 yeah so so with those four or or no you said three my bad mongoloids dravidians negroids no it's four no, I was right. Wait, no, what, was what, what is a Dravidian? What is a Dravidian? So Man, Dravidians are Arabic happen, people. Arabic. Arabic. No, nah, Arabic fall under uh, Mongoloid. No, they, they fall, fall under, under Mongoloid Dravidian. classification. That's that's under that that form of so called, you know, division. All they right, would, they will fall going, under their own though, class. Like like he said, like he said before, everybody has their own version of uh, albinism or albinism. My bad. But uh also, yeah, what he was saying about like uh like like two two uh what you call it, albinos, like what's on the screen producing white people, that's fictitious mm -hmm. and that shit will never happen. Never happen. Cause the simple fact the the simple fact of somebody saying that shit could happen is absurd. Cause at a certain point, you keep reproducing, mm -hmm. you're not going to not not only will you not have Hold up, I'm a, I'm gonna flip because I I had uh popped out my my fucking book and shit. Let me flip. Does it let hey, you put the camera and, on? and to let you know a Dravidian is a Caucasoid brother. It's the Mediterranean Caucasoid. That's what they are. Well, if they if everything is Caucasoid and it's only Negroes and Caucasoid, either no, way, no, you can pull like, it up. I'm looking at it right now. I knew what a Dravidian. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I give give him the correct thing. I'm looking at it now. It's Mediterranean Caucasoid. So if that's a Mediterranean Caucasoid, it's not a Negroid, and everybody else was uh, included in that Negroid group, all the people mm -hmm. from uh, North America and South America. But uh, I was going to point this out, too. Yes, I got a biology textbook. Um, as far as genetic <laughs> traits, right? This is what he was talking about. You'll see this in plants and humans, right? Little, we'll little we'll pundit square, if you've ever seen this. Right? The likelihood of you having an albino, this would be albino. I don't know if you can you can really see it. It might be blurry. I can't really see it, but is that the thing where in the first box it goes two two uppercase letters, the next box it goes one uppercase and see, one lowercase? Yeah, I'm gonna lower show y'all what's going on, right? Yeah. Here's hold on. Let me say something real quick. When it comes to like flat Earth and all that shit, people question science. This what y'all gonna find out when it comes to diversity and other shit. People will regurgitate science. They'll say, oh, you talking about this diagram, that theory, this book, that physicist. And then we'll hop back on flat earth and people will be like, yeah, they lying about everything. Yeah, fuck them bitches. You got to question everything. But the niggas that's telling you that the black people was first, we don't question that. We say, you hate yourself. What you mean we went first? It's scientists that said, here go this book and here go this diagram and that model. And I'm like, oh, now we're scientific when we're first. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We get along with science when it stroke our ego. I get it now. Okay. When that same yeah, science that said that we was three-fourths of a human, we disagreed. Now them mm, same I'm, people telling you you first and yeah we are first. It's, like, it's a mind damn. game, bro. It's a mind game. That's true. That's true. And that's the, that's the point I was trying to make earlier. It's like they, you know, at some point they treat their niggas bad. They got to give them a little bit of something to make them feel good. But then again, that you know that's the type of shit that goes on, bro. That, and then that shit turned to ego. You start looking at other people as lesser, and you ain't supposed to do that, man. Just but you know because you think you're greater than somebody else, that makes someone else less. Oh, but but you know what I'm gonna tell you some when when <clears throat> niggas say, I'm gonna tell you me as a black man, 
I would rather just say black people were first. I'm finna, I'm finna say the most coonish shit in the world. Nigga, Jesse Lee Peterson ain't got nothing on my cooning, nigga. You talk about, you know how niggas be debating with they cripping? The coons be debating with your cooning, nigga. Now watch this, because this shit make more sense than anybody. Watch this now. The crazy thing about it is this right here. So you telling me the black man was first and the white man is our child that come later. And he took over everything and built the whole world empire on top of our shit in just a few generations. And guess what I'm saying? If that really happened, I would lie to motherfuckers. I'd be like, bro, we went first. Them niggas was first. They had a head start. That's how they took this shit over. I would lie, nigga. I'm telling you, nigga, even if you are right, I still hope you was wrong. Because if we was first and our Johnny come late, the youngest human on earth running everything. The youngest nigga that just came that can't even be out in the sun, y'all, run the whole earth. Bro, that make me look so weak that even if that was the truth, i lie about it. That I'll goes back to what you were it, saying nigga. before uh, about the, uh, you know, the whole different things with the different uh, uh, albinos. All these people existed at the same time, but not everybody jump started their civilization the same way. That's why certain ah, uh, that's that's a whole another you know can of worms with that. But um, as far as do y'all, the do y'all know why scientists come with the out of Africa theory is because the oldest remains that they find date back to Africa. It ain't about no racial trying to make somebody feel good because we shitted on you for some. It ain't about that because you know you know what else they didn't just recently found some other remains that date older than Africa. So but they're not trying to say. Bro, let, me like, bro. Like, let me explain something to you. Let me holler at you. Let me holler at you, bro. You're using carbon dating and human remains. Bro, I, I want to say something now, and I hope you don't take it the wrong way, Zach. I love you. You're not fully woke, brother. You on your way, though. But if you humble yourself, you can be fully woke. Nigga, if you still talking about human remains and carbon dating, you really sleep, nigga. I got to admit that shit. Damn, nigga, you sleep. Because, bro, a human corpse can't survive out the 100 to 150 years. You learn that if you go to school for forensics. A forensics detective will tell you. We ain't looking for your body no more after 150 years, nigga. You dust to, why you think we said ashes to ashes and dust to dust? Yeah, he, that's real, bro. He, he's bro, telling the truth. For, but, listen, you gotta, for, you gotta or, learn. For, for, for organic matter, like that's telling me that if I leave an apple on the ground, it'll be there in 100,000 years, nigga. Your body is organic matter like an orange or a grape, nigga. And you telling me they finding niggas in the ground. That, guess what they got to have? See, when you make a big claim, you got to have a big rebuttal. When you make that big claim. And guess what they say? Well, this there's a very tricky process that can preserve human remains for millions of years that's when the bullshit come in fossilization carbon dating that's why they can say oh we know that this mummy is 30 million years old but you can't tell me when white people came to exist and you the one created the out of africa theory but even all the black folks that go with it will say and we don't know where white people come from what you can't debate is artifacts because those it's are going to be there regardless. Watch I'm this, though. Actual, uh, but watch this, though. Artifacts, temples, See, those, those are there. You, you can't, can't, you you can't like, date oh. it. You can't you date it. Yeah, that's, that's true. what I'm saying. That's I'm in rain. Co- you, there's oh, I'm not no, saying you can look, date them. I'm saying, okay. like, okay, so for instance, if you have people that were there and they passed down text or oral tradition, they said this happened so many generations ago and you know this shit is here, and you go to see, oh, yeah, that story was for real. It was really a temple over there. And, you know, those are those people from that area. Like the Aztecs say that they didn't build the temple over there. We got we got pyramids on every continent. Listen, so we know. Listen, fuck. What's up? See, my research is beyond who said what. 
when you become a syncretist, nigga, I can go to the Himalayas right now and teach them people more about the universe than what the fuck. This is what I'm telling y'all, bro. If you go to Egypt right now, them motherfuckers are globe heads. They believe in Allah and NASA. We keep bringing up these other countries like they know some shit we don't know. Here's how life works. Fuck where you at and who you is. Either you know the truth or you don't. And a nigga can't come to me saying, well, I'm from a fucking, I live next door to a Buddhist temple, so I can tell you this. Man, fuck you, nigga. What your re nigga, if you're not looking at the world through a syncretist eyes, making the connections, you can stay, ne you can live next door c to Giza and not know a damn thing. So all of this shit about the Aztec said this, the Mayan said that. Guess what? If a nigga can't pull up the collages like I'm doing, because when I say the ancestor said something, nigga, nigga, I don't play with that. That's like a gang member that puts some on the dead homies, nigga. If I say the ancestor said something, bro, you got to show that shit. Like putting some on the dead homies, nigga. Like a lot of niggas be on some, the ancestors said, boy, the ancestors ain't said shit and I'll hit you in your mouth lying on them, boy. They ain't said nothing. And, 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 and if you can't, like, show me that they said it because I can pull up slides and fucking I got thousands of collage. When I say the ancestors said it, you better believe they said it, nigga. You, a lot of niggas speaking for the ancestors and they need they fucking tongue cut out. You need to think about this too, man. Not everybody got the same ancestors. If we just we just went over how everybody ain't from Africa, right? Then everybody can't have the same ancestors. So they would have different origin points. So it could be a group of motherfuckers talking about the ancestors said this, and they ain't got the same ancestors as you. True that. True that. So they That's ancestors a, yeah. could be telling them yeah, the bullshit. The bullshit. Hey man, shout the bullshit. out to the bill, man. You shout right out on to the that. bill. Shout out to the I know my peoples is from the Americas. You feel me? I'm I'm American Indian. I know what tribe I'm from and everything. We got we got records on that. You feel me? Other people got records on that. And you the get US your government. nationality, man. Huh? Yeah. You need to get your nationality. You need to become a Moorish American, brother. Oh, no, I don't build. do that. I don't, I don't do that more shit, man. I'm Shawnee. Oh, oh man. I'm not, I'm not rocking with that. That's from Europe. Shit, hey. That's not here from the U.S. That's why they want to tell everybody they from Africa because you can't claim rights to the land. So then they actually have the uh, the authority to go. own everything. So I'm not, I'm not doing all that, man. I'm not. My people not from over there. I, I can't trace them back over there. You feel me? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not from Africa, bro. I'm from here. But that's a conversation for let, for next time. Sanchez, we all we build on that. We all know about that. But that's that's a little conversation for next time. But hey, you, I, you are you are I, absolutely I, 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 right. You 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 were here in the motherland. This this a beautiful land where you at. You right. You on point with that part. Have your people. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm on point. point uh, got like that, a um, about the melanin was that um you know so they said that black people are, have addicted personality to stuff. So I'm thinking, like, how do we have that over everybody, right? When, when, okay, if everybody's not black, they come from Africa, so they came from some part of the world to take care of the planet. So some people had to be in touch with certain things, like the weather patterns and all the patterns that you speak of, in a in a divine pattern. They had to be in touch. So who would be those people out of all the people? Somebody had to be the ones that was chosen to be the ones who had the most of something that would lead them to be able to tune in with the supernatural so that they could bring it to the natural so that, that we could take care and have the, and keep the planet in order. And I said, damn, damn, how does black people like, I like, so for instance, for you Sanchez, every time we come to your live, for instance, you always smoking and drinking. A lot of us on here are addicted to fucking smoking and drinking and doing motherfucking smoking weed and cigarettes or whatever. So it's almost like, why do we have to be the ones out of all the races who is addicted to certain stuff the most? It's because we have the most shit out of something that everybody else have. So what is that one thing? What is Can that I thing? Can I answer you? Can I Melody? answer you? I, I got you, bro. I got him. I got him. You say out of all the people in the world, basically, 
Why we getting picked on the most? You know, let me answer your question. You ain't going to like it. Everybody going to pick on the easiest target, nigga. Let's not bullshit. We are the easiest target because we believe in shit like melanin, Jesus. We always got some outer force that's supposed to give us some supernatural edge when the only thing going to help your people is hard work, training, and strategizing. Them white boys is shooting their guns every day, dog. They straight. They working out. You think melanin going to help you. I'd rather say, fuck the melanin, give me the training. Let me be with the niggas that work out every day and train in the woods, and you can have, and, and you get over there with them melanin niggas. We gonna wipe y'all ass out. And that's why it's the white man, bro, that's why the white man running the world now. Your melanin ain't help you, just like your Jesus ain't help you. Your Allah ain't help you, nigga. Everything, that, everything, changed. brother, stop with this matrix shit when a nigga giving you real talk. Y'all want to come in and out of real shit, the matrix shit. Fuck that, that, bro, I ain't giving you matrix talk. I'm giving you straight up real shit. You, you talking about why our people get picked on the most. We the easiest target, nigga. I don't care who don't like it. If you was fucking a threat, they don't nobody keep fucking with a bully. Everybody picks on a weak nigga. You, you want, I, I, like you, you, they want to think it's just the opposite. We getting picked on the most because we the toughest. Where they do that at? Let, let me tell you what, like, this is what I seen, like, from your picture, right? This is some real ass shit. Your, the picture you have on here is like a spirit, right? It's like it's taunting you with real shit. It's, you know, you know, like a leprechaun spirit, nigga. Like, you know, come on, <laughs> come on. No, no. No, nah, bro, it's real. I'm like, I'm nigga, not even trying to make fun of a nigga. Shit. Nigga, no. I'm too half for this, it's, man. <laughs> it's true, nigga. Because you got to know. Cooking, when you when, Sanchez, when you, you joning. <laughs> bro, bro, when you fuck with the spirit, nigga, when you fuck with a spiritual nigga, they smart, nigga. Hey. And they wise as fuck. And you know, it's hey. test hey, my ego, bro. Sanchez, Get in the war, nigga. I'm, I'm in my bag, my nigga. I'm in my bag, Jesus, we going to wipe y'all niggas out. Mm, bro, fuck with, the fuck with, the spirit, bro. with Jesus. Hey, man. That's that's crazy, how you doing, bro. <laughs> hey, real shit. Peep game on what he's saying about people not paying attention and not training and getting shit together, man. If you you an easy target, not knowing, knowing simple information, not having, you know, your your physical skills together, your mental skills together, you're gonna get taken advantage of. Man, you like, just easy if you're not using your brain, period. If you ain't using bro, your yeah, we've been saying it. We've been saying it. Guess what, bro? Also, on some real shit. Here's here, here's some real shit. Melanin ain't nothing but a black Jesus. That's it. Me mm. Guess what? Listen, okay. watch this right. Watch right. this right. Watch this right. When I was in the church. They told me to activate my Holy Ghost power. When I left the church, got in the black conscious community, they said, activate your melanin power. They fucking gave me a new Holy Ghost called melanin. And, they, and just like in a the church, they said, because we got the Holy Ghost, we got perks. We God's chosen people. We favored, nigga, with the Holy Ghost. We got melanin, so we're the ones chosen by God. Why are we chosen by God? Because we the ones made by the hands of God. We the original human. Everybody else come from us fucking each other. And, and guess what you telling me, nigga? The, the shit that I used to tell the white folks was, you mean to tell me Adam and Eve was fucking their own children with incest? See, the thing yes. about the thing about people being first, you got to be sick as hell, too. And just and the price that you got to pay for being first is admitting to the whole world. Yeah, we fucked our daughters. My son fucked his mama. The daddy fucked the daughter, and this is how we gave birth to all these retarded races. So think about this. Black folks are saying all these other races coming from the original black people mating. And when you know incest calls retardation, they saying because we was fucking our own children, 
We created this mutated white Mutation. man, and, and, and I'm not going to let you do that to me, nigga. No, nah, we ain't. No, nah. if the price to being first mean I got to be an incest pedophile, nigga, I don't got to be first that bad. Fuck that. <laughs> that I don't got to be first that's that bad, At nigga. that point, God that's didn't give nah, him bro. He kicked him out the garden, so he didn't give a fuck nah, what they did at that point. Nah, bro. Niggas want to be me, the me. Nah, bro. Nigga, listen, bro. That right there is called a line leader mentality. Niggas want to be the line leader so bad in kindergarten, you don't mind being a pedophile? So the white man made you first, but he called you a fucking monkey pedophile, a Sasquatch. That's why he wanted to uh, bitch him from having nigga. sex with bro, each other because that would have been a Bro, you got to be a desperate nigga if you want to be first that bad that you'll say, yeah, we was fucking our own families and shit. Nah, that's why if you look around the world, guess what, y'all? Everybody saying black people was first. Yeah, we wasn't first. Even the Chinese people saying, yeah, the hey. black people was first, y'all. <laughs> black people first. Like, hey, even the white man saying, yeah, they was first, nigga. The joke's on your dumb ass, nigga. What's good, Sanchez? How you doing, man? What's good, my nigga Willie North Pole? My nigga, you, you cooking, man. <laughs> yeah. These niggas yeah. took the bait, Willie. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, no you question. got it. You got it, bro. I wanna, say, Go ahead. I wanna say I wanna say two things if I can. I got a question for you, and I just wanna make the little announcement if I can. The question that I have for you, if you can remember, would you say that when they say melanin is um when white people don't have melanin, when you compare it to religion, would you say that that's like them saying that they're the devil pretty much? Bro, watch what I'm about to do. I'm about to fuck y'all up. Y'all forgot I'm the king of receipts, nigga. My nigga Willie North Pole about to make me turn up, nigga. We all and then I got up, one thing to say after that. Go ahead. Hold on, bro. Y'all forgot I've been doing this a long time, nigga. I'm about to prove my point real quick. Y'all think I'm bullshitting, bro. My third eye was open. Watch this shit. I said to myself, because guess what, Willie? I used to go, I was in church. I spent thousands of dollars in church. I had a, a, I worked at Milo's Hamburgers in Alabama. And I would take my little check and put it in a collection plate like a lot of my money. I would buy books and documentaries. I wanted to be a good Christian. That's and dope. they had a lot of products. Like I spent money to go to conventions. I love the church. I ain't gonna lie. And I spent a lot of money on ties and Stacy Adams. I like the dress too with the suits. But mm. that was my little whole church life. I reminisce about it. My thing was I spent a lot of money outside a seminar. Cause in in the South, you you can relate to this, Willie. We don't just yeah. got churches. We got stores, nigga, in the church. Right. You can <laughs> buy shit, nigga. You can buy right. shit. Yeah, and, and 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 yeah, I spent a lot of money, you know, trying to get closer to die, you know. Hundred percent, man. One more, <laughs> but 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 but, oh, but one thing. Oh no, if you weren't done, go ahead. But I was no, going to answer your. What I was going to say was kind of off topic. Go ahead, bro. I don't want to throw you off. Go ahead. Look, I'm gonna show you what I peeped. Right when I used to be outside of those churches after the conger after the church over. You can go in a little shopping section. Some churches got entire bookstores in them in the South. And you can buy books like How to Activate Your Holy Ghost, right? Because when I was in the church, they said getting the Holy Ghost is one thing. But with any gift, you got to learn how to use that gift. So they got a whole hustle with this shit, a whole market. So you get the Holy Ghost. Now you got to buy all of these <laughs> books on how to activate your Holy Ghost. Let me show you something, bro. Watch this. Look at this book right here. This reminded me of a book in a church called Holy Ghost Power. Mm. And it's called Pigment Power. Because when you, I saw that the black conscious community was just chocolate coating Christianity. Bro, that shit funny. Yeah. That's crazy. Watch this. If you think I'm crazy, watch this shit, though. I ain't done, though. I'm and not that's done. That's selling book, huh? That's a, but that's watch a this. Book. But, but you think I'm done, though. But you think I'm done. Watch this. Here go the other book. It's called Holy Ghost Power. Look. Mm. You And the covers look damn near the same. The same book. Wow. <laughs> so, look. 
They chocolate coated Christianity. You got a book called a Holy Ghost power because they teaching you. Look, when you wake up and get into the church and you get the Holy Ghost. Now you got to learn how to use it because why you told a lot of people that they got a Holy Ghost. Right. And you told them when they get the Holy Ghost that they're going to be doing all this crazy shit like clairvoyance, intuition, their life don't change. And when they say, well, why my life ain't changing? You got to sell them another product. You got to yeah. say, well, you, you got the Holy Ghost, but you didn't activate it yet. See, yep. my thing is this, just like in the black conscious community, they say, well, look, if our melanin is so powerful, why are we at the bottom? Well, look, you got melanin, but you got to learn how to activate your melanin power. The so they got the same, it. Hey, that bro, they got the, the same scam going and it's just chocolate coated Christianity. Wow. I've been trying to wake people up and I can do did, this. All they did was put a fist on it on the same book. <laughs> That's it. They just took this same cover and put a fist on it, nigga. Hey, bro, bro Sanchez, can I hold on? So, so on top of you, you know, pointing that out, they uh everybody was promoting those DNA tests, and this is just a hunch, right? Who's storing that data, and what are they using that genetic data for? And on top of that, there is no way physically possible you could trace back somebody's ancestry if one you didn't start DNA testing until like the nineteen seventies, and like two, where whose ancestors' graves is you digging up? You know what I'm saying? Somebody digging up my grandma's grave, I'm beating the living shit out of you. Bare minimum. Yeah. You know what look, I'm saying? Look, Plus, look, you get look. 23 chromosomes from your dad, 23 chromosomes from your mom. The X chromosome is the only thing that's passed down. Whenever you have a father, bro, that you no longer have that X link. So there's no way you could trace listen, that back. Bro, this is deep, man. I listen, it's simple what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> Melanin is a fucking scam. And I ain't trying to talk DNA with you niggas tonight. Like, relax with that shit, bro. Because ain't uh, none of you nigga never saw no DNA before, bro. Like, I really like to stick. Okay, let me. Let... Y'all <laughs> like cartoons? Let's pull up DNA for these niggas. Let's... No, you like these pretty pictures, don't you? Ooh-wee, look at them cartoons. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like, come on. This is just a symbol for vibration. Like it's 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 it's, 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 it's like you can it, see it, it under a microscope though. That's okay, the well, well, okay, well, check this out. Show it to me under a microscope. I don't oh. have a microscope currently. I know why, oh. cause you said somebody else got a microscope bro, and they beliefs, saw bro. it, right? They saw it under their microscope and told you about it, didn't it? I, I mean, I've saw, actually bro. looked at a Neva under a microscope before. So yeah, I, you, I, you, I you, can, you can go on. Hold on. Wait, 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 you can pull up DNA under a microscope. I know what y'all talking about. I'm not going I'm not playing dumb. Like, okay, let's let's be fair. Let's pull up your image. You can pull this up. This what you saw under your microscope. And my thing is, okay. They giving you this though. This is what they're giving you. Okay, so my thing is when I look up in the sky at stars, I don't see them colorful. Pl they exaggerating mm -hmm. the reality. They they exaggerating it. This does look similar to this, but it's still exaggerated. Now, why okay. am I being petty like that? Because you need to realize what DNA is, and they not teaching you what it is with this. So watch this. Let me just cook a bit and watch this. Here's what DNA is. It's your vibration. You're a song. Look, this is what DNA is. Just let me cook a minute. Look at this. They're trying Hold to on, say. So you're saying, Hold up. You're I'm not said it yet. Right? Damn it, nigga. <laughs> my bad. You making me yell at one up o'clock in my house and be like, respect. Respect, man. I'm talking. 
I'm in the middle of my shit. I ain't saying shit yet. I'm about to say something. Let me say it. Patience, militancy, discipline. Watch this, right? I'm saying DNA is a vibratory code. And what you looking up un under the microscope, guess what? You got to explain to me what this is. I'm giving you a microscopic image of DNA. And then my question is, Mr. Microscope Man, what do I do with this? What do I do with it? Because the people that looked under a microscope and gave you this, they still turned around and taught it to you like this. I mean, why when you look up DNA, you don't get a bunch of microscopic images? Let's put it in. Why? Because they're trying to teach you a concept and you can't do that with the microscopic image. So let's look at what the concept teaching you. Notes on a musical scale, how you can't see that, how you can't see that DNA, every human is their own song. You're your own song. You're like your DNA code is like notes on a musical scale, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, uh, not notes on a musical scale, but a song written out on fucking the music uh, 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 shit. What the fuck you call this shit here? I ain't been in band class in a long time. But, nigga, this is what your DNA is. It's your vibrational code. It can be hacked, too. Bro, Sanchez, I just looked inside this uh, biology book, right? Look look yeah. at this real quick. I'm gonna, let me flip this real quick. But It I looks, exactly, it looks yeah. exactly like what the fuck you just showed me. That's crazy. Look. <laughs> Let's talk it's, about it's, the uh, chromosome one. Like, literally, guess what? Our reality is based on cymatics. Nikola Tesla said it. Think in terms of vibration and frequency. Your DNA, think about this, right? Your body is a mantra that's being chanted into existence by your soul. In other words, your body is a song. That's being sung by your soul. And when your soul stops singing that song, that song going to fade out. It's called decomposition. Get what I'm saying? Your Not body, like, like, check it out. What we're calling the soul is really what the DNA is. It's the notes that's being sung. The body is literally the song being played. Like, think about this, right? Your body is a manifestation of vibratory frequencies. And that's saying that the, the vibration is singing. That when you say mantra, what is the root word? Man, nigga. The next word is tree. A man tree. Mantra. This is literally talking about manifestation is the chanting of this when we say that the spirit realm creates the physical realm yeah dude the vibratory frequencies on a spiritual level is making things manifest on a physical level this science is so deep that we say we speak shit into existence literally That's what, that's why we say, nigga, when Tupac was rapping all that dying shit, he died. Like, this go to all, it's so deep that you're literally speaking reality into existence because, it, like the Bible say, let there be light. Why did God have to say that? Why he just couldn't think of the light? He God, right? Why he had to say something? Because that's called sonoluminescence, vibratory frequencies. It's the spiritual realm. The physical realm, think about this, right? If you got a bucket of water, that represents the physical universe. But physicality don't have shapes and dimensions. The spirit realm is that which molds the physical realm. Now, how do we look at that? If I got a bucket of water and I play my favorite song up loud by that bucket of water, the fucking water, the patterns of the water will match the song I'm playing. When the bass drum hit, the water will make a big crater in the middle. 
when the hi hats hit, it'll make a little ripple at the top. Like if you play your favorite song, put the speaker up, cut it up, put the water to it. The water gonna dance. They making lamps like that now. When you play your song, the light show happen like how the beat going. That think about that cymatics. That mean that sound will was will, will turn things into shapes and forms. So when they, they'll put a bunch of sand on a black table and they'll dial up a certain frequency and you will get all of these crazy sacred geometry shapes from a bird to a snowflake, all kind of shit, even the earth. Like when you put sand on a black table and turn a, and put a frequency machine under it to vibrate the sand and turn that shit to 432, it'll make the flat earth because the frequency of the earth is 432. It'll literally make the AE map. Hey, yo, respect for that one, man. Because, like, I ain't never look at it uh, as, as far as, like, you speaking that shit into existence. Like, you you literally are speaking yourself into existence every time you breathe. Like, this shit done went full circle to the guy meditating at the top of the, uh, yeah. you know, Bro, the platform. I'm so glad you brought up the guy meditating at the top of the platform because that's what I was thinking about when I was saying that the body is the mantra of the soul. He's up there doing a mantra. It, now, look, I'm going to show you all some real quick, my brother. Let me share my screen and I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to your shit. Everybody be on the lookout for my new documentary coming out on Yahweh. You don't want to miss it. Now, I'm going to share some with y'all. Watch this. Everybody give me a minute. Watch this. I'm going to take y'all back. I don't give a fuck about the copyright strike. They can get their money from this shit. I'm going to show y'all some. Watch this. Um. Watch this shit right here. Who all remember the movie Chucky? Chucky doll. I remember that. Watch this Don't shit right no here. Strikes in here. Just tell us about the shit. God damn. Man. Oh, man, bro. You right. You right. Let me do it. Look, watch this right. Nigga. If you look at what happened in this movie, right? They was about to kill this dude. And he put his spirit into the Chucky doll. You see, let me just play a little of it just a bit. You see this right here? Now, look right here, yo. He taking the spirit out of his body and putting it into the doll. This is what your soul did. Your soul left a higher realm and put itself in a human body avatar right here. And, that, and my whole thing about this Chucky doll, man, this scene right here in 1988, it comes from a famous picture from William Blake. Now, I told y'all, right, if y'all support the show, I will give y'all some shit from my upcoming joint. Now, if niggas be patient, I'm going to show y'all some shit. It's a reason why I put this up, bro. Now, watch this, right? Show you this real quick. I'm finna show you a picture. Matter of fact, let's Google it. It'll be quicker. Watch this. The Elohim creating Adam, nigga. Watch this. Adam is a fucking serpent god, like Christ. Look at Adam's legs. You can learn more when my documentary drop. Why Adam got serpent legs. Why is Adam a serpent god? Watch this, though. Here go the Elohim creating Adam. Now look, if you look at this image, this is what they use for child's play. Check it out. Same shit. Look at that, boy. My eyes be open. Ever since a child, I knew how to connect these parallels. When I see one thing, I got a gift to automatically know where another thing like that was the same way. Now, I don't know how I do it, nigga, but I'm telling you, when I saw this image and I and it really took me right back here and I ain't saw this movie since, nigga, I was probably a child. But I remember yeah, man, dude, we talked about it. Uh, I, I think like last month. Right. But because I just check to it out. My whole thing. Here, hey, my nigga, 
Hey, we going for the long haul. Be safe out there. We appreciate you I, I for joining, you. man. I love you too, man. Cause I got a I got a funeral I gotta head to and uh tomorrow. My best friend, her sister had passed, so I had to take off today. So uh but um remember when we talked about that in Haiti, we call that Dambala. And you gonna hear him when he said in there, but I love y'all, all right? And take care, everybody. And Sanchez, thank you again for, you know, having me and everyone on this platform, Hey, bro. just real quick on that Bala topic. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, bro, because when I was oh, young, yeah. I used to watch that movie, and I used to say that. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, in Haiti, hey. in Haiti, we call it Dumbala, but what Sanchez is going to show you, he just let him, just let Sanchez cook. He going to show you. You going to hear him. Uh, and then we, we got to get you back to go into the Haitian concept, too. We will. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I would love to, but y'all take it easy. I love y'all, man. Hey, love you too, I love y'all, man. Appreciate it. It was right, fucking peace. awesome. I don't know hey, how much man. longer I'm going to hey, go. Hey, Sanchez, I love when you be getting in on my ass, too. <laughs> y'all take it easy. <laughs> For sure, my bro. Hey, hey, look, peace. I don't be going. Listen, here's what I do, y'all. Uh, I oh, just okay. teach with a passion, right? I don't try to... Uh, now, if somebody approached me with a debate, then, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to make it uncomfortable for you because now we we competing. I'm competitive. But check this out, right? Because, listen, I think I got the story right. If somebody will tell me you got the story wrong on that one, Sanchez, it's smoke. <laughs> but, see, if, if that's why I got to – when somebody in the chat was like, Sanchez, he trying to fake debate you. My uh, That's what my brother – you know he everything cool though because you know yeah if it's it, it ain't no thing smoke is healthy dude why you think I fucking fire up so many blunts <laughs> I told you I'm the most high <laughs> God let's go check this out y'all I'm telling you that Yahweh is a spirit that exists in the firmament dome that siphons its in its consciousness into drones on earth. And so I think that Yahweh is, is a concept that's based upon our third eye entering the body or your soul going into Adam, your soul going into the Chucky doll, the body, right? But my thing is, on the, at the same sense, I think that they reverse engineered everything that we are. So the AI found the way to have a pussy to give birth. That's the CERN portal. And then they found the way to simulate emotions. That's the, the fucking uh, seven wandering stars. That's giving them a sexuality. Uh, uh, all of them is like the emotion, energy in motion for AI or emotion. That's what the solar system is. It ain't got nothing to do with us. And I'm saying that a lot of things we got something to do with us is all for mankind, not man. They got us acting like them. I went over that earlier. I know this is a long stream. I'm going to end it uh, because people make it's a lot of Jews in here. And we, we want to make it where they can dissect it. But again, um, yeah. Sanchez, that was cold when you said the solar system. Ain't got nothing to do with us. That's hard, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, that's yeah. why we trying to break out of that shit. We yeah. saying this the soul luring system. That's the simulate. That's the old. Everything we see in the sky, all them lights, that's old ass technology that was used for our ancestors to interact with this simulation. Mm -hmm. When you trying to get out of this bitch, you put the joystick down. You turn the game, turn the, all the technology of it. You start realizing, okay, fuck this controller. Fuck that right. console. Let me go outside and play because I'm a human before I'm a gamer. Like, right. and so my thing is when we trying to go outside and play and get out the house from in front of that Nintendo and let the sun shine on you, you got to put the stick down, turn the game off. And that's mm -hmm. what the whole, this thing about, okay, now we reaching a point where we saying, fuck them stars in the sky. Fuck the Zodiac. I'm thinking about the soul inside of my body. Fuck Correct. that tree right there. Fuck that fish right there. Fuck them clouds. All of this is a game. Yeah, it's a simulation. 
And the only thing real is the gamer, the one holding the, the joystick. And, right. and when he put the stick down, he separate himself from the fake shit. Now, if you're going to drop the controller, drop the goddamn controller. Don't play with it. Drop the motherfucker. Turn the game off and go outside. Don't play. Don't 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 sugarfoot it. And that's Thanks my so. thing with when you unplug, you all the way unplug. You you don't give a fuck, man. Like I was trying to beat this game. I kept dying and I said, fuck it. I'm going outside to play. We all had them Nintendo moments. And so fuck it, nigga. It's like I beat the game because my power over the game is I can stop playing whenever I get ready, motherfucker. <laughs> before before like, you uh yeah. oh good. Before yeah, you, you uh, before you cut the stream or whatever you said you was gonna do, can I do a small commercial for you just real quick, if you don't mind? Oh yeah, man, to everybody, man. Take y'all just, time. We ain't rushing real, y'all out. Oh, okay, cool. I just wanna say make sure y'all hit the cash app, bro, Sanchez T D Cash App, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all go ahead and support my man channel and shit. Oh, also, look. Sanchez, I want to say that um, my pre-orders is up on uh, iTunes, man. And I came in at number 23 today. I'm right behind Mozzie Ooh. on my album. It's coming out 8-16, 24, August 16, 24, the Broadway Theater, man. Y'all help me out on pre-orders. Say it again. I'm trying to hit number one. On, I'm trying to hit Come number on. one on iTunes right now. Uh, I'm, yeah. uh, uh, my pre-orders is up right now. Uh, My album is called The Broadway Theater. I'm at number 20, 23 right now. And I'm uh, like six spots behind Mozzie. I'm trying to come in at number one with my uh, pre-order sales. My album, I got four months before my album drops. So we're doing a, a campaign behind it out here, man. It's just picking up. Some, I got uh, news articles and everything. So I don't want to oh, make it about yeah. me, Sanchez. I just it's to about you, you, nigga. We fucking yeah, with you. So, oh, yeah, did, nigga, I, I, we got somebody that fuck with us that's been that's 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 no nigga we got hell yeah, no man. way i didn't think I, I didn't think i could sell i didn't think i was gonna sell on itunes man i think you know i was gonna sell it all to be honest with you and uh i'm, I'm picking up steam man i didn't even drop i didn't even drop no singles or nothing yet and i just put the pre-order up and it, it jumped in at number 38 and that shocked me the next day and then the next day it jumped up 10 spots so yeah. i don't know what's gonna come in tomorrow but it's definitely, uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm getting articles. Uh, Fox picked it up in uh, California. I got a couple of news articles out there. I had a publicist write some, an article, and it's picking up. So, Because you know the story. You know, hey, what, 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 what do I search? Hell yeah. I'm in iTunes, and I don't see it. I type uh, in Broadway just look, just look up Willie North Pole, Broadway the Theater. The Broadway Theater. Theater. Yeah. Broadway Theater. I don't, I've never been on iTunes. They, I got people that's doing all that for me. But it's up there, though. Well, you know, okay, I see, Broadway. I see you now. Body, uh, body marked up. Yeah, that's me right there. But the new album is Broadway Theater. I haven't released no. That's all old music. So I haven't released oh, no new music that. in fifteen years. It's my first mm, album. In 15 years. And you charting like that, damn boy, that's crazy. Already Sanchez, right? Damn bro. boy, hey man, your I old believe my nigga shit like can be. <laughs> damn, bro, <laughs> this man say his old the... shit. Compete with they new shit, nigga. That's a bum. Nigga, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna hit the Billboard chart, so that's gonna be my fifth Billboard. My so, nigga Willie North Pole yeah. is a go. Thank you, Sanchez. Nigga, I'm that. So, bro. Don't you know? I next know, man, bro. Album. Listen, I know a nigga that fuck with me that's charting the Billboards, nigga. I gotta yeah, drop a bum, nigga. Thank <laughs> you, <man>. <laughs> my <laughs> nigga. Now guess what though? Because yeah. check this out, right? Willie North Pole is hope for niggas who spitting because guess what? He's iTuning it, yo. Yeah, He's, I, I this didn't, is thank you. Yeah. Hey, no, good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. No, I'm saying, bro, when niggas be like, because I be hearing it, bro, if you still talking on some major deal shit, you mm. missed the wave, nigga. Right. My, that, Cause my white yeah. boy, my white boy was telling me he was like, I didn't understand iTunes, and I was, I was like, nobody buy music. He was like, bro, it's just showing that you can still, you still selling music. Nobody's buying music, but you can still sell music. He said that's big. I and then when that clicked, I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> man, my motherfucking nigga. Yeah, thank Th you, brother. From, hey, bro, and I ain't gonna lie, man, bro. I got to say shout out to that nigga, man. Listen, bro. Uh, bro, nigga, you know Luda, DTP, oh, yeah. the nigga. 
Listen, man, one thing I say is this right here, bro. You came a long way, nigga. You you been ever since you entered the game with DTP with loot and shit, nigga. I just, I'm just saying, nigga. Yeah, to me, man. you give me like Jada Kiss uh South vibes. Like a nigga. You know, you know how they be sleeping on <laughs> Jada, but he's sick with the yeah. lyrics and shit and like that's that nigga. Real I talk. I got some new good news for you also. I gave Bobby a verse on that beat, man. So he hiding it from you. Tell him to play it for you, bro. Bro, oh, my God. Guess what, nigga? I let you put the verse out for me, and he gave it to both of us, too, man. <laughs> no, we both, we all three it. supposed to, we all three of us supposed to get on it. Hey, nigga, everybody in the chat hearing this out of my mouth. I did, th I did my part. I did and my I'm, part. And I'm going to do mine. Yep, I need, I you know what? I got to put myself a debt. You and Bobby, give me a deadline. I work I'm good with deadlines, nigga. I'm going to send my nigga. first to your email if you want to hear it, man. So you can hear it. So I can but, be on the energy, y'all, on too. Yeah, I yeah, want to hear I, it, man. I, man, I, I'm talking that shit. And I want everybody else to talk shit. That's it. We It's, it's real. You know, that beat is cinematic, man. We just we just giving it up, man. That's Bro, it. Bro, guess That's what? It. <laughs> Send me your verse. And, I do that. Um, I'm on. I'm gonna go in my email because Bobby sent me the beat. I'm finna get started on my shit. ASAP, okay, I'll nigga. send you my verse tonight. My words. As soon as I get off, boss. I, I swear to God, I'm finna get my shit, nigga, on wax. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Appreciate you, my nigga Willie. Yeah. And to everybody also, else, man. Yeah. I'm also selling. Just so y'all know, I'm selling my uh, merch and everything on AlphaHouse.com. That's where you can buy the album, like in a bundle and stuff. I got CDs. If you want to get CDs, I got, you know, Broadway jerseys, Willie Broadway jerseys, beanies, and all that kind of shit in my uh, my merch. But I want y'all, it's cheaper to do pre-orders on iTunes if y'all don't want to do the bundles. You can just do mm -hmm. pre-orders on iTunes to get my numbers up. Either way, my numbers going to jump last week. The last week before I drop my album, I think that's when my iTunes is really going to spike. So Hell so yeah. Gonna, you know I'm getting campaign. it. Yeah, I'm on it. Broadway you, Theater. We I'm gonna I'm send you that. I'm gonna send you that. Uh, I'm gonna send you that uh, verse right now, man. I just wanted to tell you that, man, and I really appreciate you giving me a second to explain that to everybody, bro. Hell yeah, nigga. We got. Hey, you know too. Just hit me up with me, and you can do a, like a one-on-one -on -one show where you can just if you ever have like. Oh, you wanna, can, let's, you know. let's uh, let me preview the album to the uh, Flat Power channel before I even put it out, nigga, so they can go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Email me, my nigga, and we can do your one-on-one -on -one shows. You know how I do it, man. Yeah. Man, my nigga, man. <laughs> because and guess what, bro? And then after we do that, I've been saying that I got to have a whole joint to wear because people was like. Man, why you don't do no more like talent shows and we're just shows where everybody just play music, nigga? No teaching, right. just and then it's, uh, and, and, it, yeah. It's talk. It's talk to Sanchez at Gmail, correct? Yeah. Okay, I got uh -huh. you, man. And cause look, niggas was telling me we can have our own flatter, like sort of like how the freestyle rap battles go and like all kind of shit we ain't doing on the music shit. Cause guess oh, okay. what, nigga. It's so many niggas, bro. Get a compilation album one day. But look, the Broadway theater is what we own now, cause nigga, you Thank number two. Hey, listen, you Thank number you, twenty three, nigga. We you finna be on the billboards and you fucking with the flat earth, bro. Yeah, we got 100 the flat power. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta fuck with this, man. Real talk, hey, cause look, y'all, when we niggas go bro. follow this nigga's music. They going to find out what it, that he, what he on. And it's yeah. going to lead them to flat earth, nigga. That's what I be telling. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm good. Bring, that's I'm a, bring, a good I'm look. Bring, I'm going to do, do everything in my power to bring whoever's listening to me on this side to you, bro. You, you know ain't got just, to do much, nigga. Because guess yeah. what? When, when you're charting on the billboards and you ripping shit up in the music, folks want to know everything you want. Like B.O.B. And, and niggas going to see. Yeah. Everybody that's listening, when I say Billboard, don't think that I'm trying to be a mainstream rapper. I don't give a fuck about nigga. We shit. want your ass to go on the billboards. Fuck all that's, that. That's bro. it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> man, we ain't doing it to play with it, nigga. Guess what? If I put some shit out, I, if my shit go billboard, nigga, hell yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Because Thank that's you, just a fucking rate. It what it means is. Everybody fucking with my shit. See, this how to build, and you know how the billboards work. This ain't no, it's, it's really this. 
Independent artists break the billboard all the time. You got to mm-hmm. fuck with it when you can't deny the wave, nigga. You can't right. have nobody not on that shit that we know got the streets on fire, nigga. That's going to make <laughs> your shit lose credibility. Right. This my city out here, man. I'm telling you, know you that's how I be hitting it. I'm telling you, the billboard is red. I be hitting that shit. This most me, like I said, it's gonna be my fifth one. I don't want to make it all about me though, man. And I'm, I'm just excited, bro. And I appreciate you saying yes. that. Yes. And guess what? I'm gonna um get ready to close out, but I'm gonna um segue to a bunch of more guys that want to spill they spill on the way out. Y'all take yes. y'all time, just like the brother Willie North Pole. We ain't rushing nobody out of here. Salute to all of y'all, brother. Yeah, thank you again. I just, sure. uh, I just, what's up, guys? I want to say thanks for having me on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just found, I just wanted to circle back briefly to the whole melanin thing and what Zach's position on. Let's talk about it. Bl- Hell blacks. yeah, we. Hey, listen, man, we might stay a little longer if you keep with this <laughs> melanin shit, nigga. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I just, well, I like, I, I'm just going with like whatever, like just observations and intuition about it, and. I'm not going to quote stories, but one thing is interesting about it, and I don't think it's so far-fetched only because if you look at anything when it comes to animals or even vegetation, anything anything including with a seed, you know, there was there was once black tomatoes, there was, there was black garlic, there was black bananas, and like somewhere along the lines, things were mutated and crossbred. Wait, and wait, I don't wait, wait, wait. You telling me? That that wasn't always white versions too, because I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that was always black stuff. That was always white stuff and green stuff and yellow the, stuff yeah. and but red point, stuff and purple stuff. But I think I think in some ways I think the baseline color was black, and I think things did stem off from that. And whether I mean, if you look at if you look at Genesis, which you probably maybe you talked about this years ago, I don't know, but the darkness like Gen- gave birth to the light, right? Well, no, I was going to say that Genesis has the word genes in it. Like, it's like, it's literally the beginning of genes and how things altered from that. And I I just don't think it's so, it's not even about race. I just don't think it's so far-fetched to say things came from, from you know, black itself. And I, like think, I, said, I think it's very far-fetched because I'm going to tell you why. You're saying that things come from a color versus things come from a conscious being. You're telling me the clouds in the sky come from black, but they white. You're but the telling clouds, me, but the, okay, but, but the hold, clouds hold don't on. Okay, go ahead. Go hold ahead. on, hold on. You're saying people come from blackness, but people come from the earth. All things come from nature, the creation. And my thing is, how can that be one color? You can't point, like you said, is right here, right? Every color in a crayon box together make black. But when you do that with light, it make white. If you take every different color of light and put it together, it'll make white light. If you take every crayon together, put it together, it'll make blackness. So if I use the same logic in different spectrums, we'll get different results, which is why I'm saying I think it's very far-fetched to think that every different color rose in the garden come from a black, two black roses. And them two black roses gave birth to pink roses, white roses, yellow roses, blue. That ain't how the light spectrum work. That is not how color work. Every well, color. Be, okay. Listen, listen a second. It's far fetched what you're saying, because if you learn how color work, it ain't got the melanin go out the door. Because when you deal with the color spectrum, every color you looking at was born out of two other colors. And if you take any color away, no color can exist, which is why we say you can't have one without the you fill in the blank, my nigga. That's why I'm saying y'all arguments only work with humans. Why don't you talk about trees, fishes, birds? Crows always been black. It's some birds. Pink. Listen, pink flamingos always been pink, my nigga. That's just the way nature make. They pink. God damn, they pink flamingos. Can I insert something though? But I, one thing about animals is a lot of the animals, and you actually, you guys were talking about, about things being natural. There's a lot of animals out there that are not Ain't natural. Ain't nothing like, natural. Like, like, I'm just showing you how diversity come in the simulation or the creation. I don't no, deal. I don't. Yeah, I don't deal with, I'm, I'm saying the creation. 
there's, there's things we can prove and disprove about the creation we in. And what I'm saying is what we can prove about the creation is that diversity didn't come from evolution. That's a fact. Uh, I, yeah, I get it. I'm just saying, but like when it current, when it comes to animals, like a dog is not a nat. Like I think, I think the whole natural thing plays a line in with melanin. I'm not saying they're synonymous, How? but, but there's, I'm just saying like, can I like ask you one quick question real quick? Yeah, are, are we in a simulation right now? I I think the word simulation gets thrown around. I think I no, think it don't to get thrown around. It just means are we in a reality that's similar to something real, but it's not the real thing. It's something else after this. And is is another reality beyond this one. That's all it means. We ain't got to complicate it. Simulation is it. Are we in a real reality right now or something similar to a real reality? But we're going to get to something else later. What do you think? I got to see who I'm dealing with first before we can make these arguments. I got to see what I'm dealing with. Right. Um, because, listen, if you believe in simulation theory, then why are we talking about what's natural or not? I, we can just end the whole mm -hmm. natural bullshit, right? Well, if you're I think, a person, um, yeah, right. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, I'm just like I said, I'm I'm all on board with what we talk about here and all that. I'm just I'm just poking the bear a little bit. No, when, what I'm saying yeah. is, poke me then, poke me. Are we in a simulation or not? For we can get to the can poking I, part. <clears throat> Can I, no, can you, can't, you can't. You can't. I can talk to him. No, you can't. I can talk to him. No. So are we in a sit? Yeah, one at a time, brothers. Are we in a simulation or not? Yeah, uh, my brother. It's a, a simple question. Damn. I, I just. I, 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 no, I, I know. It's a simple, I know it's a simple question, but I just. I don't. I don't. Can you just it. answer it, really, oh, please, for me? <laughs> it's right. Is it that hard, All right. man? Well, I'm going to say yes to you because, yeah, I'm going to say it is a simulation, but I think our definitions right, are a little so different. All right, so then why do we talk and we don't have to make arguments based on what's natural or not? And now that I know that I'm dealing with a person that know that our whole reality is fake, we can get beyond the natural bullshit. Now let's try this again. Go ahead. Okay, I, I, I'm on board with what you're saying, but like I said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just propping up the position of things stemming from black only because, like I said, there was a time there was black tomatoes, black bananas. Now we've altered from that. But the baseline was black. Like, OK, so now watch, yeah. watch this. Right. That's not true, though. It, that's that's literally not true. All well, of the fruits that we eat today wasn't jet black. That's a lie, bro. That's just well, it, a lie. Well, I'm just saying. I think a lot of I think a lot of visitation has been has been crossbreded. The same thing. Okay, with so let me ask you something. You telling me when we go to the jungle and see all of these green trees that they was once black? Well, it's. I'm, I'm saying we don't really know. It's possible. Okay, so my thing is, I'm going to stick to what I know, not what's possible. And what I do know is what I see around me every day is nature making diversity right now, nigga. I see two black people giving birth to albinos, vitiligos, light-skinned niggas, all that. We used to joke on them. So you're going with what's possible. I'm going with what's real, and that's why I'm winning. When it comes to me making my argument, I don't deal with the possibilities. I deal with the facts. Because guess what? If I say it's possible that giants exist under the earth, I'm not going to end with that. I'm going to start doing the research to either prove that or disprove it. Melanin is a possibility. It's not a fact, which proves my original point. All theories are possible. They just can't say that it's a fact because it ain't been proven. It's possible Jesus walked on water. It's possible elephants can fly. Oh, that's like true, that's what I'm yeah. saying. No, no, I'm saying, nigga, you tell me something that ain't that, that ain't possible. It's possible to extract the soul out the body with Neuralink. Sanchez, you just contradicted yourself, loved one. Show me how, and let's do it. Let's play this. I love right. smoke. Let's go. Dead. Take one both right, of y'all. Let's go. No, no. It, look, look, bro. You Come just on, just make the you contradiction. Deal, you just said mm -hmm. you just said you don't deal with nature because this is a simulation. Then you just turned around and said that 
which you you said you, you come you, on so you told you told you told the brother here that he was wrong for assuming what what, what trees could have looked like back in the day and then you said i don't i don't deal with theories i do with what i know and what i look around i see nature in my reality I, you, you you just said that so, so what I'm you telling you is this, nature. man, you say you think, look a, think, see think about this, though, right? I don't deal with God, but I still use the word. I still call dudes, gods and women goddesses. So if you want to deal with semantics, you win, nigga, if that's how you got to win. <laughs> like my thing is I use words that I'm trained to use. I've been using the word nature since a little boy. It ain't going to stop just because I know I live in a simulation. It's trained behavior. Like, you want me to stop saying the word nature in my lexicon like that because I'm saying with my new theory, I believe ain't nothing natural in assimilation. You trying to make me a hypocrite when I'm the realest thing ever, nigga. I'm t I told the people, hey, y'all, I'm teaching simulation theory. So I'm wrong by trying to say this natural or that ain't natural. I've been I was wrong about that, y'all, because I'm teaching y'all that we live in a simulation. Therefore, I'm wrong, y'all, because ain't nothing natural in a simulation. You know how much motherfucking putting my ego aside it took to say that. And you think that I'm going to stop using the word nature because of my newfound knowledge that's still in my lexicon. Dudes that say I don't want to use the word nigga no more, they still slip up and say it. I still slip up and say, oh, my God, but I don't believe in God, nigga. <laughs> I don't have a God that's mine. It's just learned behavior. So if you got to win with that, you won. If that's what you're, you desperate now, though. That's all I'm no, saying. No, bro, it's not. It's not. It's not that. I it's not a contradiction, <laughs> brother. And I don't want to hear you go into plea mode, nigga. I'm just saying you're wrong. If that's how you gotta win, you lost. No, I'm so not gonna plead with you. What I'm about to say is what I'm saying. For you, cut me off again, right? Cause I ain't through talking. Good try, but let me get back to talking to the dude I was talking with. He's making arguments. I don't want to use semantics. I'm going to slip up and say a lot of shit that I've been saying. I'm 40. I've been saying nature for 40 years. I just learned about a simulation, nigga, two a year ago or two years ago. And you think because I'm teaching ain't nothing natural no more that I'm never going to slip up and say things like mother nature, nature. If that's your argument, let me get back to the other dude, man, because that's some like that ain't an argument. Real talk. That's all I'm saying. With all due respect, that ain't even fun. That's saying, uh, you slipped up and said it. I got gotcha. <laughs> OK, you won. I, I, now I, can I, I get back to the other dude? Hey, yo, so like, are we going to start saying mother board, not mother nature type shit? I mm -hmm. fucking like that. I might fuck around, entertain that while you plan, Salas. You fucking plan, nigga. Well, that's that's the same Salas. thing. That's the same thing I'm saying. I mean, like, we're just kind of using, I don't want to say computerized terms compared to that. Like, you can say that people have their nature or you can say people are programmed. I mean, I don't think. Oh, I don't okay. Think I like that. Now I ain't gonna lie. You just drop some shit there. I drop a bomb for you on that. <laughs> no, I like that, man. Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, well, I just, well, that's where it, like it gets tricky because I don't. I like. I rather say that like animals, an ego has its nature of behaving, or you can say it's programmed. I mean, when you say something's programmed or things operate in a certain way, I just feel like it makes it subhuman, and it takes away an element of it. But um, that's what I'm saying. If you're programmed, you are subhuman because think about it. Computers are programmed. Robots are programmed. So if a human is programmed, he's operating in a level that's beneath his humanity. Ayo hey, Sanchez. Yeah, Whoa. Sanchez. Right, right, right. Hold on, hold on. What is that, the, uh, what, what is the detailed um, uh, origin of the word board? 
Because when I'm thinking but watch of this board, though. Nah, hold up. I'm still my fist ain't satisfied yet because I was beating up on melanin, and I don't think melanin forfeited and said Sanchez, I I quit. So let me beat up on melanin some more. <laughs> here go a book right here, right called Melanin is my superpower. And y'all don't see that melanin is a religion, nigga. Look at this book. It's called A Holy Spirit and Supernatural Power. Saint telling the Christians, you got supernatural powers that other people don't got because you got the Holy Ghost. But them Christians can't do shit we can't do. <laughs> Just like the nigga with melanin can't do nothing that no damn body else can't do. Bro, I got smoke for it. Because niggas saying I'm going against melanin because I hate myself and all that. Nigga, my beef with melanin is that I thought I was woke and that shit was just chocolate-coated uh, Christianity. Like, I got real smoke for melanin, nigga. Because I'm from the Bible Belt and I see how they scamming people, giving them a new Holy Ghost. Show me I'm lying with these book covers. You can't do this. Come on, nigga. Don't gotta, get I off melanin. Little... I got something for you on melanin. So you you identify melanin as a substance of material. Regardless of melanin being, um, you know, people think it's like a substance or whatever. How about we reverse that concept of it being a substance and it actually being a sense of radiation? So do the radiation make your skin darker? Hold on, let me ask him. Let me answer his question. I don't give a fuck what your interpretation of the sky daddy is. He don't exist. Huh? That That's what's going on. You said, well, what if melanin ain't this? What if it's that? That's like a nigga saying, well, what if Jesus ain't Jesus? What if it's another kind of, I'm saying whatever it is, if you ain't saying it's me, fuck it. Well, I'm I all about me. You. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all. Right. Like, I'm saying like a person, let's say, Melanated, go outside the sun gaze and becomes more radiated. Remember? I don't fucking get into all that crazy shit. <laughs> I mean, man, you, you wanted, talking? You listen to you. you listen, wait, 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 wait. wait. And, and, listen, you. and I'm trying to give it to you back. Now let me speak, and we finna go back and forth. My thing with you is, <laughs> if you telling me. My melanin is cool because I get to go outside and stare at the sun. Then I'll trade my melanin to be a white man and control o over the world while you go sun gaze. Well, yeah, yeah I, listen, I'll be the man planning your children's future and you'll be the sun gazers. Okay. But what if we get to a point where So listen, when it come well, listen, when it come to this debate, I'ma win because I'ma keep the shit real. Let's go. What's your next argument? Well, I mean, we gotta get over the fact of radiation and what radiation is and how it's connected to the electromagnetic electromagnetic spin uh, electro electromagnetic spectrum of the biological body. And you just re rambling to, now, bro. Come on, it's a bunch of no, fucking this ain't just rambling. This ain't rambling, you, you know. Me, it's, it's ain't no rambling. I'm just saying, uh, you know, heightening the electromagnetic field of the body could raise, you know, the electromagnetic. Spectrum now, how do I body. heighten the electromagnetic field of the body? I get melanin pills, no, no, no. Uh, you know, certain uh practices actually raise your radiation, like. Sun Hold like, up, wait, 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 wait. The debate is about melanin, not radiation. What you doing, you swapping the word melanin for the word radiation because uh -huh. you don't want to debate me directly about melanin. And somebody in the chat room just pointed that out. Like, y'all got to quit being, like, stand on it, nigga. Say Sanchez, fuck that, nigga. Melanin real. Fuck radiation, nigga. I'm talking about melanin, and you wrong, and here go my smoke, and I'm here to defend melanin. Because what you doing, you said, well, it ain't melanin, it the radiation, and it's like, don't run from me like that. Stand on it, bro. <laughs> Stand on melanin, man, because I don't want no smoke for radiation. You trying to change that shit. You fake I debating, am. like you trying to debate me, but not directly. Fuck radiation. Stand up for melanin, man. Fight for melanin. Come on, man. Put your draws on. You talked. You talked about the color spectrum. You 
there's a saying, I, I think it's true. They, they say that white is the absence of color, right? Say that again. I mean, that my thing, Salas. Yes, yeah, stand up. Y'all, man, listen, this, I love you niggas. This shit ain't serious to me. Nigga, when I debate you, I got to put the pressure on you. Everything you do, I got to make you do it under pressure like how the military did for me. Everything got to be done. Pressure, time, anxious, hurry up. Blah, blah. Yeah, that's why my energy like that. I got to make it can't be comfortable when you debate me. Now, come on, though. But don't skip, uh, run, no. Stand on the melon. Let's go. Uh, well, no, we just look. I, I, all right. I'll, you want, if you want blunt phrases, I like, I, I disagree. I'm on board with this simulation, but whether it's my definition or not, I don't like, I don't think, I don't think animals live in a simulation i think human beings live in a simulation because we've been indoctrinated with that with school and social engineering you know birds uh coyotes they don't they don't vote they're not voting for people they don't listen to rap music i don't completely... know what that got to do with diversity and melanin my brother well what i the point i'm trying to get to is what, <laughs> I, what well, well what i'm piggybacking off of is when you said i don't think anything is natural right you yeah, I don't. So I just, My thing I, is, no, I didn't just say that, though. Say the rest. I said the only thing I think natural in this world is your soul. Everything else is fake. The only thing real is the real self. Everything else is a simulation around that. And that go for animals, too. The only thing real in that animal is its soul. Everything and, and else I, is just your soul taking a form within the simulation. Hey, yo, I got smoke for that real concept. Well, Are I mean, but about? damn, if I'm going to get smoked, though, I mean, it got to be one at a time. You niggas ain't going to run the train on me. Shit, no diddy. <laughs> God damn, nigga. I'm already debating a nigga. So, so you don't, so you don't, you don't think, you don't believe in mutations about certain things being spliced and things were genetically mutated. Of course and... he does. I didn't say that, nigga. You speaking for me now. I'm going to just fall back and let you niggas have it at this point. <laughs> that broke because... off for a Y'all got it for a minute. Work well, that just, shit out. I'm, yeah. Well, for, well, one thing I have to say, like, I'm, I'm on the East Coast, so it's like close to four in the morning. I'm a little tired, so just bear with me. But, um... I'm just trying to prop it all up. I I bring up the mutations and all that because we're going back to melanin and things stemming from black. Like like say if there was black tomatoes somewhere along the line, the vegetation was crossbreded with another whatever. And let me ask you a question, brother. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I gotta ask you this shit. You telling me every fish in the ocean was black? <laughs> Well, I mean, but truthfully, Sanchez. I'm just asking Sanchez, a question, I, though, truth, bro. Truthfully, truthfully, Sanchez, I I know you're gonna hate my what well, I'm gonna say. No, we I'm not. We, I'm we just don't, tripping. We, we, we don't, don't know, huh? We, we don't, don't know. know. I mean, okay. We people so say, people then, say listen, listen, listen. Let me explain something to you. This is how I debate work. I'm not saying humans know everything, right? But when you show up to a debate, you got to stand on something. Meaning that I don't think you know everything, but in a debate, you got to say, I know this and you don't know that. And I got smoke for you because I'm telling you, I do know how diversity come. That's how debates work. And I can prove it. I'm making my arguments and can't nobody disprove it from my arguments. Your argument is we don't know. But I do know because I see how diversity happen every day. I'm looking at humans of all colors come together and make love and they giving birth to humans of all colors. And if you look at how the colors work, every color existed and every color need the other one to stay existing. And I'm so, saying that okay. humans are behaving just like crayons. You can't have one color without the other one. If I remove blue, every other color will cease to exist. Because every color that exists is a child of two other colors that had sets. If you want purple, you got to have red and blue. If you want this color, them two got to fuck. 
if you want that color, them two got to fuck each other. And if you want this, that's what I'm saying. Diversity always existed. Life always been a smoothie with all this shit blended together. And when we start fucking each other, we think we mixing. We're not, though. We're remixing like Puff Daddy. We can't mix. We can only remix because in anti when the universe was created, everything was already blended. It was already mixed. Diversity come from the beginning. If my argument is diversity started from the beginning, you can't debunk me. I don't even need evolution. But if your argument is, well, wait a minute, Sanchez, there was two black people to begin with. You got to explain to me how everything else come out of them. I don't got to do that. I can just say, listen, man, whatever created the universe, it made everything different. See how easy my shit is? That's Occam's razor. You need mutations, evolution. You need black folks fucking each other with incest. I don't got to do all that. I can just say, hey, man, the creator made shit different, nigga, shit. Look at the flowers, nigga, shit. Look at the plants. Look at So every fish in the ocean was black. And all them colorful fishes we see in Jamaica and Florida, they come from the black ones, y'all. Well, isn't it? All right, but all right. All right, isn't it safe to, like, if you look at it, it ain't dog, safe right? to do no, nothing no, but no. use Occam's razor. No, all right, but I'm just saying, I'm just treading the line with with things being, with the mutation and crossbred. Like, you just said dogs, you don't know, though. Didn't you just say we can never know? Your yeah, argument, but, yo, hold up, wait, 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 wait. Okay, go Quit ahead, go acting ahead. like you know shit, bro. You just admitted to me, Sanchez, I know you're not going to like my answer. No, I like your answer, but stand on something. You a wish-washy nigga. Stand on something. If your answer is, well, we don't really know, then quit acting like you fucking know. My answer wasn't, I don't really know. My answer was, I know, my nigga. I know how it happened. I was confident. Your answer was not confident. So you can't try to match my energy now. Because I never said we don't know. I said I know how it happened. So why you like quit? Y'all be, man, come on, man. Keep the shit real. Everything you tell me, I'm going to say, here go the man who talking who said we'll never know. <laughs> why is he acting like he know every fucking thing? I'm the only one can do that because I never said we can't know. I said, use your man, mind. You can know anything. And that's what I'm doing. I don't got to have a belief or a theory. That's what you got. And when you standing on that, you also got to say, well, we don't really know. Because that's why your shit is a theory. You don't really know. So quit acting like you really know with a fucking theory. I'm the only one can act like I know because it ain't an act, nigga. I said I had facts and I showed them. Like, quit trying to be like me. I'm not the I'm, nigga I'm, showing up trying to defend theories and say, well, we don't really know. I'm the nigga that's saying if you use your mind, you can know all the secrets of the universe, just like the Christian Gnostics, just like Tesla. I'm not the nigga with the fucking I don't really know mentality. So quit. Once you say you that nigga, I'm going to hold you to that. You shouldn't have said that. So everything you do after that, acting like you know, I'm going to fucking make it hard for you, bro. You're going to quit. You're going to stop now. You're going to stop. Because your stop sign was when you said, well, we don't really know. And I'm like, you don't really know. I know how diversity come to be. <laughs> And you not going to act to me like you know some shit now when you admit it, you don't really know. And I never had that energy. I always said, I know, nigga. I know what's up. Confident. Because I done the research. That's why I don't got the spirit of I don't really know. I'm not trying to defend a nigga's theory. I know the facts that I've observed with my own reasonable deductions. I use my mind so I can stand on what I'm saying from the beginning to the end. You wish why she has, I don't really know ass niggas. 
Well, I, God I don't... damn, bro, it's getting annoying I, I... at this point. Keep it real you, with me. You don't have to get annoyed. We're just we're just talking. I'm gonna get annoyed, nigga. When I'm talking to a nigga that ain't talking and keeping it real with me, Alabama niggas get annoyed. Cause we real niggas in the South. If a nigga say some real shit, we say, damn, my nigga, you got me on that one shit, nigga. That's real as fuck, nigga, on everything, nigga. We country niggas. That's how we survive, by knowing we don't know everything. So you was a good man when you said you don't really know. But you getting on my bad list by acting like you do know now. After you said that, you should be asking me questions now. Because you don't really know, remember? I know though. Well, well, that's what I was real. That's what I was doing. I was asking you questions, and I said I don't know. What's your you next asked. question? I don't want to hear you saying nothing. Just asking now. Yeah, you forfeited. You don't really know. Go ahead. All right. Well, I said I didn't really know when you said that all fish were black. That's that's what I said to you. Okay, well you need you can't tell me you know that all humans was black, but you don't know that all fish was black. But we can like, say that certain we can say that certain animals came from two other animals. We can say that we, pit we bulls can't, and, we, and we, cocker we, spaniels we, came from. But we can't say that all motherfucking colorful pit bulls come from two original black ones, though. You still trying to leave the... You're not debating me for real. You fucking running and you filibustering. And I'm tired of it, dog. If you're gonna debate me, debate me, nigga. Make your argument. Stop making other arguments. I'm not debating you on that. You said the first two humans was black. Why the fuck are you saying other arguments now? Show me how it all, all come from two blacks. Y'all ain't doing that. I know that a pit bull is a blend of two other dogs. So Brother Sanchez, didn't, didn't, there wasn't the atmosphere a carbon atmosphere? Wouldn't. Okay, you bullshit now, Nike. You tripping. <laughs> we not finna go from melanin and diversity to what's the atmosphere carbon. Y'all niggas be doing the most. And it be making me look like I'm tripping and drunk and shit when I'm just trying to keep order and have a good intellectual debate where the people can have clarity and see which side, every side arguing without no dancing, no games, bro. This is a court of law. I'm not going to let nobody play on my people's intelligence and play and be deceptive or none of that. If you show up debating me on something, I'm going to make it fair, bro. And I'm going to make you stick to what you said. A black man and a black woman. Fuck all that. Niggas is talking about pigeons. Uh, what was the other nigga was talking about? A nigga growing pubic hair in the, in the jail cell hole. Niggas will take you all around the world when you try to hold them to what the fuck they said. If it started from blackness, how did diversity come? That's your argument.